Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter 140 Hey, hey, just what happened on set? The project producer burst into the office pantry. The production producer grinned while making instant coffee with half-closed eyes. I guess the investors are interested. They can't get enough. Didn't you see the smiles hanging on the CEO and investment team leaders' faces? What is it? What happened on set? We completely entranced them as the CEO ordered. Give me details. Don't you know I hate being frustrated? Ah, I can't explain it with my inarticulate tongue. Just watch it on the news. The production producer said teasingly as he took a sip from his coffee. But you know Chief Young Sun Wu from WU. Chief Young. Did he do something? His actors did. That person. There really seems to be something to him seeing as he only has two actors and they're both unique. I thought Lee Sangha was great, but the other one is completely. The project producer's eyes widened. The other one. That unknown actor. Mr. Nam Joyun. High heels walked through the door. It was Kim Min Jong from marketing. I bet Cheongyuro District will be in a fuss next year with all the new faces. In my opinion, someone in our movie could receive the best rookie award. Lee Songa. At the sudden name, Kang Min Jong made a meaningful smile. It'd be great if both of them got an award. Who? Nam Joyun too. He's that good. I also think they'll get to walk to the podium. The production producer yawned tiredly before saying. Unless these two scenarios happen. Although it probably won't, unless our movie fails so hard it leaves a mark in history. Ah, uh, geez. You're the production producer for Christ's sake. I said it probably won't. If not, then. An amazing scenario and actor. Kong Min Jong threw the stirring stick into the sink and added. Suddenly pop out of nowhere. It definitely was summer. The monsoon has been going on a few days now. The Team 3 leader wrung his soaked sleeves as he got in the elevator. What kind of rain falls like there's a hole in the sky? So scary. There's a heavy rain warning in effect. They also say a hurricane is on its way. The Team 3 leader frowned when he heard me. Are you okay when the weather's like this? Will the shoot be fine? Royal family has a lot of rainy scenes so we can film them now, but alive is the problem. They'll probably do all the indoor scenes until the weather clears up. The elevator soon arrived on the fourth floor. I was about to enter the office when the Team 3 leader pulled in front of the vending machines. Lucky charm, did you hear about the Team 2 leader? No. I haven't been to the company recently. What is it? He's about to die of frustration. The Team 3 leader grinned. Because of the rookie. You know, that guy. Song Inho. I recalled his handsome face. I also recalled the scene where he looked like he was about to cry when he received the award. The scene that had been nailed to my mind and made me concerned over for the past few months. Yeah, Song Inho. The Team 2 leader wants to make him out to be the second Sung Dawan, not personality, but image wise. Anyways, the Team 2 leader's been looking through drama and movie proposals when Song Inho suddenly brings over a scenario. A scenario? My ears perked. An independent film scenario. It's the lead role, so ITLL take up a bunch of his time, and they don't know how long they'll need to film either. He clung to the Team 2 leader's leg begging saying that he had to do this movie. The Team 2 leader tried to persuade him over and over but eventually gave up. He looks like he might faint from anger. The Team 3 leader chuckled as he imagined it. However, something else was filling my mind. Team leader, do you have the scenario? Probably not. Song Yinho was the one who personally brought it. Why? Are you concerned? He slapped my back. There's nothing to worry about. Isn't Nam Joyun already a star in the making? He said with a beaming smile. I heard a few rumors here and there. If they are right, then he might be able to rid his label as an unknown actor with this movie. 
He will. Not might. He will. I said while suppressing the hurricane sweeping through my mind. The Team 2 leader, that fellow, snorted, laughing at how we could compare you to him. If his prided discerning eye takes a hit, his bloated ego's going to deflate. The Team 3 leader made a satisfied smile. I can't wait. I bought a soda from the vending machine. My thoughts began to organize now that I had something cold in my belly. It was like the Team 3 leader said. There was no need to worry. My team worked crazy hard for the past two months. It was just that future. It kept bugging me. So I worked harder than ever before on this project. I even needed to shorten my sleep time. Lee Sangha and Nam Joyun also worked so hard that it was a wonder they haven't collapsed yet. They also proved their hard work through their acting. Each day on set was one of admiration. I always tried to look calm because there were people around, but whenever I saw them act, I felt a surge of joy in me. There were multiple occasions where I wanted to run around the set applauding them. So. Let's not worry about the uncertain future that might have already been changed. Thinking this, I was about to go into the office. Ah, uh, hello, chief. A person who was leaning on my desk hurriedly bowed to me. It was pouring outside, yet it looked like the sun was shining around him. Im Song Inho. We met last time. I remember. I nodded while walking casually. Honestly, taking each step was scary. I thought I would see that same future again. However, my vision didn't go dark or become hazy. I relaxed my tensed shoulders and said. What brings you to Team 3? That is I wanted to meet you. About this. Song Inho showed me what was in his hand. It was a bundle of A4 paper that had been flipped through so many times the edges were worn. I knew in an instant. So it's that. It's a scenario of an independent film. It's the work of a director I'm close with, and I'm going to play the lead. That's why, if you're okay with it, I was hoping you could read this and give me your thoughts. You know, since you're famous for this. Song Inho bit his lower lip before adding. I showed my team leader first, but his reaction was a bit. What did the team two leader say? An unknown director with no accomplishments, and a scenario that won't bring in investments. He said with a faint smile. It will be very time consuming. It is uncertain if it can even be released or not. Even if it is released, a low budget film like this will only open in at most 20 theaters. A project that'll be considered a success if 10,000 people go watch it, is what he said. Yet you still want to do this? My voice sounded unfamiliar. Without hesitation, Song Yingo nodded. I learned a lot from this director before I entered WU. I told him I would do his movie if he ever had a good scenario. This. He said he wrote this with me as the lead. He even but his home as collateral to make this movie. Song Yinho carefully smoothed out the scenario. His eyes were full of hope and happiness as he looked at it. How could I refuse? Song Inho's gaze landed on me. Don't want to be an actor like that. Ah, damn it. I want him. I exhaled what felt like cigarette smoke and put my hand out. Then shall we read it? Nam Joyun opened his apartment door. A middle-aged woman entered while taking off her thick scarf. She was his mother. A hurricane came by during the summer, and now there's a crazy blizzard during the winter. We're just getting hit with everything, aren't we? Why didn't you call? I would have gone to pick you up. It's not my first time coming to Seoul. I can make my way through it now. His mother scanned his dreary apartment. A clunky laptop tossed on his bed. There was a movie paused on its screen. His desk was piled with stacks of scenarios and notes. His bookcase was filled with DVD cases. After carefully examining every nook and cranny, her wrinkled face relaxed. It's better than before. It looks like a human's room this time. Nam Joyun bashfully rubbed his neck. His mother walked to his fridge and put down her large luggage bag. It was filled with plastic bags full of side dishes. I brought stir-fried anchovies, pickled garlic stems, and others. They will all last a long time in the fridge so eat up. 
Don't eat instant noodles, okay? Live like an actual human being. I am eating decently. I'm an adult. Oh, really? I can clearly tell how you live without even seeing. You incompetent son of mine. His mother said with narrowed eyes before opening his fridge. Then she paused. There were a few side dishes in containers inside. What the heck? There's human food in the fridge. Where did they come from? Ah, those. Someone one I work with gave them to me. Nan Joyun said with a slight smile. At the same time, his mother discovered the small notes on the containers. Eat them. Don't starve. Is it a girl? It's a he. Her expectant face crumbled. She jumped up and slapped his back. I can't believe it. How sad did you look for a man to give another man side dishes? Slaps resounded for a long time in his small apartment. After calming down, his mother said. Still, I'm thankful. Bring him home one day. I'll cook meat. I'll ask. Nam Joyun nodded while stealthily rubbing his back. Sitting back down in front of the fridge and placing the side dishes in the fridge, his mother asked. You aren't going to do that movie you were planning on doing with that actor Jung Hyewon during the summer, right? I decided not to a long time ago because of some circumstances. Always with the circumstances. Why are there so many circumstances in this industry? His mother said clicking her tongue. Moving the side dish containers around in the fridge, she sighed. You, just stay here during Lunar New Year this time. Don't come home. Before Nam Joyun could reply, his mother quickly added. It's not because we're embarrassed. It's because of your father. Did something happen to him? Nam Joyun asked with a stiff expression. His mother hesitated, opening and closing her mouth a few times. Then she said. That's not it. Your father got together to drink with his siblings and made a mistake. He told them you were in a big movie. It seems he let it slip while drunk since those fellows were constantly asking what you were up to. That idiot. Alcohol is his enemy. His mother muttered under her breath before continuing. If you come home, they are probably going to pester you with questions and end up saying something unpleasant. There's no need to take the train all the way home to hear that. I'll pack some New Year's food for you so just stay in Seoul. His mother shut the fridge door and stood up. Breaking the short silence, Nam Joyan said. I am in a different movie. If there's no problem, ITLL be released in the summer. Good. If you didn't have your circumstances. Which theaters are going to play it? No matter how busy we are, we should watch it as a family. This time it should be playing in theaters across the country. His mother's eyes bulged. The country? Even down in the countryside? All of them? Probably. Oh my goodness. ISIS it as big as the summer movie you aren't doing anymore. Nam Joyun's lips opened slightly before closing. After a short moment of silence, he said. Once the movie is edited, once everything is certain it'll tell you then. Okay, good. That's probably better. Don't tell your father. If he gets his hopes up and is disapo. His mother caught herself. Nam Joyun lowered his eyes. I'm sorry. There's no need to be sorry. His mother slapped his back again. If you can't quit this anyways, just live doing what you love. It's fine as long as you eat. Nam Joyun smiled faintly at her blunt words. His mother rubbed his back as she grumbled. Still, I'm curious what kind of movie it is. I was about to get in my minivan like normal before I stopped. The world, which had been freezing not too long ago, had begun to thaw. The people who went around huddled, fully geared in parkas and scarves, looked a bit more relaxed. Their breaths were almost invisible in the air now. My phone in my pocket vibrated. It was Team Leader Park. Are you on your way to work? Yes, what is it? A life's main poster arrived. Ah. Royal Family's press release is also complete. We need to move at full throttle now. Time goes by very quickly. Every day passed as a blur and finally, the time had arrived. 
Spring. The season of harvest. Quite a few time skips in this chapter, surprised face. Chapter, 141. Two million. Two million for the first week. The SBE film CEO shouted while slamming the table. This is our goal. A few strands of wispy hair remained on his chin. He had lost so much weight that his eyes were sunken with large dark circles. He made people recall the zombies on the poster. The employees, who also struggled through the rigorous schedule for the past few months, were the same. Hollywood blockbusters are waiting like a shoal of piranhas. National movies opening on the same day are strong competitors as well. People don't wait long these days. We need to break through with the first week score or else. Our screen time would be taken by the shoal of piranhas. The project producer said with a frown. As if he just imagined it, the CEO's legs were shaking. Marketing is key, marketing. If we want to pull in as many people to watch it in the beginning, we need to pour all our efforts into marketing. We have been releasing press releases every day starting last week. The PR team employee, Kong Min Jong, said with a partly hoarse voice. We have S on buses, subways, and billboards as well. Our main trailer already has 4 million views. Good. How are the comments? The production team made an amazing trailer. There's no way the comments will be bad. The production producer blinked his sunken eyes as he smiled. We put our soul into it. Thanks to that, we've received comments like these. What? The trailer is everything. Since I've seen it, I probably don't need to watch the movie. Silence hung in the meeting room. Soon, a suppressed laugh escaped. As though it was infectious, laughter quickly spread throughout the room. The zombie employees all had meaningful expressions on their faces as they laughed. The trailer is everything. They don't even know how much we didn't show. Although that was what we were going for, I want to tell them. I wonder what their reactions will be once they see the movie. I know, right? I want to invite them all to the preview. Ah, uh, the reporters were curious about that. Kong Min Jong twirled her pen as she said. They were asking why we were offering so many free previews. They were wondering if we weren't worried that our opening score will be negatively affected by word of mouth. Only those who aren't confident in their work worry about that. The project producer snorted. That's what I told them. That we were doing it on purpose to get some word of mouth marketing. Kong Min Jong's red lips curled upwards. The previews will be the fuse. Once word of mouth spreads, we'll boost our marketing efforts and bring up the sales for the premiere. The people who watched in on opening day will spread it through word of mouth again. ITLL snowball from there. How are the press and VIP preview preparations going? Kong Min Jong looked at the list of guests at the CEO's question and laughed. ITLL be as splendid as a film festival. We sent tons of invitations to director Choi Sung Won's personal connections and friends of our cast. Even if only half of them attend, we'll be all over entertainment news columns. After informing them of a few top stars who would be attending, Kong Min Jong added. Neptune will be there, and Seo Ji Jun agreed to come as well. Chief Young Sun Woo said Hell talked to the leads at Royal Family today so if we're lucky Yoon Tae Young, Seo Young Kyo, and Im Ju Won could come too. Ah, uh, Royal Family starts this week, right? Today's its first broadcast. The CEO licked his lips. Well benefit if Lee Song -a becomes even more of a hot topic. I hope their ratings are great. I hope so but it won't be easy. Why? From the rumors, it seems the quality is good. China seems to be excited about it as well. The project is good, but they have bad luck with their competitors. Competitors? Kong Min Jong clicked her tongue. They'll probably have a rough night. Bastards! PBS's drama director swore. A chill smacked the inside of the director's office. The chief producer in charge of Royal Family, director Sung from Well Made Productions, writer Jang, and director Wu. They were all sighing with frozen faces. It was because of the ratings chart on the table. Two lines were highlighted. IBC's Benz after the crappy car episode 2. 15. 
8% national ratings. UBS's Afterlife Episode 16. 11. 8% national ratings. If you add those two together, their ratings exceed 27%. What do we do? I know, right? Why did you schedule things like this? Writer Jang said while brushing her hair to the side. The pearl earrings hanging from her ears shook violently. We needed to start at the same time. Don't you know that we'll be at a disadvantage if we start late? Drama performances are set after the fourth episode. Young viewers these days don't watch on air dates if they miss the previous episode. They wait to binge watch it after the drama ends. Writer Jang. I'm the director here. How could I not know this? If those immoral bastards didn't scheme, all three companies would have started new dramas at the same time. The director beat his chest. The chief producer quickly opened a bottle of water and handed it to the director. Having dealt with the enraged director the entire day, the chief producer said with an exhausted face. IBC feigned ignorance before suddenly getting the jump on us, and UBS suddenly extending their originally 16-episode series to 20 episodes. It seems they worked hard to compete against us. The chief producer cautiously said. It's not like we weren't doing anything either. We ended its fate a week early for Royal Family. You said you were planning on ending it early anyways because its ratings were only at 4%. It wasn't its fate but rather its dead one. If you're going to take credit for something, make it believable. The chief producer crumbled at Ryder Jang's harsh words. Director Wu, who had been silent for a while, scratched his beard as he said. Let's talk about this after our first episode airs. We marketed as much as we could, and there are viewers waiting for our drama. Is there a reason to be so negative already? Well, we can also increase our viewership through other channels as well. That's easy to say. Writer Jang said with the click of her tongue. IBC's crappy car. People are going crazy over how great the chemistry is between the male and female leads. They ended their previous episode at such a great cliffhanger too. Also, Afterlife is a genre-specific drama. Their viewers are extremely loyal so they probably won't go watch something else. If we can't get the ratings tonight, we're screwed. The mood in the room became even gloomier at Ryder Jang's words. Like a boat that was about to sink. Just then, director Sung from Wellmade Productions, who was monitoring IBC and UBS's Wednesday through Thursday drama reactions, put his tablet down. If we're really unlucky. He laughed bitterly as he said. Then we've made an amazing drama that will flop. I recalled the first night Cat Guardian Ghost aired. The staff and cast had gathered to watch the broadcast that time too. It was loud and full of anticipation. People were glancing at the clock with expectant faces. Alcohol glasses clinked endlessly. Meat cooked on the grill. And the cheers that erupted after they reported real-time ratings. I remembered how the drama's first broadcast was like a festival. Compared to that, this was the intensive care unit. Perhaps it would be a funeral in an hour. What is this all of sudden? The crappy car pretty much splashed crap on us. Why did they have to hit 15% ratings on their second episode? There wasn't anything to see. Don't public broadcast dramas take up at most 35% ratings these days? If IBC and UBS take 27% we really might have to start from the bottom. Damn it, I thought we would easily exceed 10% on our first night. The staff and employees who had gathered for the broadcast whispered to each other. Even the leads, Yoon Tae Young, CEO Young Kyo, and even Im Ju Won emptied their glasses with tense faces. The mood at the bar dropped below the ground, even reaching Earth's inner core. In fact, even the behind the scenes team that planned on filming the scene had placed their cameras on the ground and raised their beer glasses. The situation was just as frustrating as high our expectations and goals were. I was fiddling with my glass when something soft touched my shoulder. It was Lee Song has head. It seemed she was voraciously eating fried chicken moments ago, but she was now sleeping with her round forehead and cheek leaning against my shoulder. With a fork in her hand. She had been falling asleep on our way here, but it seems she reached her limit. She probably didn't have much time to sleep easy having to attend marketing events for both her movie and drama. 
They weren't filming anything for the behind-the-scenes clips, and there was still some time before the broadcast. I decided to let her sleep a bit and covered her with my coat. Chief Young, are you okay? Im Ju Won was chewing on a dried squid tentacle across from me. Me? Everyone's uneasy, yet it seems you and Sangha are completely fine. People's gazes slowly landed on me. That's true. Mr. Sun Wu's been quiet for a while now for some reason. Wow, is a mess. Sangha sleeping right now? While everyone's this anxious. She couldn't sleep properly for the past few days because of her busy schedule. People were astonished at my excuse. Still, she has nerves of steel. She can sleep easy because Chief Young isn't anxious. No, Mr. Sun Wu, aren't you worried? If our ratings aren't good, isn't your image as mid ass hand ruined? I know, right? Reporters and netizens are incredibly curious about what will happen. Maybe. Im Ju Won leaned his face closer. Do you foresee our ratings being good? Is that why you're so calm? If that's it, tell us. I might die from anxiety. No joke. Seriously. If you say that, I feel like you'll actually relax. At some point, people from other tables were staring at me as well. They urged my reply with sparkling eyes as though if I said that the drama would be a success, it actually would be. I didn't know when, but Lee Sangha had woken up and was looking at me while rubbing her drowsy eyes. Under their gazes, I wordlessly laughed. If I was honest. I was so nervous my mouth felt dry. I felt like I would dry out. It was my first time waiting in such frustration. I had some degree of confidence that next K-pop star and cat guardian ghost would be a success. But the future was unclear this time. I was able to stop Royal Family from being a bust by stopping Park Dojin from being picked as the lead, but that didn't ensure success for this drama. IBC and UBS's sudden scheduling change was a bolt out of the blue for me as well. It felt like someone swung a baseball bat at the back of my head. After hearing this news, I was hoping that I could see another future. Anything. However, there were no signs of that happening. Even though I looked calm on the outside, I was inwardly more nervous than anyone here. Damn it. If I could pay some price to see the future, I would have done it already. My cheeks tingled. People were staring at me. Lee Sangha was also looking at me with slowly closing eyes. After downing a glass of beer, I casually said. Well, we did everything we could. That's exactly why we're frustrated. Grumbles erupted all around me. Soon, the gazes on me moved towards the clock. 9.55. Royal Family's first episode would air in a few minutes. Appa, look at this. Lee Sangha tapped her phone a few times before showing me Neptune's official social media page. Yua. Waiting for royal family to air. Everyone, please wait with us. There was a picture with a caption that was undoubtedly written by M. C. O. Young. A picture of the girls gathered in the living, each holding a slice of pizza. Behind their gathered faces was a commercial running on PBS's channel. When I went on the entertainment section of the portal site, it was pouring with royal family related articles. This was the result of PBS's marketing team, Wellmade's PR agency and our WU's PR team holding nothing back. Neptune's picture was already posted in an article. Not only that, but there were also pictures of Sun Chai Young and Seo Jijun, who made cameo appearances. Even supportive comments on a live actor's social media accounts were picked up by reporters. It looks like everyone is waiting for it to air. Lee Sangha said while stabbing her fork in a chicken drumstick. She looked no different from normal. Like me. What was she actually thinking? Sangha, aren't you worried about the ratings? We did everything we could like Appa said. She replied as she offered the chicken to me. And our luck is good. I think our ratings will be good. Our luck is good. When our luck couldn't be any worse. Lee Sangha looked around before whispering in my ear. I think I slept for a long time, but there's still a drumstick remaining. Then she pointed her fork at me urging me to eat it. I unknowingly began laughing. It was so ridiculous. Lee Sangha laughed along with me. 
unconcerned whether people would think we were crazy, we laughed for a long time. I hoped everything would go well. Really. Unlike in the past when things didn't work out no matter how hard Lee Songa tried, I hoped that she would be rewarded with great ratings. I wished that the future I had yet to see was something like that. Just as I thought this. Huh. Why is crappy car starting already? Someone exclaimed in a flustered voice. PBS was still running their commercials, yet IBC was already at their title screen. The text third episode appeared on a black screen then the drama began right away. With a scene of the male and female leads running towards each other and kissing. They hugged each other as they crashed into the fridge, then the table. Plates and glasses were being shattered as they passionately kissed. This is supposed to be a romantic comedy. Why are the leads kissing on the third episode? Tongue. I think I just saw Tongue. Isn't this worth reporting to the KCC too? The audio director holding the remote quickly changed the channel. The female lead on UBS's channel was wailing. A collapsed body spilling blood could be seen on the side. Are they kidding me? God damn it. Just what are they pulling here? While angry voices erupted out, writer Jangs drearily said. They want a fight. The TV stopped at PBS's channel. Royal Family's first scene was playing. Ratings. What ratings did it start with? Writer Jang shouted. The production assistant, who already had his phone to his ear, raised his finger to his lips to shush us. The bar became so quiet one could hear a needle drop. Soon, the assistant opened his lips. Chapter, 142. 3%. I felt stuffy. No. 8%. I could breathe. It wasn't just me. Everyone gasped. An 8% start was okay. Considering the number of viewers that would tune in within the hour, we should be able to hit double digits at least. From there, we could slowly gnaw away at other broadcasting companies' dramas. 6%. 6 like 666. 1 huh. 11%. Hey, you 666 bastard. What are you saying? Dried squid, peanuts, and curses were thrown at the man. Someone took the lead and shouted. Do you want to see someone die of anxiety? The master control room is really noisy right now. I can't hear them well. So what is it? 11%. Hey, listen properly. It is 11%. The chaotic commotion in the bar died down. What did you say? 11%. 1 1. The production assistant shouted. The real time graph is sharply increasing. Royal Family 14. 1%. It overtook Crappy Car's falling ratings to take first place. Breaking its own record, Royal Family second episode 16% ratings. Thanks to the star-studded cast. 20 million viewers tune in during Royal Family. Royal Family, about to hit 20% by its fourth episode. A frightening rise. It's plastered on the newspaper columns again. There wasn't a drama with 20% ratings for a while now. The drama department is excited. PBS's cafeteria. The broadcasting team employees walked while continuing to talk. The entertainment department is making a fuss, telling us to get the royal family cast to appear on our show. Then our program probably won't even be able to bring it up. Oh ho ho, isn't that Chief Young Sun Woo? Right? The youngest writer pointed to the other side. It seemed like they had just finished eating as two men were walking towards them whilst having a friendly conversation. One was the chief producer of the drama department while the other was Chief Young, who came up quite a bit in the news. The second writer poked the producer's side. Producer. Lee Songa, get us Lee Songa. Ah, uh, just call them. The producer shirked away, but the writers pushed his back. We were already rejected a hundred times on the phone. They might make an exception for you. The entertainment producers help their programs with casting through their connections. You said that you did a program with Neptune when they were still unknown. No, that's. Chief Young Sun Woo. The second writer quickly raised her hand. 
Seeing him personally, Chief Yun Sun Wu seemed quite gentle despite his outer appearance. However, he was quick to refuse. I'm sorry. We don't even have enough time to sleep. Yeah, our international star Lee Sangha is busy these days. The chief producer patted Chief Yun Sun Wu's shoulder. Chief, we heard you work on a program with our producer. Chief Yun Sun Wu stared at the producer. The producer's eyes trembled like there was an earthquake like he had something to hide. Soon, Chief Yun Sun Wu opened his mouth. We did. It's been a while, producer. Uh, Chief Yun. I'm sorry about the past. That time, there was so much rain. It's fine. Even though we were cut from the live broadcast, the video of them rehearsing in the rain and Sangha falling helped improve their image. The mood became strange. Including the chief producer and the second writer, the broadcasting team employees simply blinked as they listened to their conversation. Ah, uh, th that's right. In the end, it was helpful. The producer stated awkwardly. The concept we're preparing is international stars. ITLLB. I'm sorry, we are simply too busy right now. Chief Yun Sun Wu said with a smile. A day, no, can't you even make room for half a day? Yes. There are schedules that were set months ago so we can't change them. Uh, if you're upset about what happened. No, that's all in the past. Still smiling, Chief Yun Sun Wu waved his hand and said goodbye before walking away. His refusal was without fault, but it left a strange icky feeling. The chief producer clicked his tongue and walked away with him. The writers whispered quietly next to the red-faced producer. The one you both worked on was that campaign broadcast. The one where Neptune overexerted themselves in the rain and that was criticized as the broadcasting company abusing their power. I would have rejected if I was Chief Young as well. The producer kicked the floor. He was all humble back when he was a road manager, yet he's changed because he's some big shot now, huh? He's so full of himself because everything he does ends up in a success. Someone like him needs to fail horribly one day. That person's next project was Royal Family. The one with 20% ratings. When the second writer gave him a pitying look, the producer shouted. There's that movie. I hope that flops horribly. Young Dumpo M.A. Cinema. It was bustling with photographers, cameramen, and security guards in front of the VIP screening photo wall. A commotion even louder than when other celebrities passed by broke out. Uh, uh, the cast of Royal Family have arrived. Yoon Tae Young and Im Ju Won. Only CEO Young Kyo isn't here. Fingers were already rapidly tapping on their laptops. Articles went up within minutes. Even during this busy time, the royal family cast shows their loyalty, but where is Seo Yunkyo? The photographers continued to press the shutter even after the two men had left the photo wall. Chief Yung Sun Wu, who came out to greet them, led them into the theater. Please wait. Could we get a five minute? An entertainment reporter, who rushed with his press card stretched out, was bounced away by a security guard. Other reporters, who were half worried, half expectant that the reporter got an exclusive interview, turned their gazes. Soon, Young Sun Wu's picture was framed on the portal site. Whatever he picks is a success. Chief Young Sun Wu of WU, is it luck or skill? When will Chief Young Sun Wu's divine choices end? Showdown at Alive. I think there'll be a ton of newsworthy stuff if we get close to Chief Young. He used to come out to get togethers in the past but he doesn't show up anymore. Why is it harder to have a couple drink with a chief than a director? Who is it? Park Wujong of G Today. Apparently, they became close while he was still a road manager and now she's hit jackpot. Why can't I have that much luck? Who would have known Young Sun Wu and Lee Sangha would become this big in two years? The reporters sighed, consoling their regrets. While they were talking, celebrities attending the screening were posted on portal sites as if showing off a live's large scale. Their outfits, body, makeup, and even actions were dissected and filled the entertainment column. It's Neptune. Flashes erupted simultaneously. Neptune, without Lee Sangha, were walking up to the photo wall. When Im Seo Young, who had her hair done up, 
waved her hand, the spectators shouted like they were at a consolation performance. They all came. I guess they are close. Since Lee Song has the only one who blew up, it's about time for some bad rumors to spread, isn't it? Well, if you compare to when they were unknown two years ago, they blew up too. Lee Taehee's OST Song 2 is first on the charts, and Im Seo Young and LJ are regular members on an entertainment program and host their own radio show. I heard they were preparing for their next album. Will things fall apart if that fails? All Neptune members attending the Alive screening. Confirmed loyalty idols. Lee Taehee, whose royal family OST swept through the charts on first place, appeared for the first time in a while. Chief Young Sun Woo appeared again and brought them inside. The same reporter came rushing forward for an interview, but he was bounced away by the same security guard. The returning reporter huffed while saying, Just you wait. If the movie screening reactions aren't good, he'll write a hundred articles criticizing it. Once the media movie screening ended, social media, movie, and entertainment communities posted their reviews. Finally, a not embarrassing Korean zombie movie appears. Park Bumte 3 Scene While it's a feel-good movie with tons to see, it mixed in observations of the cruel nature of human society without it going stale. Looking good. Shin Boyang Corsine At first, I only saw the actors rather than the background, but I became completely absorbed by the movie at some point. All the top actors on the poster are amazing. However, the scene stealer was elsewhere. Oh Hyunjin Film Magazine. I thought there would nothing to eat at this rumored feast, but I hope people who have the same thoughts as me would go watch it. I am fully sated. There was even something that wasn't on the menu. That was amazing. Lee Seichel Movie Adventure. A large, slick van finally found a place to park. There were six people who got off the van and looked around the parking lot. For middle-aged men and women and a man in his twenties. Finally, there was a female student with short-cut hair and a Mickey Mouse hoodie. They were Nam Joyun's family who had come to see a live's paid screening. The glasses-wearing middle-aged man, Nam Joyun's father, approached the driver. Driver, thank you for bringing us all the way here. We were able to come here comfortably thanks to you, but I don't know if Joyun paid you for your troubles. Don't worry and please enjoy the movie. You should watch this movie too. My son is in it. Of course, I have already bought tickets. Nam Joyun's father grinned when he heard the driver's response. His cheeks became rosy like he had a few drinks. Nam Joyun's mother dragged him towards the elevator. Geez, you old man, act your age. Ah, uh, what's wrong? It's good if one more person comes to see. I bet people will watch even if you don't. It's the most popular one right now. The female student holding the elevator, Nam Joyun's cousin, said. Really? There are tons of internet articles about it too because famous actors are in it. Does Joyun have any articles? Nam Joyun's aunt, who was fixing her purple scarf, asked. This time, Nam Joyun's male cousin shook his head. Not one, mom. I already checked. That's not important. What's important is that he's appearing in such a big movie. Nam Joyun's father said resolutely. The higher up they went, the brighter his smile became. The tip of his dress shoes tapped the floor like he was listening to music. Nam Joyun's mother shook her head at the sight. Ha, this old man can't contain himself. What about it? You've never been so happy besides when you go out to drink. His father kept tapping his shoes while laughing despite her scolding. His mother's cheeks were slightly flushed as well. M.A. Cinema was on the eighth floor. As soon as the elevator doors opened, the heat inside overwhelmed them. The smell of nutty popcorn, buttered squid, and nachos filled their noses. The theater was bustling with hundreds of people. Nam Joyun's uncle looked around with a shocked face. Oh, it's crazy in here. We won't be able to find each other if we get lost. All theaters are like this, Dad. Nam Joyun's female cousin glared at him. Don't you dare answer your phone in the theaters. I'm going to act like I don't know you. Fine, throw your father away. They slowly walked in. 
Interviews at Alive's VIP screening played on the big screen on the wall. Alive's poster was displayed on the electronic ticketing system, and there was a huge display used to promote Alive. They could hear loud noises coming from the box office. It is impossible to buy Alive tickets on site, dear client. There are more than 400 seats, yet none are available. They were completely sold out through pre orders for this screening. They say they can't. Let's just see what we came here to watch. Ah, uh, I really wanted to see this. The media's reviews say that this is really good. Highly reviewed movies are usually no fun anyways. Each station was bustling with people trying to purchase tickets for the screening. People were chattering on while holding a few pamphlets from the display stand. Let's take a copy of the pamphlets. Look at Lee Kiwon. He's a feast for the eyes. They have pictures of the cast. Park Seryoung and Lee Songa look so awesome. Perking his ears, Nam Joyun's father went to the display stand. Looking around, he grabbed an Alive pamphlet. The cover was Alive's movie poster, and inside were individual posters for the cast. Carefully examining the pamphlet, Nam Joyun's father grabbed a couple more. Then his mother placed them in her purse. Brother-in-law, why are you taking them? I want to take some home to commemorate this day. I want to show our family members who didn't get to come today and show other people as well. At his words, Nam Joyun's aunt flipped through a pamphlet. I wish Nam Joyun's face would at least be on it, no matter how small. They normally only display famous actors on the poster. Hyung's not famous. Nam Joyun's male cousin shrugged. I didn't even see him in the trailer. What is his role? Is he a zombie? Maybe you couldn't recognize him because he was all dressed up. Then he'll tire my eyes out trying to look for him for two hours. You don't have to. A voice was abruptly heard behind them. Nam Joyun was carrying a box full of soda and popcorn with both hands. His father held his arm with a happy expression. Why did you send a car for us? We could have watched it at a theater nearby. They say this theater is good. And it's big. Nam Joyun said, smiling silently. Also, father, I'm not the one who sent the car. Appa. His female cousin, who was distracted by other things, quickly came over. Appa, did you go to the VIP screening too? Did you see the celebrities there? Some. You should have taken some pictures with them. Did you get close to Lee Kiwon or Park Seryoung on set? Not really. Ah, so frustrating. You need to get close when you have an opportunity like this. You don't know when you'll see them again. His female cousin stomped her feet in frustration. Then she suddenly became surprised. A man wearing a black knit sweater was approaching them. He was holding a box of popcorn and soda with one hand. And for some strange reason, he was wearing sunglasses. Coming up close, he respectfully greeted them. Hello, I am Young Sun Woo. When his family gave him blank stares, Nam Joyun walked next to him and introduced him. He's a Dongseng I work with. He's the one who sent the car. Last time, he. Is he the one who gave you side dishes last time? His mother's eyes shined. Nam Joyun bashfully nodded. His family greeted him with eyes of puzzlement and gratefulness. Even until then, Nam Joyun's female cousin was suspiciously staring at him. Excuse me, why are you wearing sunglasses indoors? Ah, because people might recognize me. They'll take them off when we're inside. The man said with a slight smile. Are you a celebrity? No. Who would recognize you when you're not even a celebrate, huh? Young Sun Wu. Are you a manager? She asked as though she was going to rush over to him. The man lowered his sunglasses a bit. His cold eyes curved into a smile. That's right. Wow. Oh my god. Shu, people might recognize me. Nam Joyun's two cousins rushed over to Young Sun Wu and whispered. Are you close with our Appa? Joyun Appa, you seem like an actor now. Are you really Lee Song as manager? Did Lee Songa come here too? The more of a fuss they made, the more lost the adults' expressions became. Why are you like that? 
And, he's a hundred times more famous than Joyun Appa. He's famous. He's Lee Song has manager. Why you saw him on TV? He does seem familiar. Nam Joyun's father leaned closer and examined Young Sun Wu's face. Then Nam Joyun's mother slapped him on the back. Why are you staring at him? You're making him nervous. Ah, I'm just surprised Joyun has a famous Dongsen. Not long from now, Hyun will be much more famous than me. Young Sun Wu said, his lips curling upwards. A hundred times more. Eh. Joyun Appa has been an unknown actor for ten years now, you know. There are hundreds of people here, yet none of them recognize him. His female cousin said without a hint of expectation. Nam Joyun's family had similar expressions. Even Nam Joyun didn't have any reaction. The ones who actually seriously listened to Young Sun Wu's words were Nam Joyun's mother and father. Soon, Young Sun Wu looked back at the theater entrance. People were pouring in. I think it's going to start soon. Shall we go in? Chapter 143 Hey, it looks like the alive screening is over. The people lined up for the snack bar turned their gazes. Noises began leaking from the silent alive screening theater. If they could hear noisy shouts outside, then they could guess how much a commotion there was inside. A man who paid for his popcorn brought his girlfriend over to the theater entrance. Let's see the people leaving. I'm curious. Can you tell from the people leaving? You can tell whether a movie was fun or boring from the audience's reaction. Other people followed suit and began glancing at the entrance, even the employees popping popcorn and pouring drinks. A Korean blockbuster that was praised by reviewers and others in the industry, the amount of interest in Alive was quite high. I bet my hand that the audience didn't like it. A man wearing glasses said while grabbing some popcorn from his friend. Reviewers said it was good so who are you to say that it's bad? That's the problem. Reviewers hyped it up too much. The audience must have watched it expecting a Hollywood zombie movie, but that means they'll be 100% disappointed. You need to watch it thinking, this is good for a Korean movie. Alive also had a huge budget though. What are they going to do with 30 billion won? Hollywood blockbusters spend hundreds of billion won. Uh, then they might actually be Dissa. He was cut off by the commotion. Viewers poured out from the theater entrance. Those waiting outside examined their faces. It was strange. There was some with serious expressions and others with despondent expressions. Either way, it was clear that there was a lot to talk about regarding this movie. The viewers began chatting with each other. I checked my phone three times at the end. To check the time. Me too. I was wondering when it would end. Was the movie boring? The people around them perked their ears. I checked thinking only an hour had passed but it was almost over. I thought I was seeing things. The last 30 minutes passed by like it was 3 minutes. 150 minutes just passed by like that. Crazy. I already want to go back in and watch it all over again. Is this normal? I thought the same as soon as it ended. I need to watch it again. The people eavesdropping on their conversation exchanged looks. They seem to like it. Cut your hand off, man. The man who bent his hand that the viewers wouldn't like it coughed. With an incredibly curious expression, he mumbled. How did they make the movie for people to react like this? Nam Joyun's family was amongst the mass exodus of alive viewers. They didn't say a word even though the movie had ended. With dazed expressions, they simply walked while staring at the backs of people in front of them as though they were firmly entranced by something. Suddenly, Nam Joyun's father looked beside him. Women were chatting. Who is it? Does his name not appear? Search for Alive's crazy bastard. Hold on. I'm searching her, it looks like other people who watched the movie are looking too. There are posts wondering who the crazy bastard who threw the kid is. He. It's here. Under movie information, Nam Joyun. The moment she shouted his name, Nam Joyun's family flinched. Light returned to their dazed eyes. His profile picture looks completely normal. His crazy guy acting in the movie was amazing though. 
Ah, he's a villain yet I was completely absorbed whenever he appeared on screen. His voice was great too. Ah, it looks like he's the one reviewers have been calling the scene stealer and new menu item. His first appearance was so thrilling it made my heart race. It's my first time seeing him. Was he in plays before? I bet he'll become popular with this, right? Hiccup. A strange noise cut in. Intermixed with suppressed sobs. Nam Joyun's father turned around. Dear, are you crying? Nam Joyun's mother shook her lowered head. However, the hiccups were undoubtedly coming from her. When gazes began to gather on her, she hastily wiped her eyes with her sleeves. Are you seeing things? Who's crying? You are. You said I wasn't acting my age before. Joyun, your mother is crying. I am not. My eyes are just dry from staring at the screen for so long. His mother slapped his father's back. Yet, despite her words, her eyes were pooling with tears. Nam Joyun, who was throwing out the popcorn and sodas, came over with widened eyes. Are you okay? I'm fine. Fine, of course, I am. When she nodded, the tears pooling in her eyes fell. That was the start. Her dripping tears began to flow like a faucet. Her suppressed sobs and hiccups were mixed in as well. Nam Joyun's teasing father was so shocked he shut his mouth. However, the one who was most surprised by this was the person herself. Ah, why am I like this all of a sudden? She tried keeping her eyes open and even covering them with her palms. They were futile attempts. A couple standing in front of the entrance mumbled. I think the movie is sad. That person's sobbing. What the heck? Is it like a melodrama? I can't watch movies that make you cry. Should we not watch it? It seemed Nam Joyun's mother heard this even while trying to stop her tears as she hurriedly waved her hands. No, this isn't a sad movie. You can watch it. Please watch it. That's right. There are almost no sad parts. The women who were talking about Nam Joyun supported her claim. They were about to throw out their popcorn and perfectly fine napkins when someone asked. Those napkins. If you're not going to use them, could I? Ah, uh, yes. Here you go. One of the women turned around to hand it to the person. Then her eyes met. The same face she saw on the screen and profile picture. Huh. Yes. The woman's eyes bulged. At the same time, she screamed so loudly that the viewers, who continued to walk only looking in front of them, stopped in their steps from the surprise. Hey, are you crazy? Why are you? Her friend's mouth gaped when she saw Nam Joyun's face. Her trembling fingers repeatedly pointed at him. It only took a moment for the other viewers to recognize his face as well. A huge commotion erupted at the theater entrance. Hey, hey, it's him, right? The crazy bastard, I mean, man who threw the kid in the movie. Why is the actor here? Huh? The heck? Oh my god. Did he come to see the movie with his family? SH should I ask for an autograph? People began to gather around Nam Joyun's family. However, they hesitated, not rushing over to him. It wasn't because he was a celebrity. It was because his cruel character in the movie was still fresh in their minds. This was only for a moment. People began to rush towards Nam Joyun like a swarm of zombies. Please rest here in the staff room before leaving through the emergency exit. Thank you for helping us, Mr. Manager. Young Sun Wu said while brushing his sweat-soaked hair aside. The cinema manager looked at his bare face with awe before hastily waving his hands. This is protocol when actors come to greet people on stage. But. The manager revealed what was in his hands. It was a lives poster. If it's okay, could I ask for an autograph? Ah, uh, yes, of course. If it's okay, could we take a picture? The manager left in a happy mood after receiving Nam Joyun's autograph and taking a picture with him. Only Young Sun Wu and Nam Joyun's family remained in the room. They were all trying to catch their breaths. Nam Joyun's family slumped down with dazed expressions like people that were pushed away during a 50% surprise sale event. 
His female cousin's hair, whose small figure was buried among the swarms of people, was a complete mess, and his mother's tears were no longer seen. The first one to regain his senses was Nam Joyan's male cousin. Wow, wow, what the heck? Just what's going on? Is this a dream? Soon, Nam Joyan's aunt and uncle joined in. Oh my god. I don't even remember what happened in the movie. I just remember Joyan's face. Is Joyan going to be famous now? Brother-in-law and sister-in-law, it looks like you don't need to worry any longer. If he becomes famous, then will he appear on morning dramas? Not morning dramas, entertainment shows. Appa might appear on entertainment shows. He might even hold fan meetings. If Joyan Appa becomes famous, what should I do? What do you need to do if Young's the one becoming famous? Photos of celebrities' families pop up on the internet too. Should I get double eyelid surgery? What a joke. Brother-in-law. Should we set up another date with father-in-law and mother-in-law and the others? Joyun appeared a lot so we should all go watch it together. Nam Joyun's parents slowly came to their senses once their relatives began chatting excitedly. Nam Joyun's father slapped his knee as he shouted. That's it. Let's buy a hundred tickets. You can't show mother and father. They might faint from shock if they watch it. That's true. I was also frightened when Joyun threw that child. Ahu, Hyung really looked insane. You were scarier than the zombies. His family chattered on while holding him. The person in question, Nam Joyun, was silent, yet the faces around him were dyed red in excitement. Nam Joyun's father's shoulders hopped up and down like a drunk's. Young Sun Wu leaned against the door and watched. Nam Joyun's mother carefully approached him. Her gaze was filled with gratefulness before the movie began, but she now looked like she was looking at her benefactor. Blinking her still teary eyes, his mother said. I forgot to ask with all the commotion before, but you are. I am Young Sun Wu. Please feel free to speak casually. A smile hung on his cold face. Okay, then, are you Joyun's manager? Immediately, his female cousin joined in. Auntie, this appa is Lee Song has manager. I am. Young Sun Wu replied while his gaze met Nam Joyun's, who was surrounded by his family. I am Hyung's manager. The commotion continued even as they went down the emergency exit. Nam Joyun's family was already planning their fourth movie watching event. At this rate, they would hand out movie tickets like wedding invitations. Someone placed their hand on Young Sun Wu's shoulder. It was Nam Joyun. Thank you. For making this all happen. It was a quiet voice, but Nam Joyun's always plain face clearly looked moved. Why are you acting like it's all over? This is only the beginning. Young Sun Wu said while putting on his sunglasses again. It's going to get even crazier from now on. To the point where today's experience isn't even a preview. First, I'm trying to work out a good contract for you. Ah, uh, I am thinking about having you do an interview or appear on an entertainment show, but if there's anything you don't like, then let me know. Just let me know. What I have to do. He said. I'll do anything you tell me to. Young Sun Wu stopped in his steps. You can't say that so lightly, Young. You don't know what he'll tell you to do in the future. Anything is fine. What if I got you some weird entertainment program? Young Sun Wu said as his lips curled into a crooked smile. It wasn't clear if he was joking or not. However, Nam Joyun smiled faintly as he walked ahead of him. Then he joined his noisy family. Young Sun Wu began walking again. A strange smile hung on his lips. The unknown actor, Mr. Nam Joyun, who appeared on Alive. Is he from your company, team leader? The voice on the other end seemed disappointed. If you had such a good rookie, you should have let me know. Everyone's clamoring to find a fresh face since this face looks like that one. Team leader, did Mr. Nam Joyun in talks with other projects for his next work? The team 2 leader calmly ended his phone call with the director. Then he threw his phone. His phone smashed into the wall with a loud crash before rolling on the floor. Waiting in the side, Chief Joe held his breath. This is the third one today. 
Pardon. This is the third call asking about Nam Joyun today. If they are calling me, then the PR team must be swamped with them. The team two leader swore as he slumped into his chair. Chief Joe watched his expression as he said. He's just a passing breeze. You know how people overreact. Because people are so loud, talking about Nam Joyun this, Nam Joyun that. They look at me like I'm blind. I can't even go outside the office because it's so embarrassing. Once Inho's movie is released, no one will doubt your eye. His project will undoubtedly be a success, but he's a natural when you see him acting on set. The Team 2 leader frowned slightly at the mention of Song Inho's name. Of course. I'm the one who picked him. Director Yoon didn't seem happy because we pushed out the actor already confirmed for Inho's part at first, but now he can't help but acknowledge his skills. I'm going to make Inho a top star for sure. So much that Nam Joyun can't even compare to him. You watch out for Inho too. Dowan became like that because he couldn't control his lower half, and Chai Young causes a fuss whenever she's bored. Jijun used to be obedient before, but now he won't listen to a word I say. We need to keep Inho on the right path from the beginning. He'll keep an eye out. The Team 2 leader let out an unpleasant sigh. But how's it going with Nam Joyun's contract? Young Sun Wu and the Team 3 leader seem to be discussing conditions in the director's office. It seems Young Sun Wu considers Nam Joyun as his actor. That bastard, is he doing his own work properly to be working on other things? The Team 2 leader said, raising his brow. That is Lee Song has popularity is rising thanks to her drama and movie. How about Neptune? Neptune. Lee tae is doing well since the drama OST became a hit. Their previous mini-album was a double jackpot so the audio recording team wants her to write the title track for their next album. Im Seo Young and LJ are appearing on shows. Although they are a hot topic, their ratings seem to be good. No matter how good his luck is, there's no way everyone under him is doing well. Investigate in detail. Check if there really aren't any problems. The Team 2 leader with an insidious look. Someone hastily knocked on his door and entered. It was Song Inho. Anyone would admire his looks after being carefully taken care of over the past few months. However, his previously youthful, clear eyes were now gloomy like a swamp. Team leader, I think my schedule for tomorrow has changed sudden. The independent film schedule. The Team 2 leader frowned. I told them to change it because director Yoon wanted to move his schedule to tomorrow. Tomorrow's supposed to be a location shoot. It's a place that they had a hard time getting so if we can't shoot it. I told Chief Joe to adjust the independent film schedule so you don't have to worry and just focus on tomorrow's shoot. They keep facing setbacks because of me, yet again. Song Inho. This is why I told you not to do the independent film. Team Leader. Song Inho sounded desperate. He looked at Chief Joe, asking for help, but Chief Joe simply shook his head as if saying the team leader's words were correct. The team two leader, who had clicked his tongue in displeasure, attempted to console him. Do you know how hard it was to get you cast in Director Yoon's project? Can't you see which one is more important? If I didn't see potential in you, I wouldn't be here saying all this. How can I leave someone destined for higher heights be held back by something like this? The Team 2 leader added in a resolute voice. Just do as you're told. Then he'll give you a brilliant debut with you winning the Rookie Award. Seo Jijun and Chief Lee Banjun Leisure walk down the hall with a thick scenario in their hands. Hyung, how about we show this scenario to Chief Young? Chief Lee Banjun frowned. You bastard, don't you trust me? No. It's not like I don't trust you, just. I already showed him. We decided to talk after he reads it. Chief Lee Bun Jun said while sticking out his belly. Moved, Seo Ji Jun wrapped his arm around Chief Lee Bun Jun's round shoulders. Ah, uh, really? What would I have done if you weren't my manager? Without you, I'm trash. You know that, right? Don't just say that, mention me in your interviews. Cracking up, they arrived at the Team 2 leader's office. A frustrated shout erupted from the office. It was the Team 2 leader. 
Chief Li Banjun quickly took his hand off the knob and backed away. Seo Jijun did the same. They exchanged glances, agreeing that now was not the time, and turned around. Suddenly, the door burst open, and Song Inho left with a stiff face. Hello, Sun Bei. Chief Li. Uh, yeah. Song Inho momentarily looked at Seo Jijun and Chief Li Banjun then bowed and left. His handsome figure seemed to falter for some reason. Chief Li Banjun clicked his tongue in pity. It seems they fought again. I wonder if they might push him over the edge at this rate. Makes me think of the past. I might have been depressed without you back when I was a rookie. But it seems the team leader is more hysteric than usual. Is he experiencing menopause? It's because of Chief Yong. There's a lot hanging on their battle. There are quite a few actors in the company who are interested in him since everything he works on is a success. It makes sense since a manager who gets you hits is the best for actors. The team leader must be annoyed by this as well. Chief Li Banjun glanced at the shut door. In my opinion, this is the calm before the storm. I bet they'll properly duke it out soon. The team leader and Chief Yong. No matter how great things are going for Chief Yong, will it even be a fight? Just look at the number of actors the team leader had brought on. Chief Yong can't compare to his influence. Seo Jijun rubbed his sharp chin. Well, I guess I should at least take Chief Yong's side. I don't know about that. I might have thought the same as you in the past. Chief Li Ban Jun crossed his arms and continued. The more I see Yong Sun Wu, the more I feel like he's not some pushover either. Song Inho brought his phone to his ear again. It still continued to only ring. Placing his phone down, he continued to walk down the hallway. Each step seemed heavy like he had just got out of the water. After arriving in front of the door, he raised his hand. He hesitated for a moment before ringing the doorbell. Like his phone, there was no answer. Song Inho leaned against the wall and slumped down. Just then, the door creaked open. A man who had a towel over his wet hair as though he had just gotten out of a shower looked out. Song Inho jumped to his feet as soon as he saw him. His tears, which he held back by biting his lips, began to fall. Chief Young I feel like I'm suffocating. Young Sun Wu patted Song Inho's trembling shoulders. Song Inho collapsed into his embrace. Chapter 144 His wobbling head pressed against the beer bottle. Seeing Seo Jijun Sunbei and Chief Li stick together like that. Made you envious? That's right. I was so envious I felt like I would cry. I feel like I'm suffocating whenever I go meet the team leader. My team leader. Then my homeroom teacher in my last year of high school. Your team leader is scarier. How do you know me so well? Can you hear my thoughts? Yeah. Since you've been saying the same thing over and over again. Looking at the time, it was getting late. It had already been an hour since Song Yinho has been crawling around on my rug. He's even started rolling on it now. I couldn't even get off my sofa with him flailing his long limbs around. Song Yinho rolled over to me and grabbed my ankle. He looked up at me like a puppy and mumbled. I wish you were my manager. Something surged inside me. I barely managed to contain it. I shook him off, but he came back and held my ankle again like it was a lifeline. I stood still as I watched him go on and on about me being his manager in a teary voice. It felt like a trial whenever I saw him. It started ever since he handed me the independent film scenario that day. Looking back, I had struggled with temptation so much that it was a wonder that I could hold back. My throat felt like it was burning. I had thought about taking it for myself countless times. Since he was also filming the movie the Team 2 leader had got for him, it was unknown which movie Song Inho got an award for, but the independent film had seemed like an unscratched lotto ticket at that time. If I wasn't so cautious that I might stray onto the wrong path and become a piece of trash. If I hadn't become confident in Nam Joyeun and Lee Song has success after seeing them try so hard. I might have snatched that scenario away. I was that tempted. After overcoming the temptation of the scenario, I was now tempted in the actor known as Song Inho. The result of which was in front of me right now. 
I lured him in. I made it so that he would say, I wish Young was my manager, out of his own volition. I was waiting for the right moment. If I wanted, I could do it right now. I could snatch the actor, Song Inho, from the Team 2 leader. However, a thought kept crossing my mind. Song Inho was troubled because of the Team 2 leader. And the fact that the Team 2 leader acted against Nam Joyun in the shadows. The strained relationship between the Team 2 leader and me. What would I think if I didn't have these circumstances that enhance my temptation? Would I still be able to snatch Song Inho for myself? Hyung, I have a shoot tomorrow. It'll wake you up early so sleep. Don't throw up after rolling around everywhere. I want to work with you. Soon. I unconsciously mumbled just as my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone. I pushed Song Yinho to the side and opened the door. The first thing I saw was a helmet. A helmet the size of a rice cooker that race car drivers would wear. Seeing that the person's leather pants wrapped around their long, slender legs, it was a woman. Her gloved hand was holding an almost bursting convenience store bag. The woman held the bag out. Bottles clinked inside. It's a bribe. The moment I thought her voice was familiar, she flipped up her helmet visor. Lee Taehee's exhausted face was revealed underneath. Did you come alone? How did you get here? I rode the scooter. Lee Taehee said while shaking her helmet. Scooter. It's C.O. Young's. I made sure to be careful of any reporters along the way. I even disguised myself with LJ's clothes. No, reporters aside, it's good that you came here in one piece. Truly. I led Lee Taehee to the sofa and asked. If you needed something, you should have called. And what's all this alcohol? Bribe? I have a request. Lee Taehee fumbled through her leather pants. Then she stopped. What's that? Her gaze was locked on a curtain on the other side of the living room. To be precise, her gaze was locked onto Song Inho's feet, which were poking out from beneath the curtain. And here I thought he went to the bathroom. A thief? No. What are you doing in there? I pulled the curtain aside, and Song Inho slowly walked out. I thought the team leader had come to take me away. Are you some runaway slave? When I thought about the Team 2 leader bursting into my home, I felt nauseous with no need for alcohol. As soon as he came out of the curtain, Song Yin Ho got on his knees and greeted Lee Tae Hee before rolling around again. Lee Tae Hee just stared at him. Him being here is a secret. The situation is a bit complicated. Okay. And me being here is a secret as well. Especially to Songa. Yeah, okay. What is it you wanted to request? Lee Taehee handed me a USB drive. These are the songs I've been working on until now. The one for the full album? Yes. I made three songs, but I wanted you to listen to them first. While I was setting up my laptop, Lee Taehee placed the alcohol she had bought on top of the table. Then she cracked open a rice wine once I told her I would drive her home. Song Inho followed suit by bringing an empty beer bottle to his lips. What a sight. I inserted the USB drive. While I looked for the files, I asked. If it was a request like this, you could have asked me any time. Why did you come alone at night? The girls and even the company employees are all waiting for me to finish my songs. Once they are handed over to the audio and recording team and are approved, we'll start preparing for the album right away. That's why I wanted to hide it. Lee Taehee calmly replied. If you don't like it after listening to them, I wish you would remove them from the album. What? I turned around before playing her songs. Lee Taehee wiped her mouth after gulping down the rice wine. Neptune is fine right now. But I don't know if ITLL continue to be fine in the future. Did you hear some bad rumors? It has now been four years since Neptune debuted and there were a lot of discussions about what to do amongst the people up top. Lee Taehee, Im Seo Young, and LJ were all working hard to find their place, but Lee Sangha was just too far ahead. It was unfortunate, but at some point, some people began calling them Lee Songha's group. There's a limit to a one-man team. 
even teams that are like family to each other break up due to issues or business. That might happen to us if our next album flops. It needs to be a success, but I don't know if that'll be the case with my songs. So. Lee Taehee looked at me with eyes full of trust. Her gaze fell heavily on my shoulders. I hoped that you could listen to them first. To see how they are. I think this song will be a hit. It's the best song I've heard in my life. Song Inho admired when I played the first song. This, this is the song of my life. It's so good. Song Inho danced like an inflatable tube dancer with a beer bottle in hand when he heard the second song. On the third song, he teared up and began shouting Lee Taehee's name. Even with such a devoted fan, Lee Taehee didn't take her eyes off me while holding the rice wine bottle like she was going to crush it. Once the songs ended, the living room became silent. Lee Taehee waited a moment before asking. How were they? Hmm, let me wash my face first. Let's talk once I clear up my mind. I entered the bathroom with Lee Taehee's gaze still fixated on me. I turned on the faucet and walked in circled. I had no idea which song would be successful. To be honest, I had some confidence beforehand since Royal Family and Alive were heading toward success through my own judgment, not from seeing the future. I had thought that I had a decent discerning eye now. Damn it. I didn't know which of the three songs was the best. Thinking back, I was confident that Satellite would take first place because I had seen the future. What should I say to her? Should I tell her I didn't know? Although her gaze was full of firm belief, without a hint from the future, I was no different from one of those fortune tellers. The audio and recording team, who were experts at this stuff, and the Team 3 leader would know much more about this than me. The music director was the one who rightly predicted Lee Taehee's royal family OST would be a success. First, I should let Kim Hyunjo and other employees listen to her songs first. But, even if Lee Taehee's songs were chosen in the end, if the album flops. Lee Taehee's concerns weren't completely unfounded. Lee Sangha was definitely pulling Neptune up, but if the difference between her and the other members continued to grow like this, there was a likely chance some conflict would break out, whether it was within the team or in their fandom. Team 3 had multiple meetings regarding this exact issue. How could we make Neptune a more robust team? How could we increase the other members' presence in the group, instead of it becoming Lee Song has group? There was no doubt that their full album would either greatly improve or degrade their current situation. I would have no other qualms if I could see the future at a time like this. I held on to the cold sink and looked in the mirror. I saw a frowning face. I hadn't seen a future for Royal Family or Alive either. Can't you help me just this once? The tap closed. Lee Taehee and Song Yinho, who were both staring at the bathroom with bottles in hand, held their breaths. However, the tap began flowing again. They let out their breaths and exchanged glances. Um, Sunbei. Me. Song Yinho nodded his head in a big motion as he said. If the chief, I mean, Hyung says they aren't good, then are you really going to give up on them? It must have been hard to produce three songs. The success of the album is more important. Lee Taehee replied without hesitation. Song Yinho opened and closed his mouth before mumbling. Amazing. You must really trust him a lot. His judgment has never been wrong when making important decisions. Well, since you've seen him work all along. He'll also think something will be a success if he says it will. I showed him an independent film scenario before, and at that time, he said. Song Yinho stood up, a little tilted, as he attempted to imitate him. It looks really good to me. Enough that I want to steal it. Ah. Then he said that he would help out whenever I came upon any difficulties while filming. That's why I've been coming here in secret. My team leader hates him. ITLL be a big problem if he finds out. But if I just stay there, I feel like I'm going to suffocate. Song Yinho suddenly got up and flopped onto the sofa. So abruptly that Lee Taehee flinched. He snatched the cushion Lee Taehee was leaning against and hugged it tightly. I'm envious of Neptune Sunbae's and Nam Joyun Sunbae, who joined the company recently. I'm envious of all of you. 
I wish Young was my manager too. I can't even call him my manager. Song Yinho shouted while rolling on the rug. His eyes, which burned with fighting spirit, became teary again. Seeing this strange sight, Li Taehee laughed a little. If Songa learns about this, she'll order a ton of late night snacks. Pardon? No, you just made me think of someone. Li Taehee pointed to the bottles placed on the table. Stop crying and have a drink. You too, Sunbei. Soon, two bottles clink together. I hope we get to work together sometime. With Appa. I hope so too. Though it's an empty dream. It won't happen anyways. Song Yinho said with one hand holding the cushion and the other holding the bottle. Hyung is a chief, and the team leader is a team leader. You seem very busy these days, chief. A man with an easygoing appearance said as he entered carrying coffee. You must have no time now that both the movie and drama are huge hits. I can always make time for you no matter how busy I am. He was producer Choi Hong Sun, who cast him Seo Young and LJ as regular cast members on an IBC entertainment program. Familiar producers, production assistants, and writers entered the meeting room behind him. I received my cup of coffee while examining their expressions. They had suddenly called me saying that they needed to meet me urgently so I was worried the girls were being kicked off, but that didn't seem to be the case seeing as they weren't avoiding my gaze. What a relief. I would have had a tough time thinking about what to do if it was the worst case scenario. But what was the important thing you wanted to discuss? Ah, uh, that. It's about our spring restructuring. I almost poured steaming coffee down my throat. Something felt off. Why was he bringing that up? Was the program getting cancelled? No, it wasn't like their ratings were bad. Were they changing their members? Will something change during the restructuring? Something has to. Even though our program is constantly getting good ratings, we aren't very topical. The director keeps bringing that point up as well. After seeing my expression, the producer quickly added. Ah, C.O. Young and L.J. are really doing a good job. The other members are doing their best for the program as well, but we just aren't trendy. It's all because the production team's plans are lacking. He was being long-winded. The way the staff glanced at me made me feel uneasy. I thought about a few terms I could add in case they wanted to boot in C.O. Young and L.J. That's why we plan on changing the format and trying a long-term project. A long-term project? The producer's dark face abruptly leaned forward. And we were wondering if you could lend a hand with that. Chapter, 145 It was great that they weren't going to kick them off the show. But an entertainment show, huh? The two entertainment shows I appeared on briefly crossed my mind. My throat began to burn. Should I say it's like having a stress disorder after a trauma? Those experiences, especially the last one, left a lasting impression on my mind. I drank my coffee with a sour expression when producer Choi tried to calm my worries by saying. It's not a talk show. There aren't any missions or games like PBS's from now on, were. If we were planning something like that, we wouldn't call it a long-term project. It was neither a game or talk show. Then what? Writer Huang, the project proposal please. The main writer handed him the proposal as if she had been waiting for his signal. Good friends. The large program logo was the first thing to catch my eye. Then the subtitle below it. Web Drama Collab. Yes, there have been all sorts of collaborative projects in the entertainment industry until now. Chef Food Eating Collaboration, Collaborations with Sports Stars, a collaboration with singers for a concert. These all come up from time to time. That's true. That's why we want to try a web drama collaboration. Turning over the title page, the proposal was neatly organized into their objectives, methodology, details, and examples. I could immediately tell this wasn't something they suddenly came up with overnight. The producer supplemented my reading with explanations as I flipped through the proposal. The members will personally create their own one-episode web drama, and ITLL even be uploaded onto the web. The members will create their own. Ah, uh, of course, they have to ask professionals for help for things like directing, filming, and editing. 
We also plan on having them ask actors to make cameo appearances as well. The producer's eyes particularly shined when he mentioned cameo appearances. Producer Choi continued. Our members are made up of comedians, idols, musical actors, and others so they'll be able to participate in the web drama in various ways. They may take up actual roles after learning a few things from actors making cameo appearances or even since the OST. That was true. If it was a success. I took my eyes off the proposal and asked. So why do you need me, a manager, for this project? Did they want me to ask Lee Sangha or other WU actors to make cameo appearances? As soon as I thought this, the main writer replied with a smile. We wanted to ask you to make a cameo appearance. For Sangha. No, you, Chief Young. I could sort of guess what kind of face I was making right now seeing as a crack appeared in the main writer's smile. It's a joke. Just a joke. It is, isn't it? I was surprised there. Same here. The main writer awkwardly placed her hand on her chest. It seems you really hate that idea. And here I was thinking that you had some aspirations to act. None at all. Ah, I just assumed due to your enthusiastic performance with M.S. Sun Chai Young during the first episode of Royal Family. I had a hard time because of that. I can't drink cocktails since that incident. The reactions from appearing on an entertainment show and a drama were completely different. After it aired, I received so many call and texts from my family, relatives, and even those bastards I call friends. It also spread online. Sometimes, a screenshot or gif would suddenly appear when I'm monitoring Neptune on the internet. Every time I saw it, it felt like space and time was crumbling. I couldn't do it again. We plan on allowing viewers to submit their own scenarios. Producer Choi went back to the point. The viewers? We think ITLL increase our chances at becoming trendy if viewer participation increases. We plan on inviting viewers to submit their own one-episode scenarios then showing them to our members and professionals to decide which ones to do. The main writer blinked in an exaggerated fashion and added. Would you help us with deciding? Royal Family passed 20% ratings. A hand slammed onto the table. The bottles on top shook dangerously. Damn it, I wrote 30 articles on this already. I'm sick and tired of it. Alive for me. I have to break down news releases their marketing team provides us into multiple articles. I sick and tired of it too. Are you trying to hold a candle to the sun? There are still people writing articles about it here. A reporter with sunken cheeks said. He was tapping non-stop on his laptop on his lap. The other reporters who had gathered in the street vendor to exchange information secretly took glances at his screen. You're not writing an exclusive, right? Let's not screw each other over now. What exclusive? I'm just copy-pasting a live's press release. Looking on social media, it seems someone was a complete scene stealer, but I didn't have the time to investigate so I'm just writing down the review from the screening. I have to write one about royal family after this. God damn it. Everyone seems to be writing about the same thing, huh? This just shows how incredible royal family and alive are. A female reporter said while gnawing on a piece of stir-fried cartilage. And Lee Sangha, who has her hands in both projects, is really amazing. No, that's not it. A thin man replied, pausing from writing his article. The truly amazing person is Chief Young Sun Wu. He's the one who chose both of them. This was an interesting topic for the reporters. The table instantly became noisy. Let's see. First, it's a fact that Next K-Star had such stellar ratings that it became a seasonal show. Nothing more to say about Cat Guardian Ghost. He also made Neptune's mini-album a hit. By pushing for Lee Tae-hee's song to boot. Ah, even entertainment shows. The New Year's special and Now, were. Both jumped up the real-time rankings when it aired. I almost rubbed my fingerprints off writing articles that time. Im Seo Young and LJ's entertainment show is also doing better than average. Royal Family is a mega hit. Alive is now a matter of whether or not 10 million people will see it. 
There were probably a ton of reporters ready to knock him down a peg if either one of them flopped, but they can't say anything now. Every time someone made a point, the reporters made exhausted faces. Incredible. He's had no failures so far. Just what's his secret? I'm so curious. I actually looked into it a little. A female reporter with thick makeup joined in. Everyone's gazes landed on her. I normally don't believe in superstitions, but I went to see a shaman to write an article about Chief Young. He said that Chief Young is definitely a head shaman. Apparently, it hasn't been long since he's been blessed so he has contact with the gods or something. Did you actually put that in an article? I did. And people called me a trash journalist for it. The other reporters chuckled. If he could see what projects will be a success, then why would he work in this industry? He would go straight to Hollywood. WU have been sending actors to Hollywood, but they've been getting nowhere for years. But then what is his secret? Is it really luck? Or he has a disgustingly sharp eye for things. But whether it's luck or skill, how does he cope with all this pressure? The thin man said with a frown. Since they've seen the results with their own eyes, WU must at least hear his opinion on things. As for Neptune, they must have complete trust in him. Probably. There are also a lot of people who blindly have high hopes, calling him mid-ass hand, and conversely, there are a ton of people waiting for him to fail. Damn it, if I was him, I probably won't even be able to go to the bathroom from all the pressure. Especially now I bet. Because of Neptune's next full album. The female reporter said while rubbing her lips. From what I know, Neptune's fandom is at a critical state. Neptune. Hey, is Neptune on standby? The producer grabbed a floor director and asked after coming out of the broadcasting van. Yes, everyone's on standby except for Lee Sangha. How can you forget about Lee Sangha? She's the highlight. A ton of people are going to be watching the live broadcast because we wrote her name in huge letters in the preview, and people gathering in the square right now have been chanting Lee Sangha's name. ITLL be a huge problem if she's not there. They said that they'll come here right away as soon as they arrive in Incheon Airport. They didn't get a wink of sleep due to their schedule in China and are coming here without rest. Why did the writers set such a tight schedule? It's because we barely managed to get even this when Neptune's company kept refusing. Still, the director was really happy that we were able to get Neptune, Lee Sangha on the list. Ah, damn it. Call them again and ask how much longer they'll take. After the producer and floor director went their separate ways, a university student with a buzz cut moved from behind the broadcasting van. The place was bustling with people holding cameras and cheering items. They were fans waiting to see the singers. The student with the buzz cut joined the group of Neptune fans on the side. I heard on the way here, but Sangha is apparently coming here without sleeping due to her schedule in China. These words were like adding fuel to a fire. She must have it tough going back and forth from China, she should take a break from Neptune. Excuse me, Song has a member of Neptune. A few Neptune fans and Lee Song has personal fans glared at each other. The quarrel soon heated up. No, to be honest, what help is Neptune to Sangha? You can't say that. Neptune members are taking losses by letting Sangha do her own thing. If not, they probably have appeared in many events and their album might already be out. Their next album keeps getting pushed back because of Sangha. Why are you trying to blame it all on her? Lee Taehee still hasn't finished her song. Also, the other members are the ones who urgently need the album, it doesn't matter to Sangha. Shell have a lot of work to do if they start recording and practicing choreography. If the album flops, then Shell have wasted her precious time and effort. That's right. It's better if she stars in a drama or movie in that time. I'm speechless. Are you saying she should go do her own thing regardless of being in a team or not? If you think Sangha is interfering with Neptune, then you should complain to WU. Ask them to take Sangha out of Neptune. Are you joking? The members are getting along fine so why are you telling them to take out Sangha? How do you know if they are getting along well or not? I can tell they are close just by the photos they upload on the official social media accounts. Those photos are for the media. 
It could be that Sangha wants to leave, but the other members aren't letting her. They live together, and Sangha is the youngest out of them. How do you know she's not being mistreated? Hey! How dare you make assumptions with no evidence? Are you done talking? I'm not done. I have tons to say. They started flinging curses at each other in the end. While both sides were fighting intensely, other fans were clicking their tongue a few steps away. They held planet-shaped cheer sticks and huge cameras. They were the first-generation Tritons, Neptune's official fan club. A large, athletic man mumbled. What a shitstorm. I know, right? It seems there are more crazies than usual because this is an outdoor performance. A woman with a little baby fat left on her cheeks nodded. Another member asked with a dazed face. Why are they acting like that? It's been a while since I've come out due to exams so it's hard to adjust. It's my first time seeing any of them. Why did such an aggravating crowd stick to Neptune? Sangha, eating one uni, are they part of our fandom? They are new members who came on thanks to royal family. Sangha eating, who was a devoted fan, sighed. Neptune's fanbase grew as Sangha's personal fanbase grew, but as the fanbase grows so do the number of haters. They are more like haters than fans. There are a quite a few people squabbling on the official page so the mood's a bit off these days. Um, but. A man wearing horn-rimmed glasses said with an uneasy expression. Our members don't really have a bad relationship or anything, right? I'm also worried there might be trouble because Sangha suddenly became so popular on her own. The fandom will become stable once their album comes out and they are performing as a group again. Sangha eating still glanced at the fighting people. One person shouted in a fit of anger. If you want to kick Lee Sangha out of the group, then do it. But you need to leave Chief Young Sun Wu behind. Chief Young is Songha's manager. What a joke. He's been Neptune's manager from the start. Then let's split it 50 to 50. As the commotion grew even louder, a rider rushed over with a security guard. Why is it so loud here? I think they are Neptune's fans. ITLL be a problem if they are like that until the live broadcast. We should call Neptune's mana. MS. Rider. Sangha eating quickly came over. I'm from Neptune's fan club. I'm very sorry for the loud commotion, but ITLL quiet down soon. ITLL quiet down. The writer and security guard looked over at the same time. The fight was only intensifying. It looked like it might become physical as even fans and regular people around them started to take notice. I don't think they'll quiet down. No. If you wait a little longer, they'll quiet down like a school bell ring, oh. Sangha eating, who had been calmly explaining, suddenly brightened. Chief Young has arrived. A white minivan was entering the square's parking lot. Chapter, 146. The change was instant. The commotion was quelled, and the fans acted quickly. It was the same whether they were about to grab each other's collars or were spectating from a few steps away. They all gathered like sheep with awkward smiles on their faces. The writer had a flustered expression. Just that the. I told you, the school bell has run. Sangha eating pointed to the van. The passenger seat was the first to open. A woman with long straight hair got out. Her sunglasses covered half her face, and her thick, black parka covered her from her chin to her ankles, resembling a penguin. Having discovered Lee Sangha with a single glance, people began swarming towards her. Neptune's fans hesitated before deciding against it. The security guards and staff made their way through the crowd and led Lee Sangha to the waiting room. The Neptune fans remained nailed in place even as she disappeared. It was all because of Chief Young Sunwoo who was coming over after getting out of the minivan. The writer tilted her head. Other fandoms need the celebrity to personally come out and ask them to quiet down to be this calm, but you all are different. I guess Chief Young Sun Wu is really scary. That's not it. There's a bit of a reason. Sangha eating answered in an almost profound way. The writer regretfully left after hearing her name being shouted through her headset. A young fan, seemingly only entered high school recently, came over and asked. Uni, how is the chief? 
It hasn't been long since I've started fangirling so I'm out of the loop. That's Chief Young Sun Wu is like a protected species. A protected species? A Triton member who wore horn-rimmed glasses replied to the puzzled fan. Think about the things Chief Young Sun Wu accomplished after becoming Neptune's manager. The entire fandom will flip out if he decides to leave that's why the fans, whether they are the entire groups or a single members, all listen to him. They do bring him up in their debates on occasion though. Before Song Eating could finish, one of the fans that caused the commotion said. But, to be honest, doesn't Chief Young Sun Wu favor of Lee Songa too much? If he's Neptune's manager, then he should take care of each one. It always looks like he's her personal manager. The other members must feel discriminated against. Shouldn't we call the WUPR team and comply? The fan, who poured oil to a dying fire, trailed her words. Unlike before, no one agreed with her. Instead, fierce glares zeroed in on her as though they were hunting down a common enemy. Song Eating said to the young fan. People that do are treated like spies from other fandoms. The fans don't touch Chief Young. We're even at our current balance because of him. Without him, the fandom might have split up and become a huge mess. The fan wearing horn-rimmed glasses shook his head. Chief Young Sun Wu arrived by that time. He looked exhausted, most likely due to his busy schedule. His already cold demeanor possessed a slight frown. He looked at the herd of fans and said. The security guards told me that our fandom was quite noisy. Flinching, their eyes moved quickly. Chief Young Sun Wu smiled faintly and added. If I keep hearing bad rumors about Neptune's fandom, then a soft-hearted manager like me will be too worried to work. His voice was gentle. However, the fans silently exchanged glances like they heard something more menacing than a threat. Someone quickly broke the silence. No no, we weren't. There was simply a small conflict in opinion. No need to worry about it, chief. Excuses erupted from the herd. That's good to hear. The corners of young Sun Wu's lips curved a little higher. He glanced at his wristwatch and said. Wait a bit after the performance. Since you've come here to support us on this cold day, you should at least meet with the members. The fans broke out in cheers. A few cautiously asked. Could we also get some autographs? Can we take pictures? Chief. Will Neptune's next album be a success? A young voice abruptly cut in. The fans quieted down. Soon, Chief Young Sun Wu replied. We'll do our best. Please tell us it will. No, please make it a success. Please. Ah, uh, stop it. Someone tried to stop him. However, he was outnumbered by the fans waiting in anticipation. Their gazes locked on Chief Young Sun Wu. He had an indecipherable expression. Stop putting pressure on him. People are going to think he's really a fortune teller. An athletic Triton member clicked his tongue. Someone added. There are tons of fans who think whatever Chief Young has a hand in will be a success. Apparently, someone even called WU and asked them to let Chief Young decide the title track. It's ridiculous. But, honestly it's not like I can't understand how they feel. The fan wearing horn-rimmed glasses said. If Chief Young is involved, we can't help but trust him. Please make it a success. That was what I wanted to say. I had already been suffering with this very issue these days. Royal family and Alive were proceeding smoothly and people congratulated me wherever I went, but the worry regarding Neptune and their next album had been growing in the corner of my mind. Will Lee Taehee's songs be a hit? Which one would be the best out of the three? How should we proceed with our plan so that Neptune becomes more robust like dried earth after heavy rainfall? If I could just request to see the future, would have already kowtowed. Months have gone by since I saw the future where Song Inho received an award. I almost suspected that I may have lost my ability. It could disappear as suddenly as it came. It felt like mold was spread inside me whenever I thought that. I shook my head in front of Neptune's waiting room. I entered after knocking on the door. What are you doing? My mind cleared instantly. Im Seo Young, who was posing like a model, jumped in surprise. W what do you mean? 
Just now. What was that Im Seo Young pose? Yua. Im Seo Young fumbled to get up then used her hair, which was fashioned into what resembled bunny ears, to cover her face. Despite her efforts, I could still see her cheeks reddening. What was she doing? I looked around the waiting room, and the other members were acting normal. Lee Taehee was flopped on the sofa with earphones on like she always did before performances. Lee Sangha was sleeping, using Lee Taehee's lap as a pillow, while mumbling something. Lee Taehee greeted me when she saw me. Then she closed her eyes. Ever since I told her that I would think about it a bit longer that night she came over, she has been patiently waiting for my response. She didn't urge me or anything. She's been inflicted with the sunbay disease. I came out of my thoughts at LJ's words. Legs crossed, LJ was leisurely playing a game on her phone as she continued. The girl group performing the opening. She trailed off when she raised her head to look at me. Has your spirit been sucked out of you for the past two days? What? You look haggard while her skin is glowing like she's had some snake wine. LJ's gaze lingered on Lee Sangha, who was sleeping without a care in the world. Stop with your nonsense and continue what you were saying. What about the girl group? They are apparently coming over to greet us. They consider us as their role models or something. Hearing that, she's been diagnosed with sunbay disease and she's become terminal in ten minutes. Her tone was as rude as normal, but her reaction was different. Im Seo Young went up next to her. Hey, what are you going to say when they come to greet us? What do you mean? They said we're their role models. We have to say something nice. Fighting. Hey. Don't you remember how it was like when we were unknown? Im Seo Young raised her voice in the end. Don't you remember how sad it was to be ignored whenever we went to greet our sunbays? On top of that, were their role models. The role model they are referring to is 90% her. LJ gestured to Lee Sangha with her chin. Still. You never know. The wise words we tell them might point them to a path. You should just find a path for your own life, you directionally challenged dummy. At a loss for words, Im Seo Young simply opened and closed her mouth. I went over and patted her round shoulders. You just need to be as friendly as usual. No need to worry about a pose or anything. Appa, the thing is. Im Seo Young glanced behind her. Looking at each member, she lowered her head. Her bunny ears seems to droop. In a voice so quiet I could barely hear her, she said. Compared to them, I'm a bit. You are a bit. So, what I mean is, I'm a bit. Just then, someone knocked on the door. Then Lee Kuan Wu came in. Ah, chief. Pretty girls came over because they wanted to greet Neptune before they go on standby. Pretty girls. The name sounded familiar. Young girls that seemed to suit school uniforms than their stage outfits entered the room. They stood in a line before bowing at a 90-degree angle. Hello, Sunbei. We are pretty, pretty, pretty girls. Just as they seemed like they were going to continue and as their manager asked me for a handshake, my mind was snatched by something else. My vision began to fill with static. My vision flipped. I felt dizzy like I rolled on the ground a few times. I heard a staticky chant. We are pretty, pretty, pretty girls. It was childish yet clearly memorable. But why was I hearing this now? It has been months since I've seen the future, yet don't tell me I was going to see not Neptune or Nam Joyan's future but the future of some girl group I had no relations with. I quickly perked my eyes and ears. I was at work. I was standing in front of the TV in the fourth floor lounge. There was a girl group on TV. The air seemed quite warm. Because my eyes were stuck on the TV, I used my other senses to check out my clothes. Long pants and a dress shirt. It seemed quite thin. I couldn't pinpoint what time of the year it was. All it takes is one shot. My eyes finally moved. Kim Hyunjo was standing next to me with his arms crossed. His face looked more sunken than normal. He was wearing jeans and a dress shirt with rolled up sleeves. I said. I know, right? 
I didn't know they'd be this success when I first saw them earlier this year. They've taken first place for two weeks now. First place? Was he talking about the music charts? They'll finally get to take off their training wheels and fly with this. I don't think they'll come down from the top ranks for a while. Their song is good. I bet that producer's worth has gone up quite a bit. Pretty girls just happen to have luck on their side. The song would have been a hit no matter who sung it. Kim Hyunjo licked his lips in regret. I bet it would have been even more success if Neptune sang it. I'm chief. I now clearly saw a man with his hand awkwardly out for a handshake. Now a little gloomier, the man slowly pulled his hand back. I quickly grabbed it. Sorry, I was feeling a little faint just now. Ah, no problem. Are you okay? I heard you were busy these days. No, I read you were. From internet articles. The man spoke incoherently as he brightened up. I glanced behind him. The pretty girls' members were greeting Neptune. They were the same girls that were on TV in the future I saw. I turned my gaze back to the man. Hello, I am Young Sun Woo. Of course, I know who you are. You are as well known as most celebrities. I am Chief Lee Tae Shin, currently taking care of pretty girls. I had given you their CD two years ago. I don't know if you remember since it's been so long. Two years ago. Yes, in the waiting room for NET's music broadcast. I even remember how you wore a suit that day. Chief Lee Tae Shin said while scratching his neck. Now I remembered. It was my first day of work. Were they wearing the aprons and school uniforms? That's right. Even though their debut song was completely forgotten, people seemed to remember their outfits. He looked at Pretty Girls and Neptune then made a hollow smile. After their debut song was a bust, so was their mini-album and full album. There were eight members originally, but two left and now only six remain. If the digital single we're preparing now is a flop. Digital single? Yes, we are planning it like it's our last shot. Opening my dry lips, I asked. Did you find a song? Chapter, 147 A song? Chief Li Tae Shin licked his lips. The few seconds it took to open his chapped lips felt like an eternity. We got one. Ah. We finished the guide track one and are currently working on the lyrics. Who's it being produced by? This felt like I was in the future. My words felt like they were caught on my throat, but somehow, words were flowing smoothly from my mouth. My voice sounded excessively calm and unfamiliar. I don't know if you've heard of him. His name is Doem. Domi? 2. Dom. He's an unknown songwriter. Chief Lee Tae Shin laughed like he heard some amazing joke. Doem, huh? I had heard most songwriters while preparing for Neptune's mini album last time but it was my first time hearing this name. Still, since I knew his name, I could probably figure out his contact info with a few calls. But what would I do when I have it? They've already finished the guide track so what was I going to do? It's been too difficult to get songs from famous songwriters. Chief Lee Tae Shin continued to talk. If we rush over because they tell us they have a song for us, it's usually a song that has been rejected constantly over the years. Ah, uh, of course, we're grateful even for that. There have been cases where songs like that became hits. But. He lowered his voice. We couldn't bear the costs. We don't even have enough money to prepare outfits so the girls have been repairing them on their own. A bitterness flashed on his smiling face. Because he kept scratching his hair, it looked like a rat's nest. Since Neptune has their own songwriter, you probably don't have to hunt for songs anymore. His gaze momentarily fell on Lee Taehee. Royal Family OST is still first. Im been listening to it non-stop as well. The OST was so good, I wonder how great the album will be if you have any songs left over, could you let us? Chief Lee Tae Shin waved both his hand when he saw my eyes. Ah, uh, no, I'm always speaking nonsense like this. You must need a ton of songs for Neptune's full album so there's no way any songs would be left over. Just as I was about to speak. Pretty girls. Where are you? 
You have to be on standby now. Yi yes. We're coming. Chief Li Taishin quickly gathered the pretty girl's members at the staff's call. Chief Yong, then we'll be taking our Leah. Could I get your business card? I held him back and handed him my business card from my wallet. If you have time, I would like to grab a few drinks. Of course, of course. Any time. Eyes bulging, Chief Li Taishin accepted my business card. Then he fumbled through before handing me his. The staff calling for pretty girls began to sound irritated. Mouth opening and closing, Chief Li Taishin rushed over to the staff. I looked at the card in my hand. It felt like more like Pandora's box than a business card. One that contained blessings and evils. Tightly gripping this thin piece of cardstock, I turned around. A pretty girl's member glanced at me as she passed by. The moment our eyes met, my vision swam. What the heck? My ability didn't activate no matter how much I begged it, and now it activated twice in a row. Without the time to think about it, I concentrated. I could see a computer screen through my static-filled vision. My fingers slowly rolled the mouse wheel. Straining my eyes, I recognized what was on the screen. It was an article. There was a picture. It was the girl just now. The pretty girl's member. I scrolled down. A caption was boldly printed under the picture. Pretty girl's young J.E.I. feels undeserving of her title, the second Lee Sangha. My feet seized. I stood in the doorway again. My eyes looking back at young J.E.I. Albeit slowly, my mind had been working until now, but it seemed to have finally broken down. The caption still lingered in my eyes. The second Lee Sangha. Shall be called that. Her. She gave off a milder impression compared to the overwhelming Lee Sangha. Maybe it was because of the mole next to her eye, but she had a wistful yet attractive. I was examining her face, but she suddenly stretched her hand out. Can you give me one too? Your business card. Appa. A voice dragged me out from my thoughts. Im Seo Young was crouching next to the sofa as she looked up at me. She looked nervous and restless. She put so much strength in her eyes that her eyelids were trembling. The child who you gave your business card to is only 22 years old. What are you talking about? She's only a year younger than you. She's a child. Since you're 29, oh my god, there's a seven year difference. That's true. But I don't tea. You were in elementary school when she was born. No, I was probably in preschool. Three. Then when she was in middle school, you were in the army. An army mister. That's true. She didn't give me any time to think. With a quick sigh, I looked around. It seemed Lee Kuan Wu and the stylist had left as I only saw Lee Tae Hee and LJ. Both were staring at me with their earphones out and phones down. They stared at me like they were observing me. But why were there only three? Where did Sangha go? Im here. The heck? Lee Sangha was sitting right next to me like some earthbound spirit. I've been sitting next to you for a while now. Yua, this is big. A big problem. Making a fuss, Im Seo Young grabbed my knee. Appa, were you the time to fall in love at first sight? I have no idea what the heck you're talking about. Don't tell me you want to date her or anything, right? When she's seven years younger than you. What does age got to do with it? Lee Sangha hastily joined in. There's no order to marriage. No, not this. What I mean is why does age matter when you're going to age at the same rate? It wouldn't matter if there was a seven or even a seventy year difference. A seventy year difference probably won't do. Li Sangha blankly opened and closed her mouth at my words. She didn't seem right. Her dark eyes were moving quickly as her brain churned. LJ casually said. Well, age doesn't matter. But she looks too much like a minor. Sangha, when you're next to her, she looked so much younger than you. I do look old for my age. Li Sangha nodded her head in agreement. I was so dumbfounded that I laughed. Thinking this was an opportunity, Im Seo Young added. That's right. She looks like a minor. 
If you date her, you'll be handcuffed. You, acting like this to me, is an illness. Also, who's going to date who? You gave her your business card. Ah, uh, so we're dating if I give her my business card? There are probably hundreds of people in this industry that have my card so am I King Ouija for. I just gave her one. You all have my business card too. The one I gave you to commemorate me becoming a chief. This. I have it right here. Lee Sangha looked through her bag and took out a business card. My business card. Why do you carry that around? I have another at home. This is my lucky charm when I'm on the go. Ah, uh, okay. Lee Sangha put the business card back and stretched her hand out. Give me a new one too please. You said you already have two. Why another one? The design seemed to have changed when I glanced at it. I couldn't really understand, but I was used to it now. Why are you collecting different designs? Seo Young Uni collects dolls with different faces too. Im Seo Young was dumbfounded as she shouted. Hey! Sangha, how dare you compare that to this? The details of my dolls are completely different. The details on these are very different too. Lee Sangha firmly kept her hand out. Please give me one. Okay, it's not like it's valuable or anything. Then two please. I gave her all but one of my cards in my wallet. The corners of Lee Song has closed lips kept creeping up. She wasn't the type to express her happiness when companies sponsored shoes or bags that cost tens of millions of one, yet here she was. Maybe I should hand out my business card whenever she feels down. I leaned against the sofa with this foolish thought. Soon, Li Quan Wu and the stylist arrived with snacks. The waiting room became as loud as normal. Li Tae He put her earphones back in her ears, and Im Seo Young mumbled her lines. Li Sangha was standing in a corner practicing their choreography. There was only one person still staring at me. LJ kicked the floor. Her chair wheeled towards me. I'm just telling you this for your own good. Don't fall for it. For what? LJ came close and whispered. Fall for temptation. Although I didn't know why LJ said that to me, it fit perfectly with my situation. As I really was suffering from temptation. Two snakes perched on each on my shoulders and whispered. Just swallow it. You can do it. It's not like they officially started recording. And what if it rots inside you? You might really become a piece of trash in the future. It felt like their forked tongues churning my brain. It was the same even if I took a cold shower. It didn't clear my mind. It only resulted in goosebumps. I couldn't act rashly. A single step. It felt like I was standing a crossroad where a single step could change everything. At some point, my alarm rang. I took a break from my worries and moved. The day was brightening outside my window. Chief Young, why do you look so haggard? Did you have a hard time falling asleep? The SBE film project producer asked as he stuck his head out from the back seat of the bus. Not only did I have a hard time falling asleep, but I didn't sleep at all. Producer, your face is all puffy. Did you not sleep? I didn't sleep a wink. It's always like this for me the day before a release. I always get nightmares if I fall asleep. Like the opening scores crawling along the bottom or hearing people talking badly about the movie while I'm in a stall. Stuff like that. Everyone on the bus was similar. The actors, managers, and staff, who had gathered for the commemorative shoot, were all nervous and tired wrecks. In fact, even director Choi Sung-won was yawning non-stop. Still, maybe it's because I'm with you, but it feels different from the past. The project producer said in a joking manner. People sitting close to us joined in. Instead of praying to God, Buddha, or the gods of heaven and earth, I might start praying to Chief Young Sun Wu. Mr. Sun Wu, don't tell me you poured all your luck in royal family. You left a little for us, right? Do you sense anything about today's results? I am not a shaman. The staff laughed with rigid faces at my words. I looked behind me. Lee Sangha and Nam Joyun were sitting next to each other amongst the actors. 
Within this mood of excitement and nervousness, only they looked calm as a pool of water. An employee from SBE Film was filming the actors. The bus stopped in front of the Yangdungpo Multiplex Cinema. People were gathered here to see actors enter as it seemed they failed to get tickets for the screening where the actors greeted the audience. There were even DSLRs with huge lenses. Lee Ki Won. Appa, you're so amazing. Please go in slowly. Hey, it's Park Seryang. Her face is the size of my first oh my god, hey. It's Lee Songa. Look at her face. Amazing. Well definitely go watch your movie. Well watch it ten times. I heard excited voices in the crowd. The actors were in the middle as the staff and security escorted them inside. As the people here were experienced with events like this, they smoothly arrived in front of the theater showing alive. Looking inside, it was already packed with people. With director Choi Sun-won at the front, Lee Ki-won and Park Seryung entered while waving their hands. The theater erupted. Screams and cheers echoed. I saw a few of these before, but they weren't as intense as this one. Well, the cast was simply too splendid. I said to Lee Sangha. I'll be waiting here so good luck with your lines. Yes, I'll be back soon. Lee Sangha went in with steadfast steps. Even though it was her first time attending an event like this, she didn't seem nervous at all. Well, she did perform in front of thousands of people and went around to market her drama. She was no longer the rookie who would be startled by a few hundred people. I turned my gaze and looked at Nam Joyun. Hope you have a good time, Hyung. I'm going because you told me to, but... It's not me. SBE requested this. To go to these stage greetings. After scratching his neck, Nam Joyun walked in front of the audience seats. It would have been great if they entered after the movie, but since this was an event before the actual screening, the audience's reaction was relatively lukewarm. They were clapping out of respect, thinking he was an actor since he came at the end of the procession. I clicked my tongue in regret when Nam Joyun suddenly stopped. His surprised eyes locked on a single spot. Curious, I checked to see if people he knew had come. It didn't take long. In the middle of the audience, a handful of familiar faces sat in a row. Chapter 148 Kim Hyunsup waved his baseball cap. Beside him were the director, staff, and other unknown actors who worked on the independent film with Nam Joyun. Nam Joyun bowed his head towards them. The staff took something out from beneath their seats. I flinched, worried it was some poster board, but fortunately, they brought out cameras. These cameras were even bigger than the reporters, but they were members of a film crew so it was to be expected. If they weren't at a theater, they might have even brought along a film camera. I should greet them separately after the cast introductions. Thinking this, I looked at Nam Joyun. The corners of his lips were slightly raised. As soon as the actors gathered, the project producer held the mic. Wow, it must be because our actors are all amazing, but everyone seems heated in investigative spirit. After today's screening, I hope you will tell your family, friends, colleagues, and strangers about it. Now the director and cast will make their introductions. Ear-piercing cheers erupted. It feels weird seeing Mr. Joyeon over there, right? He gets to introduce himself along with all those other top stars. Makes me feel like we've fallen behind. Will he be living in a different world than us from now on? The independent film members whispered to each other. Do you think your life will change if you appear in a couple scenes of a commercial film? A blunt voice poured cold water over their moods. It was Lee Sung Hyun. Mr. Sung Hyun, did you not come to see the premiere with us before? It's not just a couple of scenes, he appears quite a lot. That's right. His character is very impressionable too. With a live's box office results, I bet his popularity will soar. Lee Sung-hyun shrugged at the director and assistant director's words. We'll have to see how great the box office results are. A Hollywood film is going to be released in a few days. Are you cursing others' movies because your own flopped? Kim Hyun-sup cut in. Lee sung Hyun's expression distorted frighteningly. The assistant director quickly changed the subject when he felt the mood become dangerous. Wow, Lee Sangha, 
that girl has no need for lights or reflective panels. She glows on her own. Her acting is even more incredible. Apparently, she filmed the live and royal family at the same time, yet she got into both characters so well. They were completely different roles to boot. It like she debuted as a child actress then an idol. The staff gaped in admiration. The audience cheered like wolves as soon as Lee Sangha held the mic. Expertly introducing herself, Lee Sangha looked beside her. Nam Joyeon was next. The surging cheers quickly died down. Who is he? Seeing as he's introducing himself as well, I guess he's an actor. He's good looking compared to your average Joe. I wish he would take his time so we have more time to look at the other actors. As if she heard them, Lee Sangha stopped before passing over the mic. Then she said. E everyone, before the movie begins, please look at the person next to me. One by one, the audience looked towards Nam Joyun. Although you may not know him now, after the movie. I know him. I know him. A pregnant woman sitting on the very front row raised her hand high. I bought a ticket to this event after seeing the premiere. I even saw it early in the morning today. The excited woman stomped her feet. Receiving the mic, Nam Joyun bowed. I am Nam Joyun. Thank you. Oh my goodness, you're so great at acting. My baby almost popped out while I was watching the movie. We can't have that. Various people in the audience laughed. A few people began taking pictures of him. The woman smiled brightly and said. I became your fan, but I couldn't find a photo of you on the internet. That's why I decided to see a live a few more times. Please appear in many movies in the future. No words escaped from Nam Joyun's mouth for a while before he bowed again. Yes, thank you. His lukewarm expression slowly warmed. Two hours later, the audience left the theater in a trance. The rumors weren't exaggerated. I need to watch it again. I was so immersed in the plot that I didn't get to look at Lee Sangha. It was such a thrill for the whole two hours. My neck almost cramped from being tense for so long. The audience continued their positive feedback. A woman who saw the pregnant woman pass by smacked her lips in regret. Ah! I should have taken a picture of that actor too. That crazy villain, what was his name? Nam Nam Joyun. Did I take a picture? It feels like hell become popular, right? Let's see. Oh my gosh, the photo came out so well. Send it to me so I can post it on my blog. Seeing people like this, the independent film director grabbed Kim Hyunsup's shoulder. They seem to like Mr. Joyun. I know, right? Joyun that bastard, I really hope everything goes well for him this time. He suffered a ton. People like him deserve to be successful. Nodding his head, the director looked around. Mr. Sung Hyun, you should stop her. Huh? Where did he go? Lee Sung Hyun stood rigid, pale in the face. An unknown actor sighed next to him. Fuck, someone's lives all set now. I always consoled myself whenever I failed an audition by thinking, at least I'm better than this no life who's been getting nowhere for the past ten years. Was Nam Joyun also destined to be successful? It's all luck. Lee Sung Hyun said as if convinced. He was lucky to be cast in a movie like this and was lucky to get an impactful role. If I also had this opportunity, I. No shit. You would have done much better than him. I also. Just as the unknown actor put on airs, a man carrying a laptop and camera approached them and handed them his business card. Excuse me. Could I ask you a few questions? The unknown actor asked after checking his business card. Ah, uh, are you a reporter? I came here to cover this event, but I happened to overhear your conversation. Our conversation. The reporter took another step towards them. Yes, it seems like you're close with Mr. Nam Joyun. Mr. Sun Wu. Wow, really? Holy. Wow, I can't even talk right now. Please calm down. I saw the articles. Amazing. Are you really blessed? No. I felt like the Pied Piper. Employees surrounded me in the lounge just outside my office. 
their excited voices buzzed in my ears. The PR team female employee handed me a coffee from her tray of coffee cups and said, SBE Film is in a frenzy right now. Their CEO apparently said their first week goal was 2 million people. I heard that too. Their goal was 2 million people for the first week. Then, of course, they are in a frenzy. If I was their CEO, I'd be tumbling over backwards in happiness. Is 2 million people really the problem? Their opening number was 790, 000. Someone shouted with a snort. Other employees were astonished. They say it's the best yet. At this rate, they'll pass their 2 million goal by tomorrow. I heard the rumors are great right now. Wow, I'm so speechless. I felt like my face had become a dartboard. Their gazes stuck on me. The gazes, which I could have laughed off in the past, were a bit intense. So much so that I felt a little queasy. I calmly rubbed my lips to not reveal my thoughts. An audio recording our team female employee, who I remembered back when we were working on Neptune's mini-album, said. He's definitely human just like us. You are human, right? What would I be if not human? But how can everything you pick be jackpots? With you, won't the company not need the AR team anymore? At this point, I think you could just pick Neptune's title track. Well just sit back and enjoy the ride. Laughter erupted in the crowd. It was a joke. Meant for a laugh. Even though I knew this, I felt like there were thorns in my throat. The moment I heard her words, the thoughts I had barely managed to suppress burst forward. Pretty girls. Chief Li Taishin. The songwriter. The song Kim Hyunjo was certain would have done better if Neptune sang it. The song that could sweep away the potential problems laying around Neptune and make my next decision a surefire success. The song destined for success. One no one else knew. Why is it so loud here? A thorny voice suddenly cut through the commotion. The Team 2 leader was walking down the stairs. Do you all have no work to do? The employees quickly dispersed. I also simply greeted him and left. Maybe it was because of Alive's successful numbers, but the Team 2 leader looked like an irritable stingray, and my mind was teeter-tottering as well. Young Sun Wu. The Team 2 leader's voice held me by the back of my neck. Yes. Are you taking good care of Neptune? People have been talking. There's never a peaceful day. I am aware of it. Really? I was worried you threw them aside since you were so entranced by your new guy. I guess he didn't have anything to say about Nam Joyun considering he brought up Neptune instead. I just hoped he would worry about his own work. I replied with a smile. That's not it. Rather, I feel like you can't take your eyes off me. You bastard, your words grow more revolting by the day. The Team 2 leader laughed. Hey, you need to be humble when things are going well. You never know when you'll trip up. Just as I was about to reply, the office door suddenly burst open. Mr. Sun Wu. Come in quickly. An article about Mr. Nam Joyun. The PR team female employee flinched when she saw the Team 2 leader. The Team 2 leader asked with interest. An article? What kind of article? When we walked into the office, people were gathered around a computer. The Team 3 leader, Kim Hyunjo, Lee Kuan Wu, and other members of Team 3 and the PR team were focused on the monitor. Team leader Park was pacing around on her phone. Her voice was raised. Director, it's not like Mr. Nam Joyun's all on his own, how can you do this despite knowing he's one of us? When did you investigate all of this? If you were going to publish an exclusive, you should have mentioned it to me beforehand. How can you just suddenly throw this out there? Investigate. Exclusive article. What problems could there be regarding Nam Joyun? Was it about his lawsuit against his previous company? But the company was more at fault. The tussle with Director Park last year? No, there was no way he could talk when he himself was guilty. I went over and asked. What is it? Mr. Nam Joyun's article. Yeah, what's with all this fuss? The Team 2 leader, who came in with me, added. He looked like he was spectating a show. 
Frowning, Kim Hyunjo looked at me and said. To be precise, it's an article about Mr. Nam Joyun and you. Me? Bring up the article. Lee Kuan Wu moved the mouse. An article popped up on the screen. The headline and caption caught my eyes. Chief Young Sun Wu proves he's mid ass hand. Not just projects, but people as well. The actor who went unknown for 10 years then suddenly became a live scene stealer. Who is Nam Joyun? What the hell? It was completely different from what I expected. As Kim Hyunjo said, the article was more about both of us than just Nam Joyun. It included the story where we first met on the set of the independent film. Also, how he auditioned in front of director Choi Sung-won. Shooting Alive. It was recounting of the past few months I spent with Nam Joyun. It even included the part where Nam Joyun was rejected by WU after an initial meeting. The Team 3 leader read a part of the article out loud. In a call with the main reporter, a person at WU said, the team leader at the meeting commented that Nam Joyun lacked potential, and revealed how thinking about it now, it was the team leader, who didn't have a good eye. Chapter, 149 What? What did you say? The team 2 leader asked with a dumb expression on his face. My complicated thoughts from this abrupt article were blasted away thanks to the Team 2 leader. Should I say, no matter what my concerns were at this moment, I wanted to concentrate on the Team 2 leader's reaction. Everyone was secretly glancing at the Team 2 leader. Their gazes looked like they wanted some popcorn for the show. Belatedly understanding the situation, the Team 2 leader roughly pushed employees aside and looked at the screen. WH what the hell is this? It seems like someone trying to screw over that team leader, who didn't have a good eye. The team three leader kindly replied. He looked like he was watching the world's funniest comedy. Although they didn't reveal the team leader's name, I think anyone with enough connections will figure it out. Look at this. There are tons of upvotes on comments like does that team leader hate WU? And shouldn't he write an apology? You're suddenly so famous. WH what kind of lunatic? The Team 2 leader's complexion alternated between red and blue as if his blood was flowing in reverse. Not a care for his colleague, the Team 3 leader continued nonchalantly. I know, right? Who shot their own team in the back? There are always people like this no matter how many times I tell them to be careful of what they say. What a mess. Who was their source? Young Sun Wu. Was it you? As expected, the sparks flew onto to me. I smiled at the Team 2 leader, whose veins were bulging as he glared at me, and replied. No. If I had an interview with a reporter, do you think they would have only asked me stuff like that? They probably would have had tons they wanted to ask for my relationship with Nam Joyun to my nickname as Mid-Ass Hand. Also, if I wanted to anonymously spill some secrets about the Team 2 leader, it wouldn't have ended with such few lines. There would be just too many things to talk about. Anyways, the Team 2 leader seemed to accept my explanation as he changed his target. Then who is it? Which bast? Don't accuse random people and check your own team. The Team 3 leader said, his face now devoid of a smile. Seeing as they knew exactly what you said, it looks like it was one of those who attended that meeting with you. So stop checking out whether other teams are on fire and go blow the fire out in your team. You. The Team 2 leader stopped. Then he looked around the office. Besides Team Leader Park, who was on the phone, everyone was looking at him. There were even a few people whose gazes alternated between the Team 2 leader and their phones. In the end, the Team 2 leader fumed out of the office, only leaving the words that he wouldn't let the bastard who did this off easily. A mix of laughter and coughs spread in the office. I had also begun laughing at some point. The Team 3 leader was even holding his stomach in laughter. Kim Hyunjo narrowly caught him before he laughed himself off his chair. Oh my god. This is a monumental embarrassment. This is why you need to be kind to others. How are you going to track someone who purposely said that under anonymity? He's the type to care a ton about his reputation. Hell be busy with that for a while. The Team 3 leader tapped my elbow and whispered. Hey, lucky charm. Was it really not you? I didn't. 
If I did that interview, it wouldn't have ended with embarrassment. The Team 3 leader burst out laughing at my answer. What's so funny here? It looks like I'm the only one having a crisis. Team leader Park came over after ending her call with a publication. She placed her hand on my shoulder and asked in a quiet voice. Did you ever receive something from Mr. Nam Joyun? Like money perhaps? I stopped laughing. Never, why? A reporter said he heard something like that while he was investigating. That you received a lot of money from Mr. Nam Joyun to get him on a lives cast. Like a 11 deal with Lee Sangha. They were wondering if it was true. That's complete nonsense. What large sum of money would someone who starved to buy movie tickets have? This was so ridiculous that it would even make Lee Sangha lose her appetite. Who's the source? I couldn't figure that out. The reporter removed it from his article because he couldn't confirm the facts and wanted to check with me first. It seems like there are some people who are jealous of Mr. Nam Joyun's success. The press knew that nothing would come out of writing a baseless article. Saying this, team leader Park grabbed the mouse. She refreshed the page. There were a few more articles about Nam Joyun and me besides the exclusive article just now. I concentrated on the articles again. Tabloids have started publishing already. Team leader Park clapped her hands. Let's quickly send out a press release so that rumors don't even get the chance to grow. In the blink of an eye, Nam Joyun's name was up on the real-time search rankings. Alive getting the best opening score, my name, and team leader Park's press release human documentary about Nam Joyun and me. This was the result of all three. Alive appeared on the rankings again as well. SBE Film thanked us for the support and sent out a press release about Nam Joyun's casting incident. It even included director Choi Someone's comments. Thanks to all that, bad rumors didn't get the chance to surface. Comments and social media posts mentioning Nam Joyun increased explosively in a day. The pictures that were taken back when Nam Joyun went to a screening with his family also spread online, and the number of people interested in Nam Joyun grew. Who knows who this Nam Joyun is? Why is someone I've never seen or heard about on the real-time search rankings? He was an unknown actor for 10 years and is now experiencing a meteoric rise after appearing in Alive. I looked for information about him because I became interested after watching the movie, but there really wasn't anything. I think he joined WU. I hope he works hard. Ah, uh, he became a star after joining WU? The company really is what makes or breaks a celebrity's career. It's not WU, but due to Chief Young Sun Woo's support. There's an official article. Nam Joyun was rejected in a meeting with WU, but Chief Young didn't give up and stuck with him. Then Nam Joyun became a breakout star in a few months. The hell. This can't be done by luck. He really must be skilled. Chief Young, please work with me. Even after Nam Joyun and Alive dropped from the ranking, my name remained on it. The number of articles actually grew as time passed. At first, they were simply spamming articles with the official press release as their base, but at some point, special articles with interviews with pop culture critics and people from the entertainment interviews began popping up as well. The articles asked how much of an influence a celebrity's company and manager had on their success. They implicated Nam Joyun and me as well as Neptune with a special focus on Lee Sangha. I was monitoring people's reactions to Nam Joyun, and around half were about him and me. Young Sun Wu, mid ass hand, digging up talents, secret, two years of success. Articles, posts, and comments overflowed with such keywords. It was stifling. It's all about Young Sun Wu. I heard someone say from behind. A blanket over his shoulders, Kim Hyunjo came over while yawning. I looked at the time, and it was late. I thought that my surroundings had been noisy not long ago, but it was now quiet. Only Kim Hyunjo and I were left in the office. How long was I sitting here like this? I rubbed my dry eyes, and Kim Hyunjo sat down next to me and said. Maybe you'll be offered a suitcase full of money at this rate. Please don't joke like that. It's not a joke though. Don't you know how many kids in this industry are grasping at straws trying to succeed? To those unknown singers and actors, I bet you look like a lifeline than a straw. 
I frowned. I had already received a ton of call today. There was an acting coach who asked me to look at some profiles of the kids he's teaching as well as calls from people whose daughters, sons, nephews, and nieces have been trainees for a few years now. Whenever I received a call like that or read an article about me, I felt like a hammer was falling on my head. Maybe my height decreased by 10 centimeters today. It wasn't like this in the past, but at some point, I started feeling the pressure. But aren't you going to go home? Go rest. I was just worried about something. Even if I went home, I didn't think I would sleep a wink. Why haven't you gone home, chief? I was listening to a few songs sent by the AR team. I welled up with emotions while listening to the songs. I thought, they became this successful, huh? Although we haven't collected all the songs, there are more than their mini-album already. The quality is better too. I think we'll have a difficult time choosing tracks. What do we do if the album flops? I suddenly asked without knowing. It felt like something locked up inside me for a long time finally broke out. Kim Hyunjo, who had been smiling happily, stared at me. Wide awake. Hey, don't say that. It's bad luck. Even more so if you say it. Why? Do you think ITLL flop? That's not it, but I'm just a bit worried. It's an important album. It needs to be a success. And are other albums not important? They are always important. And what can you do about it? If you did everything you can, yet it somehow manages to flop, then we just need to make the next one a success. Kim Hyunjo said as though it was obvious. Even if Neptune's album does flop, they aren't at such risk that their group will be disbanded. The problem is that the number of bad Sangha fans will increase. But we can handle that as best we can. Now that Sangha doesn't an immediate project lined up, Neptune can go on an entertainment show as a group what's with your expression? Pardon? Your expression is very strange. I didn't know about my face, but I was feeling a little strange. I spoke what was on my mind. No, I just don't think I've been thinking about what we're going to do if it fails. Only how will it not flop, nothing can go wrong. We need to make it a success no matter what. Is there any surefire way? Thoughts like that. When did I become like this? Was it after seeing Pretty Girl's Future? While I was thinking this, Kim Hyunjo asked me with a strange expression. You've never messed up in a big way since you started working? Not once. Nope. Maybe that's why. It's true your record is amazing in the management business, but there's no need to be so focused on that. Is your life over if you fail? Nothing happened during the two years after Neptune's debut so am I trash? No, thinking about it now. I think I used a bad example. Kim Hyunjo coughed. Even CEO Beck, a man of great ability, failed multiple times trying to break into Hollywood. If everything you do works out, then that's abnormal. If that's true, then go and establish your own company. Take me along with you. Kim Hyunjo chuckled as he imagined it before continuing. Don't feel so pressured by the press calling you mid-ass hand and all that. Are you some national representative? Just think of it as an extra card in your hand. Think about it. Thanks to you, Nam Joyeon reached the top of the search rankings. Kim Hyunjo slapped my back and added. That's why you should just enjoy your work. Have fun. You're going to go bald if you continue at this rate. I didn't get a wink of sleep. For three days now. However, tonight was different from the past two days. Until now, my mind felt complicated like it was tangled in knots, but it felt like the knots unraveled a little tonight. I kept thinking about Kim Hyunjo's words. Why did I feel so much pressure? Why was I so stressed? It was like Kim Hyunjo said. It wasn't like my life was over after a single failure. Of course, it would be better if I continued not to fail. However, did I really need to success no matter what? No matter what, no matter what method I used. Why did I feel like I had to do whatever it took to succeed? Just why? After lightening the pressure weighing on me with this question, my thoughts gradually became clear. There was no guarantee that Lee Tae-hee's song would be a success, 
it also wasn't predestined for failure either. Like royal family and alive. Of course, Pretty Girl's single would be a success. There was a likely chance that it would succeed even if Neptune sang that song. However, would I be the same person if I did that? After doing that, could I still scorn Sun Chai Young's past actions, call Choi Gun Young a traitor, and consider the team two leaders' actions as underhanded? When I might be no different from them. Let's continue doing as I've been. Let's not dirty my soul and care about what methods I would use. After deciding this and clearing my thoughts, I decided to sleep. But chief, it seems like you're in a great mood today. A reporter I didn't know the name of said in a friendly voice. Your voice seems happy. Ah, uh, thinking about it, there's no reason you wouldn't be happy. Alive sold more than two million tickets. Mr. Nam Joyun's popularity soared after appearing on the search rankings yesterday. That could be the case. I slept really well yesterday. It was really refreshing. I replied while driving into an underground parking lot. I was on the phone with reporters all morning. My name was still clinging on to the real-time search rankings even after a night has passed. Articles were being published at a steady rate, and it would be beneficial to Nam Joyun if my interview was referenced in an article. Maybe thinking it was another card in my hand really did help. They say that life depended on one's outlook. Let's enjoy work and be happy from today onward. I parked the van and said. I have to get on the elevator now. If you don't have any more questions. Ah. Chief, just one. One last question. The reporter hastily replied. Did you not see anyone after Mr. Nam Joyun? A celebrity who you thought would succeed. Pretty girls immediately crossed my mind. Oh, seeing as you aren't replying right away, I guess you did see someone. Could you? You're going to write an article as soon as you hang up. No, I'm just curious. Just curious. The reporter desperately asked about it, but I ended the call without giving him a proper answer. Then I turned off the engine and thought in my seat. Even if I didn't bring over the song, I still had the information. The information that the unknown pretty girls would be reborn with their next single. That they would be first on the charts for at least two weeks with the song produced by Do M. I also knew that Young Jae would be so successful that she would be called the second Lee Sangha. I felt like I could make good use of this information. In a way that both sides could benefit. Now that I thought about it, he mentioned that the pretty girls' company wasn't in a good situation. That the girls had to tailor their own outfits because they didn't have the funds to get it done. Thinking about how much money it costs to make a single album. Just as I decided that I needed to call Chief Lee Tae Shin, my phone rang again. It was an unknown number this time. Hello. Excuse me, is this Chief Young Sun Woo of WU? The voice sounded hesitant like she was cautious. I thought she would be from a broadcasting company or reporter, but she seemed different. Yes, that's correct. Who is this? I am Young Jae of Pretty Girls. We saw each other at a live broadcast not too long ago. Young Jae. Ah, I remember. My reply was delayed because it was so unexpected. Although I did give her my business card that day, what business did she have with me? I was wondering if we could meet when you have some time. Me? What is this regarding pretty girls? No, I left pretty girls. I jolted up from my seat. I'm having trouble understanding. Did you say you left pretty girls? Yes, because I wanted to work with you. Now I was even more confused. Just what was she saying? You kept looking at me that day. Were you not interested in me? I will work really hard. Producers have told me that my talents were wasted on pretty girls, and although we don't have a lot of fans, I have the most. I think you are misunderstanding something. She cut me off and urgently said. If you tell me your price, I can immediately prepare it. It'll do anything you tell me to if it's not money that you want. So, Chief Young, please take care of me. Like Lee Sangha Sunbei. Like Nam Joyun Sunbei. Chapter 150 Oh my god. I now understood what was going on. M.S. Young Jae, I have never accepted money to work for anyone. 
Am not recording you. I know that there are brokers for this, but I didn't know who to contact so I contacted you directly. If you find it troublesome to talk on the phone, I'll wait for you. If you let me know when you're free, Illinois. Wait, wait. There's nothing troublesome, and I don't have a broker. I don't know where you heard all that from, but they are all baseless rumors. I heard it though. That even Nam Joyan Sunbei used this method. Those are baseless rumors. Malicious, nonsensical rumors. Why were rumors like this still circulating? The PR team spread a detailed press release, and I even did an interview. SBE film even got director Choi Sun Wan commented on it. Her breaths began more uneven. It was so clear that I could tell she was agitated without her saying anything. Don't think about anything strange, you need to prepare for Pretty Girl's next album. So sorry. 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 She hung up. I tried calling back, but her phone was turned off. What a bolt out of the blue. It had only been a few minutes since I decided to throw my concerns and worries to the side and enjoy working. I left a voicemail asking her to call me back then looked through my address book. I found Chief Li Taishin's phone number and called him. This time, the phone only rang, no one picked up. The pretty girl's company number was. He hello. I was about to hang up when someone answered. It was a woman's crying, nasally voice. She wasn't simply crying. It sounded like she had been wailing. On top of that, I could hear others crying in the background. What was going on now? Is this not Chief Li Taishin's phone number? Th the chief can't answer the phone right now. He left his PH phone here. Wait. Please calm down. Are you a member of Pretty Girls? Pretty Girls is no longer. Hugh. It's dead. We are disbanding. Chief Li Taishin was squatting in a dark washroom. His phone slipped in his hands from all the sweat. I'm going to take my hands off the project so if you want to continue, continue on your own. President, no, Hyung. Yung Jae left and Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen are packing their bags, right? Then that's the end of it. The president said leisurely. Chief Li Taishin cracked open the washroom door. The blinding room lights shined in his eyes, and he could hear people sniffling. He looked outside with bloodshot eyes. It was a small one-room apartment. The three high school members of Pretty Girls were curled up on their beds. Their faces were buried in their knees. Their crying voices leaked out from within. Their petite shoulders trembled. Two adult members were jamming their things in their luggage carriers. Only the dregs are left now that the useful ones have left. What can we do with them? Only the dregs are left. Dregs? How can you say that to these girls who put their lives into? Chief Li Taishin halted mid shout. The three high school members were looking at him. Anyways, I want out so don't call me. He hung up with a yawn. Chief Li Taishin tried calling back, but his phone was turned off. He rubbed his face with his stiff hands before getting out of the washroom. The two adult members glanced at him but didn't stop packing their bags. Hyogen, Bora. Don't try to stop us. We've already decided. Park Hyogen said coldly. Don't think about dragging us down with the contract either. The president said that we could leave any time we want since he could no longer support our rent, utilities, and food. We asked a lawyer, and he said there's no legal issue. Yoon Bora added with wary eyes. Chief Li Taishin clenched and opened his hands. I'm not trying to bring up the contract. Just, we decided to put our all into this single. Let's at least do this. Just this once. We already got a song. A song from some unknown producer. His face distorted. I'm sorry I couldn't get you a song by a famous songwriter. I'm truly sorry about that. But this song is the best out of all the title tracks we've had so far. ITLL be a waste to throw it away now. So please trust me once more and. I can't trust you. Park Hyogen turned to look at Chief Li Taishin. We've already flopped three times. On top of that, Jae Uni left. Anyone who looks at this situation will know it's hopeless, 
but you want to try once more. We're already 21. We're already late in trying to debut as a different team, yet you want us to waste our time even more. Why do you only think about yourself? Don't you think that disbanding right now is the best for us? I'm going out to find a path for myself so don't try to stop me when you are incompetent. Uni. A high school member turned and glared at the adult members. Aren't you being too harsh? Don't you know how much the chief has endured for us? And we didn't. It must be so great to be so easygoing since you're still high schoolers. The high school members' eyes turned red at those ridiculing remarks. This was like adding fuel to a fire. The members began fighting loudly. Stop, stop it. Pale-faced, Chief Li Taishin tried to stop them. Then he asked the adult members. Have you thought about what you're going to do once you leave the team? Do you think we'd be packing our bags without deciding anything? Yun Bora added with a proud expression. Saran is in NK Entertainment's girl group that's about to make a debut. What? NK. Saran joined NK. Chief Li Taishin hurriedly held Yun Bora's shoulders. I clearly told her not to. Are you even trying to block the path of a member who left long ago? We're going there too. Park Hyogen added. NK is apparently looking for people with experience in performing. We even scheduled a meeting with their chief. We might debut right now. I know their CEO's methods. That's why I told you not to go there. Chief Li Taishin shouted, aghast. Racy outfits that reveal your breasts and thighs. Sensual choreography. They film their music videos like pornos. They are going to send you on programs that ask what your sexual preferences are. How can you think about joining such third rate? What's wrong with that? Park Hyogen asked as if she found this amusing. They are investing money into music videos and getting us appearances on shows. What's wrong with a sexy concept? That's a tactic as well. Isn't it more important to gain people's attention and spread our names? Hyogen. Also, this place is also third-rate. No, this place is worse. Everyone besides you and those girls know that the president brought Jae Uni out when he went to drink with investors. Chief Lee Taishin's eyes flared. His phone slipped from his hands. The three high school members were also pale as though they had just woken up from a nightmare. What do you mean by that? Why don't you ask the president? The adult members finished packing and got up. At the two girls who were walking out the door, Chief Li Taishin said in a trembling voice. If, if something like that was going on, why didn't you tell me? Why do you think? Park Hyogen said while opening the front door. If Jay Uni can nab a sponsor, then our team can become more popular. The two then left without looking back. The sound of rolling wheels quickly grew distant. Bastard. This bastard. Chief Li Taishin hastily slipped his shoes on. Chief. WH where are you going? It'll be right back so stay here. Don't cry too much. The door slammed shut. The three high school members were the only ones who remained in the apartment. The three sat without moving with blank expressions. Tears endlessly fell from their already soaked cheeks. Just then, a phone rang. It was Chief Li Taishin's phone that had fallen below the beds. The member closest to the phone answered the phone. Not long after, someone knocked on their door. The exhausted members stared at the door with shocked expressions. The there isn't anyone who would knock. Was he for real? Did he really come? What do we do? Shouldn't we call the chief? How can we call him when he left his phone here? While they were taken aback, there was another knock on the door. Open the door first. We're making him wait. Two of them wiped the tears off their faces, and the one member who was in a better condition than the two got up and opened the door. Wearing a disheveled wool coat and with sunglasses tightly held in his hand, a man was panting in front of the door like he had run up the stairs. Chief Young Sun Wu was standing in front of the door. Three members with childish features stared up at me. Their eyes were trembling as though they were taken aback. What a sight. Their faces were red and their eyes were swollen. They looked like goldfish. One even had the hiccups. 
one of them, who had a blank expression, abruptly shouted. One, two, three. Hello. We are pretty, pretty. The girls stiffened and stopped their nasal voice chant. Still bowing, they raised their heads to reveal tears flowing down like rain. I was a mess, but they looked like they were completely out of it. We aren't pretty girls but dregs. Dregs? The girls nodded gloomily. I was led inside their apartment. It was a mess. All their household items were sprawled on the floor. Someone unfamiliar with the situation would think they were robbed. I tried to understand what was going on first. The girls sat around me and explained the situation. Throughout their explanation, they used a toilet roll to wipe their tears, blow their nose, and wail like the sky was failing. No, to them, the sky really did fall. Since their team suddenly split in half. I was astonished too. How could things come to this? If things went as expected, they would be revitalized with their new single. That was what would have happened. How did everything scatter to the wind in a single day? Let's recall from the beginning. Young Jay. She mistakenly thought I was interested in her and believed the rumor that I would work for a price so she left her team. The other two members exploded and left as though they had been waiting for this opportunity. Now all that was left was these three members and Chief Li Taishin. In the end, me staring at Young Jay a bit longer. That must have been the turning point. What kind of shitty butterfly effect was this? But, hick, sorry. The member to my left held back her hiccup and continued. Why have you come here? Hmm. That's. Three goldfish looked at me. What should I do? What would be the best way to clean up this predicament? I had a calm expression on my face but was furiously churning my brain for a solution. Someone was pressing the keypad outside. The member quickly looked at the door. Wary, anticipation, and gloom were present on their faces. The door opened. Chief Li Taishin entered. It seemed he had a scuffle with the president as his lips were busted and his appearance was a mess. Chief. What happened to your face? Were you hurt? It's nothing. Did you hear back from the other Membi, huh? Chief Li Taishin stiffened when he discovered me. Seeing how confused he was, I walked over to him and said. Hello, Chief. How are you, no, why have you come here? I called you and a member answered. She was crying. Ah. Thank, no, sorry. You must be busy, yet you came all the way here. He trailed off. Then he stared at me. His blurry eyes began to shine. He rushed over to me and held my arm desperately like a person who was sinking in a swamp. Chief Young, does WU plan on producing another girl group after Neptune? Plans? If you do, could they audition to be trainees? He gestured to the members. While they aren't impressive at a glance, they are really kind, hard-working girls. They never said they wanted to give up after all they went through. Even when their unis fought, they acted cautiously and didn't cry once. Chief Li Taishin's eyes were getting teary as well. The three pretty girls held his arms while sniffling. If you aren't, could I ask you to introduce us to some other companies? I just don't have the ability if you help us, I would do whatever it takes to repay this debt. He said while bowing his head multiple times. Their heartrending cries and request rang in my ears. Then my frantic mind finally came to a decision. Yeah, let's try it. Chapter 151 Although I received a brief explanation, did the company really take their hands off? Chief Li Taishin nodded a few times before replying. Yes, yes. There will be no contract issues if the girls sign with any other company. You do not have to worry about that. A member who actually left before already signed with another company and is preparing for a debut. They didn't have a company, and their group was about to disband. I said to Chief Li Taishin, who had a pitiful expression. Our company has no plans on selecting new trainees at the moment. Ah. He bit his lips. His busted lip grew redder. If they want to join another company, they'll have to be separated. Hoping that they end up in the same company is just wishful thinking on my part. 
If a decent company is willing to accept them, then even if they have to separate. One of the sniffling members cried out. Her cries quickly infected the others. They faltered like they were drunk from all that crying. Chief Li Taishin looked at them with a heartbroken expression. A member grabbed his arm. What will happen to you if we go? You borrowed a lot of money for us. What if loan sharks come and take your Xinjiang and Kongpat one? Chief Li Taishin rubbed his red eyes. Then he nonchalantly said. You worry too much. I didn't borrow from people like them. Also, Xinjiang and Kongpat are the same thing. It'll die if I sell them both. Study hard so you don't embarrass yourself when you go on entertainment shows. Is that the problem right now? Is it? Chief. Just worry about yourselves. You can just call me back once you're successful. I watched from a distance as they held each other and wailed like a family separating. My cool head filled itself with calculations. My decision became even more resolute. I will bring them all. How about releasing your single album? As planned? Chief Li Taishin turned to look at me. Confusion spread on his despairing face. An album? Yes, with me. Their wails stopped instantly. We cleaned up the messy floor and sat in a circle. Chief Li Taishin and the girls seemed dazed. Since I brought up releasing an album together, they were busy trying to figure out what I meant and exchanging glances with each other. First, could I listen to the song? Th the song. Chief Li Taishin blinked. The one you received from the songwriter Dio M. Do you have other songs? Ah, uh, no. We only have that one. Don't tell me that that song has been handed over to someone else. Of course not. Yandu, the laptop. Please wait. A member hastily got up. Soon, a laptop was placed on the floor. Chief Li Taishin searched for the audio file. His hand seemed stiff as the cursor moved in strange directions. A song began to play soon. It was the guide version. Someone was humming over the instrumentals. While listening to the song, Chief Li Taishin and the girls waited with bated breaths. The not even four minute song quickly ended. Ah, uh, how is it? Chief Li Taishin asked with an anxious expression. I looked at him and the three goldfish and replied. I think it's good. It's catchy. Re really? That was a lie. I licked my lips and lied. To be honest, I had no idea. This song brought an unknown group to the top of the charts. It wasn't short-lived since this lasted at least two weeks. Kim Hyunjo said the song would be a hit no matter who sang it so I thought I could tell as soon as I heard it. I understood that it was nice to listen to. However, that was it. At least for me. Well, this was comparable to when I first heard Lee Taehee's song, Satellite, as well. I become confident with this. My ears were crap. Still, what was fortunate was that I felt the same way when I heard the songs Lee Taehee played for me not too long ago. Should I say it felt like the possibility that they were all good enough to shoot for first place was steadily increasing? As expected, I should play them for my other team members and the AR team and discuss with them. I'm curious which one Kim Hyunjo would like the most. Excuse me, about releasing an album with us, were you serious? The hesitant voice trailed off. The other members pulled the member who said that. Hey, how could you disturb him? He's thinking. I, I was just so curious. Endure it. The goldfish whispered to each other while examining my expression. I'm serious. Their eyes bulged even more when they heard me. Their mouths opened and closed. Chief Li Taishin looked at me. He looked all choked up. I stretched out my hand towards him and said. Since an album isn't done on one's own, they'll have to discuss with my company to know for sure, but I'm serious. I hope that we can work on Pretty Girl's next single together. What do you think? He held my hand without any hesitation. Chief Li Taishin shook his leg anxiously. He was attempting to contact the members who left the group. Young Jay's phone had been turned off since her call with me. When I told him what had happened, Chief Li Taishin pitifully said that there were some circumstances and that he would talk with her once he got a hold of her. 
However, Young Jae wasn't the only one who wasn't responding. It was the same for the remaining two members. When calling, one rang while the other hung up mid-ring. They seemed to be avoiding answering their calls. The girls are too hot-headed right now you girls try and call them too. If they don't answer your phone, they probably won't answer ours. The goldfish mumbled as they called. There was no answer. Instead, one of them received a text. Chief Li Taishin quickly asked. Who is it? Is it one of the girls? It's Hyajinuni. Hyajin. What did she say? To stop calling her because it's pissing her off. She also told me to tell you not to call her anymore. She seemed upset by the text as her swollen cheeks trembled. I heard that they left on a bad note, but it seemed the situation was worse than I initially thought. Now that I thought about it, Chief Li Taishin did mention the Uni's psychological warfare. Were they not close? Would it be okay if I mentioned you in the text? Chief Li Taishin asked desperately. The girls will definitely change their minds if they learn that you'll be helping out. That's a bit tricky it could be leaked to the press if someone else reads it. The reporters are waiting for any bit of news, so things will get complicated if this leaks to the press before things are certain. Also, the members. I also had my doubts. Even if the girls returned after Chief Li Taishin mentions my name, would they be able to group together as pretty girls once again? When the glass has already shattered? They would have been successful together if it wasn't for the butterfly effect I created. I would feel less guilty if I got them back on track, but so long as I decided to bring them together, I had to consider the possible risks as well. Well, it wasn't like I personally talked with the members prior so my concerns were unfounded for now. I shook my head and got up. First, I think I'll need to head to work. Let's meet up once we settle our problems. The members saw me out. Chief Li Taishin told the girls to stay inside and followed me out to the parking lot alone. He hesitated before saying. I couldn't bring it up because of the girls, but would WU invest in a group like us? It's not like it's an insignificant investment. If you give me a day, I think you'll be able to procure some more money. Then. I got in my minivan and replied. Please let me handle that. The Team 3 leader looked around the office before calling Kim Hyunjo. He bought two coffees from the vending machine as he asked. Is Lucky Charm not coming to work today? He said hell come after doing something first. Why? Drinking the warm coffee, the Team 3 leader got to the point. It looked like he had a lot of worries yesterday, don't you need to talk with him? I already did. Kim Hyunjo shrugged. You already did? I keep forgetting because I'm an incompetent sunbae who he's already surpassed, but I'm his superior. We had a good talk last night that you aren't aware of. Kim Hyunjo said jokingly. The Team 3 leader patted his shoulder. And the talk ended well? I think so. Let's see his expression when he comes into work. Kim Hyunjo paused. Young Sunwoo got off the elevator. Young Sunwoo's eyes widened when he discovered the two in front of the vending machine. The corners of his lips curled up. Seeing him approach them with steadfast steps, the Team 3 leader poked Kim Hyunjo's side. Maybe you're gifted in counseling others. His face is lively today. I know, right? Maybe I should change careers. Team leader, chief, I have something I want to discuss with you. Are you free right now? Young Sun Wu suddenly asked. The two nodded with dazed faces. In an instant, the three sat facing each other in a meeting room. What's the hurry? What do you want to talk about? Do you happen to know the girl group, Pretty Girls? Pretty Girls? I think I've heard of them before. Aren't they the rookies with multiple flops? What about them? The Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo tilted their head as they had no idea what was going on. Young Sun Woo said. They are preparing for a digital single for their next album, but there was a problem and they no longer have a company. Their preparations are about to go belly up as well. That's common. They'll soon disband I guess. The Team 3 leader clicked his tongue. So, what about these pretty girls? As if he waited for this, Young Sun Woo said in a clear voice. 
I want to take care of them. The clip of Pretty Girl's performance ended. The Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo stared at the black screen a while longer. Their complexions were similarly dark. Soon, the Team 3 leader downed his cold coffee. The paper cup crumbled in his hand. Only three high schoolers remain out of those six. The others already packed their bags and left. That's the situation as of right now. And you want to produce their single album. Yes. That song is by some unknown songwriter by the name of Domi. It's Doem. I don't care if it's a Domi or Gajami. 2. The Team 3 leader shouted before grasping the back of his neck. He groaned. He then asked Kim Hyunjo, who was rubbing his face. Hey, what kind of talk did you say you had last night? That his life wasn't over with a single failure. To enjoy work. Oh my god. I said that in order to help him deal with the pressure, but I think the dosage was too high. It's not just high, he needs a doping test. He's not in his right mind. The Team 3 leader shook his head. Kim Hyunjo sighed as he said. Hey, why did you have to get caught up in something strange again? Mr. Nam Joyun was at least by himself. These girls are a group. Also, it's not something that can be handled on your own. To make an album, they'll need a recording, mixing, and choreography team as well. They'll also need to film the music video. On top of that, they'll need stylists and makeup artists. That's a huge investment. The risk is too high if it fails. Doesn't seem absurd to you as well. Lucky Charm, I know you have a good eye. I do, but this is very excessive. There's no need to even bring this up to the director or CEO. Just go ask any employee outside. I bet they'll all think you're crazy. Quickly venting this, the Team 3 leader said in a more consoling manner. If their potential is a shame to lose, then we can feature them on one of Neptune's songs. So, don't think about producing some single album and focus on Neptune's full album. ITLL benefit Neptune as well if the results are good. I am confident that the results will be good. Young Sun Wu looked at them and added. And I have the plans too. CEO Beck Hansung entered his office. The director, who was already sitting inside, put down his teacup and stood up. His greeting was full of laughter. The director's round cheeks wiggled like he was holding himself back from laughing out loud. What's so funny? Lucky Charm's actions are getting funnier by the day. He's my energizer these days. He brought over an actor who was unknown for ten years and raised him to success. Now he's caught up with a girl group that's about to disband. One where half the members have left. The director chuckled for a good while. He sated his throat with black tea before finally managing to hold back his laughter. He then said. But it really is strange. Maybe it's because it's lucky charm, but I'm anticipating how ITLL go. What will happen once the girl group is in their care? I almost want to let him do it just to see how it pans out. The director said joyfully before suddenly frowning. Oh my. I need to keep my tongue in check. The reporters will go crazy if they hear about this. They'll be in a frenzy, I bet. Probably. CEO Beck Hansung smiled faintly. Then shall we hear it? What his thoughts are? The director immediately pulled out his phone and called someone. Yeah, the CEO just arrived. Tell Lucky Charm to come up. Chapter 152 After hanging up, the director raised his teacup again. He gave CEO Beck Hansung a curious glance. As always, it was difficult to tell what he was thinking by his expression. In the end, the director couldn't hold his question back any longer. What are you going to do? He said he has a plan. He'll decide once I hear it. CEO Beck Hansung said calmly. The director licked his lips and mumbled. To be honest, there isn't much of a benefit for the company to bear such a large risk. The press will be all over this since Lucky Charm already set a precedent with Nam Joyun. ITLL mean nothing if their album obtains lukewarm results. They need to be near the top of the charts for this to work, right? That's right. 
Lucky Charm must be confident in succeeding for him to push this, but I wonder what he wants to accomplish by bringing Neptune into this as well. What would you do in this situation? Like there was no need to think about it, CEO Beck Hansung said. I would make a program. A program? A reality TV show so that the entire country can watch it. The director blinked. The meeting between a manager who was successful in all of his endeavors and an unknown girl group that was about to disband. People couldn't help but be interested in this. They could also expect high ratings considering how much of a hot topic this would be. If the program became a hit, then the unknown girl group's popularity would rise and interest in their single would undoubtedly rise as well. Then, so long as the song was good, they could shoot for first place on the charts. Thinking this, the director admired. This might be worth pursuing. No, we could even push for this. He straightened his posture and continued. The story is good, so ITLL boost our company's image if we broadcast it. Although Lucky Charm doesn't like appearing on entertainment shows, I think he'll think positively on this. Should we bring it up when he comes in? Wait first. CEO Beck Hansung shook his head. I'm curious what his plan is. How about we film a reality show of their album production process? I said. Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader had nodded their heads, saying that it was a decent plan, but the reactions here were a little strange. The director's strange gaze alternated between me and CEO Beck Hansung, and CEO Beck Hansung's gaze was fixated on me. He had simply smiled when I had shown them pretty girls' profiles, stage performances, and music videos. But it was different now. He looked like he was caught unexpected. What was this? I cleared my throat and continued. If I say that I am producing an album with a girl group that was about to disband, the press will promote it on their own. If this can stay a hot topic until the end of the show, the single could get good results as well. Of course, it would succeed without such methods since the song was already good. However, they would tell me to let pretty girls disband and buy the song if I told them that. I would have done the same if the circumstances were so complicated. This was the only method that could benefit both pretty girls and me as well as persuade the company. If professionals in our company help, well package it well and put it on the show. If this is a success, I believe ITLL have a beneficial impact on our company's image as well. WU's image dropped a little due to the anonymous comment about the Team 2 leader. Also, WU's broadcast exposure was relatively small when it was currently becoming more and more trendy for CEOs of large companies, producers, and songwriters to make TV appearances. And the most important thing was. Although I need to talk with them about this, I'm thinking about having Neptune be Pretty Girl's mentors. Neptune was also unknown for a long time. ITLL also help promote solidarity within their fandom if they appear in this sort of a reality TV show before their next album. Why didn't they say anything? I was almost out of things to say. Those are all your thoughts. The director suddenly asked. They are. If we make a show like you say, then you'll be the star of it. I thought you didn't like making TV appearances. That's why the CEO told the Team 3 leader not to push you if you didn't want to do them. I still don't like them, but my thoughts changed a little. I still didn't like being in the spotlight. However, I began placing more importance on necessity than my personal preference after my talk with Kim Hyunjo yesterday since my current fame would go up in flames once I fail. So while I was still a hot topic as mid-ass hand, I want to do whatever I can for the celebrities under my care. Once Pretty Girl's album is a success, would be able to use my image to a greater degree next time. I was also planning on meeting with the good friend's staff, who wanted to me to make an appearance, again. There was no reason not to make an appearance if it would help the girls keep their places on their show. I was waiting for their reactions when, suddenly, CEO Beck Hansung laughed. Make your own team. Your own project team. You'll be the team leader. I was overwhelmed before I could even be happy that my plan would be put in place. Make your own team and try it. You'll be watching. Team leader. Team leader. The director immediately asked as soon as young Sun Wu rigidly moved his limbs and walked out of the office. 
CEO Beck Hansung was smiling brightly like he found this amusing. The director tangled the few bundles of hair he had left. Isn't it too early to make him a team leader considering his age and experience? It's also very sudden. It's just a project team. He has to organize the staff then produce and launch the program. This won't be easy. Lucky Charm has no experience in this as well. Will the team progress smoothly? Even if we publicly say that he's the team leader on the show since he's the star, I think ITLL will be safer to have someone else lead internally. I want to use this opportunity to check since he has no experience. CEO Beck Hansung added. If he has the capacity to lead his own team. Chief Lee Taishin arrived at NK Entertainment's office. His lips had dried blood, and his eyes were swollen. He wore a dress shirt dyed with dried blood. A female employee, who glanced at his appearance, said irritably. Don't ask us and try to contact the previous members personally. I can't get in touch with them. They said that they had a meeting with a chief here today. I just need a quick word with them before then. Just one minute. Please tell me where and when they will meet. I don't know. Then could you give me the chief's contact information? I can't provide that as it is his personal information. The female employee's attitude was apathetic. She didn't seem to want to talk to him. Then please let the chief know that I must meet the girls. It's really important. The female employee picked up the phone after a long time. Someone answered immediately. Chief Hong, pretty girls manager is here right now. He said he wants to talk to you, ah, uh, are you busy? Then he'll text you his information so if you have time later. Please tell him it's a contract issue. Chief Li Taishin said. The female employee's complexion abruptly changed. Chief, apparently, it's a contract issue. Soon, the female employee wrote something down. After hanging up, she handed it to him. Go here. They are meeting right now. They were meeting in a coffee shop nearby. Chief Li Taishin got in his van and rushed over there. He ran into the coffee shop and saw the two members he had been desperately looking for, Park Hyogen and Yun Bora, sitting next to each other, sipping their drinks with excited faces. The stocky, fat man sitting across from them said. Just think that you were chasing away bad luck until now. This will be the turning point. You girls are lucky. Your timing is amazing. The song has been decided, the choreography is set, you just need to join the group. Hyachin, Bora. The two members turned around. Chief Li Taishin halted. Park Hyogen and Yun Bora's expressions soured as soon as they saw him like he was some unwanted visitor. Park Hyogen asked. You said you wouldn't bring up the contract, and now what? What's the contract issue? I only said that so I could talk to you. I have something I need to tell you. Yun Bora set her glass down hard on the table. Chief, why are you acting like this? Can't you let us walk away on good terms? Just wait. You'll change your mind if you listen to me. An unexpected proposal arrived after you left. If things work out, ITLL will be a huge opportunity for us. A big opportunity that I couldn't get for you until now. And what's that? Park Hyogen asked with a snort. Chief Li Taishin was about to answer before glancing at the man across from them. Rumors can't be allowed to spread so let's talk outside. Just say it here. The man said while tapping his crossed leg in the air. We'll talk amongst ourselves. Ah, uh, ourselves. The girls already signed with us. They are in my care now. Chief Li Taishin stopped breathing. So if you want to say something, say it in front of me. The man took out a bundle of paper from his bag and waved it in a teasing manner. It was a signed exclusive contract. Chief Li Taishin stood aghast as he stared at the girls. The girls had triumphant smiles on their faces the moment his heart was crushed. Why, why were you so hasty? We have to take an opportunity when it arrives. We don't care what you wanted to say. We already got our own big opportunity. Park Hyogen smiled brightly at the man in front of her. Yun Bora added. Chief Hong here said that we wasted our time. 
that he completely regrets how we wasted our time in pretty girls. So please stop it. How many times did you text and call us? Yoon Bora's eyes momentarily turned fierce. Are you jealous that we found a path to success? Do you want all of us to die together? Chief Lee Taishin sighed. His phone vibrated in his pocket. It was a text. We decided to create a project team. The problem on this side has been resolved. How is it on yours? Chief Lee Taishin's expression distorted. They couldn't tell if he was happy or sad. Let's go. He'll show you the practice room. Yes. The man and the members left without looking back. Passing Chief Li Taishin, who stood rigidly, Park Hyogen asked. Do you have anything else to say? No. He shook his head. I held two full plastic bags in each hand. I locked the minivan and entered the apartment. My phone wavered dangerously in its place between my cheek and shoulder like it would slip out at any moment. A stifled voice leaked out from my phone. I'm truly sorry. I wanted to bring them back no matter what. There's nothing we can do if they've already signed with another company. He sighed. I could still think about this situation from a distance, but Chief Li Taishin's emotions should be much more complicated than mine since he took care of the girls since they were trainees. What about the remaining member? Jay's phone is still off. I called her parents thinking she might have gone back home, but they didn't even know that she left the group. She's probably regretting her decision somewhere. If you wait one more day, they'll definitely bring her back somehow. Don't beat yourself up too much about the members who already left. We still have the gold dash, I mean, the remaining members. Did you tell them the news? Of course, I told them right away. Chief Li Taishin's voice clearly became brighter. They made a huge fuss when I told them that we would be releasing an album and that they would be practicing in WU's practice room. They cried and laughed and ran around the room. I bet the springs on their beds are all shot. And how did they react to the reality TV show? They asked me if it was real a hundred times. They almost never made TV appearances even though it's been a while since they've debuted. They can't wait to tell their families. Their parents had it tough all this time as well. Chief Li Taishin said bitterly before pausing. He then added. To be honest, I don't know why you picked us out of all the unknown groups. I'm scared to ask. His voice sounded somewhat resolute. Only, they'll work my best to make sure you don't regret choosing us. The girls will as well. We need to work together since we now all on the same boat. I stood in front of the door after hanging up. I placed my bags down to enter the passcode when the door suddenly burst open. Appa, come in quick. Lee Sangda gestured. She seemed abnormally happy. I smelled something delicious when I entered. Fried chicken, pizza, and pig's feet filled the table. The girls came over. Why did you buy so much? I brought drinks, food, and snacks. I swept through a convenience store. Two hands came out. Li Sangha took the bag filled with snacks, and Li Tae He took the one with alcohol. I dropped the rest off in the kitchen and took off my coat. Im Seo Young followed me around with an excited expression. Why did you come over all of a sudden? It's been a while since you last came. Has it really been that long? You've been busy with work recently. Kwan Wu Appa's the one who picks us up too. Thinking about it, she was right. I used to come over quite often before. LJ asked him Seo Young's question again. Why did you come over? Is there something to celebrate? Hmm, it would be nice if you congratulated me. Why? What is it? I became a team leader. The living room became quiet. Im Seo Young, who had been jumping around, blankly stared at me with her mouth agape. LJ and Lee Tae Hee tilted their heads as if they misheard. Lee Sangha looked like she was about to toss me up. Promo. No, it's only temporary. I've been assigned to a project. A project? That's do you remember pretty girls? The ones who said you were their role models? The girls' expressions became strange. I looked at the four of them. 
My gaze especially lingered on Lee Songa. Why was I as nervous as I was when talking to CEO Beck Hansung right now? Taking a deep breath, I said. I'm going to produce their next album. Chapter, 153. It was quiet. Like the calm before a storm. I'm not changing who I'm assigned to. I'm still your manager, and pretty girls have their own manager. And that's the project? Im Seo Young asked in a calm voice. I was momentarily at a loss for words at their unexpected reactions. Instead of replying, I just nodded. This time, LJ said. Let's talk while eating. The food's going to go cold. That's right. Open the pizza box first. We need to eat it while it warm because we added a ton of extra cheese. The girls moved quickly. LJ opened and set the food and snacks I bought on the table, and Lee Tae-hee filled glasses with various drinks. I'm Seo Young divided the tasty pizza for everyone. What was this reaction? I had thought that they would call me a traitor like when they mistakenly thought I was being assigned to Sun Chai Young or hit the ground like citizens who lost their country, but it felt odd that they seemed completely fine. I stood, unable to adjust to the situation when Lee Sangha approached me. I became tense again. We have potato and bulgogi one. Ha! Huh. Lee Sangha showed me the two pizza slices in her hands. I brought over the biggest slices. Which one would you like? Uh, just give me whatever but do you have nothing you want to say to me? Or want to throw at me? Lee Sangha stared at me. Opening her lips, which had no makeup on, she said. I wish it goes well. Your project. She smiled slightly as she nodded. I felt like I had swallowed a stone. The other girl's reactions made me confused, but I became even more confused after seeing Lee Song has reaction. Lee Song has reaction had always been the same, whether Sun Chai Young asked me to be her manager or I told her I wanted to work with Nam Joyun. It felt like the girl who always stuck next to me had taken a step away. This change was shocking. It's a good opportunity for you, Appa. Lee Sangha said nonchalantly. Even if it's only temporary now, if this project is a success, you might really become a team leader. I really hope you do. It's fine so long as you don't change who you're assigned to. If you get promoted, then they'll just work that much harder to become successful. She then started working her way through the pizza. Half the pizza instantly disappeared in her mouth. After her cheeks were stuffed like a squirrel saving food for the winter, she began talking again. It's fine as long as I become famous and important enough for a team leader to personally take care and go around with me. Then we can continue to work together. Her voice was muffled due to the food in her cheeks, but her every word rang clearly in my ears like bells. How could she say such words with no change to her expression? Lee Sangha looked at me again. Then she became surprised. Uh, I ate both slices. When did I eat them both? There'll probably be some left. She brushed off the crumbs from her now empty hands and quickly rushed over to the table. Then she grabbed one of the remaining slices and waved it at me. She even gestured at me to come over. I shook my head. Her words, which echoed in my head like bells, dispersed. I was sort of expecting this. Lee Tae-hee said while handing me a glass of alcohol when I sat down next to Lee Sangha. Im Seo Young hugged her knees and nodded. You're becoming more and more famous by the day, and everything you do is a huge success. You can't stay with us forever. We were thinking that a day like this would arrive. It came much faster than we expected, and it's surprising that it's for another girl group. It's still worth celebrating. LJ added. Im Seo Young made a fuss about how we needed to toast and raised her glass. Five glasses clinked in the air. I downed my glass in one go. I drank the cold beer with ice, yet heat spread out from my throat to my belly. They had been expecting this. So that was what they were thinking when I was focused on other things. Maybe I should have brought it up earlier since I would be working with another girl group even if I wasn't going to be their personal manager. This must feel different than when I started working with Nam Joyun. It wouldn't be weird if they were disappointed, yet they didn't show such emotions on their faces. I looked at them and said. Even in the future, to me, 
you girls are. Yua, don't say it. Just stop. I was going to say something serious, yet I'm Seo Young shouted while covering her face. I didn't even say what I wanted to. To me, you girls are first, to me, you are the best. You were going to say something like that, weren't you? That's true. You'll make me cry even if you made an old 80s gag. I'm holding it back. If you say something like that, this party's going to be ruined with everyone crying. I don't plan on crying though. LJ said before adding. You're the only one who might cry all night out of the four of us. Damn it, then I'm going to the washroom so finish it off before I come back. Im Seo Young got up and ran to the bathroom. Dumbfounded, I laughed. The girls started giggling too. As expected, with Im Seo Young, any serious mood would soften up. She needed show this side of her on entertainment shows. Thinking this, I received the chicken thigh Lee Sangha passed me. But why is it pretty girls? LJ changed the mood. Is it because of that member who asked for your business card? Young Jae or something? My cheeks stung. I knew who was staring at me without looking. It really isn't. It's not. She has semi-left the group, so we don't know if she'll come back or not. The piercing stare softened. LJ, who was looking at me with narrowed eyes, tilted her head. Did I see wrong? Her eyes didn't seem normal, so I thought she would definitely contact you. Your gaze also lingered on her that day. So I thought you were producing the album for her. Her quick senses were almost at the level of being a superpower. I explained Pretty Girl's unfortunate situation. Then I said to Lee Tae-hee, who was blowing on the lip of a bottle by herself. Although this is a project producing Pretty Girl's single album, ITLL also benefit your next album as well. So please trust me and wait. Smiling faintly, Lee Tae-hee nodded. My mind was dizzy from the tapping noise. When I checked what it was, it was my finger tapping on the table. I clenched a fist and looked beside me. Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader were concentrating while sharing a pair of earphones. They were focused on Lee Tae-hee's first song. The song went by in a flash when I listened to it, but now these four minutes seemed like four hours. I licked my dry lips. I was parched. I wanted to pour some warm coffee down my throat, but the coffee cup in my hand was empty long ago. The first song finally ended. The Team 3 leader took his earphone out and whispered something to Kim Hyunjo. His expression wasn't very bright. Did he not like it? When I listened to it, although it has been proven that my ears were crap, I thought that it definitely wasn't a bad song. I thought it was of similar quality to the Pretty Girl song. You said that there were two more songs. The Team 3 leader asked while scratching his sideburns. Let's talk after listening to them all. I felt like my insides were being crushed. I played the remaining two songs. Their expressions didn't change. I comforted myself when I saw them nod their head or tap their feet. It was finally over by the time I crumbled my coffee cup. The two began whispering to each other again. My patience was being burned to its wick. In the end, I couldn't endure it any longer and asked. How were they? Does Taehee have any other songs than these? Kim Hyunjo asked with a frown. These are the only ones that are complete. Right? I asked just in case. A sigh was mixed in with his answer. My frozen mind began to churn. If they both found the three songs to be lacking, then the AR team's opinion wouldn't be too different from them. That would be the worst. I had thought that at least one of Lee Taehee's songs would get a good reaction considering she put her heart into making them. Was there a better song among the ones they've already collected? Also, if that was the case, then Pretty Girl Single. If I played that song for them in this dreary situation where none of the songs played were worthy of being title tracks and if Kim Hyunjo, the Team 3 leader, and other employees thought that the song would be a hit if Neptune sang it like in my future. Of course, they would want to give that song to Neptune and give Pretty Girls a different one. Even if we decided to work on the project, Neptune's next album would obviously be more important to the company. It was the same for me. Another storm began brewing once I finally relaxed my mind. 
what should we do about this? The Team 3 leader groaned. Hyunjo, you listened to all the songs we collected until now, right? Were there any good ones? I did pick a few, but they weren't good enough to be title tracks. As just another song in the album, well. Which one should we pick as the title track? I liked the first one. The second one for me. I think that one suited Neptune better. We could go with double title tracks like before. We need to think hard about it. Their conversation became strange midway. I gave the two of them a blank look when the Team 3 leader chuckled. Take a picture of Lucky Charm, no, Team Leader Young. It's my first time seeing him make that expression. I know, right? His spirits pierced the sky when he said he wanted to release an unknown girl group's album, yet did he also age when he became a team leader? Why are you acting like an old man? Stop being so wishy-washy. It's better if your spirits are high even if you do something absurd. Kim Hyunjo said while laughing. He then slapped my shoulder. Good, they're good. Why are you so nervous when bringing such good songs? My tense shoulders finally relaxed. These guys. Were you surprised? I think it's jokes like this that can kill. I said as I brushed my front hair aside. Oh my god. I was so nervous for the past 15 minutes that my forehead was soaked in sweat. Exhausted, I rested my back on the chair and asked again. Are all three songs good? They are better than Satellite. Kim Hyunjo immediately replied. His voice was filled with excitement and certainty. He tapped the table and said. The first song was so catchy that I thought, this is the one. Then when I heard the second song, I thought, no, this is the one. That was the same for the third. Taehee really is talented. She must have been under a lot of pressure because her first two songs were hits, but she keeps making songs like this. I bet ITLL be fun making their next album with songs like this. So drunk Song Inho's impressions were correct. If I knew their reactions would be so good, I would have played the songs right away. I just wasted time worrying about it by myself. I felt good when I thought about giving Lee Taehee the good news. The Team 3 leader chuckled as he added. Lucky Charm, if your plan works, then maybe this will be an even greater hit than their mini-album. Plan. If in the future I had yet to see, the album with Lee Taehee's song wasn't a hit, I believe that it was because of bad luck or timing or a lack of mass appeal. And those were things I could do something about. I planned on increasing the press and public's interest to their peak with the success of Pretty Girl's reality TV show and single before releasing Neptune's next album. So that they could make a comeback with so much of the public's interest that we wouldn't even have to promote their album. I would make that happen. But does Pretty Girls not have a song? Kim Hyunjo suddenly asked. You said that an unknown songwriter made it. Do you not have it here? I'm curious about that too. Various thoughts crossed my mind in a brief moment. Wouldn't it be okay? They really liked Lee Taehee's song, and there was a massive benefit to having Lee Taehee's own songs. Also, she had three songs to boot. So. I swallowed dryly. I have it. They put on their earphones again. I played the guide version, which I had listened to a countless number of times. Then I observed their expressions, especially Kim Hyunjo's. Chapter, 154 As the softly playing song came to an end, Kim Hyunjo said. This is good too. That was it. How do you like the song? It's good. The melody is catchy. I bet ITLL do quite well on the charts. This definitely wasn't a bad reaction. But it felt lukewarm. Even if the song wasn't good enough for him to jump and shout, Eureka. I had thought he would react a bit more strongly than this. Did I pick the wrong song? No, this was definitely the one Kim Hyunjo praised was a good song and said it would have been even a bigger hit if Neptune sang it. At the sudden thought, I stared at Kim Hyunjo. Chief, you know the song that's first on the charts right now. What? Rubinus one new song. What if Neptune sang that song? It would have been a bigger hit if Neptune sang it. The song's good. Oh my god. 
I rubbed my face with both hands before asking. Then what about Pretty Girl's new song you just heard? What if Neptune sang that? Obviously Neptune would do much better than Pretty Girl's. The song would be more polished. I don't know about that. The Team 3 leader, who had been lost in his thoughts, abruptly joined in. It doesn't fit with Neptune's image, right? It's too cute and girly. Is it? Kim Hyunjo shrugged. Then he looked at me and asked. But what's with your expression? You look depressed. Of course, I was. I was depressed at the several days I spent worrying and struggling with internal conflict and the nights I spent enduring temptation was all for naught. It was so ridiculous I laughed. Why did I believe Kim Hyunjo's words at face value? It wasn't like some revelation. Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader looked at me like I was crazy when I laughed while covering my face. Still, this incident wasn't completely pointless as I would always be tempted as long as I saw the future. Since I was able to reevaluate myself through this incident, I wouldn't waver next time. I tried to comfort myself by thinking this. Ah, I realized one thing. The future I saw were hints, not answers. Create your own team. CEO Beck Hansung's order, which seemed like a test, echoed in my mind. First, I asked for the Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo's help to create a list of experts within WU and amongst its partners. Then I looked for team members amongst the staff who normally worked with Blackout. The most important of them was the AR team's producer as we needed a conductor to make an album. The person I came looking to see today was the person who created Blackout's digital single, Producer Ferret. Of course, his real name was something else, but this man who called himself Producer Ferret was living in a dark office. It's not Neptune's but some unknown group's album, huh? Well, at least the song is decent. Producer Ferret said while perching his chin. He was decorated in skull tattoos and rings. I heard that you have some time now that Blackout's done promoting their digital single. That's true, but I was planning on producing some songs in New York and refresh myself. His eyes moved quickly beyond his horn-rimmed glasses. His gaze was mixed with curiosity and light expectations. He looked like he was weighing the pros and cons of joining my project team. I also recalled all the information I gathered on him. He originally dreamed of being a singer-songwriter but made it big as a producer when that failed. He never rejects a chance to have an interview with the press and loves attention. Although he was skilled, he almost never took on unknown groups with little popularity back when he was a freelancer. He was asked to appear on multiple broadcasts because he was good-looking but was quickly fired for not being a good talker. His rumors spread amongst show writers that no one asks him to appear on their show anymore. I tied the bait to the hook. We plan on broadcasting the album production process like a reality TV show. A show. He immediately took the bait. I smiled brightly and continued. I think you'll look great on camera since you are the most good-looking amongst the AR team. We want to film you producing. It'll do it. Got him. Although I got one, this was only the start. I couldn't make an album with him alone. My list of full of experts I need to fish, but I couldn't focus solely on this project either. I didn't have time to rest as I tried to work through a packed day schedule and create my own team simultaneously. Yes, producer Ferret. Since you've worked with the vocal trainers and choreographers on that list, if you could just connect me to them, Illinois. Chief Young Sun Woo. A woman approached me with a bright smile on her face. She was a marketing employee of a makeup brand that chose Lee Sangha as their spokesmodel. The signing event is a huge success. Thank you for coming. We will reimburse your trial. Of course, we need to come. It's part of the contract. Um, we would like to schedule a meeting regarding extending MS. Song has contract. Let's talk about that after the signing event. I smiled like a true capitalist as I looked around the signing event. Lee Sangha was signing autographs in front of one of their stores. Quite a bit of time had passed, yet the line only got longer until it filled the department store. There was a fuss in the store as well. Could you give me one of Lee Sangha's lipstick? The one she wore in Royal Family Episode 5? I'm sorry. 
That product is not in stock as it is sold out in all our stores. If you reserve it, you will be able to receive it next month. What? Next month? The production isn't fast enough to keep up with the demand. Even though they encountered an endless number of customers, the employees from the company's headquarters were smiling broadly. The lipstick Lee Sangha wore on Royal Family was sold out and played a huge part in spreading their brand. Thanks to that, Lee Sangha was receiving a ton of spokesmodel proposals, so it was beneficial for us as well. Happy, I looked at Lee Sangha before I jolted and raised my phone to be ear. Ah, uh, sorry. There was a problem here. Yes, so first the choreographer. After finishing Lee Song has day schedule, I went to find Nam Joyeun before her early morning schedule. I handed him a thick envelope full of scenarios and scripts. Checking its content, Nam Joyeun licked his lips and said. What is all? These are all projects sent for you. Although they are all supporting roles, some are pretty decent so let's have a meeting once you've had a chance to read them all. Nam Joyeun nodded slowly as all his attention was solely fixated on the envelope. The way he handled the scenario he took out was as careful and affectionate as how a devout believer would treat the Bible. Holding a can of beer, Kim Hyun Sup, who seemed to have come over to hang out, glanced at the envelope in astonishment. Wow, now that your name is known, scenarios just pile up in front of you. I bet you no longer have to go around to auditions. I didn't really notice it because people didn't recognize you on the street, but you're living in a different world now. Hyung's just started to be known in the movie industry. He needs to be more popular for the general public to call his name out in public. Although getting his name in the real-time search rankings thanks to the articles did help, he still had a long way to go. Still, his process was great. Alive was breaking record after record as it swept through the entertainment industry, and Nam Joyeun's popularity was steadily rising. There were quite a few people who recognized him on his last stage introduction even though it was before the screening. On top of that, there was no need to fixate on villain roles either as his image was good thanks to the story about us. It was to the point where we received proposals on filming human documentary about our story. Nam Joyeun stood in place as he read at the scenario. I placed my hand on his shoulder. He must have already been absorbed in it as his burning eyes slowly looked at me. You're going to have a photo shoot. A photo shoot? It's a movie magazine. It's an article about hotly anticipated rising stars, and we decided to have an interview and photo shoot. So you have to get skin treatment at the shop. Nam Joyeun scratched his chin as though the word photo shoot was unfamiliar to him. Then he suddenly frowned and gave me a worried look. But I think you need to rest a little. You don't look too good. I've just been so busy these days. Ah, uh, about that, you'll probably continue having these events from now on, and I probably won't be able to go to all of them if there's a scheduling conflict. It's all right. Let me know the place and you'll get there on my own. Nam Joyeun said casually. No way. It's not like you have a management company for show. I'm currently looking for a good road manager who can drive and check your schedule so. Excuse me, Joyeun's mother. Kim Hyun Sup called me with his hand raised. Could I try being his road manager until you find someone? I think ITLL be fun. What about your shoots? I'm mostly doing translating work these days. I wasn't the type to put myself life into acting from the start. He answered with a shrug. That wasn't a bad idea. He wanted to do it, and Nam Joyeun would feel more comfortable with a friend. I quickly made up my mind and nodded. Then I told Kim Hyun Sup the location and artist of the shop Nam Joyeun would be going to. Ah, uh, now that I thought about it, I need to discuss Pretty Girl's concept now that the hair and makeup stylists were somewhat decided. Things proceeded smoothly as they were interested in being on the show. Going around in a frenzy was worthwhile. The project team was starting to take shape. Unlike the experts who I had to persuade, there were even some who asked to join my team. Lee Kuan Wu smiled innocently, making me think of a golden retriever. To be honest, my dream is making an unknown celebrity shine. A drama-like story where we overcome all sorts of hardship to shine in the end. You're persistent. To still dream and search for a drama-like story. It's all thanks to you, Chief. 
Working under you, it sometimes feels like a drama. Where can we find a story more dramatic than the one with you and Neptune or with you and Mr. Nam Joyun? That was true. If this project succeeds, then you've just made another drama. Lee Kuan Wu looked at me with eyes full of admiration. I scratched my goosebumps and answered. Yeah, let's work together. Be careful to not have the project affect Neptune's schedule. Yes, thank you. I should be the one thanking you. I was lacking manpower. As I patted his wide shoulder, Li Quan Wu walked in place with an excited face. Even though he didn't have a tail, I could see it wagging behind him. Staying like this for a bit, Li Quan Wu suddenly seemed to think of something as he asked. But, Chief, are you going to appear on Good Friend's long-term project? Yeah, I'm going to meet them again and talk in detail. It would be beneficial to him C.O. Young and L.J. While I was thinking about what the production staff said about their plan of an entertainment show web drama collaboration, Lee Kuan Wu sounded relieved. That's good. What is? I heard this from a stylist, but apparently, the production staff seemed a little troubled while they were waiting for your reply. That's why C.O. Young was cautious on set. C.O. Young was? I didn't hear about this at all. It seems she didn't tell you because she knew you didn't like appearing on shows. Lee Kuan Wu, Team Leader Park, and I were sitting in a meeting room. What if we release an article first? Before the interest in you and Mr. Joyan cools. Team Leader Park suggested while twirling her fountain pen. If you announce that you'll be making an unknown girl group's album and mention that it will be a reality TV show, I bet interested broadcasting and production companies will make proposals first. Cable networks will be fighting to get the show on their network since it's such a good item. I think the public networks will be interested as well. Lee Kuan Wu nodded. The problem is that they can't get us a good time slot. No, they'll be reorganizing their lineup for spring. There will be entertainment shows that will end, and new ones will launch. As long as they want it, they'll be able to squeeze in a three or four part series. If the reality TV show gets decent ratings, ITLL help boost the rating of the program that comes after it. ITLL be great if we can get on a public network, but the problem is. Team Leader Park frowned. Since their staff have their noses up in the air, they won't want us meddling in their programming discussions. The producer and writer are key in a show like this, and I'm worried who they'll assign to our project. We might end up with a different narrative than we expected. If that's the case, I guess a cable network could be better. Still, their numbers are completely different from cable. First, let's release the article and see who sends us proposals. What if we ask IBC before we release the article? They both looked at me. IBC. C.O. Young and L.J. are regulars on a show there. If we show our sincerity first, then they'll probably think about it more as well. About us or C.O. Young and L.J.? That's probably true. Team leader Park nodded. This conclusion was sent to CEO Beck Hansung through the director. In the past, he personally went and met with the entertainment head for Next K-Star in the past, but it didn't seem like he would do anything this time. He simply replied with an OK. It sounded like he would be watching what I do. We were able to send our message to IBC's entertainment head through producer Choi of Good Friends. We quickly scheduled an appointment. I went to their office with the project proposal and information and saw producer Choi and the chief producer, director Huang, waiting in a meeting room. I greeted them, but producer Choi gave me an odd look. I quickly learned the reason. As he examined the proposal, director Huang suddenly asked. I don't think the proposal is bad. How much is WU able to sponsor? Why? Did you not think of that before you came? You should know that these idle reality TV shows are usually greenlit after the proposing company sponsors it, right? Director Huang clicked his tongue before slyly saying. Or if you're not going to sponsor anything, how about we air this at a good time slot if WU helps with Good Friends' long-term project? Neptune's MCO Young and LJ are also part of your company, but isn't the company too hands-off? Good Friends producer Choi coughed. When I kept my lips closed, Director Huang continued. Get actors like Seo Jijun or Sun Chaiyang who don't appear on entertainment shows often to make cameo appearances. 
Since you're going to help, why not go all in? Ha! Huh. What do you think? I was so dumbfounded that the corners of lips rose. Just what was this guy asking? Ah, uh, what did I think? Chapter, 155 The main producer of Good Friends, Choi Byungsu, quickly read the mood. General Manager Huang was leisurely sitting on his left, and Chief Young Sun Wu was lost in his thoughts with his hands clasped on his right. Producer Choi recalled the conversation he had ten minutes Chief Young Sun Wu arrived. Are you sure it's okay to push him? It's not like it's some minor company but WU. Also, you know Chief Young Sun Wu. Why are you so cautious around some budding seedling as a network producer? Large management companies are taking on bad habits because of guys like you. They think they're the best since we treat their top stars well. What if they take the reality TV show elsewhere because they are offended? This proposal is good. There are two Neptune members on your show. We can just put a little pressure on him saying that they could be taken off the show. Will that work? ITLL have to. I'm doing this for you, aren't I? It'll be the one to pressure him, so you just play up to him from the side. There's a ton we can gain from him. We need to take every last bit. At first, producer Choi felt skeptical, but he slowly began to think general manager Huang's words had some truth to them. If things work out and WU actors will appear on his show and if he could properly utilize Young Sun Wu. Who the general public had an eye on this was something he couldn't pass when he was worried he might be changed out from the program as he awaited the spring restructuring. Just as his small hope grew, Young Sun Wu spoke. General Manager. His voice was calm despite having been looked down upon. Sponsored idol reality shows are trying to do business with their fans, but our situation is a bit different, is it not? This will be a hot topic. ITLL get ads, and you might be able to sell the rights as Chinese demand increases with Lee Song has appearance on the show. Isn't it still a three or four part series? There needs to be a bit more of a benefit for us. General Manager Huang frowned. I mean, are we asking for a lot? In exchange for giving you a good time slot and setting you up with a good director and writers, all we want is WU's wholehearted support. I'm simply suggesting we help each other out. It's good to help each other out. But we can't order our top stars around. Young Sun Wu made a difficult expression. General Manager Huang, who acted like he was upset, changed his tone. Then what about those at a lower level? Who's that actor, the one who's in the news a lot? Nam Joyun. What if him and you come on the show and share your story? Wouldn't it benefit him as well if we promote him like this? That's true. ITLL be beneficial, but we are carefully deliberating his entertainment show appearances. It's a very important time for him right now, and he's not a skilled talker. Now really. Then let's have Neptune's comeback performance on our network. They are preparing an album, right? Since you did it on PBS last time, you should do it on our network. Before Young Sun Wu could reply, General Manager Huang cut him off and said. Think about it carefully. Chief Young, if you keep saying that you can't do this and that, then well get upset. Internally, people have brought up switching out in Seo Young and LJ, and if our relationship with WU sours, that might actually happen. Oh, General Manager. Why would you bring that up here? Producer Choi quickly joined in. Seo Young and LJ are part of our family. It's our fault that they aren't trendy enough. Why do you keep bringing up hard-working cast members? It's because it feels like we're the only ones who think of them like family. General Manager Huang clicked his tongue then left the room saying he had to make a call. Producer Choi placed his hand on Young Sun Wu's shoulder. I'm sorry. I can't say anything because he's our chief producer. I'm sorry. Young Sun Wu turned to look at him. Producer Choi swallowed dryly as he examined Young Sun Wu's expression. He had thought he would either be at a loss at what to do or mad at the general manager's intimidation. He thought it would be one of the two. But it was neither. I'm a bit taken aback. Can we consider this as IBC's official stance? Not mine, but it's the general manager's stance. You know how the higher-ups think. They'll try talking with the general manager again so please help me out. 
please think of it as helping Seo Young and LJ out. Of course, well push the reality. Producer Choi examined his expression again as he tried to persuade him. Young Sun Wu had a thick smile on his face. You are Lee Kuan Wu, correct? Neptune's road manager. Ah, uh, yes. That's me. Lee Kuan Wu, who was glancing at the meeting room, stood up. The man who approached him had an IBC employee card around his neck. He introduced himself as a drama director before handing him a warm cup of coffee. I heard Chief Young Sun Wu came to the entertainment department. Is that true? They are in a meeting right now. Oh wow. I came right over when I heard the news. It's been difficult to meet with him to discuss any projects. Does our Chief Young like coffee or juice? The director asked while holding a can of coffee and juice in either hand. From what I know, he drinks coffee more often. But what is the meeting about? He needs to be in a good mood so that I can strike a conversation with him. Just. Li Kuan Wu was sidestepping the conversation when Yung Sun Wu walked out of the meeting room. The director beamed. Uh, I don't know what they talked about, but I guess things went well. He's smiling. I guess. Li Kuan Wu mumbled. The director quickly headed over and handed him the can of coffee and a script. Chief Yung. This, I talked to you about it on the phone before. This will be a huge success. Hello. We haven't received a time slot because we haven't confirmed the leads, but if Ms. Lee Sangha says shall do it, we'll get a time slot immediately. It's also time for Ms. Sangha to be a sole lead. Don't go anywhere and work with us. Hmm, we'll have to see the schedule for any new projects. We match your schedule. Call me once you've read the script, okay? Of course, he'll let you know first. Young Sun Wu said with a smile. Leaving behind the wistful drama director, he left the building with steadfast steps. Li Kuan Wu followed behind and asked. I guess the meeting didn't go well. Why do you think that? I'm smiling, aren't I? Young Sun Wu laughed. Taking a step back, Li Kuan Wu scratched his neck, which had broken out in goosebumps. Greeting people as he passed by, Young Sun Wu said. It's been a long time since I've been looked down upon like this. It's refreshing. I feel two years younger. Why? Did they say they want to the show? No, they said they want to, but they want too much. Want too much? It's like trying to live together, but if we want to live with them, we need to buy the house, appliances, furniture, and a car. What the? Understanding what went on in the meeting, Lee Kuan Wu frowned. The battle of wits between broadcasting and management companies. And the tyranny of network producers who held the time slots. This wasn't surprising. Then what are you going to do? What do you think? All traces of a smile disappeared from Yung Sun Wu's face. I can't live like that. I left Lee Kuan Wu to go back to the company before heading to Neptune's residence. I opened the door and went in. Lee Taehee was standing by the entrance. It was usually Lee Sangha. She's sleeping. Lee Taehee gestured with her chin as though she read my mind. Lee Sangha was sleeping, flopped on the sofa. She had an interview early yesterday morning as well. She has been so busy that it felt like I've only seen her eat or sleep when she wasn't working. What about the other girls? I think they are sleeping. They haven't left their rooms, saying that it was going to rain since the morning. What were you doing? Rice wine is best for rainy days. Li Taehee licked her lips before continuing. I was working on songs while having a drink. Did you tell the others about your songs? No, I plan on telling them once it's decided. Then she smiled faintly. It suited her. She was always like this while she was waiting for my reply. She was always calm and quiet. However, when I told her that Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader danced when they heard her songs when I said sorry for the late reply and laughed as I told her she might be a genius. Lee Taehee's relieved expression was completely different from normal. Although she acted like nothing was wrong, she must have a lot on her mind. Also, this probably wasn't limited to Lee Taehee. It was the same for Lee Sangha, 
who was becoming more famous by the day but was also gaining a lot of personal fans that negatively affected their group's fanbase. This also went for him Seo Young and LJ, who were appearing on entertainment shows. I wondered how much they had on their minds that they weren't telling me. Appa. When did you arrive? Im Seo Young burst out her room. Her hair was a mess like she had just woken up, and she had a yellow blanket wrapped around her like a cloak. Im Seo Young's cheery voice shook their residence. Lee Song has eyes immediately opened, and LJ yawned as she came out of her room. Does Lee song have another schedule today? Yua, but she looks like a complete couch potato right now. Im fine. You have Sanjang one on your chin. Lee Sangha hastily rubbed her chin. It was a lie. Im Seo Young giggled. Then she asked me. Really, why did you come today? To see you. Eh, don't lie. It's true. Im Seo Young, who shook her blanket in a playful manner, stopped. Really? I came to see you and LJ. Taking a moment to process this, Im Seo Young and LJ blinked. We went into LJ's room. Im Seo Young's room had no space due to all her stuffed animals. This room was filled with exercising equipment and gaming gear. Thick books in their original language were neatly organized on her desk. I couldn't tell what they were about as their covers had pictures of shackles or handcuffs on them. We took our places on the chair, bed, and floor when the door creaked open. Appa, do you want coffee? Lee Sangha leaned her head out. No, it's fine. We also have citron tea, ginseng extract, and tomato juice. We have stuff like that in our fridge. Why didn't I see them? Im Seo Young's eyes widened. LJ flatly said. You should tell her to bring you something. It looks she's worried you'll faint from a parched throat while talking. Then citron tea. Please wait a moment. It'll make it right now. Im Seo Young glared at her. Are you not going to ask us? I'm going to drink all of Appa's share. We have water and barley tea. Hey! It's a joke. Having gotten her revenge, Lee Sangha soon brought over three cups. Taking a sip of citron tea, I looked at I'm Seo Young. She acted stiffly when I told her I wanted to talk, but she now returned to normal thanks to Lee Sangha. Looking at her sipping tomato juice while holding her cup with both hands, I asked. How's the mood on good friends? Her large eyes shook like they were struck by an earthquake. It it's good. Is it really? It seems like they are a bit restless with the upcoming restructuring. No. A bit. LJ said. Surprised, Im Seo Young couldn't even shout before slapping LJ's back. Hey, what's wrong? It doesn't matter if we talk about it now. He's already decided to appear on the show. Still. We need to discuss this once anyways. She looked at me. LJ downed her bottle of water in an instant. The staff kept going around asking us to get you to appear on the show. They only asked me, but it seems they pestered her because she seemed like a pushover. Especially the producer. He asked why we couldn't ask our manager to do this and commented about how we didn't have any affection for the program. Producer Choi Byungsu. LJ nodded before adding. About that producer. Hey, stop it. It's so embarrassing. What are you going to say now? Im Seo Young was nervous as she bounced up and down. Should I stop? I handed her my citron tea and said. No, tell me everything. Rain sprinkled on my windshield. The white streetlights light diffused through the rain. Sitting in the driver's seat, I quietly observed at the scene. The incident at the broadcasting company and LJ's words rang in my mind. Chief Young. A voice broke the silence. Chief Lee Tae Shin got in the passenger seat. He seemed to have rushed over without an umbrella as his hair was wet. He clenched his fist once before lowering his head. His expression became gloomy like a cloudy night sky. I'm sorry. I haven't found Jay yet. She hasn't contacted her home. She came to the city during high school with the dream of becoming a singer, so she probably doesn't have any friends to spend the night at. The other girls signed with another company, 
but I have no idea where she disappeared off to. Saying this, he examined my expression. It seemed he was worried I would tell him to stop looking for Young Jay. I'm constantly looking around. I guess she might contact you once the article is published. The article? Chief Li Taishin quickly looked up. Yes, please let the goldfish, I mean, members know that they can tell their family. Then. The corners of my lips rose as I said. It's time to start. Chapter, 156. Chief Li Taishin panted as he rested against the bathroom door. The voice on the other side of the phone became more and more urgent. Are the tabloids true? Chief Li, tell me. Producer, that is. So there is something. Let's meet and talk in person. How's lunch? He was talking to a producer who had seemed to find him annoying when he went around cable networks handing out coffee to promote pretty girls and had never spared him a glance. He had never heard him act this friendly before. Although this situation may have once moved him, his face was currently pale. If this place wasn't the girl's residence and if the girls were looking at him with nervous gazes, he might have already passed out due to his difficulty breathing. Producer, I have something urgent right now, so let me call you back. Promise me, Chief Lee. Chief Lee. He hastily hung up, but the phone rang again. He didn't know this phone number. He hesitated before answering. He hello. Is this Chief Lee Taishin of Pretty Girls? I'm a reporter from Today Star. I am contacting you about the post on social media. I'm currently preparing an article, but I wanted to confirm the truth with you. Would you be okay with an interview? Her voice was pleasant like a customer support representative's. Chief Li Taishin was taken aback by her words but steadied his breath before saying. An interview is difficult as nothing has been confirmed. So you are saying that the post isn't completely baseless? Um, I can't say anything right now. Please refrain from publishing your article. He shoved his phone in his pocket after barely managing to persuade her. His phone immediately began to vibrate again, but he ignored it. Instead, he borrowed the girls' phones to try to call a few people. Unfortunately, they were all busy. Um, is Chief Young not answering his phone? Yeah. WU's PR team's representative is busy on the phone as well. It seems that reporters are swarming there as well. What do we do? Isn't this a big problem? The members were frozen with pale faces as they held each other's hands. Their hands were trembling. They were overwhelmed with joy that they cried as they told their families the good news, yet they looked like they were on the verge of crying from fear. It was all because of an unknown high schooler's post. I heard this from someone who heard it from someone else, but there's a girl group called Pretty Girls who debuted two years ago. But I think WU's young Sun Wu is planning on making a reality TV show with them. I don't know the details, but I think ITLL be fun if he's trying to get them to shine. The post was deleted not long after it first went up, but like most rumors, it spread like mold. Screenshots of the post spread throughout the internet, and there were even speculative articles. He even received calls from reporters asking if this was true. All of this happened in an instant. I think it's our fault. This happened right after we told our families. We told our families not to tell anyone. Who did that person hear it from? Maybe someone heard our call. My dad was outside when I told him. He kept asking me if I was sure I wasn't being scammed and if I saw Chief Young Sun Wu with my own two eyes. Someone might have heard that. Maybe we told our families for nothing. We should have waited a bit longer. Oh Yandu held Chief Li Taishin's shirt. Chief, could this all fall apart because of us? No, Chief Young said that you could tell your families yesterday. Don't worry too much. WU will probably publish an official release soon. He checked published articles as he tried to calm them down. Tabloid articles poured out when he searched pretty girls. He couldn't believe it. He slowly looked through the articles until his eyes suddenly bulged. Exclusive after discovering unknown actor Nam Joyeun, WU's chief Young Sun Wu sets his eyes on an unknown girl group next. Someone from Pretty Girl's side disapproved of the sudden rumor as he expressed that it wasn't 100% confirmed so an interview is difficult. 
He spared his words, saying, I can't say anything right now. It was an article for Today's Star. They had published his words to add credibility to the rumor. Whatever remaining blood was drained from Chief Li Taishin's face. It was to the point that the girls were trying to calm him down. He flopped on the floor. Chief, I got a call. A call. Oh Yandu hastily handed him her phone. Young Sun Wu's phone number was on the screen. Chief Young. Yes, there were so many reporters calling me that I was only able to see that you called just now. His voice was hoarse and irritated. I'm sorry. I think my voice is a little hoarse because I'm tired. Chief Li Taishin barely managed to steady his teetering heart. Clearing his throat, Young Sun Wu's voice now sounded normal. He sounded calm like usual. Chief, did you see the article? I just saw it. I also saw an exclusive from Today's Star. Chief Li Taishin bit his lip. The person quoted in that article is me. I was on the phone with the reporter just now, and I think I didn't handle it properly. I asked her to refrain from publishing the article, and I didn't think she would publish it right away. It's my first time in a situation like this. Could there be a problem because of that? Ah, uh, no. In fact, it was good. Very natural. Young Sun Wu told Chief Li Taishin, whose face was stiff from confusion. It blew up quicker than I expected. If I knew it would blow up this quickly, I would have told you yesterday. Then, you're saying that the post was. He heard a laugh affirming his suspicion. Chief Li Taishin got in a taxi. He felt like he would cause an accident if he drove in his current state. When he paid the fare and got off, he was standing right in front of WU's enormous building. He blankly stared up at the building before jolting to his senses. He took out his phone to tell him he arrived. He had ignored his constantly vibrating phone on his way here that it was now full of missed calls and messages. There were even former Pretty Girls members, Park Hyogen and Yoon Bora, who had signed with NK Entertainment, in his call log. He tapped the most recent message from them. Chief, why won't you answer the phone? What's with all these articles? The articles about pretty girls, they are talking about us, right? Where are you? Uh, hello. Someone greeted him. Chief Li Taishin quickly turned around. Gently drooping eyes, and a figure like that of a security guard. It was road manager Li Quan Wu, who he had seen once with Chief Yong Sun Wu before. He was carrying a coffee tray and convenience store bag in each hand. Putting his phone back in his pocket, Chief Li Taishin offered to help. I'll carry one. It's okay. This isn't much. Li Quan Wu moved his hands to show he was fine. You came for the meeting, correct? I'll guide you. Ah, uh, yes. Please feel free to speak casually. No, it's okay. I'm only a chief by name. I'm no different from a road manager. Still, you are older and have more experience than me. It's really okay. This is comfortable for me. Chief Li Taishin scratched the back of his head. Li Quan Wu led him to the elevators. Chief Li Taishin was entranced by the LED screen displaying WU celebrities' profiles before turning his gaze towards Li Quan Wu. He looked calm like the fuss on the internet was nothing. Thanks to that, Chief Li Taishin was also able to regain some of his composure. Li Quan Wu knocked him back down by saying, I think pretty girls will hit first on real time search ranking soon. Pardon? Where? The real time searching rankings. The one on the portal site. Chief Li Taishin gulped. Getting first place on the real time search rankings was a huge improvement for unknown celebrities. This was why some attempted noise marketing by posting questionable behavior on social media or wore very revealing clothes. However, it wasn't easy staying first with that. There was an incident when pretty girls momentarily got first. It was due to their high school and apron outfits back when they first debuted. However, Chief Li Taishin couldn't get them back on there no matter how he tried afterwards. He couldn't even dream about getting first. There was no way Chief Li Taishin wasn't shocked since Li Quan Wu mentioned something like that so nonchalantly. If they get first, how long do you think they'll stay there? 
At worst, they'll probably stay there for the hold uh, are you alright? Chief Li Taishin forced himself to breathe. He grasped his chest. I can't breathe. I guess things like that aren't much around here. That's not it. I've just become used to it since it happens often. Often WU's PR team is truly amazing. Our PR team is amazing, but the power of our chief's name is incredible as well. Li Quan Wu said naturally before coughing out of slight embarrassment. Chief Li Taishin glanced at him. When the elevator stopped on the fourth floor, Li Quan Wu took the lead. The lounge was filled with exhausted employees, and there was an office with the name Place Management Business Department Team 3. It also had a completely filled schedule. We're here. Chief Li Taishin was distracted by his surroundings but returned to his senses at those words. The reporters are asking for Pretty Girl's promotional material, should we send that as well? Wait a bit. How are people reacting to the reality TV show? A few subcontract production companies have contacted me, asking to work together if the rumor is true. Cable networks and PBS seem interested as well. PBS is a bit tough. Though they are gentlemen when compared to IBC. IBC hasn't contacted you. Yes, they've probably understood the situation after seeing the articles, so they are probably discussing what to do. I guess they should know others have approached us as well. They should have a rough idea. They also have quick senses. The meeting room was noisy. PR team employees were tapping their keyboards with their phone wedged between their cheek and shoulder. Young Sunwoo and team leader Park were discussing matters. I brought coffee and snacks. Lee Kwan Wu placed the coffee tray and snacks on the table. Vigor returned on the people's faces. Young Sun Wu grabbed a hangover drink instead of a coffee and downed a bottle in one go. Then he saw Chief Li Taishin. He quickly got up to welcome him. Chief Li Taishin sat down after Young Sun Wu introduced him. After being told that IBC's general manager made absurd demands when they approached him with the reality TV show proposal and that they had to release an article to flip the situation, Chief Li Taishin gulped. A power struggle with a public network general manager. As someone who had difficulty exchanging words with a production assistant, just hearing about it made him shiver. His hands and feet grew cold when he thought about what he would have done in a similar situation. He glanced at Young Sun Wu. He seemed laid back like normal. It wasn't like we went to IBC because we had nowhere to go. We simply wanted to let them know out of politeness before we released the article, yet they wanted to strip us of everything we had. I guess I looked like a bit of a pushover. Maybe I should shave my eyebrows or something. Please don't. A female PR team employee opposed his suggestion while still on the phone. The meeting room was bustling with laughter. Chief Li Taishin couldn't adjust to this situation and awkwardly raised the corners of his lips. Should we check their reactions now? Young Sun Wu made a call on speakerphone. Only ringing could be heard in the now silent meeting room. Someone answered within ten seconds. Young Sun Wu silently laughed as though he had been expecting this reaction. Chief Young. I'm sorry for the late reply. Did you happen to see the articles? We were so busy trying to handle them. He groaned naturally. He seemed so skilled as though this wasn't his first time doing something like this. Recalling how easily he made a comment to a reporter on the phone, Chief Li Taishin rubbed his throat. Producer Choi Byungsu also groaned. There were tons of articles speculating about the reality TV show as well. General Manager Huang has been urging me, telling me that it would better if we finished yesterday's discussion and released an official release about it. He's so impatient. Ah, we haven't finished discussing it internally though. It's because of the articles. We also received some requests from other production companies and networks asking us to send them the show proposal as well. Is that so? They offered better conditions than IBC so I'm in a bit of a bind. The other side was silent. This silence continued for a while. Chief Li Taishin shifted his eyes. Everyone was staring at the phone. However, he was the only one nervously baiting his breath. They all looked like they were curious about producer Choi's reply. He'll try talking to the general manager again. He'll try my best. 
But, Chief, if you move to another network in this situation then that's a bit the general manager already picked a main producer for the show. Already? Yes, so there'll be a huge fuss if he finds out you are considering other networks. He might hop up and down telling me to kick Seo Young and LJ off good friends. This will be a bolt out of the blue for them when they've been working so hard on the show. It was a threat veiled as a concern. As soon as the call ended, Young Sun Woo exhaled while laughing. They keep bringing up the girls. It's not like they've taken them hostage. Since the majority of entertainment shows on public and cable networks are a sausage fest, there aren't really any shows two girl group members and join like good friends. At most, their roles will be to sit and clap like pretty little displays. Team leader Park clicked her tongue. They are being more aggressive because they know there aren't any programs as good as good friends for them. What a bunch of highway robbers. Chief Li Taishin unknowing nodded in agreement. Having no program to appear on was a common concern amongst girl group managers. If the Neptune members were kicked off the show, there would a line of girl groups waiting to take their spots. Chief Li Taishin asked. ITLLB for the best if IBC retracts their absurd demands, but what are you planning on doing if they don't back down? We need to go our separate ways. Young Sun Wu said without hesitation. Ji go your separate ways? Are you really going to go with a different network? What if IBC retaliates by actually kicking Neptune members off their show? Chief Li Taishin, who had been stuttering because of how taken aback he was, suddenly widened his eyes. Young Sun Wu was calm even though he brought up the worst-case scenario. Not only that, the people around him didn't seem worried either. Eyes bulging, Chief Li Taishin asked. Did you start all this planning to have the members leave the show? Chapter, 157 Whoop! Second Chapter of the Week the little seedling learned to scheme from W.U. General Manager Huang snorted when he heard about the call with Young Sun Wu. Producer Choi nervously paced back and forth. I asked around and there really are a few production companies and networks interested in the reality TV show. Even PBS. Of course, since it's a good idea. What do we do if Chief Young Sun Wu really takes the proposal to some other network? The director will be angry if the show is a success after going to a different network despite them having come to us first. You really are timid. How can someone like you be a producer? General Manager Huang gave producer Choi an unpleasant look. How many years of experience do you have for you to be played as a fool by some seedling? Im not being played. They're just always an if. Im just worried things might actually fall through. Isn't it better to keep our conditions moderate and going into production? Once it goes into production, we'll have the upper hand again. I don't know. I don't feel like letting them off. I'm too disgusted by his actions. General Manager Huang's lips became crooked. This guy is thinking lightly of me, a public network general manager, because cable networks and subcontract production companies are treating him well. That's why he's trying to get a deal with us while acting like he might go to a different network. He's too wet behind the ears for that. Looking at the article on his phone, he added. The sudden article. That guy might be acting after releasing it himself. I looked into it, and it seems like some high schooler posted it on social media. It's not hard masking the origin of a source. ITLL spread so long as it gets passed along a couple times. Anyways, I don't plan on letting him go. Him insisting like this will only be momentary. Even if his scheme might work at other networks, he won't fool me. General Manager Huang waved his hand. But what if Chief Young is unsatisfied and is ready to pull Seo Young and LJ off the show? Producer Choi said with a gulp. What if he decides to cancel his appearance on Good Friends long-term project and simply goes to a different network? He can do that if he has the guts. General Manager Huang said coldly. The guts to turn his back on an entire network. If he does as you said, then I'm going straight to the director. You know that the director hates rude brats like him. He has a bad temper. Chuckling, General Manager Huang continued. Do you think he'll like it if I tell him that a WU chief took his celebrities out of our show because he was cranky, 
and he only baited us with the proposal before passing it over to another network. But we are the ones who brought up kicking them off the show if he doesn't listen. I just need to talk to the director. An arm always leans inward. General Manager Huang, who smoothly glossed things over, gestured to producer Choi. A cunning smile hung on his lips. Tell Yung Sun Wu, that bastard, exactly what I told you. Exactly. Then Hell come to us with his head bowed. Producer Choi blinked at general manager's confident attitude. Why? He does have the rank to blow things up any further. It's not like WU is some mom and pop shop. They have tons of employees and celebrities. Do you think they'll clash against a network because one of their employees is cranky? I bet their company would be against his actions first. Also, you said he was only a temporary team leader. Yes, he became a temporary team leader after being assigned this project. Then he'll definitely want to handle things on his own. If this escalates up to our director, do you think the WU CEO won't interfere? Then he's just admitting he doesn't have the ability to hit at the negotiations table. Producer Choi was in awe at those words. His worries were cleanly swept off his mind. General Manager Huang leisurely crossed his legs as he said. You need to break in these bastards that don't know their place. This could really become a big incident if this reaches our director. Producer Choi sighed. They'll try to soothe General Manager Huang's anger a little, so please just bow your head once this time. If this tug o' war continues, it won't end with just you and our general manager. It could escalate to a problem between WU and IBC. That can't happen. Young Sun Wu replied while rubbing his dry lips. Producer Choi's voice clearly became brighter. They ended the call after saying they would get in touch after an internal discussion. A silence hung in the meeting room. Chief Li Taishin soothed his parched throat with his lukewarm coffee. The emotions that surged during Yung Sun Wu's call with producer Choi Byung Su had no intention of calming down. A threat saying they would crush them with power if he didn't do as they said. The way that an influential producer and general manager of a public network worked was beyond shameless. Chief Li Taishin gave Yung Sun Wu a worried look. There was no doubt his mind was complicated with the blatant pressure they were weighing on him. Yung Sun Wu was expressionlessly looking at his coffee cup. His arms and legs were crossed. He looked like a coiled snake. Soon, he made a bitter smile as he said. This wouldn't have happened if it was the team leader or the CEO instead of me, right? Probably not. Team leader Park nodded. Still, there's no need for you to feel bad. It's rare for someone with little experience like you to be assigned such a big project. General Manager Huang, that man, probably felt disregarded when you went over with the proposal by yourself. People like him really care about positions. Team Leader Park patted his shoulder. Then she lightly asked. What now? Do you want to ask the CEO for help? I bet ITLL be cleanly settled then. Chief Li Taishin gulped. Young Sun Wu's lips rose in a crooked manner. Let's wait a little longer. I took out an insurance. An insurance? Chief Li Taishin asked with a perplexed expression. Young Sun Wu smiled faintly as he replied. I thought this would happen, so I had drinks until early morning. With a director I know. A D director? IBC's drama department. The director roughly undid his necktie as he entered. The noisy drama director and production assistants quickly shut their mouths. He looked around with his big, bright eyes on his way to his office. Why are there so many people in the office sitting on their asses? Do none of you have a film shoot? You need to be filming one more scene instead of twiddling your thumbs if you want to make a great hit. PBS's royal family is about to exceed 25% in ratings, yet are you not jealous? After shouting, he entered his office. Two men followed after him. They were Director Moon, who had been doing well in his career before flopping a miniseries and was preparing for his next project with Nash Teeth, and the chief producer, General Manager Kim. The director burned with rage when he saw Director Moon. Moon Hyesung, did you cast a lead? Don't even ask for a time slot until you get a top star male and female lead. I have something I want to say about that. 
I can't stand it any longer. Director Moon said with a grim face. The director blinked at his serious mood. What can't you stand? As you said, I want to cast top stars as the leads. I want to get ratings like Royal Family. That's why I earnestly beg actors and their managers and send them fruit baskets. But what's the point if the entertainment department messes it all up? I don't care if the entertainment department abuse their power over agencies, but they shouldn't let that negatively affect us. Do we try to cast actors multiple times because we have no pride? Furious, director Moon grumbled. I should have been an entertainment producer instead. I'm just wasting my hard work trying to make dramas. Why is he suddenly acting like this? The director looked at general manager Kim with perplexed eyes. The general manager clicked his tongue and said. He was in progress with a potential candidate, but it was all foiled by the entertainment department. Our employees are quite unsatisfied because of incidents like this. Director Moon poked general manager Kim as if he was urging him to go on. General manager Kim added. Even if the entertainment and drama departments are divided, we are still part of IBC. Agencies don't look at us favorably when they are screwed over by them. Why is it that we have to clean up their mess all the time? The conversation went on for about ten more minutes. Sighing, the director waved his hand. Okay, I got it. They'll talk it over with their director so that this doesn't happen again if possible. Having obtained a satisfactory answer, Director Moon and General Manager Kim left the office. Director Moon said in a quiet voice. Thank you for your help, General Manager. Even without you bringing it up, this was a problem we needed to discuss. Also, tell me honestly, what did you gain from W.U.'s Young Sun Wu? Why would I gain something? The general manager snorted. You said you guys drank until early morning. Aren't you helping him out like this because you've gained something? If it's something good, tell me. We didn't talk about much. We simply drank together. After a few drinks, Chief Young was complaining about he would in such a difficult situation. That's why I decided to help him out a little. Director Moon licked his dry lips and continued. We need to look at the future. It's not like him going to only make one project and Chief Young is going to be a chief forever. That guy is a temporary team leader at WU. He was a road manager two years ago, became a chief last year, and a temporary team leader this year. Who knows where he'll be next year. I'm just trying to get on good terms with him by helping him out when he's in a tough spot. Director Moon made a meaningful smile. Yeah, but you did gain something, right? And no I didn't. IBC's entertainment director was a cold, temperamental person. He nodded after glancing through the reality TV show proposal with WU's logo on it. Others will be attracted to this. It's fun. We must do it. General Manager Huang's expression brightened. The proposal is good, but the key is Yong Sun Wu. He's a hot topic right now, and his image is still fresh since he hasn't appeared on many shows. There's a ton we can benefit by putting him on our shows. I'm taming him right now so. Tell General Manager Zhou to come. General Manager Zhou. General Manager Huang made a flustered expression. He grabbed an employee outside and relayed the order. General Manager Zhou entered the office within five minutes. Half his hair was already gray, and he wore glasses and had defined wrinkles around his eyes. Overall, he had a scholarly appearance, but red saw stain on his chin and clothes made him look ten years younger. General Manager Huang frowned as they weren't close despite being colleagues. Why do you have all that muck on you when you're coming to meet the director? Ah, uh, this? I ate a bit of the tiak baki a few of the writers ordered as a snack. General Manager Joe scratched his head. The director handed him the proposal. Take this. It's a proposal. Try to restart discussions with the agency. Director. Just what? General Manager Huang shot up from his seat after belatedly understanding the situation. The director told him. Take your hands off this project. Let go of this project. General Manager Huang blankly opened and closed his mouth. Chapter 158 I I was the one who brought this proposal over. 
you can't just hand it over to someone else. General Manager Huang's voice was filled with indignation. However, the director reacted coldly. I can't. Are you picking a fight with me? That's not it. I already started preparing for it so if you suddenly tell me to take my hands off it. Is trying to tame a chief of an agency preparation? Irritated, the director clicked his tongue. Pardon? No, he was overextending his position, so I wanted to make him listen. People complain because this is the mindset of a so-called general manager. How many agencies did you screw over for the drama department to pleadingly ask us to take each other into consideration in our work? General Manager Huang paused before frowning. The drama department? Why do you think I brought General Manager Zhou instead of you? Even if it's for show, we need to make a harmonious mood for now. Don't make things worse and just stay out of it. Director. If I tell you to stay out of it, you stay out of it. Stop overextending your position and do as I say. He shouted. General Manager Huang stood back even though he was agitated. Although he became quieter after becoming a director, he was renowned as one of the most ill-tempered people in the entertainment department. The mood would only get worse if he kept up his indignation. The director turned his gaze when General Manager Huang barely managed to swallow his rage. General Manager Zhou, go and start quickly. Other people are interested in that proposal. Ah, they'll contact them right away. ITLL be ashamed to lose this proposal. He smiled gently while patting the proposal. General Manager Huang's red face looked like it would explode as he watched. Producer Choi was on the phone when General Manager Huang kicked open and entered his office. He was leisurely leaning against the sofa, sipping on sweet instant coffee. His face glowed as though he could almost see the success of Good Friend's long-term project. He sighed with a smile on his face. I don't think anything good will come out of the director's office. If you lowered your head a little, it wouldn't have come to this ah, the general manager has arrived. They'll talk to him and call you back. Hanging up, producer Choi admired. It's just as you said. Chief Young Sunwoo sounded like he was terrified when I told him you went to meet the director. I think he's ready for the taking, what about you? How did the talk with the director go? General manager Huang's neck bulged with red veins. Producer Choi, who was still unaware of the situation, hummed. Ah, uh, also, we received a call from the PR team. They said you need to do an interview once the project is confirmed. Should I tell them? The proposal was handed over. General Manager Huang said with gnashed teeth. What was handed over? The proposal. It was handed over to that bastard, General Manager Zhou. The proposal was handed. Blinking a couple times, producer Choi almost choked. To General Manager Joe. WHY? No, how could you hand it over to him? What, you bastard? Should I have flipped a table over when the director told me to take my hands off it? Ha! Huh. General Manager Huang's lips twitched. Although he couldn't flip the table in the director's office, he looked like he might flip the table here a hundred times over. However, Producer Choi, who would have normally lowered his head, wasn't in his right mind. A.N. what about me? I trusted you. Producer Choi hastily picked his phone up and redialed the most recent number. The signal was busy. Producer Choi's complexion became pale. After hearing Producer Choi's ultimatum, someone else immediately called his phone. Young Sun Wu's eyes shined when he checked the number. It wasn't a cell phone number but a regular one. The middle numbers were familiar. Team leader, this is IBC's number, right? It is. Who is it? Is it General Manager Huang? Those words made the phone seem like a time bomb. Young Sun Wu lightly took a few breaths before picking the time bomb up. Well no once we pick up. Hello. Ah, uh, I am General Manager Zhou Jungian from IBC. Is this WU's Chief Young Sun Wu? General Manager Zhou Yunghyun. Chief Li Taishin tilted his head. The unexpected voice befuddled everyone in the meeting room. No, except for one person. Seemingly expecting something, Yong Sun Wu replied. Yes, that's me. I just received a reality TV show proposal from the director, 
and your phone number was written in the contact information, so I called. The proposal was very interesting. I would love to make it with you as long as you are okay with it. Would you mind discussing it with me before you pick someone else? The gentle, easygoing voice suggested. Then producer Choi attempted to call him. Three times. Young Sun Wu asked. Then general manager Huang. That guy will no longer be working on this project on the director's orders. There was an internal situation. A few hurriedly shut their mouths. They were about to scream or cheer. Instead, they quickly exchanged glances. Within this chaotic situation, Young Sun Wu continued to talk with general manager Zhou. Soon, they decided on a meeting before hanging up. At the same time, the meeting room blew up in an uproar. What the heck was that? Young Sun Wu smiled slightly at the female PR team employee's screaming question. It seems the insurance I took up was worth it. I guess I should have another drink. Yua, how expensive were the drinks for something like this to happen? If this is how it ends, then wasn't General Manager Huang just a chicken chasing dog? He scared us by acting like something big would go down once he reported to the director, but now all he can do is stare at the roof. 1. That's right. I feel refreshed just thinking about it. The PR team employees chatted with glowing faces. Team leader Park laughed. Road manager Lee Kuan Wu looked at Young Sun Wu with fervent eyes. His gaze seemed to be filled with reverence than admiration. Why are you all so noisy? Did everything go well? The team three leader stuck his head into the meeting room. Amongst the people who stood up in greeting, team leader Park asked. Team three leader, didn't you go out for a get-together? Hyunjo, this guy, said that the mood here was pretty serious so we left in the middle of it. I wanted to appear like a comet and lend a hand to Lucky Charm, but it seems I came for no reason. I should have just had some whiskey. The mood here was definitely grim ten minutes ago. They barely ate. Kim Hyunjo said as he entered after the Team 3 leader. Team leader Park grinned. I don't know what kind of deal was made under the bridge, but Mr. Sun Woo completely handled it. Ah, so the temporary team leader handled it. I worried about our temporary team leader for nothing. I guess he'll eat all the food I brought to support you by myself. Kim Hyunjo said jokingly before raising his hands. He was holding pizza and chicken boxes in each hand. The people in the meeting room, who had forgotten to eat due to pouring everything into the power struggle, swarmed at him like beasts. Young Sun Woo tightly gripped Kim Hyunjo's arm. Thank you, chief. It's nothing. But what happened? We were luckier than expected. I didn't know that they would react this way immediately. Young Sun Woo said with a smile as though he was relieved. The female PR team employee, who was biting into a chicken drumstick, joined in. Luck. Luck. Do you know what sort of face he made when talking to general manager Joe something? His face read, everything's going according to plan. He was even smiling wickedly. Lucky Charm does have a wicked side to him. The Team 3 leader chuckled. Boisterous laughter erupted around Young Sun Wu. Listening to the whole story, the Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo held their bellies in laughter when they got to the part about General Manager Huang having to take his hands off the project. Chief Li Taishin stood apart, unable to adjust to this cheerful mood. He was laughing and cheering like the others moments ago, but after the Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo arrived and after greeting them thanks to Young Sun Wu introducing him, he took a step back from the situation. He was like a man who had woken up from a dream and was now staring at reality. Chief Li, have a slice. Young Sun Wu handed him a slice of pizza. Chief Li Taishin blankly stared at him before jolting to his senses and accepting the slice. Ah, thank you. How is your schedule tomorrow? I think ITLL be good if you came with me to IBC. I don't think you'll be of much help. These words quietly crawled out of his mouth. Young Sun Wu said. They are so enthusiastic that we might start discussing the composition then and there. You are the one who knows pretty girls the best. Ah understood. Chief Li Taishin nodded. He clenched his jaw. Leaving the meeting room by himself, 
Chief Li Taishin took out his phone. There was an unending list of missed calls because he had ignored them for the entire day. There were even more messages. It was to the point his thin phone felt as heavy as a brick. He scanned through the messages in front of a window at the end of the hallway. An attached picture caught his eye. It was a message sent by O Yandu a while ago. Chief, Im Yandu. I'm sorry for texting you when you're so busy. I wanted to show you this in case you didn't see it. I quickly screenshotted it because I didn't know when it would drop. He could sense her excitement and overwhelmed emotions through her words. The attached picture was a screenshot of the portal site's real-time search rankings. Pretty girl's name was 10th. He checked the portal site now, and unlike O Yonder's thoughts, they were still on the rankings. They were first. He hastily screenshotted it. Other things caught his eye. The portal site's main entertainment column. Pretty girl's name was in the headline. When he clicked on it, he was greeted with the members' profiles. They were the material he sent WU's PR team. There was an article describing the unknown girl group's reality. There was even a music critic's analysis on why they weren't popular for the two years since they debuted. Chief Li Taishin read the article with a complicated gaze before turning the internet off. Someone seemed to have made a joke as laughter escaped the closed meeting room door. He stared at the meeting room before lowering his head. His earlobes were red. To be honest, he thought about this. How would things have turned out if the situation was reversed? If he and Pretty Girls were from WU and Chief Young Sun Wu and Neptune started off as a manager and idol group of a now non-existent company. If that was the case, would the current situation also be reversed? However, he realized something after seeing Young Sun Wu today. Neptune was able to break out from their unknown streak because Young Sun Wu was competent. And Pretty Girls were still an unknown girl group because he was incompetent. He had failed them. Chief Li Taishin glanced through his text messages again. There were dozens of texts from Park Hyogen and Yun Bora. They even called him an equally large number of times. He could guess what sort of faces they were making right now. His hand hesitated, hovering above the screen. In the end, instead of checking the contents of their texts, he looked through the remaining texts. There were a lot of people who he had met briefly or had never met before. However, none were from Young Jae. He tried calling her, but her phone was still turned off. Chief Li Taishin rubbed his thin face. He resembled my brother. That was my first impression of General Manager Zhou Jungian. They were similar no matter how I saw it. They both wore glasses and gave off an amiable impression. They both looked like they were the type of people who always carried books in their bags. In fact, they were also alike in how bright sweaters suited them. Maybe it was because of this, but the mood was comfortable after we greeted each other. It was completely different from my meeting with General Manager Huang. It felt like we were talking on the sofa in my house instead of inside his office. These are our conditions. What do you think? Ah, uh, they are good, Hyung too. Hyung. I inwardly clicked my tongue at my slip-up. General Manager Joe smiled lightly. I'm old enough to be your father. Do I really look that young? I covered the truth and nodded. His proposal was definitely good. They weren't bad even when compared to the conditions offered by cable networks and other production companies. I thought that we could pretty much go through with it from what I heard so far. As long as they didn't make absurd demands like General Manager Huang, it was more beneficial for us to collaborate with a public network. Their influence couldn't be beaten. However, the most important point remained. Who would General Manager Zhou choose as the producer? No matter how good the ingredients were, it was no use if the chef's skills were terrible. Even if we started the broadcast with the public's full attention, it was up to the producer to maintain it. Viewers would change the channel if the show was no fun. However, if the producer went excessively provocative, some of the members could become disliked by the public. We needed a skilled producer who could maintain the hype and make the public have favorable impressions of the members. Would all these producers be busy with their own programs? I licked my lips when General Manager Joe said. There's a producer I thought of as soon as I read the proposal. Would you like to meet him? 
Of course, I did. Chief Li Taishin and I exchanged glances before standing up. General Manager Zhou led the way. We left his office and were walking down the entertainment department's hallway. What kind of producer would it be? I hoped it wasn't someone like producer Choi Byungsu. I followed along while thinking this when I saw a familiar face across from us. A man was approaching us with steadfast steps. It was General Manager Huang. He frowned the moment he discovered us. Chief Li Taishin stopped in his tracks. It seemed he figured out who he was by his ID card. General Manager Zhou was walking in front of us with a smile on his face as though nothing was wrong. I also smiled. Hello, General Manager. When I greeted him first, General Manager Huang looked like his insides were twisting. Chief Li Taishin greeted him after me, but General Manager Huang didn't spare him a glance and simply stared at me. So I smiled even brighter so that he would feel even crappier. I guess the talk went well considering the smile on your face. General Manager Huang said in a mocking tone. An oddly irritating smirk hung on his lips. General Manager Zhou, did you decide on a producer? Not yet. We're about to discuss it now. Really? It seems you'll have a hard time finding a producer. General Manager Huang's smirk deepened. I looked around before handing over the proposal. Hyun Kwan and Wu Kyung are the only ones with the experience and skill who aren't tied up in a program right now. Just those two, but they are both busy preparing their own programs. Yet he boasted about how he had already decided on the staff yesterday. Was there something going on with the producers he mentioned? I frowned at the sudden thought, but General Manager Joe nonchalantly said. It doesn't matter. I have someone else in mind. What? Who? General Manager Huang's eyes widened. Besides them, the only ones in the entertainment department who have time are production assistants. Ah, uh, not from the entertainment department. He's from the documentary department. General Manager Huang was taken aback by his unexpected reply. I was also taken aback. The Documentary Department Chapter 159 Why you're planning on making a documentary? Are you crazy? General Manager Huang asked, stunned by General Manager Joss' words. I also wanted to ask the same thing. From the Documentary Department The Documentary Department Although the boundaries between entertainment and documentary shows have been blurry with infotainment programs, the format and their target audience were still completely different. There was no need to compare their influence and topicality. An entertainment show format would be better for the direction I wanted. Putting everyone around him in a state of confusion, General Manager Joe leisurely said. He'll be bringing in a producer from the documentary department. Not making a documentary. Just what, are you talking about Yu Su Young? General Manager Huang's expression trembled. Yu Su Young. I quickly searched this name in my mind. It wasn't completely unfamiliar. Where did I hear it? There weren't a lot of people who knew documentary producers. Looking next to me, it seemed that Chief Li Taishin knew who it was. His eyes were bulging. Clasping his hands behind his back, General Manager Zhou nodded. General Manager Huang snorted loudly. And I was wondering what you were up to. She said she would never do an entertainment show. We followed General Manager Joe down the stairs and really ended up in the documentary department. Unlike the entertainment department, who were in meeting rooms or outside all day, the majority of the documentary department employees were in their spots. Chief Li Taishin whispered to me while General Manager Joe went to look for producer Yu Su Young. She was an entertainment producer until three years ago. The one who launched Share House. My eyes shined. It was one of the few entertainment shows I had regularly watched. It was an entertainment show that gathered around ten celebrities in a house and produced episodes that would give sitcoms a run for their money. Although there were a lot of celebrities, they each had their own distinct character thanks to the editing, and the chemistry between members and storytelling were very good. That was why I had thought the producer was really talented whenever I saw it. Its popularity was incredible as well. Its ratings hovered around 20%. It flopped after the main producer was switched out. Her career was great even besides that, 
but she probably dropped out of that show because of her pregnancy. Ah, so she was pregnant. But why is such a talented producer with a great career like her in the documentary department now? I don't know either. He shook his head in regret. I was about to search on the internet for some more information when General Manager Joe waved at us. It seems she's advising right now. I followed his finger. He pointed to editing rooms clustered at the end of the hallway. People were gathered in one of the rooms. There were three people whose gazes were fixed on the monitor. I tried to figure out who might be Yu Suyang. General Manager Joe spoke. While reading your proposal, I thought it would be good to think of it as a story of growth. While it is important to make it fun like an entertainment show, I think ITLL be even better if we also add the emotional aspect of a human documentary. What do you think, Chief Young? ITLL be great if we could kill two birds with one stone. If we are able to move the audience through storytelling, it would feel a much longer lasting impression than some fleeting entertainment fun. It will also be helpful in sculpting the members' images and increasing the public's positive perception of them. The problem was that it would be extremely cringy if we messed up. I suddenly looked at the editing room again. A paper was stuck on it. Editing special human documentary, Neighbor, in progress. General Manager Joe smiled faintly and gave me a thumbs up. Out of all the producers I know, she's the best at that. The best. My mind lingered on those words when he quietly opened the door. Our greetings were short because they were busy. A woman who was sitting with her legs crossed said. Please wait, General Manager. Let us finish this part first. Okay, okay. Take your time. Was this woman producer Yu Su Young? She looked to be in her mid-thirties. She wore a long, flowing one-piece dress and a cardigan. She spoke quietly and softly. I had imagined a charismatic, bold woman since she was the main producer of an entertainment show bustling with celebrities. I guess that was my preconception. The clip being edited continued to play on the monitor. It was a fundraising broadcast. It introduced young children with incurable diseases in difficult situations and received support through an ARS automatic response system. We only saw a part of it, yet Chief Li Taishin lowered his gaze. Oh my god! Tears were pooling in his eyes. As soon as it stopped playing, producer Yu Su Young raised her hand. Can you go back? To the scene with the mother nursing her child. Yes, Sun Bei. A male producer quickly played the scene again. After watching it again, producer Yu Su Young said. Let's remove this whole scene. The mother is unlikable. The producer and writer blinked. Like they heard incorrectly. No, hoping they heard incorrectly. Producer Yu Su Young seemed to catch her mistake and added. She seems unlikable. Her clothes seem too nice. Uh, that brand isn't that expensive. It looks expensive. Her purse looks expensive too. Isn't her makeup too thick? Her tone was still soft, but something seemed off. It seemed different. The producer and writer were different from producer Yu Su Young. Should I say it felt like a carnivore acting coy amongst herbivores? I gradually became more interested in her. The male producer frowned. She didn't want to shabby on TV so she carefully picked out her clothes. She only put on lipstick too. It's not like her clothes and makeup are that important. Why wouldn't they? This family receives rice from church because they spend all their money on their child's hospital expenses, but it doesn't look that way on screen. They look like they are fine. Do you think the viewers will want to donate? But we won't have enough footage if we remove this scene. Lengthen the scene with the child eating alone in his hospital room. It's okay if scenes like that are long. Um, the general manager said that the nursing scene was good. The writer abruptly joined in. The general manager did. He took a glimpse not too long ago. Producer Yu Su Young's expression distorted. Soon, she regained her composure with a smile and stood up. Then do that. General Manager, I don't do entertainment shows. Producer Yu Su Young said once we explained the situation to her at a codfish soup restaurant. I have a child now. I won't live like that again. 
am going to live peacefully in the grasslands than in the bloody jungle. Like a herbivore. You do look like a herbivore. I am a documentary producer. And, it suits me. Okay. I won't pressure you, so just take a look at this proposal since we've already met. General Manager Joe quietly said as he handed her the proposal. Producer Yu Su Young glanced at me. Isn't this the talk of the town? There are probably tons of producer who want to do this. I thought of you as soon as I read it. I thought you'd be the best for it. I've already lost my touch. Even as she refused, producer Yu Su Young accepted the proposal. Her eyes quickly scanned through the proposal. Her expression became more anxious every time she turned a page. The speed of her heel tapping below the table quickened. Producer Yu Su Young asked. Then are there three members remaining in Pretty Girls? Or four? Chief Li Tae Shin looked at me. He clearly looked nervous. There are four members. Young Jae is one of the members, but we can't get in contact with her. We are looking for her though. His expression relaxed at my words. Team leader Park and Kim Hyunjo suggested that we just go with the three goldfish, but I told them that we would wait a bit longer. To be honest, it wasn't because of Young Jae or Chief Lee Tae Shin. I was simply concerned that Young Jae might have an influence on the success of Pretty Girl's single. Since she was known as the second Lee Sangha. If the story is decent, then it might be good to film you searching for her. She mumbled to herself before asking again. The other two are completely out, right? Yes. They already signed with another company. As soon as they left. Did they leave on bad terms? Seeing Chief Lee Tae Shin's expression, producer Yu Su Young mumbled. So it was bad. Then we might be able to get some drama based on their reactions. A pitiful human documentary or an outlandish drama full of MSG. If we want it to be really fun, then we need to get their reacty dash, no, think peaceful thoughts. Peaceful thoughts. Producer Yu Su Young continued to ask us a few questions and mumbled to herself. There were a few enticing ideas in her mumblings, so I took out my phone and took note. I was initially dumbfounded when General Manager Joe said that he was thinking about a documentary producer, but I wanted her the more I saw her. I don't know who's going to work on it, but they are lucky. But I really don't do entertainment shows anymore. Producer Yu Su Young closed the proposal. General Manager Joe received it back. Okay. Im suited for documentaries. I think I'm meant to make them. It's a shame, but there's nothing we can do if you don't want to. Producer Yu Su Young looked at the proposal with reluctance before shaking her head. She quickly got up and left the restaurant. Looking at a picture of her child, which was her phone wallpaper, like it was a talisman. While mumbling about peace. General Manager Joe looked at Chief Lee Tae Shin and me and asked. What do you think? Of her as the main producer? We nodded our heads. General Manager Joe smiled. That's good. Then just wait a little. A little? The little he mentioned really was short. I received a call from General Manager Joe before midnight. That everything was settled. He seemed to be in a bar as there were clinking sounds around him. I heard a drunk woman slurring her words in the background. Documentaries are freaking boring. So boring. Producer Yu Su Young wept. General Manager, I want to do entertainment shows. Oh my god. IBC is producing Pretty Girls reality show. Chattering voices could be heard from NK Entertainment's choreography room instead of music. The debuting team members crouched around a phone after ending their practice session. It's not on cable, but a public network. Wow, all it takes is one shot. How could they be so unlucky? They joined us after throwing away the winning lottery ticket. A member glanced at a corner. Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen, who left Pretty Girls and joined NK's debuting girl group, were packing their things. They looked depressed like they were carrying their own coffins. Kong Saran, who left earlier than the two, clicked her tongue. I can't even sleep from regret. How do you think they feel? How could this happen as soon as they leave? I probably wouldn't be able to live like that. 
there's no way for them to cancel the contract and go back, right? We already shot our profiles do you think the chief will let them? Hell just swear at them. Although they sounded like they were sad for their unlucky companions, a few had ridiculing expressions on their faces. Hearing their conversation, Park Hyogen slammed the door shut. Hey, look at this. Yoon Bora bit her lips as she looked at her phone. The hell. I searched pretty girls and it says that we left the group, but Jayuni is still there. The articles are also saying that there are four members. Isn't the chief too mean? He kept apologizing, saying that there was nothing he could do because we already signed, and acted like he was going cry, but he's going to keep Jayuni, who left before us. Seeing the screen, Park Hyogen's face distorted. How could he do this? We also suffered just a few days ago. That's what I'm saying. It's only unfair to us. Is there really no way to get out of the contract? They said that there was no way unless NK lets us go. Her voice surged with frustration. Their expressions became even gloomier. Should we sue them? Yun Bora suggested as she kicked the floor. NK. No, the president and chief Li Taishin. We suffered hardship for years without proper support at that company, but we didn't receive anything in return. Shouldn't we get our share? Like costs of damages or something. Hey, do you want to sue and end your career as a celebrity? Park Hyogen said in irritation before flinching. NK's chief was standing at the bottom of the stairs. Hyogen's right so stop with the foolish thoughts and try to think productively. Rather than suing, you need to do an interview. An interview? Yun Bora's eyes widened. NK's chief smiled brightly as he said. Yeah, you need to act like the victims when the show airs and everyone's attention is on pretty girls. If you can gain the public sympathy by playing the victim card, we can bring their attention to us. You'll be able to debut with a ton of popularity. No, why are we playing the victim card? Park Hyogen's eyes gleamed like she finally found a path after being lost in the dark. We really are the victims. Chapter 160 I sincerely apologize for this embarrassing incident. I was waiting for General Manager Joe in the lobby of IBC. Producer Choi Byung-soo quietly sat across from me and apologized. Still, I hope you would understand that I tried hard to persuade General Manager Huang. Oh, really? I barely managed not to snort. Although he was apologizing, it was all an act. His true thoughts were since I've apologized like this, let's just forget about what happened in the past. You're going to keep doing good friends anyways. Since we're on the same boat, let's just quickly make up and row together. That was true if we only thought about the business side of things. It wasn't like I could act rashly because I didn't like him when IBC was working hard on the reality TV show. I also had to appear on Good Friends' long-term project because a verbal contract was still a contract. Punching in all the numbers, it would be best to erase producer choice faults and make him pay more attention to our girls. So I should make a sour look right now but accept his apology at the right opportunity. I knew this, but... Chief, since you're already here, why don't we discuss our long-term project? This man was too detestable to just gloss over his actions. I don't think I can right now. I came to meet with General Manager Joe. We decided to meet once he was finished with his meeting with the director. Pardon? General Manager Joe is in the director's office right now. Why was he surprised? Yes, he went to discuss the reality TV show's time slot. General Manager Huang also went to the director's office not too long ago. He'll take good friends out so you can go in there. The director of the entertainment department said. Before General Manager Joe could reply, General Manager Huang jumped up. You're going to take it out. Didn't you say that you were going to trust producer Choi a bit longer during the restructuring meeting? He's been working hard preparing for the long-term project proposal he showed you. If you do this now, then. Who said we're ending it? Since the format is going to change, just publicly say that we are preparing for season 2 and tell the staff and cast members to wait. During that time, we'll air the reality TV show. General Manager Huang's shocked demeanor calmed slightly. Understood, then he'll tell producer Choi to prepare for the next season. 
I told you to tell him to wait. The director cut him off. ITLL depend on how Yu Soo-young makes the reality TV show. If it's good, we're going to change out Good Friend's main producer. General Manager Huang stiffened like he was struck by lightning. General Manager Zhou was also surprised. You're going to hand it over to producer Yu. You said that she had good ratings in the documentary department. It's not like her skill is going anywhere. Are entertainment shows and documentaries the same? Director. Yu Soo-young hasn't had an entertainment show for three years. She must have lost her touch from caring for her baby and leisurely filming documentaries, so how can we suddenly assign a regular program to her? What's sudden? I told you we'll see her results. The director frowned. Loud noises continued for a while inside the director's office. Then, not long after, the two general managers got on the phone as soon as they left the office. Carbonation rose up inside me. It swept through my frustration like a tsunami. General manager Joss' words on the phone were as sweet as a heavenly trumpet. My lips curled on their own. On the other hand, producer Choi, who was sitting across from me, looked like he was about to drown. I could hear general manager Huang's shouts from here. My heart rate quickened as I took in the sight. Was this a mental orgasm? I hung up after we decided to talk details in his office. Then I stood up without any hesitation. Producer Choi Byungsu, who was still on the phone, staggered up with his hand outstretched, as though he was trying to grab me. I lightly shook his hand before letting go. I tried to make my bright smile seem sad as I said. I guess we'll have to delay our meeting. Wait, Chief Young. General Manager, wait, Chief, um. General Manager Joe is urgently looking for me right now, so he'll see you next time. Though I didn't know whether there would be a next time. How long had it been since things had gone so smoothly? When something was resolved, another problem arose. When two concerns were settled, two more would pop up. These would occur on the daily, but now I was calm like I had finally achieved inner peace. Yeah, there need to be times like this in life. My life had been too eventful until now. Alive quickly exceeded 10 million viewers and was competing for the record. After Nam Joyun had a photo shoot and did an interview, he was becoming known as one of the talented rookies recognized by Chung Miro One. Good. It was very good. Royal Family's ratings exceeded 35%. It was Lee Song has debut onto the public network, so there were rumors PBS was considering which award to give her at the award ceremony. The majority thought she had the rookie award in the bag. It was hard for things to be better than this. All that was left was Neptune's official album and Pretty Girl's single project. Maybe it was because I was immersed in my inner peace, but I didn't think that we would fail. This thought was further reinforced once we started filming the reality TV show. Neptune and Pretty Girl's Goldfish's first meeting. The day Neptune showed the goldfish around WU's practice room and recording studio like museum curators. Producer Yu Soo-young grinned when she saw the goldfish following them like elementary schoolers. She was blinding. Within the few days of returning to entertainment shows, she started to shine. I think we can edit Pretty Girl's screen time with our feet. 2. That's a compliment, right? They are young, cute, and sad. If we can maintain that image, there's nothing more we need to do. The viewers will support them, hoping they become popular. If we promote the idea that the viewers need to stay interested in pretty girls and that listening to their new song is important, then they'll also have the mindset that they're helping pretty girls succeed. Producer Yu Soo-young said as though she was predicting the future. Then what about Neptune? Pretty girls were important, but Neptune members' image was also important. Since we decided to roll up our sleeves and work together, our goal was to increase each member's image in a positive light as best we could. Neptune is already popular, so it's important we decided how we proceed. Producer Yu Soo-young suddenly called a production assistant over. How was Neptune when you met them in person? They are pretty. The male production assistant gave her two thumbs up. Besides that. Uh, besides that. The production assistant glanced at me, so I nodded at him with a smile. I was indicating that he didn't need to feel any pressure, but he seemed to feel even more pressure. 
Anyways, it seemed he was more scared of producer Yu Suyang than me, so he said. It looks like they are aware of the viewers' reactions so it seems they are holding back. Holding back. But, since Neptune is already popular unlike pretty girls, it's normal for them to worry about their image. They can't help but be cautious. Only Im Seo Young looked like a fish in water. She didn't seem to be overly concerned by the cameras and acted very naturally. Producer Yu Su Young looked at me. That's what he says. What about you, Chief Young? It's the opposite. In my eyes, the girls seem to be acting like normal, and it seems that Seo Young is overly aware of the cameras. Producer Yu Su Young seemed to ponder over something at my words as she rubbed her chin. Then she asked the production assistant. What do you think of when I say Li Tae Leader, singer-songwriter. She makes her own songs. And Lee Songa. Incredibly beautiful. A divine actress. Uh, an acting genius. How about LJ? Boxing. There was a scene where she sparred on good friends. She looked like a complete pro. And Im Seo Young. Breasts. The production assistant read my expression as he said in a drawling voice. I'm sorry. I don't really have an interest in girl groups. We used social media, interviews, among others to try to showcase each member's distinct character, but maybe their fandom was the only one that was aware of that. So their public image had only reached this level. Still, wasn't breasts a little too severe? I stared at him, and he crumbled up even more. I told producer Yu Su Young, who asked me for my opinion. I may be biased, but there are a ton more to them than that. Then we'll see it. All of it. From that day on, cameras were installed in Neptune's residence. Of course, they were even set up in my minivan. Then, a few days later, the production assistant, having checked the footage, quietly came up to me and confessed that he bought Neptune's album with his own money and asked for their autographs. Footage continued to pile up every day. The program's title was also set, making film or ma, fill three for short. Thanks to the PR team regularly fueling reporters, the public's interest of making film didn't cool and instead burned steadily. The internal team acted quickly while producer Yu Su Young and the production staff worked. Things progressed smoothly like we were flying on a tailwind. Then, as we were beginning to focus on the recording and choreography of Pretty Girl's single. We need to decide. We can't keep waiting. Producer Yu Su Young started the conversation. Everyone in the meeting room nodded as they looked at Chief Li Tae Shin. We still hadn't heard from Young Jae. Chief Li Tae Shin and a cameraman looked around everywhere for her, but it was all for nothing. She only called her parents to tell them not to worry, so they didn't even know where she was. There's no way she doesn't know when it has become such a big topic. She must know that Chief Li has been searching for her as well. Seeing as she's been quiet all this time, it seems she has no plans on appearing. Team leader Park said. The past members, who were they? Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen. You said they called to support them. Why don't we settle their relationship on good terms and give up on Young Jae? Won't we mess up this good mood if we forcefully bring a girl who doesn't want to do it? Young Jae's future I saw and the short call I had with her stuck to my throat like a bone, but I was also thinking the same thing. We mentioned that Pretty Girls were a four-member team when we made a press release, and Young Jae was still considered a member on their profiles. Seeing as she still hasn't contacted us, it seemed like she had no thoughts of joining us like team leader Park suggested. We didn't have time to wait any longer. What should we do? Producer Yu Su Young asked as she turned to look at me. The moment I opened my mouth to answer, my vision went dark. Was this the future? My vision was dark. It was late in the night. My insides were churning. I felt like I was about to throw up. I was sitting in the passenger seat of a familiar van. Heavy rain fell on the windshield. The wipers moved non-stop but the road quickly became blurry. Static faintly filled my vision around it. The van was quickly driving through the rain. I couldn't tell where I was and where I was going. My eyes were fixed on a phone rather than the window. DMB. For a video was playing on the screen. Ah, this. 
It was a program that reported on provocative celebrity news. It seemed like the reporter was narrating something, but I couldn't hear it properly. Instead, subtitles appeared on the screen with a clip and audio recording. Yoon Bora 20 former Pretty Girls member. I heard that Aruni went to a drinking party with investors. I was scared and terrified that they would make us do something like that too. I could endure any hardship and was desperate for success, but I didn't want to do that. That's why I left. What the heck was this nonsense? She said this on a broadcast. While mentioning another member and a drinking party. A new scene played on the screen. Internet articles painting Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen as victims and the netizens uproar. They framed the three members, who were still high schoolers, as shrewd women and even insinuated that some sort of exchange occurred for me to choose pretty girls. Then WU's rebuttal and then K's reply. What a shit show. If Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen were planning on gaining the public sympathy to spread their name, then it was a success. Though, I wouldn't let this happen for real. I was racking my brain when a profile picture suddenly appeared. Although her face was blurred, I could instantly tell. It was Young Jae. Then the netizen's comments rushed in the chat. I found the pretty girl's member who went to those drinking parties. Hot damn, her boat is amazing. I bet she slept with those investors. I bet both my cheeks that she slept with them. There's no doubt. She even looks very risque. How much would you have to pay to sleep with a woman like her? Why did a girl who attended these things not land a single commercial? Were her skills in bed that bad? Young Jay was done for in this situation. Not just as a celebrity, this would follow her around her entire life. Chief, we arrived. I heard Lee Kwan was voice from the driver's seat. The van had stopped at some point. My future self turned the phone off. Then I looked up. A hospital? Why was I at a hospital? Just as I thought this. Something forcefully hit the van's window. It wasn't the rain. It was a hand. A man wearing a poncho was banging the window. With that as a start, dozens of reporters rushed to the van. They pointed their mics and cameras at us. Cameras flashed like lightning in the dark. Someone shouted. Mr. Young Sun Woo. Do you think that you are partly responsible for MS? Young Jay's Suicide Chapter 161 Suicide My mind wretched to a halt. The rain died down. The drumming rain and shouts of reporters that drowned my ears grew distant. I was sitting in the meeting room once again. This was the present. The present. Okay, so what I saw was the future. Just as I took a step back from this horrible word. Chief Young. What should we do about MS? Young J. Producer Yu Su Young asked. A chill ran down my spine. My blood seemed to gush out from me like a hunted animal that was hung upside down. I clenched my tingly hands a couple of times. The reporter's voice rang in my ears. Suicide. To commit suicide. What in? No, let's calm down. This hasn't happened yet. Yeah, not yet. Damn it. But it didn't seem like it was very far off either. I rubbed my face beaded with cold sweat and said. I think we need to be more proactively looking for her. More proactively? Everyone stared at me at my unexpected statement. Even Chief Li Taishin. Team leader Park tilted her head. Is there really a need to? If this fails, then we'll be tight for time. I felt things were a bit serious when I last talked to her. It also makes me uneasy that no one can get in contact her still. I'm worried she might be having some dark thoughts. By dark thoughts you mean. Everyone held their breath. Though I hope I'm just being excessively worried. You're probably right. You scared me there. Still, we aren't tight for time yet, so let's keep looking for her. I concluded and stood up. Chief Li Taishin's gaze followed me. I hid my urgency and said. Chief Li, do you have a moment? I led, almost dragged, Chief Li Taishin to the outdoor smoking area. A clear, cloudless sky was revealed when I opened the door. 
a lazy spring breeze shook the grass. This was definitely the present, yet it still felt surreal. My vision was still filled with afterimages of camera flashes. Um, Chief Yong. Chief Li Taishin examined my complexion. Thank you for giving us some breathing room. But, Jay won't have such dark thoughts you're worried about. How can you be so sure? When we can't even get in contact with her. She's worked almost ten years since elementary school to be a singer. She experienced a ton of hardships but overcame all of them. She's an only child so she deeply cares about her parents as well. There's no way she'd do anything like that. Like hell there isn't. Still, it seemed he found my words a bit concerning as he tried to call her again. It looked like she still wasn't picking up. Seeing this, my chaotic mess of a mind slowly seemed to regain its calm. I held on to the rail and took deep breaths. Now wasn't the time to space out. I needed to get it together and think through this. Park Hyogen and Yun Bora, who left for NK Entertainment, would make a media play involving pretty girls. In that process, they would bring up how a member was called to drinking parties. Once it's revealed that it was Young Jae, dirty, stinging gazes would fixate on her. Then suicide. Suspicions that a member of topical girl group might have been involved in sexual favors. Her image would be dragged through the mud, and even if she denied them at the top of her lungs, those rumors would follow her like a shadow. Even if she was a steadfast girl who wouldn't crumble over easily as Chief Li Taishin said, she might have such an impulse in that sort of situation. She was only 22, and she spent half her life with the goal of becoming a celebrity. On top of that, there was a high chance she would be mentally unstable. Damn it. I felt sick thinking about suicide again. My gaze unconsciously looked below the banister. The ground was far away. I swept away the thoughts that spread like mold in my mind. Let's take action first. Let's find out where Young Jae is and what she's doing and stop Park Hyogen and Yun Bora before they do anything crazy. I asked Chief Li Taishin, who was calling to no avail. Do you have no idea where she might be? Someone among her family or friends who might be hiding her? At least not her parents. He shook his head. Checking the phone number she called her parents with, it was a public number in Seoul. Near Young Dungpo. I think she's still in Seoul, but none of the past trainees or members who left Pretty Girls had an idea where she might be. It's no time to be like this. He'll go and look for her. Before that. I stopped him. Park Hyogen and Yun Bora. Yes. I thought about it, and those two know too much. They know that their previous president took a member to drinking parties, and it could become a problem if this gets out. I think we need to make sure they don't leak anything. Taken aback, Chief Li Taishin opened and closed his mouth. He'll talk to them. No, he'll do it. Since we would have to take stronger measure if it wasn't settled politely. I didn't think he could ever do that. Instead, tell me more about them. By that you mean. Information that I can use to lock their lips in the worst case scenario. They didn't even know what to say and not to say and were capable of stabbing their previous members in the back for their own success. Once they knew that there was a knife aimed at them, they would be scared and be cautious. The sharper and clearer the knife, the more effective it would be. Chief Li Taishin paled when he saw my expression. He clung on to me as though he thought I was going to go over there, grab them by their collars, and threaten them. Ch Chief Young, it's understandable that you are worried since the mood wasn't great when they left. But they were just too emotional at that time. I heard that they caused trouble for you once the articles were released. Th that's how could they not act after seeing such articles. They narrowly missed the opportunity they had waited for the past two years for. Even if I were them, I would need someone to resent as well. His desperate attempts at trying to change my mind were almost pitiful. It was almost for a moment. They are fine now. They decided to wholeheartedly support us. Chief Li. And about the DRI drinking parties. Chief Li Taishin bit his lips before continuing. They all know that they shouldn't tell others about that. They are so bad to harass members who they spent years with. I'm sure of it. The two you are protecting would flap their mouths in an interview soon. 
and the young Jay you trust would never have bad thoughts would die. A thought suddenly crossed my mind. In the future where young Jay dies and after knowing that those two were responsible for that situation, how would this person cope? Would he still be able to live like a normal person? My thoughts of threatening him into cooperation smoldered. I let out a short sigh before saying in a calm voice. Do you really think I would just threaten them? I'm only preparing for the worst case scenario. If I don't tell them the seriousness of it, they might accidentally leak it to the press, and even if they didn't want to, NK Entertainment might push them to it. After a few more exchanges, Chief Li Taishin nodded while looking like someone who was about to squeal on his family. He spoke. I left Li Quan Wu to organize the schedule and left the company. I made a necessary stop and made a few calls before finally picking up my phone. They were wearing a racy corset-style top that exposed their cleavage, a garter belt that went past their short skirt and down their thighs. NK Entertainment's soon-to-debut girl group got in position in those outfits. The camera stubbornly focused on their cleavage and legs. Park Hyogen, Yoon Bora. Why do you keep flinching? Are you not confident in your bodies? The NK chief clicked his tongue as he observed the shoot. Yoon Bora fiddled with her hair as she said. No, it's just our first time doing a photo shoot wearing something like this. Why can't they keep up when they've already debuted before? Chuckles could be heard from the other members. Yoon Bora frowned. As soon as the shoot was over, Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen rushed to the dressing room. Yoon Bora threw off her outfit, which was no different from lingerie. Don't tell me our stage outfits will be like this. How can we go on TV while wearing something like this? The stage outfits must be different. They need to consider the broadcast. It seemed the other members heard them when they entered the room as they said. Have you never done a sexy concept when you were in Pretty Girls? Never. Half of the group were minors. They are the only ones left, right? Was it making film? I heard they started filming, have they approached you? Maybe you should ask them. Stop it. It's not like this is your first time bringing this up. I'm tired of hearing about it. Park Hyogen quietly shot them a glance. The other members, who had been laughing, stiffened. The mood in the dressing room tensed. Just before Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen were about to leave after taking their things, they heard whispers behind them. If they can't wear things like this, why did they join a group with a sexy concept? I know, right? They were so proud of their stage experience. Look at them now. Hey! Park Hyogen held Yoon Bora back when she turned around, face red. Studio staff and NK Entertainment employees were busily cleaning up the shoot. Park Hyogen gestured at them as she said. Can't you see there are a lot of people? Don't cause a fuss. We need to maintain our image. It's still frustrating. They're always whispering behind our backs when they will benefit once our popularity rises after talking to the press. I dare them to try to take advantage of us then. Panting, Yunbora angrily picked up her phone. It was vibrating. Who is it? Ah, I'm sorry for calling you all of a sudden. I received this number from Chief Li Taishin. It was a deep, gentle voice. Yun Bora tilted her head. My name is Yung Sun Wu. Who? Yung Sun Wu, chief or temporary team leader at WU. Whatever the position, I am Yung Sun Wu. Yun Bora's eyes bulged. She hastily tapped Park Hyogen's shoulder. When Park Hyogen turned around, Yun Bora silently mouthed, Yung Sun Wu. Soon, Park Hyogen's eyes widened too. As soon as she hung up after talking in the corner, Park Hyogen urged. What did he say? Why did he call? He wants to talk to us. Yoon Bora glanced at their chief before replying. What should we do? I told him we'd let him now soon. What do you mean what do we do? Of course, we need to meet him. Tell him we'll be out right away. Wait, then let's ask the makeup uni to fix our makeup. ITLL be good to look nice. You never know, right? Yoon Bora took out a hand mirror from her bag and looked at her reflection. Soon, they went to their makeup artist. Here are the drinks you ordered. 
The employee placed the teacup on the table and glanced at Yong Sun Wu. Her curious gaze also brushed back Park Hyogen and Yun Bora who were sitting across from him. As soon as she left the private room, they could hear her conversation with her co-worker. Is he? Is he? Yeah, I think he's Yung Sun Wu. His face looks exactly like his pictures. Then, are the girls who came with him celebrities? They were pretty. There was an article about him doing a show with a girl group. Maybe they are members. Hey, should we ask for a picture when they leave? I think they'll be famous once the show airs. Park Hyogen and Yun Bora brightened and they called them pretty but immediately frowned. They heard this multiple times a day after pretty girls became a hot topic. Aren't they pretty girls? No, they left the group. Why did they do that? Fools. They heard this repeatedly, but it still lit a fire in their stomachs whenever they heard it. Yun Bora gulped down the tea with a chamomile flower floating on it. Then she flinched before placing her cup down. Yun Sun Wu was observing them. Staring at them. Yun Bora picked up a tissue and calmly wipes the corners of her lips. Sitting beside her, Park Hyogen looked like the most refined, elegant person in the world. However, their touching shoulders were stiff with tension. They overworked their brains thinking on their way here. What was so important that he had to talk to them face to face? Maybe he would ask them to appear on making film? Or, maybe, just maybe. He was trying to gather all the members to make pretty girls whole again. Although Chief Li Taishin and the lawyer they secretly met shook their heads, maybe this person had a way. Maybe he could end their contract with NK Entertainment and bring them over to WU. Such expectations slowly budded. Soon, Yong Sun Wu lightly tapped the table with his thumb. I called you both because I wanted to talk to you in person. Look at us, no, please speak. One you can also talk more casually. Is that okay? Although he had a fierce gaze, that was because he simply looked that way. His voice was as gentle and soft as a kitten's paws. Thinking that there was no doubt it would be something good, Yun Bora sipped her tea with a smile. Yung Sun Wu smiled as well as he asked. Have you ever been sued before? Chapter 162 Yuk Yun Bora coughed after unintentionally swallowing the flower in her tea. Park Hyogen understood a bit faster. Her eyes moved quickly under her lashes. Sue. Did you ask if we've ever been sued? Yeah, whether it's for defamation or damages. Never. And we never did anything to warrant it. Okay. Young Sun Wu placed both his arms on the table. His hands slowly clasped together under his rolled up dress shirt sleeves. Park Hyogen unconsciously leaned back. She somehow felt like her neck was held between his two hands. But, looking at it, it seems like an accident like that could occur. Young Sun Wu said with an unpleasant expression. His still gentle voice no longer seemed so gentle. Having understood the situation, Yun Bora made an innocent expression. I don't know what you're talking about. Did your company talk about making a media play? They coughed. This time, it really felt like they were suffocating. So they did. I took a sip of my peppermint tea as I observed them. Although I didn't say much, their eyes were trembling, and their breaths became rough. Especially Yun Bora, it looked like she would need a respirator. If someone else saw this situation, they would think that I made them sign a slave contract and was selling them. They did. Park Hyogen nodded. The chief said that doing an interview would be a good chance at getting our names out there. He said it was only a media play to win over the public sympathy. See can we still be sued? Yun Bora asked with a frightened expression. There's no problem if it's a normal interview. Of course, there wouldn't be. But if you try too hard and say something you shouldn't, then that'll be a problem. Like if you mentioned investors or drinking parties. We we won't say things like that. We aren't planning on saying anything bad. Really. Yun Bora jumped up and down as she shook her head. Was this an act or not? What were they thinking when they mentioned it to a program writer? Was it part of a cunning, elaborate plan? Or something they said without thinking? If not, they might have let it slip, 
and the writer could have thought she hit jackpot and put it in the show. I didn't think NK Entertainment would force them to talk about the drinking parties if they were really just trying to garner sympathy as they said. If they intentionally tried to pick a fight with WU, they would lose more than they would benefit. Were these too cunning or stupid? It didn't matter. The incident happened because of that interview and being stupid didn't clear you of your crimes. Although I told Chief Li Taishin that it was for the worst case scenario, I had planned to lock their mouths up from the beginning. I still hadn't fully recovered from my distrust in humanity caused by the traitor. This was a problem of whether a person lived or died. There was no need to leave any room for uncertainty. Well, there would be a difference in whether I used polite words or threatening ones. I gently smiled and said. Then that's a relief. I was worried because I had heard rumors that NK Entertainment was planning on doing something like that as noise marketing. It seems the rumor was exaggerated. You must have been shocked when I suddenly brought up suing you. I'm sorry. Th that's okay. I was a bit shocked. Who said something like that? The person must really hate us. There's no need to worry. We will never do something like that. Yes, no need to worry. Yunbora and Park Hyogen confirmed. Then the same voices rang in my ear. Tell them to sue us. Hyogen. People are flooding us with sympathy so ITLL be great for us if you sue. People will take even more pity on us. They'll say that a big company like WU is bullying powerless people like us. Well just pay. What kind of crazy? Their conversation was so absurd that I belatedly realized that I was in the future. Although there was a bit of static, it wasn't so bad that I couldn't distinguish their voices. Yun Bora, Park Hyogen, and Chief Li Tishin's voice played from the earphone in my ear. The jack was plugged into my phone. Was this an audio recording? For a while, all I could hear was Chief Li Taishin's distressed pants. He seemed to be having trouble breathing as it became more ragged. How can how can you still how could you do this to Jay? It's not like we said her name. It's the netizens who looked into it. We are powerless, so we have to find a way to be famous. Jay Uni has a lot of people helping her. She even has you. WU is going to respond and cover the whole thing up since it's not like she really did do any sexual favors. It felt like someone popped my head open and poured ice into it. My brain froze. My future self took the earphones out and turned his gaze. Lee Kuan Wu was sitting next to me. He had a very serious expression. Kuan Wu, they'll send this file to Team Leader Park, so you go stay with the PR team. Understood. Where will you be going? Pretty girls' residence. There probably won't be anything. There are a lot of people looking after Young Jay right now. So we did find her. Young Jay. As I patted my chest in relief, my phone rang. It was O Yandu of Pretty Girls. Did something happen? CH Chief, Chief. Jay Uni. Jay Uni. Her voice creaked with fear. I also heard people crying and screaming. I had a bad feeling. Someone took the phone from Oyandu. Im Lee Suji. Jay just slee slit her wrist. I returned to the present. Damn it. I downed the peppermint tea in an instant. Thinking about the future I saw before and the one just now left a bad feeling. It felt like my entire body was frozen. I licked my dry lips when a glass of water slid towards me. Please have some water if you're thirsty. Should we ask for the menu again? Park Hyogen and Yunbora asked in front of me. Their voices were pleasant, unlike the cold voices I heard just before. I laughed. I used human words all this time for nothing. When my foe were animals. Some trash might try to talk or push you into doing it. Our previous company took a member to a drinking party with investors. We left because we didn't want to do something like that. If you say something like that, ITLL definitely be a hot topic and the public will sympathize with you. Even if WU sues you, you could consider it as an opportunity. Taken aback, they exchanged glances with each other. Yun Bora gulped a couple time. Were her cunning desires fanning the flames right now? 
Park Hyogen was the first to return to her senses. Chief, we said that something like that will not. I'm only saying this so that you remember my words if you are ever faced with a decision like this. If you make the wrong decision and this project fails, we'll be taking very aggressive measures. Our PR team will make you out to be complete bitches in the public's eyes. W.H. Watt. I leaned forward. Do you think you'll be able to continue as a celebrity, no? Even have a social life when it gets out that you pretended not to know that a member was being dragged to drinking parties since you thought you could become famous if she was able to nab a sponsor. Their faces paled like they had been dunked in water a few times. After shifting her eyes back and forth, Yoon Bora asked. W who said that? Was it Chief Lee? D does he have any proof? Hmm, I don't know. Yoon Bora flinched at my smile. Of course, we didn't have any proof. But, thinking like that, there was also no proof that Young Jae went to drinking parties either. In a dirty fight chipping away at each other's image, the victor would be decided by whose PR team was more skilled and well-connected. Their faces gradually paled after every word I spoke. Park Hyogen, who seemed to be racking her brain, looked up. We really won't do anything like that, so don't scare us like that. That's right. It seems like you're threatening us. Yun Bora pouted, looking like she was about to cry. I carefully examined their expression. Then a smile hung on my lips again. In a voice that was as friendly as possible, I said. I don't want to scare you like this, but this could be a very serious problem. All sorts of things happen in this industry. Although I think that the rumors I heard were nonsense, I thought it would be good to confirm with you. They smile awkwardly. Just as the tense mood seemed to relax a little, Yun Bora, who had been carefully reading my expression, couldn't hold her words back any longer. Um, Chief. Is there really no way we can rejoin Pretty Girls? There could be a way. Perhaps. If things went as expected, we would have asked them to appear on making film. If they had sincerely supported the other members like Chief Lee Tae Shin said they would, then producer Yoo Soo Young would have packaged it into a warm, heart-rending story. Then, the viewers might take pity on the dispersed Pretty Girls members, and their opinion that the Pretty Girls should be whole again could get large enough that NK Entertainment couldn't ignore it. If things played out that way, then perhaps. A deal that benefited both NK Entertainment and me could have been made. Maybe, but that would never happen. I don't think so. Ah. Instead, I looked into NK Entertainment's group a little. The one you're in. The two who were visibly disappointed quickly raised their heads. I think it was all right. I think the group's image matches you better than pretty girls. The more I spoke, the more their faces swelled with anticipation. In a voice filled with certainty, I hammered in the final nail. I think you'll do well there. Re really? Just empty drivel. After finishing things up, I went to find Chief Lee Taishin. He was looking for Young Jae in Yuido with a cameraman. I picked them up, and as soon as they got in the minivan, Chief Lee Taishin cautiously asked. How did the meeting? Let's talk about that later. Do you happen to know Lee Suji's number? Pardon? Suji? Chief Lee Taishin asked back, confused. The one who left Pretty Girls with Kong Saran. Ah, there isn't someone else named Lee Suji that Young Jae knows, right? Th that's probably right. But I already called her multiple times. Chief Lee Tae Shin opened his eyes. I entered her address and began to drive as he tried to call her. The future I saw back then kept floating around in my mind. The last person who talked about Young Jae definitely called herself Lee Suji. I heard she completely left the entertainment world after leaving Pretty Girls. Did they say she was a university student now? It felt odd that she was at Pretty Girls' residence for some reason. Although she could have come over because she was worried about Young Jae with all the bad press, it was better to be safe. I also didn't have any other hints to go off on. We soon arrived at Lee Suji's home in Maypo. Having called ahead, Lee Suji was waiting for us on the street. Even from afar, I could see the concern on her pretty face. Chief Lee Tae Shin almost rolled out the minivan and asked her about Young Jae's whereabouts. Lee Suji shook her head with a troubled look. 
You really didn't hear from her. I'm just really worried about her, Suji. If you know anything. Then, of course, I'll contact you. Last time, last last time, and even before that, I told you that it's been a while since I've heard from Jay. You said that she hasn't gone missing and even called her parents. You don't need to uh. Do you really not know? I cut in. It seemed she recognized my face as Lee Suji looked shocked like she had seen a ghost. Chief Lee Taishin might be sued at this rate. Sorry. You know that we are preparing for making film, correct? Yi yes. We need to start recording and practicing choreography, but pretty girls and Chief Lee Taishin stubbornly said they were going to wait for MS. Young Jay and are wasting time. We are already way behind schedule. The broadcast might completely fall through. Lee Suji was so shocked that she didn't know what to do, but even Chief Lee Taishin and the cameraman were at a loss for words. I waved my hand and continued. We already started filming a few scenes, and if we are met with a lawsuit asking for compensation, Chief Lee Taishin might be fully responsible. Chief Lee is already in debt, and at this rate, he could actually go to prison. I think MS. Young Jay should know about this situation. I took a step closer and asked again. Do you really not know where she is? Chapter 163 Chief Are you planning on ruining your life? Lee Suji's eyes were burning. She forcefully shook Chief Lee Taishin as she shouted about what he was going to do if he actually went to jail or how did he hope to survive in this cruel world when he was so inflexible and foolish. I wholeheartedly agreed. Even the cameraman nodded his head. Chief Lee Taishin was being scolded by a girl who didn't even reach his shoulders as he kept glancing at me. I signaled to him, telling him to keep his mouth shut if he couldn't act since Lee Suji's reaction was unusual. Chief Lee Taishin seemed to have noticed the same thing as me as he added. How can I just think of my own life when I have no idea where she is? Then you should have thought about the younger ones. We believe that you. Li Suji stopped mid-shout. She looked in our direction with an uneasy expression before sighing. Ah, uh, god damn it. Wait here for a bit. As though she was wary of us, Li Suji took a few steps back and took out her phone. So I was right. My tensed shoulders soon relaxed. Just then, two paths naturally opened up in my mind. While Chief Li Taishin was going around like a puppy who had to go, Li Suji was definitely talking to Young Jay. After telling her that Chief Li Taishin could go to jail if the program falls through, Li Suji paused. Then she hung up and said. Follow me. They say that you can't see what's under your nose. Young Jay was living in the apartment next to Li Suji. She rented it from the owner, who went to the same school as Li Suji and had gone home for a while, by paying a portion of the rent. That was why she was there whenever Chief Li Taishin came looking for her. What a mess. I followed behind Chief Li Taishin, who was rushing forward, when the cameraman came over. It seemed his 6mm camera was still recording as the light was on. We got nothing while running around looking for her like mad, yet it's smooth sailing as soon as you join. Even I would have been frightened if you said that I could go to jail. No, how can you adapt to the situation so quickly? How is it possible? It's because threatening people is my talent. Should I say that, in this industry, I was a rising specialist in that regard? It was the same when I faced Yun Bora and Park Hyogen. I didn't have to think much for these words to come out. At this point, it seemed like I was meant for it. A hobby in recording others with a talent in threatening people. Maybe I could use these talents to achieve great success if I hadn't become self-conscious about my actions after seeing the future. Well, I guess I simply said whatever out of urgency. It didn't seem like you said whatever. I think I understand why people bring you up so much. But what would you have done if MS? Jay was silent after receiving MS. Li Suji's call. I don't know. The cameraman seemed to want to know more details, but I simply smiled. I had already been thinking about it inwardly. Although I believed Chief Li Taishin had some circumstances of his own, he was like that with Park Hyogen and Yun Bora as well. Chief Li Taishin was the type of guy who would be playing pat-a-cake with Tinkerbell in Neverland. 
As someone who had an innate distrust in others, Young Jae was a bit unsatisfactory. She tried to get my favor, but she apologized, though I didn't know whether it was due to her conscience or just shame. Seeing as she hadn't appeared afterwards made me think she was at least better than the other two, but that was all. But to ignore her group members who were about to lose their chance and her manager who was about to go to jail and just hide? If she really was like that, then all the concern and time I spent today would have been a waste. I might have just stopped looking and left, thinking that I did enough by sealing Yoon Bora and Park Hyogen's lips. Well, seeing as we were going to meet her right away, I guess it was a relief that she didn't seem to be that kind of girl. We're here. She's probably in my friend's room. The hallway was narrow and packed with doors like a live-in study hall. Lee Suji stood in front of the door of Unit 602. I suddenly recalled the one time I saw Young Jae. Although the details were hazy, I remembered a few thoughts I had. She gave off a somewhat lonely and pitiful feeling like she was drenched in rain without an umbrella. Like someone who would cry at the slightest nudge. What kind of expression would she have right now? I peered into the slight opening in the door. I think ITLL be best if Chief Lee went in on his own. Lee Suji said as she closed the door again. Chief Lee Taishin, who looked like he was almost out of breath, paused. Is it because of the camera? It's off right now. No, rather than the camera, it's because of Chief Young Sun Wu. I think her condition might worsen if she saw you. Her condition might worsen. When I tilted my head slightly, Li Suji added with a gloomy expression. She has depression. D depression? Jay does? Yes, she also has a bit of insomnia as well. She's been going to the hospital. I had anticipated that she might have a mental problem considering her life ended in a suicide, but to have depression. Had Park Hyogen and Yun Bora poured oil into an already blazing flame? After letting the anxious chief Li Taishin and Li Suji go in on their own, the cameraman and I decided to wait in Li Suji's currently empty room. However, there was no need to wonder about what was going on in the next room. Jay, why is your face so haggard? His pronunciation was horrible. Exaggerating a little, it was like I could almost hear them breathing. Young Jay's voice was gloomy like a wind sweeping through a barren wasteland, and Chief Li Taishin sounded impatient. He asked about why she didn't call him until now and whether she decided to quit because of the president. I glanced at the cameraman, thinking that the conversation would be delicate. Director, I think they'll discuss some sensitive matters one. He'll be having a smoke outside. The cameraman left his camera and took his cigarette pack and lighter. Now I was the only one remaining in this cramped apartment. I crossed my arms and leaned against the wall. Behind it, Chief Li Taishin was apologizing for not knowing about it beforehand. Li Suji would occasionally get a word in as well. Young Jay's voice could be heard once in a long while. If you hid because of that, you don't have to. The president ordered you to. It wasn't because you wanted to. I know you're not that type of person. You'll never be in that sort of situation again. Chief. You can come back. None of the members blame or hate you. Rather, they are very sorry. They are anxiously waiting for your return. Forget me and think of them now, Chief. You're just exhausted right now. You'll regret giving up now when you put ten years into this. I didn't know what I was doing here. Maybe I should have sniffed some cigarette smoke with the cameraman. I felt like it would have been more productive to discuss how we could enhance the footage we took today. Or, is it because you're too embarrassed to see Chief Young? Because of that phone call? It's all right. We understand you were desperate, and Chief Young was the one who approved us looking for you. I was going to sleep with him. W.H. Watt. I was going to sleep with Chief Young Sun Wu. What sort of nonsense was this? Instead of being depressed, was she a mythomaniac? 2. Chief Li Taishin spoke the exact words I wanted to say. What are you saying? You called him believing the rumor that he accepted bribes. You asked how much he wanted. I told him I'd do anything he wanted. If he asked me to sleep with him, I would have. J. I fled because I was terrified by the person the president introduced me to. 
I told myself I would never do something like this even if I died. But I was the one who brought it up to Chief Young. I had mistakenly thought he was interested in. Perhaps he thought I had potential. But I was wrong. Wrong. Her laugh was tinted with shame. I should have taken the hint and gave up then, but I couldn't. I thought, maybe if he saw me in a more positive light, so if I got him to like me more maybe he'll make me like Lee Sangha or Nam Joyun. Oh, yeah. She did say something like that. That she would do anything I said even if it wasn't money. So to help her succeed like Lee Sangha or Nam Joyun. I was so caught up in events that came after, like how she left pretty girls and pretty girls disbanded, that I never had the chance to think about it. Rather than being paid for sleeping with him, I thought that I could believe he was helping me because he saw potential in me. I was still selling my body regardless. Young Jae didn't cry nor did she seem like she was suppressing her surging emotions. She seemed to crumble like ashes after a fire. Im now that type of girl. One that uses her body because her talent isn't enough. It's disgusting, isn't it? Young Jae. This is an opportunity that could change the other girls and your life. It'll only be a hindrance if I join. I plan on giving up on becoming a singer. So don't concern yourself with me and go to them. Are you being serious? If ITLL be helpful if I did an interview, it'll do it. So the short call with me burned up the past ten years of her life. Her confidence in her talent and potential all burned away. Her pride was the next to burn. If I went back a bit further, all this happened because of the few seconds I stared at her. Damn it. For some eye contact to end in suicide. How could I walk around with my eyes open from now on? Anyways, she wasn't hateful like Park Hyogen and Yoon Bora. Should I go in and face her rather than listening to them like this? I rubbed my stiff neck and was about to get up. Jay. Was my belief in you nothing to you? Chief Lee Taishin said in a teary voice. I always thought you were overflowing with talent and potential. I thought that you would one day stand on the big stage and on the red carpet. I still believe that. Does my belief mean nothing to you now? Chief, that's not it. To be honest, I thought about quitting after working with Chief Young. Now, what was he saying? I understand from working alongside him. I really was incompetent. You all had such potential but couldn't shine because you met me. That's not it. It's all thanks to you that the group lasted two years. Since the girls would be on their own if I left, I believe that Chief Young might take them all in. Bora and Hyogen found their own paths. But I couldn't quit because I was worried about you. I crossed my arms again and leaned against the wall. Well, Chief Li Taishin was so soft-hearted and kind that he was frustrating, but I had thought that it would be good to have people like him rather than a team full of cold-hearted people since there were things he could do that they couldn't. Did I not communicate very well after becoming a temporary team leader? It was my fault you went to those drinking parties on your own, and it's also my fault as your manager that you had such extreme thoughts. So you'll learn a lot while working with Chief Young. Let's work together once more, Jay. Chief. If you really hate working with me, you'll quit too. That man was doing something similar to a threat. I unintentionally laughed. Then I began hearing the three of them cry behind me. I knocked on the apartment next door. The door opened after a few knocks. Their sobs became even louder. Seeing me, Lee Suji's teary eyes trembled. I think I unintendedly hammered a nail in a mess. Young Jay's heart, so I came to take it out with my own hands. The first person I saw when I entered was Chief Li Taishin, whose eyes were all red. Young Jay was standing behind him. The hazy image in my mind grew clearer. Maybe it was because she lost a lot of weight, but she looked even more delicate. Even in a moment like this, I thought that her crying face especially suited her. There were now four goldfish. Young Jay was taken aback when she saw me as she retreated a few steps. She looked like she wanted to escape into an aquarium if there was one, no, I was worried she might fall out the window. I steadfastly walked through the room and stood in front of the window. I have the same thoughts as Chief Li Taishin. P. Pardon? I stared at you before because I thought you had potential. 
I only acted that way on the phone because I believed that it would be better if you stayed in the group rather than going solo. I wasn't lying. Would her crumbled pride revive with this? When I glanced at her, she seemed to be in a daze, unsure whether this was a dream or reality. She blankly looked up at me with a confused expression. Also, please forget all of those thoughts. It's not like it actually happened, so there's no need loathe yourself. Everyone struggles with thoughts like that. I struggle with them all the time. Should I be tempted or not? Damn it, I'm going crazy. That's just life. I wasn't lying about this either. As I continued to speak like it was nothing, Young Jay's red eyes welled with tears. Her already soaked, trembling lashes were wet with tears once more as they dripped. Her trembling hands covered her face. She erupted into tears that made even the hearts of people hearing her sobs ache. Yes, I hoped that having a good cry would lighten the heart. Teary-eyed, Chief Li Taishin patted her back. I should talk with him after all this crying. Thinking this, I took a step back. Then I smiled as I leaned against the wall. It was a leisurely smile that I have finally recovered after a long, hectic twelve hours. The elevator opened. A dim orange light lit up the dark hallway. Coming to Neptune's residence after being busy with pretty girls the entire day felt like I was returning to my hometown. All my anxiety relaxed. I picked up the convenience store bags and went over to the door like normal. Then I almost died of a heart attack. A woman with long, unraveled hair was crouching in front of the door. Sangha, what are you doing here? Were you chased out? No, I saw you coming so I decided to wait outside. I wanted to talk. We can talk inside, why are you sitting here in the dark? There are cameras inside. It's a bit too personal to be talking about it inside. Too personal, huh? I placed the plastic bags on the floor and stood next to Lee Sangha. What is it? The pretty girl's member you have your business card to last time. Did she hear something? The light turned off as we stood still. Our surroundings went so dark I couldn't see anything. I could hear Lee Sangha breathing next to me. It was ticklish. Soon, she spoke in her sweet voice. I heard that you personally went to find her and bring her back. The uni said that there was no doubt that you fell for her the moment you saw her and was obsessing over her, so I'm here as the representative to ask you about it. Don't ask about it. I haven't fallen for her. Really? Really? How could I fall for someone at a glance when I see you all the time? I could sense her surprise. The light turned back on when I turned to look at her. The orange light shined on Lee Song has face as she looked at me. Chapter 164 Lee Songa opened her mouth before closing it firmly. Her cheeks flinched like she was doing her best to stop herself from saying something. The lighting was the same, yet her face turned brighter and darker. Our eyes met. Her eyes were tinted with the orange light as well, making them seem like the ocean at sunset. Like hell, they were like the ocean with blowing winds and crashing waves, you crazy bastard. The light turned off again. Only about three seconds seemed to have passed, but it was a relief. I used the darkness as cover to frown. Her breathing quickened. This was perturbing. It felt like I poured malt and water in rice, let it ferment, and even boiled it down. Meaning I was smoothly screwing myself over. 1. Let's go in now. Her hand shot out like lightning and grasped my arm. Her hand, which I had seen and touched countless times before, had always been slender and supple. Where did she get this strength from? I felt like a salmon caught by a bear. Why? Do you have something else to ask? She asked between her quickened breaths. Why don't you date, Appa? Have a conscience. Whenever there's a hint like that, you girls stick to me like sister ghosts, trying to take me along with you. Still, you could if you really wanted to. Of course, I could if I really wanted to. In the darkness, which I couldn't even see her outline, I turned my gaze towards her as I could clearly sense her perking her ears for my reply. Just. I don't plan to for a while. Why? I plan on fueling my ambition without losing focus. Ambition. She buzzed next to me. When the light turned on, 
Li Songha's face was right in front of me. She looked so worried that her eyelashes were trembling. Her gloomy demeanor, caused by Yong Jae, had long since disappeared. Li Songha grabbed my other arm with her empty hand. Ambition is important. I will support, no, it'll push you from the back and pull you from the front. Yeah, okay. Thanks. I also have an ambition. Li Sangha said proudly. I think my plans have been proceeding well since last year. Did you make a ten-year plan or something? No. She jumped up and down. Her expression was as serious as ever. Ten years is too long. Maybe five years. Li Sangha mumbled as she looked down at the floor. She placed her hand on her waist before letting go. She also slid her toe on the floor. I didn't know what she was thinking, but the corners of her lips slowly curled up. Because she didn't keep still, the light stayed on. But, Appa, if you keep working passionately, you'll be single past your marriageable age, and most the women around you will be married. Then, I guess you have no choice but to set a threshold. Let's go inside now. I said while keying in the code. Why are you thinking about my marriageable age? Also, there are plenty of men and women in this industry who marry late. Even Team Leader Park said she had no plans on marrying before 40. Team Leader Park. Lee Songa blinked. It's just an example. Let's go in. Quickly. The girls must be wondering what we are doing. I opened the door and pushed Lee Songha's back. I almost had to stuff her back in the house. Then I gulped dryly a few times. My tongue tingled. I was definitely screwing myself over, but the taffy was just too sweet. 2. There was a drizzle this morning. Pretty girls, including Young Jae, were gathered in W.U.'s lounge. To be exact, Young Jae, the big goldfish, was surrounded by the smaller goldfish as they held both her arms. Their eyes were particularly more swollen, seemingly having cried all night. They looked like unwelcomed princesses. People will think I scolded them or something. 3. The Team 3 leader laughed as he rubbed his scruffy beard. You do look like a principal who would scold them. What are you talking about? I'm more like the tall mister. That's Mr. Sun Wu's role. You are just a mister. Team leader Park and Kim Hyunjo chuckled. Even as they joked, their gazes were on pretty girls. The reason why the members, who were waiting for Chief Lee Tae Shin and Young Sun Wu, were so nervous was because of these three's sudden interest in them. Is she the one lucky charm personally rushed to find? The Team 3 leader closely examined Young Jae. Her gaze is odd. Looking at her, she gives off a certain aura. It's girls like her who gain core fans. Well have to wait to know for sure, but the team's image is clear now that the center is back. The Team 3 leader and Team Leader Park conversed while Kim Hyunjo bought some sports drinks from the vending machine and handed them out to the girls. He handed the two team leaders a coffee and requested. Neptune will be here soon, so let's not bring up how Sun Wu ran around and all that to find her. They'll probably be concerned about it without us bringing it up. That's true. Especially Sangha. Team Leader Park made a meaningful smile. Then she called Young Jae, who was looking after the others, over. Even if Sangha acts cold or stares at you or acts unusually, don't pay it any mind. It's just she follows Mr. Sun Wu more than the others. You know how firstborns get nervous when their mother's attention focuses on their little sibling. She's so curt with everything but explodes with emotions when it has to do with lucky charm. The Team 3 leader laughed. Just then, the elevator opened, and Lee Kuan Wu and Neptune got off. The team leaders, who welcomed the girls, flinched. Lee Sangha suddenly popped out and quickly walked over with steadfast steps. Her expression looked normal. However, the team leaders and Kim Hyunjo could immediately tell her emotions were in disarray. It was strange that she was rushing over like she was speedwalking when Young Sun Wu and Sun Chai Young weren't here. Um, my inept expression translator says her expression reads, great catching you here. I know, right? The two team leaders whispered to each other. During this time, Lee Sangha stood in front of pretty girls. 
the smaller goldfish looked up at her with admiration like fans at a signing event. This wasn't their first time meeting, yet this seemed to get more and more severe. Lee Songa said. Hi. Ah, hello, Sun Bay. It's good if you put spoons on your eyes. Spoons. Cold ones. Or green tea bags. This didn't really qualify as a tip, but the smaller goldfish opened and closed their mouths in happiness. They looked like they would completely believe her even if she said that pain relief creams were great for swollen eyes. Lee Sung and nodded and turned to look at Young Jae this time. The two team leaders and Kim Hyunjo watched with bated breaths. The other Neptune members stood in place as they watched her actions. Im Seo Young and LJ were whispering to each other next to Lee Tae Hee. Lee Kwan Woo looked like he was searching for Young Sun Woo. Under everyone's gazes, Lee Songa said. Hello. Nothing more or less. Just a simple greeting. It was so normal that their worries were for naught. In fact, Lee Songa was even smiling faintly. She even looked composed as they talked about their first meeting. The two team leaders and Kim Hyunjo looked at this with odd, but proud eyes. The more famous a celebrity was, the more closed in they were, so there were many cases where their personalities grew more peculiar. It was the case for Seo Jijun, who acted like a child in front of Chief Lee Bang Jun, and Sun Chai Young, who caused trouble for chiefs and team leaders alike. So even if Lee Sangha acted or said something unusual, they only hoped she wouldn't grow more peculiar than that. Yet, for some reason, she seemed more mature overnight. The two team leaders exchanged glances, asking whether the sun rose from the west today. 4. Lee Sangha went over to Team Leader Park. Then she stared at her. Team Leader. Hmm. I thought about it, and I think you are really beautiful. The Team 3 leader promptly spurted his coffee. No one swore at him. If they were drinking something, they would have spurted it out as well. Quickly regaining her composure thanks to her experience, Team Leader Park asked. Why did you suddenly think that? Or what made you think? Also, I think you both would be great together. Her regained composure shattered. Lee Sangha was referring to Team Leader Park and the Team 3 leader. The Team 3 leader's coffee seemed to flow in reverse as he started coughing noisily. Kim Hyunjo systematically patted his back. Team Leader Park's dazed gaze alternated between Lee Sangha and the Team 3 leader before looked at Neptune. They were busy talking about their lives with pretty girls. They were so passionate, it looked like they were at a politician's election campaign event. Team Leader Park's gaze returned to Lee Sangha. Sangha, why are you doing this to me? I just wanted to let you know that I will always be willing to sing, catch the bouquet, hand out tickets, or even hold your dress as you walk down the aisle for your wedding. You might be in urgent need of an extra hand. Team Leader Park couldn't hold back any longer and laughed. I'm really grateful, but you know that you'll never get married if you don't marry in six months after catching the bouquet? Then I take that back. I can do anything else. Surprised, Lee Sangha corrected herself. With a face one couldn't tell was laughing or crying, Team Leader Park patted the Team 3 leader's shoulder. The Team 3 leader had long since been coughing and laughing. He poked Kim Hyunjo's side. Where are her parents? After a long conversation with producer Ferret at his office, I hastily went over to the fourth floor. The Team 3 leader had urgently called for me. I was worried that something might have happened between Neptune and Pretty Girls considering I got his text after Lee Kwan Woo texted me that they arrived. When I arrived, the two teams seemed to be getting along. Even Young Jae, who was a later addition, was talking amongst them. Chief Lee Tae Shin, who came with me, looked relieved at this sight. Then what was it? I turned my gaze to see the Team 3 leader and Team Leader Park holding their bellies in laughter. I finally understood what was going on after I heard the details from Kim Hyunjo. Lee Sangha slowly backed out when she saw me and was now standing in front of the wall. The puppy we kept at home in the past also acted like that when he did something wrong. I don't think I can tell you anything anymore. I said in a quiet voice. Lee Sangha stuck to the wall even closer. She looked like she was about to go through it. At least she seemed embarrassed about it. 
If she wanted to do something, she should at least not get caught by me. I was dumbfounded by how she occasionally glanced at me, but I also found it funny. When I smiled, she raised her head slightly and slowly smiled as well. Don't smile. Yes. She was good at answering. I sent Lee Sangda over to the other members and beat around the bush when talking to Team Leader Park and the Team 3 Leader. Team Leader Park waved her hand, mentioning that, although she didn't know why she said it, it was cute and that it had been a long time since she laughed that hard. Is the project proceeding smoothly? The Team 3 Leader suddenly asked. His gaze fell on the girls. Sending you out like this when I used to always receive updates makes it so I have no idea how things are going. Putting my frustration aside, I'm so curious I could die. IBC's film crew and pretty girls have been around the company, so it seems you are busy. He licked his dry lips. The reality show, making film. How is it? That's the key. I think ITLL be okay. Do you think that ITLL go according to your plan once the show airs? I smiled when I replied. Team Leader Park, who attended a few making film meetings, nodded her head with a smile. It had to do well. I ran around all day to obtain everything I could from this project. It wasn't just me, countless people were involved. Kim Hyunjo looked at the calendar on his phone and asked. Did you say the show will air two months from now? Yes, ITLL air in Good Friends time slot then. The Team 3 leader licked his lips. I guess we should wait two months and watch it like everyone else. Two months. It's so far away. No, it isn't. Two months go by in a flash. The first episode will air in the blink of an eye. I replied while looking at the date on the calendar. Then, as I said, two months really went by in a flash. Chapter, 165 I'm starting a making film Mayfield thread, though I don't know how many people will watch it since it's the first episode. I'm on board. Has it started already? Not yet. There are quite a few commercials. I bet they sold all their commercial spots. It's a huge topic because of Young Sun Woo. But why is Young Sun Woo so popular? Where is he popular? Are you Sun Woo? I don't know about how popular he is, but he's definitely famous. Because of the whole Midas thing. There are more positive opinions of him than bad ones. Him appearing on two entertainment shows and setting up a good image was huge for him. The fact that he looks like some guy smoked during high school when he was actually changing diapers worked well. Will making film do well? I do think that their first show will have good ratings. If they want to do well, it's best to deploy Devil's Editing to create a sacrificial lamb, but I think they'll go for the emotional route. I'm already exhausted, thinking about how pretty girls will probably cry for an hour. That's why they brought on a documentary producer. If they can't retain viewers today, the bubble will pop and only Neptune fans will watch it in the end. But why did he pick pretty girls out of all the unknown girl groups? This is the biggest question. I think they'll bring it up in today's episode. The commercials have ended. The show is starting. Case 1. The subtitle appeared on the dark screen. Then it showed a residence covered in ivy. A staff carrying a camera went inside. Scary music playing the background, akin to one that would play in a mystery movie. Changing scenes, the screen now showed the Neptune members gathered in their living room. Thinking about it now, him asking Sangha to act was really out of the blue. Im Seo Young, wearing pajamas, said like she was telling a scary story. Sangha was practicing our choreography when Sun Wu Appa came over and apparently told her. You should act. LJ added, imitating Young Sun Wu. Im Seo Young continued. From then on, he kept going around trying to catch a fleeing Sangha before finally persuading her. And he handed her cat guardian ghost that same day. Producer Yu Su Young asked. Apparently, Mr. Sung Dawan asked Chief Young Sun Wu to be his manager that day as well. And he refused and stayed on with Neptune. He also prepared for MS. Song has auditioned for Cat Guardian Ghost. Im Seo Young momentarily looked at Lee Tae Hee before nodding. Yes, we all told him he was crazy. 
about how he could kick away such an incredible opportunity. LJ propped her chin up and added. No one imagined Neptune would be this successful back then. People at work thought Lee Sangha was bad at acting as well. I was really curious. What did he see in her to push her so much? Im Seo Young tilted her head. Sun Wu Appa hadn't seen her act before then either. Case 2. The scene changed along with the subtitles. This time, they were in a private room in some cafe. The pale light shook. Nam Joyun and his manager, Kim Hyun Sup, were drinking coffee across the table. Seemingly unfamiliar with interviews, Nam Joyun stuttered with dry lips. I first met Sun Wu at an independent film shoot. He contacted me the next day and asked me to send him my profile. We set up a meeting with WU, and the results weren't good. His stiff face relaxed a little. I thought that was the end, but Sun Wu immediately came to my work. He said that he wanted to work with me though we couldn't sign an official contract. As a third party, what did you think? Producer Yu Suyun asked Kim Hyun Sup. Kim Hyun Sup waved his hand in an exaggerated manner. I couldn't believe my ears. It doesn't make logical sense. Joyun's scene that day on the independent film show wasn't as impactful as his scene in Alive, and there were actors that were better looking and had better reputations than him. Kim Hyun Sup continued in astonishment. But all this happened a few days after they first met. If he wasn't Chief Young, I would have assumed he was some scammer. No, even scammers who wanted to take your money would have approached him more cautiously than that. Why do you think he chose you? Producer Yu Su Young directly asked. Nam Joyun bashfully rubbed his neck. To be honest, I still don't know. You were praised for your role in Alive and you are now a rising star in Chungyuro, so in the end, I guess we'll have to say that Chief Young Sun Wu's decision was correct. Then that's a relief. Nam Joyun said with a slight smile. I don't want to disappoint someone who said he saw something in me. This time, Chief Young is starting a new project with Pretty Girls, and people are abuzz talking about it. Pretty Girls is an unknown girl group with nothing unique and had almost disbanded. Well, there were a lot of reactions like that with Jo Young too. Kim Hyun Sup added while shrugging. Everyone said Young Sun Woo was crazy before Alive was released. The scene changed. The staff were in a cramped apartment. The strange background music began playing again. Plain subtitles proposed a few questions. Why did Young Sun Wu persuade Lee Sangha when he hadn't seen her act before? And why did he try so hard to recruit Nam Joyun, who was an unknown actor at the time? People said he was crazy both time, but the results ended in success. And now, the third. Case 3. The three youngest members of Pretty Girls, who were the same age, were shown on the screen. They were wearing their school uniforms and were smiling, though they obviously nervous. Oh Yandu, who stood in the middle, fiddled with her skirt with her stiff hand. Then she said in a clear voice. We met him once at a music broadcast and met him a second time for a performance two years later. This was pretty recent, correct? Yes, we left without much happening, but Chief Young Sun Wu came to our residence a few days later. The situation was really bad because the group was on verge of disbanding, but he suggested we make a single album with him. So suddenly. On your third meeting. Yes, this project began that very day. Young Sun Wu's interview followed immediately after. He was sitting still. What I'm most curious about is, why pretty girls? I don't know. It's a bit difficult to explain with words since it's a feeling. Young Sun Wu made a troubled expression. He slowly rubbed his chin. I had a couple of similar experiences. M.S. Sangha and Mr. Nam Joyun. His shoulders shook as he laughed. Yes, no matter how I explained it, everyone said I was crazy. Everyone, calm down. LOL, the thread is going to explode at this rate. Let me organize this. He persuaded Lee Sangha to act before officially seeing her act. If that's true, then he doesn't just have a good eye, he has a scouter. 1. Nam Joyun's case is like a couple who got married in three days ha ha ha. Wasn't Sung Dawan a top star two years ago? He was at the top of the top. 
If he went to Sung Dao and then, he would have been doomed. If he really has received divine grace, just say it. I'm ready to believe. Isn't pretty girls the craziest thing Yung Sun Wu has done? They met after two years, yet he immediately proposed this project. It's a huge project with an album and a show. A completely crazy bastard. He's definitely crazy, but he's a crazy bastard who has already succeeded in crazy things. Seeing as he made Lee Sangha and Nam Joyen a success when others said he was crazy, I guess pretty girls have something we don't know yet. Pretty girls are coming on again. Let's watch. How did people around you react when they saw the articles? Oh Yanda's big eyes moved at the producer's question before replying. There were many who congratulated us and a lot who asked how it happened. Can you guess the reason why? The members looked at each other then shook their heads. And no. We practiced singing and dancing a lot, but all unknown groups and trainees work hard as well. I even dreamed Chief Young telling us it was a mistake and to call the whole project off. Me too. It was the scariest nightmare I had in my life. The members' shoulders trembled as though shivers ran down their spines while they spoke. Producer Yu Su Young asked again. Do you happen to know if you have a particular talent in singing or dancing? The girls became serious like they were given a question whether the whole world would collapse if they failed. As the silence continued, the slimmest among them, Yoon Sol, said. Yandu is the most skilled at using her hands. Oh Yandu coughed. When producer Yu Su Young looked interested, Yoon Sol and the other member, Lee Wayne, took clothes out of their closet. It was their stage outfit that was densely packed with shiny beads. Yandu sewed each and every bead, but I thought it was done by a professional. Eh stop it. It's so embarrassing. Oh Yandu waved her hands as her neck to her forehead became red. Thinking hard for a while, Yun Sol opened her mouth again. Wayne is smart. I I am. Li Wayne was surprised like someone experiencing a surprise attack. Her pretty eyes widened. You're the smartest out of us. You're always studying whenever we have free time too. That's because dad told me I had to quit and come home if my grades fell. What rank are you? Li Wine's ears reddened at the producer's casual question. Uh, sixteenth. In my class. Lastly, Yun Sol did a few impressions under Oh Yandu's urgings. All that remained was silence and three goldfish trembling in embarrassment. They could have gone the emotional route when they brought up how they personally sewed each of those beads. When they talked about her grades, I thought she would be at least first in her school. LOL. Lee Sangha and Nam Joyeun were great at acting. Young Sun Wu discovered their potential and let them grow. Then he definitely must have seen something in Pretty Girls. What might it be? But aren't reality TV shows supposed to be like here is this girl's charm? Why are the viewers actively analyzing each member's appeal? I thought I would skip whenever pretty girls are on screen, but I keep watching like a hawk ha ha ha. The girls are overwhelmed, yet young Sun Wu's going to the songwriter to get the song. Who's Doem? It's my first time hearing his name. I heard he's a completely unknown songwriter. Then maybe they'll change the song to something else. Isn't it already under contract? What a bolt out of the blue for the songwriter. They'll probably pick a better song for the title track and just put the songwriter's song in the album. They can't think about loyalty when the song has to be good no matter what. Wait. Did I hear that correctly? You really want to just use my song? The screen showed a production room in the corner of a basement apartment. The young, thin unknown songwriter, Dio Eum, was sitting across from Yung Sun Wu. His eyes, which were as small as dress shirt buttons, constantly blinked. Young Sun Wu nodded. Yes, it's the song you decided to give pretty girls. Th that's true, but I thought you would change to a different son. We didn't have a different songwriter in mind from the beginning. Well go with this song. Re really? Really? Young Sun Wu said with a smile. I don't understand. Why? Really, why? Just why? The songwriter's expression is my expression right now. WU must have a lot of good songs. Isn't it normal to consider other songs? 
What if that song is good enough to chew out any star songwriter's song? Lee Tae-hee's song, which became a title track, became a success after he pushed for it. Chief Young Sun Woo could have picked pretty girls for that song. They said he heard the song after he proposed they make the album together. The order doesn't match. I thought about it, but maybe Young Sun Woo's been using his title as mid-ass hand too much that he can't control himself. I feel like he has this obsession to do everything opposite to people's expectations and make it succeed. One vote for this. I feel like he's proceeding recklessly like his break is broken. Same here. Same. Maybe he thought, this is it. As soon as he listened to it. I'm thinking it's this as well. When you think about Lee Sangha and Nam Joyeun, I think there's really something to it. Even after making film's first episode ended, the internet showed no sign of calming down. Discussions about the album, Pretty Girls, and especially Young Sun Woo were pouring out from community sites and social media like a broken dam. Hundreds of comments were posted in a thread set up to discuss the episode in real time. Making film and related words quickly invaded the real-time search rankings, and entertainment news sites were plastered with spamming articles. This heated reaction even caused a commotion amongst those who didn't see making films broadcast. Some exchanged their thoughts, while discussions regarding the pros and cons broke in elsewhere. And countless people began to have a similar expectation. Making film, aren't we extremely curious about the second episode? Chapter 166 Incredible The female employee of the PR team grabbed my hand as soon as I walked in the office. The ratings for the first episode was 9%. First place in its time slot. WH what else was there? First in social media trendiness. The male employee grabbed my other hand while smiling brightly. At the same time, other employees came over, surrounding me. It was as I expected since I woke up to countless missed phone calls and congratulatory texts this morning. However, I didn't expect them to dance. After hopping up and down while holding my hand, the female employee finally regained her senses. All the people who appeared on Making Film Yesterday, Pretty Girls, Neptune, Mr. Nam Joyeun, and even the songwriter, is trending. Nothing more needs to be said about you, Mr. Sun Woo. I bet your last entertainment show appearance can't compare with this one. Everything must feel surreal to you right now. It feels real. I said while placing my bag on the desk. Even my high school photo is going around on the internet. I was wondering what my friends were giggling about in our group chat, and that was it. A few laughs erupted amongst the employees. A few seemed to have not seen it yet as they quickly took their phones out to check. Soon, the laughter grew multiple times over. I asked the female employee, who was holding her belly laughing. We can't take the photo down, right? Give up. Even the government can't do that. I knew it. I only asked just in case. I looked around the office. It was filled with cheery laughs and excitement. A smile unconsciously hung on my lips as well. Obtaining results from something I spent a ton of time preparing for always made me feel satisfied and proud. Although this was only the first step in the project. Either way, it was a greatly successful first step. How are pretty girls? I asked Chief Lee Taishin. He, who went around absent-mindedly, jolted in surprise. Ah. The G.I. girls. Jay is practicing the choreography, and the younger ones went to school. They'll be going straight to the practice room as soon as school's over. Did anything happen after the broadcast? Their world must have changed overnight. I think the girls are still dazed. I talked to Yandu on the phone just now, and she said her classmates were causing a fuss. She's been running away because of all the pestering, asking when the album comes out and if they can listen to it early. I think ITLL be good if you pick them up directly from school for a while. It's become such a big topic that reporters might stick around. Okay. Ah, uh, tons of people contacted me after yesterday's broadcast. Chief Lee Taishin took out his phone. It was vibrating even now. Calls for interviews and guest appearances on cable and other shows. I'm also constantly being contacted by event agencies. They only seem to be testing the waters before the broadcast. 
It seems they made up their minds now that the first episode garnered so much attention. Let's organize and discuss them later as we still need to see how things go. Ah, uh, yes. Then he'll organize them. I sat down after our conversation, but this time, Kim Hyun Sup came over with a notebook. Joyun's moth dash, chief. There have been a few casting calls for Joyun. Which ones? Kim Hyun Sup read the casting calls. Most were magazines and programs primarily watched by women. The PR team female employee looked at the notebook and laughed. He's gaining a lot of attention from the women after the episode. He didn't show much up in the episode though. Impact is more important than airtime. Old magazine interviews and articles of Mr. Nam joy are being rediscovered. They especially seem interested in his relationship with you. His villainous image from Alive has been aired out with this opportunity. In a quite positive way. That's good, though I don't know why. I should monitor the episode once I'm done work. After organizing Lee Kuan Wu and Neptune's schedules, I finally sat down at my desk. I opened a browser and went on the portal site. I saw my face in the main article. Mid-ass hand, Young Sun Wu, is he an illusion made by the press? You must be a celebrity. The employee asked as she placed the coffee in the tray. I thought she'd ask considering she had been glancing at me ever since I ordered. No. I've been working at this studio coffee shop for a year now. I can tell right away. She straightforwardly scanned my face while laughing charmingly. I should have just worn sunglasses like usual. Wearing a hat was too much. Many celebrities around here covered their faces so it was reasonable for her to mistake me for one. I grabbed the box of donuts and coffee and turned around to leave. Idiot. What kind of idle reality TV show gets 9% ratings? I think ITLL go even higher. Making film, making film, everyone's buzzing about it. My girls are nagging me about getting them a reality TV show too because of this. I told them to stop with the nonsense, and they told me to try like Young Sun Woo. Young Sun Woo, that idiot. I might even push him down the stairs if I meet him at the studio. I turned my head around and walked past the men who were undoubtedly managers. Did I need to wear a mask as well from now on? It seemed popular idol groups were at the studio as young girls were swarming outside. I brushed off their gazes and walked towards the entrance. For some reason, it was noisy here. Mr. I'm a stylist. I came to work. Please show me your pass. I don't have it right now, but can't I just go in today? You can't. There was an incident where a hardcore fan impersonated as a reporter. A young woman and security guard were arguing. The security guard looked at me. What business did you come here for? I came to meet producer Yu Su Young of the entertainment department. I tucked the donut box under my arm and took off my sunglasses. Please show me ah, uh, please go in. Yesterday's broadcast was really fun. Thank you. Why can he go in and not me? Because I know his face. The security calmly replied as he opened the entrance gate. I walked in while he held the woman back. The woman kept causing a commotion behind me. Even at a glance, she didn't seem like a stylist. If she really was impersonating someone, whoever their manager was had it tough. What a relief it was that there were no troublemakers amongst Neptune fans. I soon went up to the entertainment department. It was busier than usual. I saw a few managers carrying coffee like me as though they came here to talk business. It was a familiar sight. I could tell whether it was effective or not just by watching the producer's expression as they accepted the coffee. It took a long time to get out of the hallway. There were people who friendlily approached and congratulated me, people who whispered from a distance, and people hesitant in the middle. Luckily, there wasn't anyone who pushed my back. I found a making film production assistant near the editing room. There was also a young manager holding coffee with smiling doll-like girls. She's busy editing making film right now. Just talk to me. I heard that producer Yu Su Young will immediately be working on Good Friends Season 2 as their main producer once making film is over. I just wanted to show her the rookies from our company. We just want to say hi. Although our girls are lacking in popularity, 
they have great entertainment sense. The manager quickly gestured. The girls bowed their slender waists like a folder as they greeted him. It seemed the assistant had already been hung up by other managers as he sighed while greeting them back. He then discovered me as he was about to speak. Chief Young. I came to pay a visit since the first episode did so well. But. I asked while handing him a coffee. Is the good friend's cast changing? Pardon? No. The girls, no, the cast is the same, only the producer is changing. That was a relief. My cheeks tingled. I smiled as I greeted the other manager. The manager greeted me back with a dazed expression before quickly running away with the girls. The girls glanced back at me as they were being dragged away. The reactions are amazing, right? The production assistant said as the corners of his lips curled up. Maybe it's because we used you as bait for yesterday's broadcast, but I heard a ton of people talking about you even while I was stuck in the editing room. People's opinions on pretty girls were also generally positive. It's all because the producer edited it so well. It was fun even though I knew what would happen. There's no way it couldn't be fun. She's constantly working hard at it. The assistant gestured behind him. It was to the editing room that had making film written on it. When I looked inside, it looked like producer Yu Su-young was editing in a chicken coop with messily scattered preview notes everywhere. I suddenly recalled our first meeting. Producer Yu Su-young, who had worn a sky-blue one-piece dress as she reviewed a human documentary, was now sporting unkempt hair and covering her shoulders with a blanket. Even though she has a child, she doesn't go home and pretty much lives in the editing room. The production assistant said, astonished. I guess she has a lot of work. She does. Editing making film, checking good friends composition, it's true she's busy, but I think she's also enjoying it. She occasionally mumbles about how fun entertainment shows are, that it's thrilling, and how refreshing it is. Ah, now that I thought about it, she was the woman who cried about wanting to do entertainment shows after getting drunk. I entered the editing room and offered her a coffee and the box of donuts. Although she looked haggard, her eyes glinted with joy. If she could make a highly polished program while enjoying it, then there wasn't anything better than that. I talked with her briefly before looking at the screen. It displayed him Seo Young's face. Hope you can take good care of Neptune's parts as well, producer. You already know how I'm going to edit it. Producer Yu Su Young laughed as she took a big bite of a donut. Just then, someone knocked on the door. I thought it was the production assistant, but producer Choi Byung Soo stuck his head in. He looked more haggard than producer Yu Su Young, who worked overnight. They weren't exactly happy to see each other, so only empty greetings were exchanged. His gaze alternated between producer Yu Su Young and me before saying, The ratings were quite good. Congratulations, Chief Young and Sunbei. I wondered if he came all the way here to say that when he grumbled. Why is someone so skilled like you taking a Hubby's food bowl one? Dissatisfied, he added. Well, good luck. You must be busy setting up a new team and everything. Why would I set up a new team? If I leave and the staff leaves as well, then it's no different from having to set up a new. The staff is going to stay the same. Producer Choi Byung Soo's eyes widened. You're keeping the staff. Writer Huang. I already talked with the main writer. You're the only one that needs to leave. Producer Yu Su Young said coolly. Producer Choi Byung Soo, wearing a dumb face and opening and closing his mouth, disappeared like the wind. Then producer Yu Su Young brushed off the donut crumbs and stretched her hand out. Let's work hard together, like a family. A family, that would be nice. I happily shook her hand. The event stage was heated. The people swarming around the stage were shouting. There was still a bit of time before Neptune's performance. I checked my watch and left the waiting room. I saw a familiar face amongst the busily moving event staff. I heard you were looking for me. Ah, Chief Young. No, team leader. The event agency employee greeted me with a bright smile. Aren't we in event season? I wanted to ask you about Neptune's schedule. He said fawningly. Neptune was quite popular for events since they were a good value. 
While the rank of Neptune as a team was a bit iffy, they had Lee Sangha the actress, which really boosted people's interest in the event. They could pay a small fee and puff their chests in front of their sponsors so there were rumors that event agencies hoped Neptune's rank would stay the same. Well, it did until now. I want to put a hold on that aside from the already scheduled ones. Pardon? Why? I smiled as I replied. I think things will be very different from now. Chapter, 167 Lucky Charm, are you the young master of a conglomerate? My first time hearing about it. Amused, the Team 3 leader chuckled before saying. Apparently, you are trying to gain field experience before launching your own entertainment company. And the reason why everything you touch becomes a success is not due to luck or skill but because your family is supporting you behind the scenes. This is the best nonsense I've heard all week. The Team 3 leader told me a few more rumors that weren't even good enough to appear on tabloids before leaving. When he left, the few attentive gazes in the lounge also fell back. It had been one week since making film's first episode aired. Although there wasn't a quiet day, today was the peak. Maybe it was because we would be airing the second episode today. Being nailed at the center of attention like this was annoying and exhausting. Still, it was worth enduring since making film overwhelmingly took first place as the topic of interest this week. There was a lot of nonsense mixed in as well, but there wasn't anything that would result in controversy. Once today's episode airs, the public's attention would be divided so if I just wait a little longer. Mr. Sun Wu Someone who says he went to middle school with you made a post online. Damn it. The female PR team employee rushed over with a tablet. Team leader Park followed behind her with a slightly stiff face as she said the person's name. He said he paired up with you in school. Do you know who he is? That was a dark period in my life, so my memories are hazy. Did he say something bad? Take a look first. She handed me the tablet. The title of the post was I was W.U.'s young Sun Wu's classmate in middle school. He even posted a class picture as proof. This was real. There were lots of comments below the post. Did I do something in middle school? Or was there someone who had it out for me? I clicked my tongue and read the post. I transferred to a new school during my second year of middle school, and I was paired with young Sun Wu. He looked like a criminal he currently looks like a model student compared to then so I thought it would be tough to become friends. He slept all day. Even the teachers who woke sleeping students during their class didn't touch Yung Sun Wu. That's why I thought I was paired with a complete delinquent that even teachers couldn't do anything about. I trembled, thinking I was screwed. But it turns out Yung Sun Wu's quadruplet niece and nephews were babies back then so he couldn't get any sleep at home. They kept crying one after each other. He was taking care of them all day that he smelled of milk, vomit, and poop. There are people who suspect the whole quadruplets nanny was some sort of image-making tactic because he's appearing on TV and becoming famous, but I just wanted to post this to say that it was all true. People say you never know people's futures, I never knew Young Sun Wu. I read to the middle before turning my gaze. The female PR team employee and team leader Park had erased their serious expressions and were giggling. You're saying you don't know who he is, right? If you were close, people might think you pushed him to it or paid him. I guess we can spread it without worry then. People react the most positively whenever the quadruplets are mentioned. You seem more warm-hearted. If not, there would probably be a lot of people who think you're full of yourself. They are the biggest contributor. The quadruplets are better than the PR team. I sighed as I passed the tablet back. I thought something big happened. Don't worry. We are constantly monitoring so that nothing big happens. Team leader Park laughed while lightly hitting my arm. There's nothing serious. Most are speculation or groundless rumors. Ah, uh, someone you apparently know held an interview with a reporter. Huh. He asked you to buy lottery tickets for him but he never won. Apparently, he said that your success being all due to luck was nonsense. The reporters wrote a bunch of nonsense to increase traffic. That's the Team 3 leader. What? He asked me to, so I bought him lottery tickets for a while. I said in a quiet voice. 
Team leader Park's expression immediately became grave. He went around telling employees to be careful of what they say around reporters. Where did he go chat with a reporter? Team leader Park left with noisy steps. It seemed like she would tear him a new one if she got a hold of him. Don't tell me the team two leader's discerning eye article was his doing too. Just as I thought this, the female employee turned around and said. Ah, uh, right. Mr. Sun Wu, it seems your value has increased. There was a rumor about you on an investment tabloid. What kind of rumor? What you received an investment proposal from a Chinese company. The tips of my fingers abruptly stiffened. That you'll become independent from WU with Chinese capital. Ah. There were rumors like this for both the team three and two leaders as well. It's proof that your value has increased enough that people are talking about you going independent. We already snuffed that rumor out so you don't need to worry. That's a relief. I replied while lightly shrugging my shoulders. What about boxed lunches? We prepare a lot of healthy drinks and the staff's favorite foods. Sangha eating suggested as she sipped fresh juice through a straw. She was young enough to still have some baby fat, but she seemed composed, likely due to her long experience as a fan. I heard people react well to smokes as well. Aren't we being too cheap? A young man who wore an expensive luxury watch cut in. If we are going to provide something anyways, why not get a food truck? With entrees, street food, and desert. Ones that look pretty good. He was a member of Lee Song has personal fan page. Sangha eating narrowed her eyes. As these two glared at each other like cats and dogs, the woman in between cautiously read the mood. This was a collaboration with Neptune's official fan club, Triton, and Lee Song has personal fan page. They also included Pretty Girls fan club's representative, which only had a few members. The three of them were gathered in an enclosed business room. The reason for the meeting was to decide what to provide the making film staff and its scale. They set up this meeting as they couldn't decide through chat messages and phone calls. Sangha eating frowned. Excuse me, Sangha, Rela one. I told you we don't have the budget for that. Then Triton can do boxed lunches. Well gather a bit more and send a food truck under Sangha's name. She has Chinese fans, and there are people who gave us money to increase the scale of our provisions. That's enough. It's not like we're competing. Neptune is appearing as a group. If we provide meals separately, then isn't that just creating disharmony? Sangha will be criticized if rumors spread. We need to take care of Sangha so she isn't so dispirited in front of her unis. Sangarella clenched his fist as though he was actually Cinderella. Sangha Eating's voice also rose. From what I know, Sangha isn't the type to be dispirited in front of her unis. Didn't you see last week's making film? While the other members were getting airtime by saying things, she couldn't say a word because she was too preoccupied reading the mood. Also, only her expression wasn't good in the 24th minute when all the members appeared. Sangha doesn't talk much normally. Her expression is usually like that too. Also, why do you bring up rumors when they themselves say they are close? Chief Yung Sun Wu said that they were close. Chief Yung is a man. There are subtle details only women can decipher. You're a man too. Ah, this is ridiculous. The louder their voices grew, the smaller the pretty girl's representative became. Smacking her chest in frustration, Sangha Eating glanced at her. At this rate, Chief Young might just switch over to pretty girls. Songarella and the pretty girls fan representative flinched. Songa eating snorted then added. He worked hard to create unity in the fandom, but he'll be disheartened if he sees this. The triangle relationship between Chief Young Sun Wu, Neptune, and pretty girls was a hot potato amongst the fans. Pretty girls fans didn't even dare think about it, and Triton and Song has personal fans were diligently checking the mood. Soon, Sangha Eating took out her phone. It'll ask Chief Young when a good time will be to provide meals. The Chief? Do you call his personal number often? Does he answer if you call? Sangarella lifted his chair and went close to Sangha Eating. He picked up right away. Sangha Eating proficiently checked their schedule. Sangarella looked at Sangha Eating's phone with greed, 
and Pretty Girls fan representative quietly took down the date. Chief, will Neptune appear a lot in today's making film? Sangha eating cautiously asked in the end. If there is some decent bait, we want to spread it out to the community yes. Sangha eating's expression became strange. The other two were focused on her phone. As soon as she hung up, Sangha eating rubbed her reddened cheeks. He said it was going to rain. Pardon? He said it was going to rain with bait. Aren't you going to see the broadcast? I came to my senses after being thoroughly lost in my thoughts. An employee was standing in front of me. He asked while simulating drinking soju. How about we watch it together as a group? We already reserved a bar. Let's do it next week. I picked up my bag and coat and got up. I think you'll have to watch today's episode elsewhere. It was a familiar sight. The living room gave off a comfy atmosphere like a loft. Lee Taehee was slumped on the sofa like a sated sloth, and the hungry Lee Sangha was leaning on Lee Taehee's legs as she scooped ice cream. LJ was comfortably sitting on the rug. And Im Seo Young was staring at the laptop as she passionately monitored the comments. Appa, Appa. There are tons of people waiting for today's episode. Really? Even though it hasn't started yet, there are articles popping up about it. They say the key point is what kind of crazy action you're going to take this time. There are quite a few who are watching for pretty girls. One person said that he tried to look for their charm and became a fan. Im Seo Young admired as she excitedly scanned through reactions on community sites and social media. Wow, there are tons of people asking to let them know when Lee Sangha is on. I bet we'll hit our peak rating when she appears. I hope the producer gave her a lot of screen time. Maybe well past 10% if things go well. She said excitedly. We experienced other entertainment shows, dramas, and movies after Next K-Star. The other girls were somewhat used to it now, but Im Seo Young always reacted the same. As though she was still surprised that they were on TV and amazed they were receiving the public's attention. Focus now. I said, smoothly taking the laptop away. Im Seo Young looked surprised like a puppy who had her food bowl taken from her. WHY did you take the laptop? Watch the TV. It'll tell you people's reactions. I have two eyeballs, so I can watch the TV and the laptop at the same time. Don't be ridiculous. She tried to take the laptop back for a short while before becoming entranced by the start of the show. LJ, who was teasing him CEO Young, smiled slightly at the sight. The living room became quiet. The TV showed me, the project team members, pretty girls, and Chief Lee Taishin's faces. Lee Song has gaze landed on me whenever I appeared on screen, and Im Seo Young made a fuss by shaking my shoulders. The TV showed how the team to produce Pretty Girls' single album was created and Pretty Girls, who couldn't adjust to their suddenly changed circumstances. Then there was an interview about why only three members remained in a group that originally had eight members. Why Chief Lee Taishin was looking for Young Jae. Their past was smoothly revealed. Then a familiar place appeared. A white residence covered in ivy. Oh. It's our home. It's our home. We know. We also have two eyeballs. LJ said bluntly with a smile. Soon, it showed the living room. Cameras set up in various places filmed the girls in various angles. They discussed what to say when they met pretty girls. As always, Im Seo Young was the one who led the conversation. The very unmeeting-like meeting ended soon. I appeared next and took Lee Sangha, who had a schedule. Lee Taehee left, saying she wanted to discuss her song with the producer. Finally, LJ left to meet her friends back when she was an underground rapper. The screen grew empty. Only I'm Seo Young remained in the living room that was busy just moments ago. Uh, it's done. Is there more later? There probably is, right? Im Seo Young mumbled as though it was lacking. Even Im Seo Young on TV thought they were done filming and turned off the cameras. As if they were showing how many cameras were set up in their home, the screen split into many smaller displays. A display turned off as Im Seo Young went around. Soon, the entire screen was black. 
Aside from the small display on the left corner, which was still filming Im Seo Young. Ha! Huh. Beside me, Im Seo Young's eyes widened. Chapter 168 One didn't turn off. Why did I forget to turn that off? Only one video was playing in the corner of the TV. Seeing this, Im Seo Young's reaction was a simple question. However, once the video began filling the screen, Im Seo Young began to become flustered. Not knowing that a camera was rolling, I'm Seo Young freely moved around the living room. She looked back at me with wide eyes. They were trembling. What is it, Appa? Why is that still playing? Did something go wrong in editing? Is it a broadcast accident? No way. Producer you spent all night editing this part. Ha. Huh. Why would she when I'm the only one what did I do that day? She mumbled the date as though she was trying to recall what she did. During this time, the MCO Young on TV pressed the remote. The same TV turned on in the screen. It was a rerun of Royal Family. It was a scene with Lee Song has character, Lee So Hee the sassy top star. The MCO Young in reality jolted up from her spot. Then she shook me since I was holding the remote. Lo let's watch something else. We need to monitor this. It's only begun. We don't have to watch this part. It's harmful. Appa, save me. You're alive. Snake. So cold-hearted. You have no sympathy. Giving up on convincing me, Im Seo Young looked at the other members. She looked like she wanted to get them on her side, but the three of them were happily watching the TV. I'm Seo Young grabbed Lee Song has shoulders. Let's go, Songa. Il buy you braised pig's feet. 1. Braised pig's feet? Lee Song has eyes shined. Yeah, pig's feet. I already ordered that. Why is it taking so long? Im Seo Young stomped her feet at my words. Damn it. If you're going to watch it, you'll have to step over me. Spreading her arms out like a stingray, she rushed towards the TV. Then she was dragged back in three seconds. LJ had grabbed her back. She instantly rolled her on the rug and sat on her. She was like a pro wrestler. Im Seo Young whined as she hit the rug. The TV speakers began playing Im Seo Young's voice. How can you not recognize me because I'm wearing sunglasses? Are you blind? My chest, legs, and even my toes scream Lee So He. Do you think there's such a work of art anywhere else? Look. Look at me. It was Lee So He's line. Royal family's scene with Lee So He showed up as a reference as the broadcast continued to show I'm Seo Young following her lines. She even lifted her smooth legs up with such vigor and began wiggling her toes. Her legs were elegant, and her terrible acting skills exceeded the realm of arts. She followed a few more of Lee So He's lines before fanning herself. Maybe it was because she put her all into acting or because she was embarrassed by Lee So He's lines but her round face had become red. Im Seo Young, currently sat on by LJ, hastily made an excuse. I just tried it to see what it felt like. At the same time, the same voice resounded out the speakers. This is much harder than Cat Guardian Ghost. I wonder if she kept any of the Alive scripts. Don't do this to me. Just let me die in peace. Im Seo Young wailed. Lee Sangha shuffled on her knees and approached her. Uni, I have a lot of alive scripts. No. That's not it ah. Im Seo Young flailed her limbs crazily. The Im Seo Young on TV brought out a stack of papers and a notebook from her room. The papers were sheet music. The Im Seo Young in reality stretched her trembling hand towards Lee Taehee. Uh, Uni, why don't we turn the TV off and have some beer? Seo Young. It'll be a great drinking friend today. I can't hear the TV. Lee Tae Hee, who sat up properly before anyone knew, said. It's cute. No. Uni, your words have no credibility. Why? You're an old grandpa whole chuckle at whatever your grandchild does. Im Seo Young despaired as she buried her head in her hands. At this time, the Im Seo Young on TV was drawing musical notes in her notebook. She was writing a song. 
She became so immersed in it that she even skillfully dancing to it, but it was putting pearls on a pig. Her song was more suited for a children's dance routine. The show then showed Lee Tae-hee working in WU's producer's room. It then returned back to him Seo Young, she nodded her head in satisfaction after finishing her song. It's not bad. I think it's quite good even. Next, she put rings on her ten fingers, which she doesn't do normally, as she ran around the room rapping. Producer Yoo Soo Young heartlessly inserted a scene of LJ rapping as well. The real Im Seo Young flopped on the floor. If they took out all the inserted scenes, Im Seo Young's one man show didn't last long, but it was more than enough to wear her out. Im Seo Young was covering her face while LJ sat on her. LJ tickled her by lightly poking her sides. Hey, you look like you have fun alone. So that's why you don't go out often. Don't talk to a corpse, you hoodlum. Im Seo Young said gloomily as she pushed LJ away. LJ allowed herself to be pushed off. Im Seo Young got up and glanced at the TV. The screen had changed to show the pretty girl's members. Like she was seeing a retreating enemy, Im Seo Young let out a sigh of relief. How are the reactions, Appa? They're good. I immediately answered. The majority of the posts that viewers uploaded while watching the broadcast was positive. The broadcast maintained the image that they were a talented girl group by showing inserts of Lee Tae-hee, Lee Sangha, and LJ while showing him Seo Young off in an entertaining way. There were quite a few posts asking who she was. Whenever they popped up, fans replied that she was I'm Seo Young. Im Seo Young shrugged her round shoulders. That's good then. You looked like you were about to die just moments ago though. LJ asked. Would you have wanted to show your dark past in front of your members? Im Seo Young shouted before quickly laughing. Well, that's that. Viewers' reactions are the most important. It's wonderful if the viewers enjoyed it and our popularity increases. I'm been in charge of Neptune's entertainment appearances for four years now, you know. Do you think I'm the type to get shocked by a hidden camera? My job's making people laugh. She calmly said before glancing at me. Still, you should have told me. So that I could prepare my heart before watching it. Sorry, I wanted to, but I had my reasons. Reasons? Im Seo Young asked in surprise. Also, your job wasn't to make people laugh. Huh? Your role? It wasn't to make people laugh this time. Then what was it? Hmm, moving their hearts. I said in a quiet voice. Then I turned my gaze. I'm Seo Young's surprised gaze followed mine. The TV showed the living room once more. Im Seo Young was hurriedly cleaning with her phone against her ear. Pretty girls are coming. But I'm the only one home right now. Seeing this, Im Seo Young's face became pale. I watched the screen. I roughly knew what was going to happen because producer Yu Soo Young told me. However, that was it. I didn't see the recording or check the edited content. I still didn't know what exactly happened that day. On screen, Im Seo Young put her all in cleaning after hanging up her phone call with me. Soon, the doorbell rang. The visitors were obviously the pretty girl's members. Although they had met a couple times before, their expressions were stiff as though it was a bit awkward for them to meet their sunbay. These are side dishes my mom sent over. I heard that you also lived in a residence so she sent us our share and two more. Um, if you plan on eating, you. Oh Yandu handed her an eco-friendly bag. I'm Seo Young readily accepted it. That's great. We have a food god here so these will be eaten really quickly. Sit down and have some drinks. We have a lot here. Although I don't know where they are, there should definitely be some if we look around. Can we even though it's not a filming day for us? There are cameras. I turned all the cameras off so it's fine. Im Seo Young invited the girls in with a bright smile. The next scene was a tearful one. Maybe hearing that the cameras were off made them relax or Im Seo Young's warm, friendly attitude warmed their hearts, but they each held a roll of toilet paper as they cried and hiccuped. Then, frightened, I'm Seo Young comforted them. What's wrong? Huh? Don't cry. 
you're going to make me cry. I'm so wwy. I keep thinking about it after hearing what you said. Well be going now. Sorry. Hey, hey. How can you go like this? You need to stop crying first. Wh what did you think about? Im Seo Young sat the girls, who were getting up while sobbing, back down. Mean comments? Were there mean comments in articles? And no. That's not it. It's because of the dregs. What? Dregs? What do you mean? Yoon Sol replied, but it wasn't a human language. Oh Yandu and Lee Wayne looked at each other before barely managing to continue. The president said that to us. That only the dregs remained. What could he do with them? We are trying hard to prove that we aren't dregs, but we keep thinking about those words all of a sudden sometimes. Even though something incredible is happening, even though my mom and the chief have high hopes for us, I'm scared we'll disappoint them. It looks like Jayuni isn't returning because she doesn't want to be in the same team as us. Don't talk about Jayuni. It makes me want to see her. Although I called them goldfish as a joke, they were really about to turn the house into an aquarium. Oh Yandu rubbed her tear-covered face with tissues. Sorry. You tell us a lot of good things and help us, but we are making you troubled by crying. Well make sure this doesn't happen again. Well work harder to be more like you so you're my role model. Listening to their gibberish, Im Seo Young bit her lip. Her eyes, which seemed like they could cry at any moment after sympathizing with the girls, became clear. You aren't dregs. I'm very envious of you. Sun Wu Appa personally went to get you. That's really something I envy. I've never had that happen to me. Our company sent Sun Wu Appa to us, and I was fortunate enough to be in that team. The pretty girls' members were taken aback, and their mouths were agape. Although it was slightly teary, she tried to keep her voice calm as she continued. Sun Wu Appa persuaded Sangha to try acting and read the script with her overnight. After hearing Taehyuni's unfinished song, he worked all night and pushed for it to be the title track. I tried all sorts of things, but nothing never happened to me. Im Seo Young coughed awkwardly. Then she curled up and placed her chin on her knees. I'm not confident all day like LJ, and I quietly read the mood. S. Sunbi, you're really great at dancing, singing, and do well on entertainment shows. When Neptune was unknown, you went to various entertainment shows. That was in the past. But right now, I'm sort of stuck in the middle. Im Seo Young rubbed her neck. Other members get personal schedules on their own, but Sun Wu Appa has to look around to schedule mine. If you are the dregs of pretty girls, then I'm the dregs of my team right now. And no, you're not. I think you are amazing. Tears now gone from their eyes, the pretty girls' members waved their hands in denial. Seeing them not know what to do, I'm Seo Young smiled slightly. It's good if you thought that way. It was worth working hard like a swan. 2. Sunbei. Anyways, if you think about being called dregs, then think about me. Although I'm like this inwardly, after working so hard, I got hoobies like you who consider me as their role model. So don't miss this chance and continue working hard. I'm Seo Young smiled brightly again. Her voice was bright but also slightly sad. Once some time passes, things will get better for you. The gazes glued to the screen turned around. It wasn't just me. We were all looking at Im Seo Young. Amidst our gazes, Im Seo Young lifted her pale face. Chapter 169 Like an exposed person, Im Seo Young shrunk away from our gazes. She ran away, unable to meet the other members' gazes. Her eyes, desperately looking for a place to hide, landed on me. She painfully bit her lip. The words that left her mouth clearly rang in my ears. Our company sent Sun Wu Appa to us, and I was fortunate enough to be in that team. I tried all sorts of things, but nothing never happened to me. Then in the dregs of my team right now. I knew. I was aware of it. There was no way I wasn't. Since I could tell she was trying hard. The foresight that let me glance at Lee Sangha and Lee Taehee's success. The same one that told me of pretty girl's success, 
who I was only slightly acquainted to, was heartlessly quiet when it came to him Seo Young and LJ. As though it didn't notice them. And it wasn't like I was hung up on them like Nam Joyan either. However, even if there wasn't anything like that, I wanted to make them successful. LJ's situation was a bit better. She was famous for her talent since she was an underground rapper and was one of the top female rappers in the country. There were even plans of giving her a solo track on the album and making a separate single album if that went well. On the other hand, things were difficult for him Seo Young. Although she was good at singing and dancing, this industry was overflowing with people like her. That was why I put her on any entertainment programs I could get. The person I know as I'm Seo Young was lovely. She was someone who people would like. But the camera didn't really pick up those aspects of her. I need to do better. I need to try harder. Because of those thoughts. She tried her all in changing, but it was not. That was why I set up this playing field. A playing field that could be the turning point for Neptune and Im Seo Young. Th that was because I was caught up in their crying. Im Seo Young said in a bright voice as if she was trying to change the mood. There are times when you find little things big and when negative emotions explode. Thinking back, I think I might have been on a period that day. The living room became even quieter. The moment M. Seo Young, who couldn't even breathe properly and didn't know what to do, stood up, a pale hand held her ankle. It was LJ. LJ said to M. Seo Young, who was flailing to escape. Sorry. It wasn't just anyone. LJ apologized. I'm Seo Young instantly froze. Calling you dummy and idiot all this time, I went too far. Hey, why are you acting like this? I know it was a joke. What I'm. If I knew words came true, then I would have been more careful. Im Seo Young, who was shaking her head and hand side to side, stopped. It seemed she understood the odd meaning behind LJ's words as her eyes widened. LJ pulled and sat her back down and said. Dregs? If you're dregs, then am I crumbs? What? Surprised, M. Seo Young jolted in her seat. Why are you crumbs? You. They are the ones who get schedules on their own. Do I have anything going for me? LJ gestured to the two on the sofa with her eyes before continuing. All I did was get featured on a couple tracks. Im on entertainment and radio shows because Im a set with you. If you are the dregs of Neptune, then Im it's crumbs. No, not just normal crumbs, I must be dust. She placed her elbow on her raised knee. Her chin rested on her hand. The corner of LJ's slanted lips was covered by her fingers. I look confident all the time. That's because I don't want to look embarrassed or shallow. I'm better than you when you try to keep your expression under control. I'm a master at acting like nothing's wrong and like I'm fine. I'm a mixed race. LJ shrugged. Well, I'm just saying. Her hand covered half her face. This time, Lee Taehee spoke to him Seo Young, who stiff like a tree struck by lightning. Seo Young, I always think that I am an incompetent leader. Uni. Im Seo Young's complexion was turning closer to black. Lee Taehee calmly looked at Im Seo Young. Like always, her eyes were like a placid lake with no wind. However, they were dark inside. They were so dark if there was something lurking underneath. It's because we have you that our team is can continue without problems. You do what other team leaders should be doing. S stop it, Uni. I'm really fine. You don't have to comfort me. I'm not saying this to just comfort you. Lee Taehee smiled faintly. Without you, we wouldn't have been able to last without any troubles when we were unknown. Without you, we wouldn't as close as a family right now. I have no confidence in making a team like this. So why are you the dregs? Tears pooled in I'm Seo Young's teary eyes. Still holding onto her ankle like it was some sort of lifeline, LJ joined in. Hey, do you know what our residence is like when you're gone? It's an area of solitude. I'm Seo Young stopped crying and tilted her head. Area of solitude? I bet we don't say a word to each other when you're not here. 
Tehiuni is cooped up in her room, drinking beer and making songs, like some senior citizen. Sangha reads the same scripts repeatedly like some social outcast. If they are moving around, it's only to the washroom or fridge. She said, gesturing to Lee Tehi and Lee Sangha. This time, she pointed at herself. In the same. When I'm Seo Young's expression became serious, LJ let out a short sigh. It's not that our relationship is bad. It's just how we are. That's why the cameras in our home are usually off when you're not here. The producer said that there wasn't a rat's poop worth of airtime to get from us. She said before adding. LJ flatly turned her gaze. Lee Taehee's gaze momentarily fell on me. She spoke. I went to Sun Woo Appa before playing my songs to you. I probably wouldn't have told you that they were done if he didn't have a good reaction. Why? The songs were great. LJ and Im Seo Young asked simultaneously. Im Seo Young stretched her neck out, her previous crouching appearance gone without a trace. She continued by saying how she felt like lightning struck when she heard Lee Taehee's songs and how she felt they should be their title tracks. Lee Taehee rubbed the back of her neck. I'm not confident in my songs. I was scared I would fail. Then she added while looking at him Seo Young. Stuff like that happened. A strange silence hung in the air. Having expressed their inner thoughts, the members exchanged glances. Although it was as silent as before, it wasn't a splitting silence. This time, it was a bit moist. Like the ground after rain. Im Seo Young took a deep breath and was about to say something. I thought I was the useless person in our team. Lee Sangha said as if she had been waiting for an opportunity to say something. Instantly, the living room was in an uproar. Which idiot said that? Who said something like that? Everyone, including Im Seo Young, shouted as they turned to look at her. Lee Sangha glanced at me. Seeing that, the girls began agitated. Ah Papa did? I did. Lee Sangha was calm. I told Appa that. Before Cat Guardian Ghost. You dummy. Im Seo Young shouted. Don't think that ever again. Then you shouldn't think that ever again too. Im Seo Young, who was about to scold her, flinched. She bit her lip before nodding. Okay, I get it. I get it so don't think those thoughts again. Why would you be useless? Look how much we've. To be honest. Lee Sangha cut her off and said. I still think that occasionally. Being able to help the team through my acting used to be a motivating factor for me. However, the mood of our team has become a bit unsettled because of me. There are a lot of bad rumors as well. Her voice was calm, but her gaze, looking at the crumbs on the rug, was slightly wet. I want to return things to how they were before, but I don't know how. I want to keep living here. But I worry if I really should in case the mood worsens because of me. Of course, you can. It's our home. It's fine if you mark your territory in the kitchen as well. Im Seo Young said in an almost screaming voice. Lee Sangha stuck the nail in. If your dregs and LJ Uni is crumbs, then I'm a nuisance. Don't say it. Don't say it. Stop that. Im Seo Young waved her hands as her face reddened. Beside her, LJ mumbled to herself. A rash. Hey. Stop it. It's my instinct. LJ shrugged. Soon, Im Seo Young and LJ began fighting. Having said what she wanted, Lee Sangha rested her head against Lee Taehee's thigh, and Lee Taehee brushed Lee Song his long hair as she watched the two fight like cats and dogs. It was a normal sight. The corners of my mouths curled up without me knowing. With a smile, I was watching the scene in front of me and the laptop screen when Im Seo Young rushed at me. Appa. You should have at least told me about that scene ahead of time. I almost fainted. Her small palms smacked my arm. Her slaps noisily filled the room. Sorry for not telling you before. I'm really sorry. I said while scratching my cheek. I wanted to show the viewers this side of you. One where you aren't aware of the cameras and act normally. I thought that it would be a big hit if we could properly show that to the viewers. 
Bibit hit. Her slaps became weaker. I placed the laptop in front of her eyes. Look. Im Seo Young scanned the screen with an odd look. I had searched her name on the portal site. There were countless articles with Neptune and her name in the headline and continuously updating social media reactions. There was also I'm Seo Young on the real time search rankings. Im Seo Young wavered as she grabbed the laptop. The tip of her finger touched the screen. Im Seo Young's not going to be able to sleep tonight. LJ smiled as she placed her chin on I'm Seo Young's head. You always sleep after checking internet reactions when you're on TV. If you want to read everything, you won't be able to sleep tonight. They'll just read it all night then. Im Seo Young hugged the laptop. Her eyes were glazed like she was entranced. Then she turned to look at me. But this was filmed a long time ago. What does it have to do with not telling me today? The filming hasn't ended yet. Pardon? I gestured with my cheek at the day's M. C. O. Young. When I gestured to various placed in the living room, her gaze followed behind. Then after a long time, M. C. O. Young's eyes bulged as though she discovered something. Her trembling hand pointed at the shelf. What is that? A camera. We installed them when you weren't here. Then. I'm Seo Young hastily looked at me. Then she looked at the other members who didn't seem surprised. I told you. I wanted to show the viewers this side of you. I said. We filmed all of it. Im Seo Young dropped the laptop. Late at night, I sent the recordings to two places. One was IBC producer Yu Soo Young's editing room. The other was WU's PR team. Team leader Park watched the recordings and made an odd smile. It was similar to mine. This was because the recordings clearly recorded a side of Neptune we had long since wanted to reveal to the public. Lots would change depending on how we used these recordings. The night was long and busy and heated with excitement. The project team, including me, and the PR team were all working hard on it. We also received help from making film staff. After staying up all night, we create a 10-minute clip. We removed all the inadequate parts and only got straight to the point. The drizzle, which began early in the morning, was started to stop. As the internet reactions of yesterday's hidden camera broadcast were beginning to cool and as I'm Seo Young's name began to slip from the real-time search rankings, we uploaded the clip to the portal site. Chapter, 170 It has come, it has been watched, it has exploded. Team leader Park came over with light, cheerful steps. That's the one-line review of Pop Culture Critic. He wrote it after seeing Making Film's second episode and the clip. I saw it. He wrote a positive review as well. You monitored reactions already? I shook my head. No, C.O. Young is updating me about the current situation every five minutes. She wasn't in her right mind. She had lost it when we collected the recordings yesterday, and after we posted the video clip and her name stayed at the top of the real-time search rankings, her symptoms, which made me suspect she might have ADHD, have been getting worse. She couldn't stay put for a moment, so LJ asked me if she could just tie her up. Just let her be excited. She was the main contributor. Team leader Park said happily. Did you hear about this too? That Neptune's fandom chose today to be a day of harmony. Seo Young did talk about it. Look at this. I spurted coffee while reading this. She handed me her tablet. I scanned it as I walked. From Neptune's official homepage to various personal fan pages, each one had posted the same main message as if they were raising a flag. They screenshotted the clip that was released this morning. It was a picture where the Neptune members were huddled together in the living room laughing. A caption was written above it. Day of Harmony, Fans Unite. I laughed the moment I saw it. Team leader Park said in a joyful voice. I think they are collecting money to donate one ton of rice. They want to donate it every year in celebration of today. Song has personal fans took the lead. It seems they ended up bowing down dispiritedly. They've been troublesome for a while, but it's been resolved in one go. They must have been frightened after seeing the clip. Song has remark was quite strong. Tell me honestly, did you make her say that? 
No way. I shrugged and opened the meeting room door. The room, which was bustling like a market, instantly stopped. People quickly got up. Team leader, you've come. Hello, chief. On the left side of the table were the PR team employees, and on the right were management employees. Their faces were haggard, but their faces were beaming with triumph like they had just obtained a huge victory. The meeting room became noisy again once team leader Park and I sat down in our seats. Seo Young's a big hit now. She's the type to pull fans in. Like they say, even lookers can't beat hardcore fans. On top of that, fans of other idols have reacted very favorably. The male PR team employee showed me a tablet displaying online reactions. Who has seen Neptune's clip on the portal? The comment section is going crazy. It's no joke. It instantly got 500,000 views and thousands of comments. I thought a fight broke out or something, but it turns out that other fans have come out in full strength and are crying in the comments lol. I saw the hidden camera scene with I'm Seo Young when it aired, and I felt even sadder thinking about my favorite artist. I watched it with my mom, and she told me to never be a celebrity. I watched it without any thought and ended up with tears and snot running down my face. I wondered if my favorite group had the same thoughts. I plan on fangirling over Neptune as my second. I wasn't interested in them besides Lee Sangha, but they seem really nice. I became obsessed with him Seo Young yesterday and I spent all night looking her up ha ha ha. Their chemistry with each other is amazing too. My image of them has risen. Wasn't that clearly scripted? Also, I disliked seeing I'm Seo Young hugging a doll at her age. Is it just me? Just you. Did you not see her doll collection in her room? You need to respect her preferences. Scripted. LMFAO you think it would be scripted with him Seo Young's acting skills. LOL. There were a few people trying to start a ruckus here and there, but the majority had positive reactions. As someone said, Neptune's image had become much better. The biggest benefit was the popularity of the other members, who had been hidden under Lee Song has shadow, had surged. The PR team employees chatted. A making film production assistant laughed like a madman when he told me the ratings. Of course, hell laugh. At 11.8%, we increased by almost 3%. It's the hottest topic for two weeks now, so there are new viewers after getting hooked through IPTV, streaming and downloading services. I bet there'll be more people watching next week. For programs like this, it's common for there to be a hot online reaction but a subdued offline one. Yet, making film is hot on and offline. The ages of viewers range widely from the teens to the middle-aged. If we're lucky, the fandom will appeal to the masses. Apparently IBC brought up extending the broadcast by another week. Product placements and commercials must be lined up right now, of course, they don't want to stop with a few weeks. I heard IBC's music broadcast is taking special care over Pretty Girl's comeback stage. Chief Lee Taishin, who was listening with a slack jaw, swallowed his saliva. Comeback stage but, I still can't believe it. It felt surreal thinking that the girls are gaining so much attention thanks to the broadcast, but my eyes were about to pop out when I heard the staff wanted to have an interview for their comeback stage. If the song does well, then an introduction scene will be added as well. Lee Kuan Wu said while laughing. As soon as they talked about the song's results, their gazes gathered on me. The PR team employees cautiously asked. The song will do well, right? Looking at the mood, it looks like they'll rise to the top of the charts. The problem is whether it stays there. We are preparing a press release in case it does fall sharply. Team leader Park trailed her words as she looked at me. How well do you think the song will do? First on the weekly charts. I said with a smile. Team leader Park licked her dry lips. Since they are a hot topic right now, if we're lucky it might reach first. Team leader Park, who was nodding, paused. Wait, did you say weekly? Yes. I replied while twirling the pen in my hand. Now the other employees were looked at me with agitated expressions. Not real-time rankings, not daily, but first on weekly. I think that they'll be able to stay at the top of the weekly charts for at least one week. 
I hope they get first on the monthly chart even. I added as the other's expressions turned strange. If Kim Hyunjo or the Team 3 leader were here, they probably would have said something. That the crazy guy is doing it again. I lightly tapped the back of my hand and said. Now that our goal is settled, shall we start the meeting? The employee quickly regained their senses. On the other side, Team Leader Park had a faint smile as she said. Shall we, Team Leader Jung? A cold front descended in the team leader's office. The management business department is going to be reorganized. Who said that? Chief Joe flinched under the team two leader's glaring eyes. It's a rumor that's been going around recently. It's just a rumor. So what kind of rumor? Chief Joe said. That we should be reducing our investments in Hollywood and focus more here since we aren't able to get good results advancing into Hollywood. Apparently, they are planning on increasing the department by signing on more A-list actors currently in the free market. Also, sign other actors. If that's the case, do you think I wouldn't be aware of it? The CEO and director would tell me immediately. The Team 2 leader snorted and asked. And anything else? That a new team will be created in the department. That team. Chief Jaw's eyes sneaked a peek at the Team 2 leader. The rest is completely baseless, so you don't have to. Tell me the rest of it. What is it? Th that young Sunwoo might be the new team leader. Who's been speaking that nonsense? The team two leader's eyes blazed. His well-groomed beard trembled. I, I told you it's just nonsense. Team leader. Team leader. All sorts of rumors are coming out from giving Young Sunwoo that temporary team leader position so that it looks good for the company. It's not like the project succeeded either. That's, judging by the mood, it seems like it's already considered a success. The problem is rather if the rest is a big or small hit. What did you say? Chief Joe halted his mumblings and shook his head. The Team 2 leader chugged down a glass of cold water. Then he rubbed his belly. I have to be careful around the CEO and director because of that young Sunwoo idiot. My insides broil whenever I hear his name now. He and Sun Chiyo Young are the biggest contributors to my stress. What team leader? Do you think ill? Still holding his glass, the team two leader stopped talking when he looked towards the door. Song Inho was standing behind the slight opening. Inho, why are you standing there like that? I knocked but I didn't think you heard me. Come in. When Song Yinho stepped in, the freezing office began to melt. The Team 2 leader smiled like a goose nesting on a golden egg. What's the matter? I think the independent film is going to delay its release a bit longer. What? The smile was wiped from the Team 2 leader's face. A bone-chilling breeze blew. What a mess. Does that director even plan on releasing that movie this year? The extra shoots will be done soon. How many times have you brought extra shoots up? Once you start promoting your project, you'll be so busy you'll have to make use of every second. How long do you plan on being bogged down by that? You're good overall, but you're stubborn about the oddest things. They'll make sure that it doesn't affect my schedule. For sure. The Team 2 leader's expression relaxed after Song Inho begged him for a while. He sat Song Inho closer to him. Then he scanned his face. Are you going to the esthetician regularly? You need to take care since you'll be in front of the camera every day once director Yoon's movie is released. The Team 2 leader patted Song Inho's cheek. You just need to follow me from now on. The meetings were packed as much as Neptune scheduled during event season. I only picked out the most important ones, but the lunch meetings overlapped so I would have to lunch several times today. I went down to the parking lot to go to my first meeting destination. I checked the time in front of my minivan. Someone pulled my arm from behind me. Was it one of Blackout Stalker fans? Thinking this, I turned around. I saw a face that could be considered too handsome underneath his baseball cap. He was Song Inho. When I relaxed, he pulled my arm. He crammed his long limbs into the security camera's dead spot and greeted me. Hyung, it's been a while. It has been a while. But what are you doing? 
It wasn't like we were a celebrity couple hiding from reporters. If I get caught talking to you, they'll be in trouble. The Team 2 leader isn't in a good mood right now. What happened today? Because of you. Song Inho's voice became quieter. I think the company is in a frenzy because of your project team. That's why there are two names you should never bring up in front of the Team 2 leader. Sun Chai Young Sun Bei and temporary team leader Young Sun Wu. I was on the same level as Sun Chai Young. Laughing, I placed my hand on Song Inho's shoulder. Song Inho laughed refreshingly. Soon, his eyes met mine. It had only been a few months since he came over and cried, saying that he felt like he was suffocating to death, and I didn't have the opportunity to talk to him much after because I was so caught up with pretty girls. How are the two movies going? We are doing extra shoots for the independent film. Director Yoon's film is being released. ITL will be in theaters soon. I think they are rushing it because of the distribution company. The movie the Team 2 leader picked. The scenario wasn't bad, but how did he pick it? How well would it do? It'll go to the premiere. Thank you. But, Hyung. Still crouched, Song Inho came closer. I heard about this just now, but there is a rumor that the management team is being reorganized and that they will create a new team. Really? There is also a rumor that you might be the team leader of the new team. I recalled the time I had a private conversation with CEO Beck Hansung. So a rumor was spreading. It seemed he saw something in my expression as Song Yinho's complexion brightened. If, that really is true, Hyung. Song Yinho grabbed both my arms. Could you bring me to your team? What the heck? Was this a dream? I was definitely talking to Song Yinho just now, but I saw the blue sky in front of me. Clouds were trailing on behind the glass wall. It looked like I was looking down from a plane. I felt a strange sense of deja vu. Where did I see this before? Ah, uh, I was in my office. My office approximately 20 years later. As soon as I realized this was the future, my future self raised his head. Devoid of static, I could clearly see director Park Wujong, the middle-aged version of reporter Park Wujong. I perked my ears and listened. Director Park said. That person retired at the peak of their popularity, right? Retired? Who? Was she talking about Song Inho? Reporter Song asked the question that was on my mind. Why did that person retire? There were only rumors. That the person married into a Chinese conglomerate. That the person was being treated for anxiety. That the person was pregnant. That the person retired in Korea and went on to do theater in the States. There were all sorts of rumors. Pregnant. Director Park, who replied in a mumble, shrugged. No one knows the truth. Ah. She started when she was a child, so she was great at acting. Director Park looked at me and added. I wonder what Sun Chai Young's doing now. Chapter, 171. Sun Chai Young. My vision changed. Director Park's face changed to Song Inho. The bright office that made floating dust shine disappeared, and I was once again crouching down in a corner of a dark parking lot. The damp scent of dust filled my nose. That was it. It just ended with a few hints about Sun Chai Young. Faced with the sudden sense of hopelessness, I frowned. I can't. A nervous voice asked. Sun Inho was looking at me while biting his smooth lips. The hands holding both my arms gripped harder. I felt like I was going to get a bruise at this rate. I brushed his hands off, but he grabbed me again. He grabbed me again when I brushed him off a second time. Let go. Hyung. Hyung Nim. Hyung. Don't do that. You're giving me chills. He said that your heart will become soft if I provoked your maternal instincts. He mumbled with regret. And here I was wondering why a guy who acted like some young master with a strict upbringing in front of others always acted like a child around me. Who said that? Chief Lee Bun Jun. That man. Clicking his tongue, Song Yin Ho let go of my arms and staggered back. The corners of his eyelashes drooped. Having received special care, his face shined even in this dark parking lot. 
However, peeling off a single layer revealed an exhausted stifled interior. Well, it wasn't easy. He was a rookie who just got his feet wet in the entertainment world. If he was a tadpole in a rainbow pond, the Team 2 leader was a bullfrog. To endure that man's irritation while continuing to work on the independent film, most people would have given up already. This guy was quite stubborn. Which was also why I wanted him. That was why I made it so he would say, Hyung, please bring me to your team. I told Song Inho, who was looking down on the concrete floor with clear eyes. Wait. Pardon. Song Inho immediately raised his head. I placed my hand on his flinching shoulder and continued. Wait a bit. Song Inho instantly blocked off his shouting mouth. Then he looked around the parking lot and laughed quietly this time. His eyes were surging with vitality like a sprout after rain. I hope that I can continue acting with Hyung for a long time. I suddenly recalled the future I had seen just now. Sun Chai Young retired at the peak of her career. There were many rumors, but no one knew the truth. I brushed away the thoughts that began to spread like mold in my mind. I would have liked to see Sun Inho's future and obtain some information. Not this useless information. It's completely blocked here. Uh, SE security and personnel are on their way. It seemed the event agency was busy too. His voice cracked for half the words he spoke. Hanging up, I looked out the car window. People had completely surrounded the car. They shouted, asking to lower the windows and show their faces. If these people were cast as extras for a live, the zombie scenes would have been ten times more realistic. We arrived thirty minutes ago, but we couldn't proceed to the waiting room. Li Quan Wu had long since taken his hands off the wheel. Even the Neptune members behind me looked like they were struck dumb. I was surprised as well. We had attended company in regional events, university festivals, and the like, but never have we been surrounded like this. Im Seo Young rigidly turned her head like a puppet. Oh Appa, 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 say something. Why? My body is hot. I think I'm going to spontaneously burst into flames. And it's better if you hear my voice. Yua, it feels like I'm being splashed with ice water. Although she was always like this, she was even more out of her mind today. She rattled on so much that LJ threatened to gag her. Calming down by a pea-sized amount, Im Seo Young's eyelashes trembled as she said. Do don't tell me that everyone is here to see us. Yeah, they aren't. I indicated to a street lamp. A banner with a list of guest artists was fluttering on it. The finale performance is by Babel. Ah. I think around half the people here came to see them. Their fandom members had arrived early in the morning to get seats at the very front. Babel. They were a ten-member boy group who was gaining popularity nationwide. They debuted around the same time as Neptune, but the size of our fandom was incomparable to theirs. This was a university festival, yet there were more middle and high schoolers wearing their school uniforms. Im Seo Young seemed embarrassed for getting ahead of herself and coughed loudly. So that's it. The online reactions to making film were so heated that I thought our popularity went up just as much offline. That's true. Im Seo Young's eyes bulged at my words. Smiling, I added. If we exclude Babel, the next largest group of people probably came to see your performance. Most of the people surrounding the car are probably here for you too. The majority of people attending Neptune's event performances had come to see Lee Sangha, but it seemed it would be different today. Making film has been a hot topic for three episodes now, and thanks to that, Neptune's fame and positive image surged sharply. Satellite and Pisces, which were last year's hit songs, were regaining ground and had entered the music charts again, and we received a commercial proposal for Neptune as a group rather than one for just Lee Sangha. Neptune was hot right now. Enough to attract an audience. Im Seo Young. Im Seo Young was surprised by the shout outside the car. I don't expect to get your autograph. Please just let me see your face up close. I really want to see you. Op Oppa. Nope. Just for a moment. Can't I just for a split second? I just to say hi. Im Seo Young begged yearningly. Nope. 
It's night right now so they can't even really see their own feet. There might be an accident if people get excited. Ah. That can't happen. Im Seo Young immediately shut her mouth when I mentioned there could be an accident. Still, she seemed a little regretful as she touched the window every time someone called her name. Someone would think that a Romeo was serenading her outside the window. Beside her, Lee song pressed her ear against the window. Since Lee song has name was shouted like a chant, people a hundred meters away could hear them, so I didn't know why she was acting like that. It wasn't like it was her first time experiencing this. Why was she, who is buried by crowds of people whenever she goes to China, concentrating so much? Just then, Li Sangha said like she fished a big one. Someone called out your name, Appa. Whoever they are, their preferences are crazy. LJ giggled in the back seat. Her gaze was fixed out the window. It was the same for Li Taehee next to her. She had taken off her earphones, which she always wore before a performance, and was staring out the window. The four were looking out their own windows and pouring their concentration outside. Li Tae If you come to our bar, they'll give you Korean pancakes and chestnut rice wine for free. Sangha. Where are you sitting? Can you hear me? Uni. LJ Uni. You're the best. Every time their names were called, their faces got closer to the window. As though they were about to go out at any moment. Seeing this, I turned my gaze. Thousands of people packed the outdoor venue so that people couldn't take a single step. I saw the stage over there, lights brightly shining down. It was the stage the girls would be going on soon. I wanted to quickly get them up there. So that they could feel this heated atmosphere with their entire body. Only after the security and personnel came at full force and created a safety barrier and the host went up on the stage and calmed the people down could we move. We finally got the girls and the staff to the waiting room. The people who had already arrived and were waiting quickly got up. Chief. Sun Bay. It was really noisy outside. Are you okay? They were the pretty girls Goldfish and Chief Lee Taishin. Also, a few making film staff, including producer Yu Su Young. Before pretty girls began their comeback activity, we invited them to indirectly experience Neptune's large scale event performance. This was because the stages Pretty Girls had gone on were all small-scale besides music broadcasts. The making film staff received permission from the university and event agency to be here. It seemed they heard that we were caught up by the audience as the Pretty Girls members' gazes as they looked in our direction was filled with yearning and envy. A couple cameramen filmed their expressions. How about you? Did a lot of people surround you on your way in? Huh? Im Seo Young asked expectantly. Oh Yandu blinked her large eyes and smiled. Uh, we came in right away in the chief's car, so there was no opportunity to meet anyone. I think there were a few people watching us from afar when we got off. It it's because your outfits are normal, and you aren't wearing makeup for your performances. Im Seo Young added with an embarrassed expression. If you prepare properly and go outside, there'll be tons of people who recognize you. Don't be so disappointed. No, no, we're not disappointed. Yoon Sol waved her hands as though that was a ridiculous thought. The other pretty girls' members seemed to think the same way. Young Jae, who was hurriedly taking out a thermos and some paper cups, smiled with curved eyes. We are still surprised whenever our names appear on the internet. We might get a heart attack if people recognize us and rush at us outside. Then she handed everyone a cup of tea. It was a warm jujube ginger tea. Oh Yandu rubbed her cheeks, which were red from excitement, and added. It's our first time at such a big event, so just being in the waiting room is interesting. It seemed another team had begun performing, as loud cheers shook the room. The pretty girls' members glanced at the door with faces that really showed they wanted to go check it out. They'll go say hi to the agency employee, so get ready. I left Neptune with the staff including their stylists, and left the waiting room. A cameraman followed after me. He filmed the noisy, bustling waiting room area. I was looking around for the employee when I stopped in my steps. I heard a familiar melody amidst the commotion. The cameraman, who, like me, immediately recognized the melody, turned his camera. 
It was a young female student with short hair. Her friend, who also had a university staff sign and was moving stuff with her, asked. What song is that? The humming short-haired girl tilted her head. You've been humming the same song for the past while. I've probably memorized it as well. Ah, uh, this. It's Pretty Girl's new song. The short-haired girl licked her lips as she replied. Pretty Girls. The girls from Making Film. Their album already came out. No. The third episode showed them recording, and I heard bits and pieces. It seems the song is good. Seeing as you're constantly humming it. The short-haired girl made a complicated expression. At first, I just thought, it's good. That was it, but it's catchy. Even though I only listen to it for a bit during the episode, I keep thinking about it. It'll probably be screwed if I heard it before my exams. Also, I don't feel sated because they haven't released the full song. You're making me curious. Hearing their conversation, the corners of my lips rose. The youngest members missing Young Jae while a heavy burden rested on their shoulders. The scene with Chief Lee Tae Shin and me comforting Young Jae after finding her. Also, the scene of the four members reuniting. The pretty girl's story was executed brilliantly in producer Yoo Soo Young's hands. Then, the latter half of the third episode began showing them preparing their album. We played their song repeatedly during scenes of them practicing their choreography and recording the song. Just the part of the song that was unanimously picked for being the catchiest part of the song. To garner this sort of reaction. We asked the female students, who were bewildered by my appearance, for an interview before proceeding to look once more. When we left the waiting room area, the song playing from the speakers and thousands of people's shouts pierced our ears. An agency employee ran around shouting. Neptune has safely entered their waiting room and are standing by. Babel. Did you check on Babel? They said they left Busan with time to spare. ITLL be a huge deal if there's a delay so check again. Also, people are going to surround them more than they did Neptune. Dispatch the security guards ahead of time. Team leader Yoon, the event agency employee I met a few weeks ago, shouted. At the same time, he rushed over after discovering me. After greeting each other, he made an astonished face. I was wondering why you said you were going to wait before scheduling any more events. I told you. That the situation was going to change a lot. I replied while laughing. Team leader Yoon laughed. How could I have known things would change so much in two weeks? If I knew, then I would have spared no effort to fill Neptune's schedule. His voice was overflowing with regret. Team leader Yoon licked his lips and had just begun discussing pricing when a female agency employee rushed over with a pale face shouting. Team leader. Team leader. Babel got in a car accident on their way back to Seoul. That's why they want us to delay the final performance. This is crazy. How long do we have to delay for? 10 minutes. 20. Oh one hour. Team leader Yoon's expression crumbled. How can we fill an hour? Can't we ask the other artists to do an encore? Do you think that'll work? Even the team performing right now came here to perform for 10 minutes because they have another event. Can't you see their manager is already waiting after starting the car? The managers repeatedly asked for no encores since it's event season. Then should we ask the host to do some recreational? There are tons of fans waiting for Babel. If we get the host to do recreational activities for an hour, he's going to get stoned. Team leader Yoon furiously ruffled his hair before turning his gaze. Towards me. Chapter, 172. After talking to the event agency employee, team leader Yoon rushed over to me. Um, Chief Young. You said that Neptune has to film making film after, right? They are filming it right now to be exact. We plan on having an interview after the event. I replied while nodding. Team leader Yoon licked his lips. His eyes shifted quickly within his plump frame. Could we perhaps extend Neptune's performance? Extend it? I thought about it. How could I make the best use of this sudden situation? My mind wandered to the people I left behind in the waiting room, the cameraman filming this current situation, and the screaming fans outside. 
Just as I began to draw an outline of my plan, team leader Yoon couldn't wait and said in a desperate manner. It'll be forever grateful if you could help me this once. You probably overhead, but, sigh, it looks like Babel will be a little late. It just happened that they were our finale. The crowd is full of people who came to see them. On top of that, their fans are famously hardcore. It was rare for a boy group fandom to not be hardcore. As girls who came early in the morning to see their oppas, they would grow more dissatisfied the longer Babel delayed. While they might not throw stones, they might throw trash. If Babel. Team leader Yoon stopped and glanced at the cameraman. The cameraman turned his camera off and took a step back. As he gestured as if to tell team leader Yoon not to worry, team leader Yoon continued. While they might complain less if they hear Babel got in an accident, it seems Babel's company wants to ensure the reporters don't hear about this until the situation is settled and they send out a press release. Seeing as they said they would still make an appearance, it didn't seem like they were at fault, and the members seemed to be fine. However, if they let thousands of fans know about the accident, it would immediately spread online. Then reporters would swarm in and write even more provocative articles. It was difficult for the event agency to ignore a request from a group like Babel in order to maintain a good relationship for future events. Please, please help us, Chief Young. Team leader Yun begged. If Neptune's on stage, then the crowd shouldn't be too dissatisfied by the delay. How much time do you need? I asked while glancing at my watch. Team leader Yoon held my hand like it was a lifeline. I asked again to the man profusely expressing his gratitude. You'll have to keep the delay to a minimum. They don't have a wide repertoire so it's impossible to extend their performance for long. H how long can you extend it? Normally, we would have four songs Satellite and Pisces from their mini-album, their other hit track from their other album, and Lee Taehee's solo OST. With greetings and some light talk, we could hold on for 30 minutes. If we want to add more, it would have to be their missing track from Next K-Star, but I'll have to check with the girls since these songs weren't planned for today. We can't let them make a flawed performance since tons of fan cams will be posted after the event. Yes, that's true. PL please take care of us. I smiled and turned around. The cameraman had started filming at some point. The team leader asked me to give this to you. One of the event agency's employees handed me a box. It was full of sandwiches, salads, chips, and drinks. Lee Sangha jumped to her feet and accepted the box. Having seen Lee Sangha up close, the employee left the room with a red face. Our meeting continued. The always reliable Lee Taehee calmly said. The two mission songs we frequently performed at events. We can do those since we've been practicing them for events. What do you think, Sangha? Lee Sangha nodded. I practiced them yesterday. I think we can do an encore on top of that. Im Seo Young counted on her fingers. If we talk with the audience a bit longer. Appa, what if we talk with the host longer? No way. I immediately shook my head. We don't have any comments prepared. You're in the public's eye. ITLL be big trouble if you say something bad because you're excited. Also, the host, who was a comedian, was the frivolous type. The type who made provocative comments to drag out the audience's reaction and cause controversy. How could I send them out there with no idea about what he might ask? No matter how much we plead the host to be moderate, there was no guarantee on what would happen on stage. Im Seo Young smacked her lips in regret. Then if we just introduce our songs and do an extra performance, I think we can extend it by 15 minutes. If we add it with our original performance, ITLL be almost 30 minutes long. That's like a concert. LJ said after licking her lips. Having calculated the length of their performance, Im Seo Young flinched. See concert. Though, Babel fans will probably be glaring at us at the front. Im Seo Young, who was jumping up and down at the thought of a concert, stiffened. I ITLL be fine though, right? There are people who came to see us. Right? That's right. Uh, well join them too. We even bought glow stick bracelets. Oh Yandu, who particularly followed Im Seo Young after confessing she was her role model, took out a bracelet. 
Each of the other goldfish took one out as well and shook them like tambourines. They mentioned how O Yandu paid for them out of her own pocket. I calmly looked at pretty girls. At the three goldfish waving their hands and Young Jay, who was clapping. Chief Young. Team leader Yoon entered after knocking hurriedly. Um, I asked about other team situations and barely managed to get one team to do an encore. We probably can't fill the gap with just that though. That's why we decided to do a giveaway event with the host. It seems we'll be able to hold on for another 20 minutes with the encore performance. Then we have 40 minutes remaining. Team leader Yoon trailed off, knowing this was far-fetched. Then Neptune's performance would be an hour long in total. As LJ said, this was a concert. Maybe it would be different if they were experienced artists with lots of hit songs, but Neptune didn't have the repertoire or experience to pull off an hour-long on-the-spot concert. I went over to team leader Yoon and said. That'll be difficult. Is there nothing you can do? There is nothing else we can do. At most, we can hold on for 20 minutes. I think you have to look elsewhere for the remaining 20 minutes. I said while staring at team leader Yoon. He also looked at me. Then, as though he had a sudden thought, his shoulders jumped. What if you came on stage? What will I do up there? Should I sing a lullaby? The waiting room was filled with suppressed laughs and coughs. There were only two people who didn't laugh, Lee Sangha and team leader Yoon. Rather, Lee Sangha seemed more into the idea than team leader Yoon. It felt like she would give me the mic as soon as I agreed. I waved at her, indicating to not have any thoughts, and looked back at team leader Yoon. He looked elsewhere with anxious eyes. At pretty girls. Chief, ITLL be more difficult for pretty girls, right? The goldfish and Chief Li Taishin were shocked. Even the making film staff, who were laughing about me singing a lullaby, quickly focused on filming. Pretty girls. Of course, well definitely make it worth your while if they do perform. If we introduce them at a leisurely pace, even if they only do one song. Team leader Yoon mumbled before sighing as though he had already been refused. That was because pretty girls currently didn't have their stage outfits, makeup, or music. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that their preparations were non-existent. Then. I glanced at the girls before saying. I guess we need to talk with them this time. The aquarium froze. The goldfish stiffed like frozen fish and simply looked at me. Multiple cameras focused on them. Producer Yu Suyoung had a short discussion with me before immediately gathering the production staff and writers. Then she started an on-the-spot meeting with a bright smile. After Neptune went to a different waiting room to practice, I spoke. While it would be good if you did it, you don't have to if you think you can't. The girl's eyes shook like there was an earthquake. Yoon Sol cautiously raised her hand and asked. It's good if we do it. It's a sudden situation, and normally, I would refuse since there are a lot of variables. However, we are filming right now. I gestured to the cameras. It's a bit of a waste to throw away such a dramatic situation like this when it came so naturally. You were already preparing for your showcase performance anyways. If you can perform well, there's no showcase that'll be better than this. The girls' faces turned more serious. They talked amongst each other for a while before Young Jay said. Well do it. Please let us perform. The other goldfish gathered around and blinked. We practiced every day like it was our showcase performance. I'm confident that I won't make a mistake. The audience might not react favorably. More than Neptune's performance. The mood chilled at my words. The goldfish simply blinked. I observed their reactions while continuing. Although your popularity has been rising at a sharp rate these past few weeks, the people outside aren't here to see you. You'll be part of an unexpected event, and there will be many people who won't welcome you. Babel fans will be particularly unhappy. They gulped and mumbled. What would they boo and jeer, saying stuff like they've never heard of us? Or maybe throw water bottles? They won't all be like that. Nor will they all leave. Young Jay said in a quiet yet firm voice. There were times when the spectators all left and it was our turn to perform. Saying that there'll be nothing to see. 
We also performed a lot in front of people passing us on the street. Oh Yandu fiddled with her glow stick bracelet before holding it tight. There were people that asked us to wear more racy outfits to gain people's attention. That we needed to at least show them that much since we were unknown. That's why Jay Uni alone wore short skirts. Ones that revealed her thighs. They weren't that short. It only looked that way because my legs are long. Young Jay joked awkwardly before saying. Now is different from then. There will be people outside who will be happy about our surprise performance. That's right. There will. At least a few. There could even be a few dozens of people since there are thousands outside. The goldfish chatted amongst each other as they became livelier. Chief Li Taishin, who was thinking about joining their conversation when the mood was down, was relieved. Then he exchanged a happy glance with Young Jae. Soon, Young Jae turned to look at me. Maybe it was because of the past incident, but she always looked hesitant. But she was resolute right now. Enough that I could trust her. I got up and said to Chief Li Taishin. Chief Li, I already reported the situation to our superiors, so please call the stylist team for their outfits. As well as the instrumentals. Whether you get them to deliver or you go get them yourself, go with the quickest method. Ah, understood. I left pretty girls under the makeup artist's care and left the waiting room. Then I told Li Quan Wu, who followed me out after seeing my gesture. Find out Babel's chief. Babbles? I looked at the crowd of people outside and said. Their fans are gathered here. We have to hope that some of them will listen to reason. Even as he made an odd expression, Li Quan Wu quickly took out his phone. When I returned after confirming Pretty Girl's performance with team leader Yoon and receiving his thanks and promise of some compensation, Li Quan Wu already had the number of Babel's chief in his hand. I found an empty waiting room and called. Hello. The voice was very hoarse. He sounded nervous and irritated. This is Babel's chief, correct? My name is Yung Sun Wu, the one in charge of Neptune. Pardon? I heard that you got in an accident on your way here. Are you alright? Ah, we were fine. But why did you? His flustered voice questioned. It was the same for Lee Kuan Wu, who was watching me. About today's university event. We decided to fill the empty time slot under the agency's request. It will be Neptune and Pretty Girl's special performance. But because we are currently filming Making Film, there will be cameras filming them. PR Pretty Girls. Pardon? Cameras? It seems like there are a lot of hardcore Babel fans in the crowd. I think things may get ugly if they learn that Babel's performance will be delayed. I'm also worried that something bad might happen when pretty girls go up on stage. The broadcast is one thing, but there are a lot of people here filming fan cams. Ah, damn it. This is driving me crazy. Don't go crazy. Please wait. His voice became quiet before he came back. Our fan manager will figure out who went to the event and explain the situation. We can't control the young ones either, so I don't know if telling them that they could be banned from the next event will be effective. I exchanged a few more words with the groaning chief before hanging up. In front of me, Lee Kuan Wu looked at me with fervor. I just thought that you always act with insurance. He replied, shrugging lightly. This is just insurance. It's not a perfect countermeasure. Do you think hardcore fans are hardcore for nothing? Then, after all this, what if they really throw water bottles? Then we need to spin that in a positive way. The moment Li Quan Wu's eyes widened, the ground suddenly collapsed. Married into a Chinese conglomerate. That the person was being treated for anxiety. That the person was pregnant. That the person retired in Korea and went on to do theater in the States. There were all sorts of rumors. What the heck? I was in the office again. The office of my future self. Like always in this future, director Park and reporter Song were in front of me. However, there was something else same about this. She started when she was a child, so she was great at acting. Director Park looked in my direction and added. I wonder what Sun Chai Young's doing now. Why was I seeing this again? 
This had never happened before. Why? Chapter 173 Chief, is there a problem? Li Quan Wu asked, examining my complexion. I stretched my neck, which felt stiff like I had a cast on. No, I'm just going to go out for a call, so look after the girls for a bit. Yes. His heavy footsteps grew distant. The door opened then closed. The noises outside seeped in before quickly becoming silent. I brushed off the sofa, which was messy with the event schedule papers and crumbs, before sitting down. Let's organize this. Just what was going on? The future I just saw was a repeat. A repeat about Sun Chai Young. I only heard the same conversation before returning to the present. It was like I was seeing a replay. The visions of the future I saw until could be organized into three kinds. The fixed version that was around twenty years in the future. The static -y future. And the final one was a rewind type which I experienced only once regarding the drunk driving incident. That was how three boxes were organized in my mind. Three locked boxes that looked identical, but whose contents were unknown. There was now another box. A repeated vision. I gripped my clasped hands harder. My skin stung like I was being shocked. There were a couple of times when a vision continued from a prior one. The one hinting at Sung Dawan's downfall. One where I learned that Lee Sangha had a talent for acting. However, this was my first time experiencing something like this. What was the reason? What was different from the past? I had pondered about my foresight ability to the point I was sick and tired of it. This was to identify the true nature of this seemingly randomly activating ability and to also figure out how to use it at will. What I realized after thinking about this was that it felt like someone was behind these episodic visions. To show me something. As if that person was trying to push me to change the present. A motive. If this assumption was correct, then what was this person's motive in showing me the same future again? I had no intentions of stepping into the mud pile that is Sun Chai Young. But what was the reason behind it? Because I judged that that future was useless? Was someone hoping I changed the future in which Sun Chai Young retired? Did Sun Chai Young have something to do with my future? If I burrowed deeper into this repeated future could I gain some insight into the foresight ability? I mulled over it before tapping my phone. I searched for that crazy. Let's try it. I cooled my mind and waiting. However, all I received was a message that her phone was turned off. I felt like I had thrown a grenade only for it to turn out to be a dud. I called again. Oh, a celebrity has called. What is it? Chief Li Bunjun answered with a chuckle. I have something I wanted to ask you. What is it? Have you seen a mess? Sun Chai Young recently. He suddenly began to cough. Sun Chai Young. You're asking about Sun Chai Young. I also hoped I wasn't. I am. Why are you asking about her all of a sudden? I have my reasons. I haven't seen her at the company recently, and it seems like Team 2 is less noisy as well. You should know since you're in the same team. Is there something going on? There is something going on with her. She's Sun Chai Young. Something different. She's in the US right now. It's probably been about two weeks. The US. I was wondering why the crazy in this area was quiet, so it turns out she had gone somewhere else. Chief Li Bun Jun began to chatter on. It seems like the team leader bothered her with various scenarios and scripts for potential projects. They fought about it and she left for the US. She emphasized that she wouldn't do any projects unless she liked them. I heard him click his tongue. She hasn't found a project she likes for more than a year. Her cameo appearance on Royal Family was her last. Now that I thought about it, Sun Chai Young didn't do any projects after Mermaid Out of Water. It was her first time taking a break this long, so the team leader's getting impatient. It's already a year into her two-year exclusive contract. Although there are discussions that they'll renew her contract afterwards. Chief Li Bun Jun changed the subject. Anyways, it seems like she's become more severe since the CEO held her back when she wanted to know the contract last time. Since she can't leave with a leash on her neck, 
Should I say it's like a rabid dog charging at people indiscriminately? Did anything happen in the US? Why are you so interested all of a sudden? That's odd. Well, she threw her phone out, so a manager is stuck with her as a messenger. I heard she's been living a cultured lifestyle, leisurely going to musicals and plays. I unknowingly let out a hollow sigh. She's probably going to return today or tomorrow. She has a commercial shoot. Could you let me know if something comes up? It'll buy you a meal. Things will pop up like landmines once she arrives in Korea. Although I don't know what this is about, it'll let you know. We hung up. I sat there rigidly for a few minutes before getting up. I heard a commotion from outside the waiting room. Busy footsteps and voices pulled me back to reality. This wasn't a good time to be lost in my thoughts. I put away thoughts about Sun Chai Young and my foresight ability for now. Then I went to the girls who were waiting for me. Hello, we are Neptune. Cheers erupted in the crowd. Maybe it was because of the overwhelming number of cheering men, but their spirit was incredible. It was like seeing a charging elephant shake the ground. Im Lee Tae Hee. Im Im Seo Young. The cheers grew louder as each member introduced themselves. I guessed this back when we were surrounded by people and couldn't move, but their reactions were more heated than ever. It was completely boiling. Lee Tae settled I'm Seo Young, whose smile hung up to her ears, back down. Four figures took their position under the misty stage lights. The silence was short-lived. The rhythmical introduction drastically raised the audience's expectations. At that moment, they were blinding. I watched their performance from below the stage. Although I had to wear a hat and a mask, I could feel the audience's reaction with my skin. Also, I wanted to see them, not from the side or the back, but right here. I wanted to see each of them radiate their presence like they were each under a spotlight. The audience loudly sang along with them and shouted Neptune and their names. Satisfaction bloomed in my chest. I laughed quietly. The scheduled twenty minutes passed, and their extra performance began. The heated didn't cool and continued to build. A few hardcore Babel fans protested, bringing up the schedule, but their commotion was insignificant. They couldn't garner a single ounce of attention from the wild crowd. Neptune's on-the-spot performance was so successful that I was worried for nothing. Team leader Yoon also looked relieved as he approached me. He showered me with thanks and praised Neptune. Chief, with their ability to mobilize the audience, I think you'll be able to sell concert tickets. A concert? Yes, when will Neptune have a solo concert? A solo concert. Just the mention of that deeply weighed down on me. Although boy groups proceeded with solo concerts once they gained sufficient popularity because of their fandom, the meaning behind this word was different for girl groups, whose fandom was usually less active. I had thought that it would be difficult to sell a Neptune solo concert unless we sold it under Lee Song has name. I slowly looked back at the stage before saying. I don't think ITLL be too long. Babel members really want to show you all a great performance, but they are just not quite ready yet. This event was made possible with your hard-earned tuition, so of course, you need to see their perfect performance, right? Right? The host spoke slyly, but the front row's reaction was cold. The back rows were quiet because Neptune had heated the mood, but their complaints might spread like cancer cells if the mood degrades. The audience's passion and enthusiasm cooled down as though they were being doused in the cold rain as the host's remarks grew longer. And behind the stage. We will be on our way. Girls, take deep breaths. Deep breaths. Stay calm. Think that you are laid into your pregnancies. They are high schoolers, dummy. The exhausted Neptune members each said some words of encouragement as they surrounded the goldfish. I could hear the bustling audience from here. The four members of Pretty Girls looked nervous as they were about to go on stage, but they were still courageous. The goldfish, who spun around Chief Lee Tae Shin, looked up at me. Chief, well have a problem-free delivery. One. Uh, yeah. Soon, the host's voice said. A lot of people have been interested in these people these days. They are going to start their official performance right here. The stars of a sudden, special performance. 
The host pumped up the crowd and as it seemed like it was about to burst, he shouted. Pretty girls. I saw the goldfish go out on stage and went back down the stage as well. I examined the audience's reactions. Who? Who are they? Pretty girls, man. But why are they here all of a sudden? They weren't on the schedule, right? What the heck? Are they an add-on to Neptune? Add-on? Can't you be more considerate considering there are people actually excited about this development? They seem fine. Are they going to perform the song they made on the broadcast? I slowly walked past them as they talked. Soon, I heard a woman's voice, who seemed to be Babel's fan. A film crew is filming this. We already have bad rumors running around about how we are thoughtless and hardcore because we have a lot of young kids in our fandom. If we slip up here, we'll be criticized to death. We need to take the lead before they cause any trouble. Just then, the pretty girl's goldfish, who came out in a line, bowed deeply. Hello. Their voices trembled slightly, but the moment they shouted their clear greeting, an ear-piercing cheer, no, an ardent scream erupted from the direction of Babel's fandom. The reaction was so incredible, it shocked not only the people around them but pretty girls as well. Their reactions gradually spread out and behind them. Under their deafening cheers, pretty girls shouted their chant in a teary voice. We are pretty, pretty, pretty girls. Li Quan Wu handed me the phone. Chief, there's a call for you. It's Chief Li Ban Jun. Thanks. I wiped away the cream on my cheek and neck and answered the phone. Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader brought over cake in celebration of Pretty Girl's successful performance last night, but for some reason, half of it went on my clothes. The sweet smell filled my nose. Hello, Chief Lee. You're in the office right now, right? His voice was interspersed with chuckles. Quickly come up to the Team 2 office. Let's talk. Was this about Sun Chai Young? First, I brushed myself off and got up. I told them I was going to meet Chief Li Bun Jun, and Li Quan Wu hastily cut the remaining cake. He packed two slices, saying that Seo Ji Jun might be there as well. When I went up to their office, Chief Li Bun Jun was standing in front of the Team 2 leader's office while glancing at the office door. I didn't know what was going on, but the team leader's angry shouts rang outside. Chief Li Bun Jun licked his lips at the plate and my appearance and gestured at me. Sun Chai Young arrived. Now that I thought about it, I could hear a woman's voice come from inside as well. Chief Li Bun Jun shook his head in astonishment. She brought a bomb with her. The reason why she was so quiet in the US must have been to gain momentum before doing this crazy thing. A bomb? Don't tell me that she was going to retire. What kind of bomb? Sun Chai Young said she wants to shoot nude. Pardon? A nude film? Like a nude scene? No, a nude photo shoot. The plate slipped from my hand. I managed to grab it before it fell on the floor. I wiped my cake-covered hand on the plate as I tried to decipher this information. A nude photo shoot. A well-off actress in her twenties, one that was known as the embodiment of innocence at that, wanted to do a nude photo shoot. Is she crass? Ah, uh, she is. She's probably not serious. Chief Li Bun Jun said as he lamented over the mushed cake. She probably said that she wanted to do a nude photo shoot because the team leader has been constantly pressuring her to pick a project. She's so protective of her filmography, do you really think she's going to do a nude photo shoot? Just then, the door of the team leader's office swung open. I saw Sun Chai Young through the opening. Our eyes met. Sun Chai Young's expression became odd when she saw me. I didn't know whether it was surprise or displeasure, but it was an indecipherable expression. Her lips opened loosely before closing. Sun Chai Young's gaze dropped. Her lips became crooked when she saw the cake. Chai Young. An unpleasant, irritated voice approached from within the office. You need to have limits. Are you out of your mind? What's new? New what? Do you want to get cut from all your commercials and have to pay up their fees? Are you going to quit acting? Why are you acting like this all of a sudden after working in this industry for more than 10 years? 
you need to take on good projects when they are begging you to join. All the scripts and scenarios you chose were no good. WH what? Rather than doing those, I think ITLL be more worthwhile stripping down for a photo shoot. Sun Chai Young shot back before opening the door wide and stepping out. The Team 2 leader immediately followed after her. He paused when he saw me. His darkened face turned red, pale, then rotten. It looked like it would become moldy soon. He took a ragged breath. Chief Lee Bun Jun stealthily stepped away from me. However, the Team 2 leader's priority was Sun Chai Young over us. Chai Young, Sun Chai Young. The CEO even. Team leader. Sun Chai Young frowned. Don't bring up the CEO in front of me. It pisses me off. That's. What I mean is. I'll do a project when I want to. So stop pestering me. Sun Chai Young skillfully cut him off before turning her gaze. Then she walked towards me. It seemed like she was going to pass Chief Lee Ban Jun and me before she stopped. What are you looking at? What do you think? Before I could reply, she said. If I do that photo shoot, they'll send it to you by phone. Since I have your number. Sun Chai Young lightly shook her phone then passed me without waiting for a reply. Her sharp heels tapped the floor as she left. When we could no longer hear her footsteps, Chief Li Bun Jun mumbled. The crazy is back. Chapter, 174 Is this a spectacle to you? The sparks landed on us. No, on me. The Team 2 leader scanned me with angry eyes. Young Sun Wu, what are you doing here? I came for a show. Rather than saying my true thoughts, I lifted the plate. I wanted to give Chief Li a slice of cake. Would you like one as well? Hey, are you here to pick a fight with me? You're just going all out, aren't you? His reaction was cold. His beard, which I wanted to shave whenever I saw him, trembled. Chief Li Bun Jun, who was acting like a bystander a step away from me, became surprised as if I had declared a challenge. I flinched when I looked at the plate. It was a pile of mushed bread and cream. It looked like a huge seagull poop. Oh right, I did mash it with my hand. I had forgotten because I was preoccupied with Sun Chai Young. I was about to tell him that this was a mistake. Oh good. I heard a voice from above. The director, whose face and scalp were shining, was standing on the stairs. The CEO wants to see you. CEO Beck Hansung. The director beamed as he looked at both me and the Team 2 leader. Both of you. No matter how many times I've been here, the CEO's office always gave me a peculiar heavy feeling. I felt like I now had some experience in society, but whenever I sat here looking at CEO Beck Hansung, I felt like a newbie who was at an interview. Still, there was one more person here for the interview today, the Team 2 leader. It wasn't just me who felt this way. It looked like he needed a Chong Simwon one. I heard that people liked Pretty Girl's first performance. Team leader Park was fussing over it. CEO Beck Hansung said while drinking tea. His classic suit and leisurely attitude made it seem like he just popped out of a magazine. Why did it seem like he was getting younger every time I saw him? I stopped my wandering thoughts and replied. It seemed the positive audience reactions at the event helped the performance. There are so many fan cams that we can't even count them all. Babel thanking us on social media was also helpful. After the night of festivities, Babel's company spread a press release regarding the accident as soon as the sun rose. They also publicly thanked pretty girls for filling in the time on social media, though I didn't know if they were trying to maintain a good public image or being sincere. Thanks to that, Babel and Pretty Girls rose up on the real-time search rankings. Tons of reporters were calling me, so there was nothing more to say about the PR team. People must be going on about how they didn't tell them about the university performance ahead of time and how they were waiting for the official showcase date. As I spoke, CEO Beck Hansung listened while tapping his armrest. He was also smiling faintly. Well have lots to discuss once this is over. I also had a lot I wanted to say. CEO Beck Hansung was silent after saying this. Was this all he wanted from me? 
I put down my teacup and looked to my side. The team two leader's shoulders flinched. He briefly glared at me. The director stretched his round arm and patted my shoulder. Well, since an event like this occurred, making films ratings probably won't drop. Oh wow, Lucky Charm will get another trophy for his display. You really like to count your chickens before they hatch. The Team 2 leader joined in. Wait until you see their music results. Counting my chickens before they hatch. Weren't you the one who said that the movie that rookie Song Inho is doing is going to be a huge hit even though it hasn't premiered yet? The director asked with a smirk. The Team 2 leader suddenly coughed. When the topic changed to Song Inho and his movie, his eyes began to shift even quicker. The Team 2 leader looked at me, the director, then CEO Beck Hansung before replying. Cough, that's because I got a glance at it. The movie is really well made. I hope so. You know that 13 million people went to see Alive, right? Nam Joyeon might get an award if he's lucky. The Team 2 leader immediately frowned. Now really, we need to show our cards too. Inho is a true talent. Although he's sometimes stubborn, we just need to control him better in the future. He plays a pretty big role in the movie, so Hell become famous once it does well in the box office. Really? Hell receive an award this year. A big one. The Team 2 leader replied to the director, but his gaze was on me. However, his glaring gaze quickly disappeared at the director's next words. You need to get Sun Chai Young under control first. I heard she's back. That is. What are you going to do about her? With nothing to say, the Team 2 leader licked his lips. It was completely different from when he was talking about Song Inho. CEO Beck Han Sung, who was silent until now, spoke. Her tantrum is lasting longer than usual. He sounded like he was dealing with a child. He slowly rubbed his chin. It's getting a bit troublesome now. All sorts of rumors spread if an actor rests for too long after a failed project. The director added with a click of his tongue. The Chinese investors seem especially concerned about this. Mermaid out of water, that completely failed in China. They sold the publishing rights at a high price, yet it ended up like that. There's no way her image is good. She needs to quickly start a new project and brush off Mermaid out of water's failure. The Team 2 leader, now with a dark complexion, said to CEO Beck Hansung. They'll give her what she wants and console her, so that we can decide on a drama or movie. You know her. Although she stirs up trouble at the company, she works hard once she signs a contract. That's only when you find a project she likes. I'm trying to gather as much as I see a. In the past. CEO Beck Hansung cut him off. Chai Young mentioned you being her manager, correct? He asked, looking at me. He leaned closer. Chief Young, no, what if you become team leader Young? Get Chai Young under control. Just temporarily. He added with a smile. My mind began to churn quickly when the team two leader roughly grabbed the table. CEO. His action knocked over a teacup, and it rolled on the table. The Team 2 leader had tried to have me manage Sun Chai Young in the past, but this was a completely different situation. He was trying to order me back when I was a new chief. However, this situation was more like he was being pushed out for not being able to handle her. The Team 2 leader shot up from his seat. A week. Ill persuade Sun Chai Young in a week. The second day of that week. I stopped my minivan on my way to work. Someone was calling me. A very unpleasant caller. It's me. You know my number, right? Even if I didn't, I would immediately know that she was Sun Chai Young. That was also a talent. To make someone's heart beat irregularly with a few words. I know. What is it? I thought she would reply right away, but she took a breath and said. Let's talk. What did she want? I wondered as I looked at the coffee shop window before giving up on guessing. I sipped on my strong coffee. I needed the caffeine. I never expected to talk to Sun Chai Young at a coffee shop, but I did come out, thinking that I might get a hint regarding that repeated vision if we talked. I still wasn't up for it. 
although she could be considered someone who had a large presence in my career as a manager, we barely ever talked to each other alone. And even those weren't pleasant memories. Once in the hotel hallway last year. I told her that we should start by apologizing to each other if we were going to actually talk, but her reply was ridiculous. It was so ridiculous that I remembered every word. I don't do stuff like that. I just don't. 2. I was still speechless when I thought about it again. The other time was in a meeting room. She talked about how it was a given for me to be her manager as she told me she asked CEO Beck Hansung to make me her manager. Her words then were still vivid in my mind. I'm telling you that I'm going to groom you. So stop playing with that child and come when I tell you to. It came as a bigger shock because it was right after I had seen a shocking future. I recalled a memory I wanted to erase from my mind. The one where Sun Chai Young, holding a baby, called me her manager. I didn't see that future again, perhaps because I refused that time. Still, it occasionally came up in my silly dreams. All the memories of us together were like this. Once that would be ridiculous if they appeared in a dream. Would my silly dreams get new material today? I looked outside the window as I drank coffee. Raindrops slid down the window. A couple drops fell when I ordered coffee, but it was pouring quite a bit now. People without umbrellas were gathered below store eaves to avoid the rain. It seemed they didn't see today's weather forecast. But, for some reason, they were all looking in the same direction. What was going on? I followed their gazes. I saw a woman riding a bike. Drenched in the rain. She should at least pedal faster if she wasn't going to rest under the eaves, but she rode leisurely like she was on a picnic. She occasionally brushed her hair and looked up at the sky. Rain should be dripping in her nose. It almost looked like a drama shoot with a sprinkler. As soon as I thought this, the woman's face became clear. Oh, my God. I quickly left the coffee shop and got in my minivan. I drove towards the coffee shop entrance. I hoped I was just seeing things, but the woman, Sun Chai Young, was still leisurely riding her bike. People with umbrellas looked at her with wide eyes. I parked my minivan nearby and rolled down the window. Get in. Discovering me, Sun Chai Young stopped pedaling. Then she brushed her hair away with both hands. With a brightly smiling face. Only then did people recognize her and start taking out their phones. Some were looking at me. Damn it, I guess it would be better if I just acted like a manager. I got out with an umbrella. I got Sun Chai Young in the back seat and folded the bike into the trunk. As I drove away, Sun Chai Young waved at the people outside. When we grew distant, she rolled the window back up. I called the PR team and told them that photos might have been taken. Then I opened the glove compartment. I felt a towel amongst the snacks Lee Songa put in. I took it out and threw it behind me. You're getting the car wet. It's already soaked. You should have told me if it was going to rain. Why should I? Was I her weather station? I was already dumbfounded by her first words. Also, if you didn't want to get soaked, you should have pedaled faster. Why were you going so slowly? It's weird if I pedal quickly. Do you think your appearance just now wasn't weird? That was weird too. Ah, uh, damn it. This pisses me off. Wow. No, why did you ride a bike in the first place? Without sunglasses at that. I don't have a manager right now. You could have called a taxi. Don't tell me she didn't even know how to call a taxi. It was ridiculous, but she was Sun Chai Young. Don't you know that people forget you if you don't do anything in this industry? I need to show my face and have pictures taken of me so that people don't forget me while I'm on my break. Oh, really? Then you can just do a project. Why? Do you have a script you want to give me? Nope. If I did, I would have already given it to Lee Sangha. Anyways, listening to her, it seemed she had no plans on retiring. The future I saw was excessively brief, so all I knew was that she retired at the height of her career. How could I know if that was this year, the next, or a few years later? My foresight ability was quiet since the repeated vision. 
I thought that it might be because I decided to get myself involved with Sun Chai Young. Just in case, I thought that this was useless information to me, but it still didn't activate. I shook my complicated mind. Even after doing this, my mind would become messy with these thoughts. Like a windshield that got wet no matter how many times the wipers wiped it. Why did you want to see me? I asked first. Sun Chai Young looked at me through the rearview mirror. She seemed to have dried her hair as the towel hung on her shoulders. Her silence made me even more uncomfortable. She lowered the window a bit. The rain noisily resounded in the car. Didn't CEO Beck Hansung mention me? Sun Chai Young asked back. He probably did. Asking if you were interested in managing me. No. Something like that. Seeing as how the team leader began saying that he'll do anything I ask, it means that fire's been lit on his back. I don't plan on dousing that fire. And CEO Beck Hansung won't just watch idly with his personality. A strange smile hung on her lips. Hell definitely ask you once more. At that time, no matter what. Our gazes met on the rearview mirror. Sun Chai Young continued. Tell him that you want be my manager. Chapter, 175 Say that I want be her manager. Although they say that a celebrity is fickler than summer weather, I couldn't understand Sun Chai Young at all. When I looked at the rearview mirror, Sun Chai Young was staring at the window as though she had said what she wanted. It seemed she didn't dry her hair all that well as it was still dripping with water. I tapped the steering wheel before asking. Did you ask to me to say that? That's right. Is there a problem? Ah, uh, don't tell CEO Beck about this conversation too. What's the reason? Why do you want to know? Sun Chai Young looked at the rearview mirror again. Reflected on the slightly foggy mirror, her particularly vivid lips parted to say. Why? Do you want to work with me? Do you want me now? Nope. I replied immediately. Sun Chai Young frowned and turned away. You're an eyesore. There is a sleeping mask in the back. Sun Chai Young frowned again. So ridiculous. It'll lose my temper if I keep riding this car. More than now. I was at a loss for words. There'll be no reason for you to ride this car anymore, so relax. I replied calmly. Sun Chai Young threw the towel she was wiping her wet clothes with. Then she pressed her back against the seat. I could see the seat getting wet through the rearview mirror. Oh, wow. I bet she'd be rolling in the back seat if I asked her to not get the seat wet one more time. A long while after I received her irritated glare through the rearview mirror, Sun Chai Young snorted. You probably understand a lot more about this industry now, yet you still aren't good at calculating. You need to look at the bigger picture. Do you think you'll easily come across chances to work with an actress of standing? You're the one that told me not to be your manager. Ah, uh, my words came out wrong because of you. It's because you asked me for a reason. Should I try to sound her out? I'm just curious because you've changed suddenly. I was wondering if you're planning on retiring or something. I lightly shrugged and observed her reaction through the rearview mirror. Sun Chai Young's mouth was agape as though she heard something absurd. Retire? Why would I retire? Who said I was retiring? I'm just asking. They say people die if they change suddenly. What suddenly? It's been so long since I've asked you to be my manager. The train's already left the station. She snorted again before continuing. Also, I'm never going to retire. What will I do if I give this up? I don't know. Although I didn't know what she did for a living, I did know that she apparently retired. It looked like Sun Chai Young didn't have the slightest intention of retiring. What caused her to change her mind that she retired at the peak of her career? What sort of rumors were there again? Married into a Chinese conglomerate's family. Undergoing therapy. Pregnancy. Plays overseas. The undergoing therapy rumor seemed plausible. She seemed to have two or three mental illnesses. But why were they all rumors? Why did no one know the truth? If a top actress suddenly declared she was retiring and there were provocative rumors like mental illness or pregnancy, 
then reporters must have been swarming to find the truth. The paparazzi would have chased her around since she was a top star in China as well. But how was the truth buried? It would be impossible for Sun Chaiyang to avoid the reporter's radar by herself. Was it really related to a Chinese conglomerate? A chief from Team 2 did say something in the past. That the person who owns the hotel we were staying at was such a fan of Sun Chaiyang that he wished to have a meal with her. Seeing Sun Chaiyang's reaction at that time, it didn't seem like the first time she was dealing with a situation like that. If not, then the company might have actively quelled any information. I recalled CEO Beck Hansung's face as I looked at the rain drip down the windshield. I'm telling you again, tell CEO Beck that you won't be my manager. Sun Chai Young said as she propped her chin on her arm that was on the window. She seemed to have opened the window a little as the wet breeze fluttered her finely dry hair. I saw her half-opened eyes between her fluttering hair. They were restless and excited, like a fighting dog ready to bite and attack its opponent. Even if you tell him you want, the CEO won't think bad of you. I heard her voice amidst the loud sound of raindrops falling. Because most chief-level managers will say they can't. Sun Chai Young's words were a prophecy. After the drive in the rain, Sun Chai Young showed what a crazy truly was. Thanks to her committing daily acts of violence and wickedness as she ran through a landmine, wails could be heard from the Team 2 office. The chief level managers who the Team 2 leader set up with Sun Chai Young quit one after the other like dragonflies swept up in a storm. I heard this from Chief Li Bangjun, but a chief who said he would control Sun Chai Young later clung to the Team 2 leader's calves, saying he couldn't do it any longer. That was why Chief Zhou, who was familiar with Sun Chai Young, was temporarily assigned to Sun Chai Young once again. I saw Chief Zhou a few times at work, his initial impression of a neighborhood Hyung became a ruined man. It seemed like Chief Zhou and the Team 2 leader was doing whatever they could to soothe Sun Chai Young, but it was already the fifth day of the week CEO Baek Hansung gave them. Incidents were constantly bursting at Team 2. And one was about to burst in our team as well. Appa! 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 Take the picture when it bursts. Don't worry about it and pull. Yua. How can I not worry when you're the one taking the picture? Party poppers that is. The fan club sent us a table-sized cake to commemorate making film hitting 15% in ratings. We were holding a party in the fourth floor lounge to express our thanks and take photos showing us eating the cake. A photo of everyone wearing party hats and cream on their lips. I took a step back from the noisy center. Then I captured a bunch of photos clearly illustrating the event with a digital camera. One where Neptune launched the party poppers above their heads, and people eating cake like they were starved. The three goldfish were laughing like they were drunk. Young Jay was busy serving pieces of cake and drinks. I was taking pictures for a while when Chief Li Taishin swaggered over and sat down. With a face that seemed to almost suffocate with emotions, he said. That day, after their performance, it looks like they gained a lot of confidence. Yes, they had never performed where the audience cheered so loudly. As though he recalled that moment, Chief Li Taishin let out an excited breath. They had gone up thinking that people might boo or throw garbage at them, but a cheer erupted out from somewhere and spread instantly. That moment replays in mind a few times every day that I can't go about my daily activities properly. He added while looking at pretty girls. If I'm like this, then it must have been much more meaningful to them. They'll probably never forget it in their lifetime. It's good that ITLL remain as a good memory. I replied as I turned the camera. Through the viewfinder, the goldfish looked happy like they were having a wonderful dream. Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. 1. I heard someone say beside me. I turned around while holding the camera. I saw Lee Sangha through the viewfinder. Lee Sangha was sitting next to me instead of Chief Lee Taishin at some point. She was holding two pieces of cake. Her eyes, which were fluffier than the cream, looked at me. I wasn't even surprised anymore. How do you always know what the left hand doesn't? Lee Sangha turned her head away. Only her head. Still sitting, she silently shuffled her chair until she was right next to me. Finding her actions funny, I pressed the shutter again. We're in a haunted house while they on a carousel. 
What the heck is this? Chief Lee of the management team too grumbled. He groaned intermittently. His mental state was exhausted in two days. Of course, it was because of Sun Chai Young. There's only one floor between us in the same building, yet isn't the atmosphere too different? He looked at the person beside him. Chief Joe nodded with the exhausted eyes of a dried fish. They were standing in the corner of the stairwell on their way up. The fourth floor lounge was in the middle of its loud party. The two stared at the scene. Young Sun Wu, that guy has incredible luck. Chief Lee's gaze lingered on Young Sun Wu for looking at pretty girls and Neptune. The loud and warm scene in front of them could only be titled as happy. He licked his lips and said. How can he be with such good girls? While we'll have to wait and see about pretty girls, Neptune should have had some sort of problem by now. It's so odd that none of them have taken up a bad behavior or something. I know, right? They need to be awarded an upright celebrity certificate or something. And on top of that. He turned his gaze to Lee Songa, who was quietly sitting next to Young Sun Wu. Her. Lee Song has the real deal, no. I don't know. Chief Zhou replied bitterly. Unsatisfied with Chief Jaw's response, Chief Lee urged on. I mean I thought she was quiet after Cat Guardian Ghost became a hit because she was still in the start of her career, but she hasn't changed a bit even after two more successful projects and as her popularity grows by the day. Well. I bet there's no one as easy to work with than her amongst those at her level. She's not stubborn, fickle, and doesn't cause any incidents. She also doesn't have interests outside of work, so you don't have to worry about a scandal either. Chief Lee counted with his fingers. And it's not like her work is just okay. Have you ever seen her get irritated or say she doesn't like something to Young Sun Wu? She hasn't complained once even though her schedule was packed for half a year with her drama and movie overlapping and Neptune's schedule as well. She's completely different from Sun Chai Young. The more Chief Lee talked, the more bitter Chief Jaw's expression became. Like there was something that bothered him. Chief Joe opened his cracked lips and asked. Li Song has reputation is quite good, isn't it? Not just good. Almost historically great. Dramas, movie, commercials, photo shoots, no bad rumors came out of anything she does. Everyone just wants to work with her again. I've seen tons of celebrities while working, but it's my first time seeing someone like her. She's just perfect. Chief Li's voice dripped with desire. There'll probably be tons of people getting in line if she looks for a new manager. I've been interested every time I've seen her. I feel like ITLL be like winning the lottery every day if I manage her. Aren't you interested, Chief Joe? Let's say her manager changes. Pardon? Her manager is going to change. Chief Lee immediately asked. He seemed like he would immediately go and introduce himself if that was the case. Hypothetically. Chief Joe shook his head. Then he swallowed his saliva and said. Whether it's because our higher-ups said so or whatever, let's just say that her manager changes. But she suddenly starts causing all sorts of problems. She can't act, doesn't listen, and causes issues. Why do you say such terrifying things? That's Sun Chai Young. So if she suddenly acts like Sun Chai Young, then what will the higher-ups do? Chief Lee rolled his eyes. They try to soothe her as much as possible. Don't you know from dealing with Sun Chai Young? Do you think that'll work? Also, Sun Chai Young's already a well-known hellion, so at least you'll get people's sympathy. What do you think will happen if Li Sangha acts like that under your care? As though he had imagined this, Chief Li frowned. I guess they'll scold me, asking what I was doing for her to act like that when she was so calm with Young Sun Wu. Damn it, just thinking about it is suffocating. He shook his shoulders and changed his thoughts. Then they'll probably have Young Sun Wu manage her again. Right? The situation with Sun Chai Young is this bad because there's no one to rein her in. But you're saying Li Sangha won't cause problems so long as she's with Young Sun Wu. That's what I would do if I was an executive. While listening to this, Chief Jaw's expression became odd. Chief Li tapped his arm. But why are you thinking about this? It's just so drastic. 
Although Lee Sangha does follow Young Sun Wu particularly well, do you really think she'll act like Sun Chai Young because her manager changed? When they are polar opposites? The conversation we had just now, I said the same thing in the past. Pardon? With who? Chief Joe stared at Lee Sangha. Although she was simply sitting there with no makeup or lights, she gave off an uncommon feeling. There was a sense of distance like she was in a far off world by herself. However, her expression lit up whenever she talked with Young Sun Wu. Like a wax figure coming to life. Chief Joe mumbled. With Lee Sangha. Although it's a bit crazy, that's what she said. She might be fooling us all. He cautiously said. Chief Lee, who looked at him with bulging eyes, laughed. You must be really feeling the aftereffects of Sun Chai Young. Isn't this considered trauma? Chief Lee clicked his tongue and massaged Chief Joss lean shoulders. Chief Joe opened and closed his mouth a few times at his reaction but sighed in the end. It's just what I think. She's safe because the safety pin's still on. He looked at Lee Sangha and Young Sun Wu again and added. If we pull the safety pin, I think she'll be worse than Sun Chai Young. Chapter, 176 Chief Lee Jang Hyun opened the door, panting. It was WU's outdoor smoking area. A few chiefs from Team 2 were sitting on benches in the garden. The mood was gloomy. Cigarette butts propped up in the ash was like a public cemetery. Chief Lee panted as he sat amongst them. What the heck? I thought our meeting was at 10. Why are you all here? Seeking refuge. The team leader and Sun Chai Young are fighting again. Ah, damn it. Soon, the number of lit cigarettes increased by one. How can they cause such a fuss every day this week? Aren't they tired? I guess we won't have a meeting today. The team leader will probably be fierce. They let out sighs thicker than the cigarette smoke. I hope that those rumors are true these days. Rumors? What rumors? That the management department is going to expand. Multiple pairs of eyes quickly shifted in a calculating manner. About that. Is the rumor trustworthy? I talked to Chief Min in Team 1, and he said that they'll likely stop operations in the US and return here. I think that the rumors that the management department in expanding and that a new team will be created are correct. The important part is who will be the team leader. The chiefs with more years of experience coughed. The only one among them who didn't seem interested in being a team leader was Chief Lee Bun Jun. Bun Jun, are you not interested? Nope, nope. 24 hours isn't enough to manage Ji Jun. Chief Lee Bun Jun waved his hand. Just then, Chief Lee Jang Hyun cautiously joined in. I heard that Young Sun Wu's been selected. What's going on with that? Hey, are you going spread nonsense? If the team leader hears about this, then it's this. A different chief swept his finger across his neck. It's nonsense. There are so many seniors above him. It's too early for him to lead a team. He's already leading one. The temporary team. Chief Lee Bun Jun coolly replied. It's not like this industry promotes people by their years of experience. Do you think you'll be able to work if the higher-ups tell you to work under Young Sun Wu's new team? Just think about sucking up to him and calling him team leader. My internal organs are going to curl up. I've already called him director once and my organs were fine. Chief Li Ban Jun chuckled for a good as his round shoulders moved up and down. If him transferred, I wish he'd give me frequent vacations. Team 2 will probably never let go of Ji Jun. Maybe Ju Wan and me. A man, whose narrow eyes curved like a fox's, said with a smile. He was Sung Yumin, Im Ju Wan's manager. Chief Yung played a big role in Ju Wan signing an exclusive contract with WU. Ah, is that so? Even now, if I bring up his next project, he tells me to show it to Chief Yung. It's the same for Ji Jun. Ah, uh, but if it's like this, ITLL be the same members as last time. The ones who went to China together. That's right. The other chiefs were astonished as they watched these two chat. Just then, a chief who also went to China with them mumbled. Sun Chai Young was there too, so you guys can take her with you. But. 
A voice mixed with interest continued. Isn't there a rumor that Sun Chai Young is close with Yong Sun Wu? That rumor really lasts long. It's a rumor. Sun Chai Young did a cameo appearance on Royal Family though. I don't know why she suddenly changed her mind, Chief Zhou said they aren't close. It's nonsense. Hearing this, Chief Li Ban Jun and Chief Sun Women's expressions turned strange. A few laughed. That's right. No one's close to Sun Chai Young. Who would stick next to her? Even Chief Zhou, who has been working with her for years, is like this. Young Sun Wu needs to manage Sun Chai Young too. Hell give up and quit. Well, he is someone who's only walked the easy path. Do you think he'll be able to handle someone as troublesome as Sun Chai Young? That moment, the door of the smoking area opened. The chatting team two chiefs flinched. The first person they saw was Kim Hyunjo, who had a smaller stature. Behind him was Young Sun Wu, who was a head taller than him. So they were talking about me. I scanned their faces while drinking coffee from the vending machine. Their gazes, which were fixed on me, scattered like flies. Only two remained. Chief Lee Bun Jun and Chief Sun Yuman. While I greeted those two, Kim Hyunjo acted familiar with people who had even more experience than him. Someone with no sense brought over two empty chairs. Taikian keeps going to clubs, so I'm worried he's going to cause trouble. Clubs are better than hostess bars. That'll wreck his image. These days, it's easier on the mind if celebrities meet each other. They'll both be careful. ITLL be great if that's all. Choi Yu Young said she doesn't have enough money for a building she wants to buy, so she pleaded her manager to go to a wealthy Chinese man's birthday party. Apparently, he was going to pay her in cash. Seeing her actions, she probably won't last long. Although the mood was awkward, the conversation continued smoothly due to the number of people present. They talked about things that reporters would rush to learn about. I took a step back from the conversation and asked how Seo Jijun and Im Juwon were doing until someone said something to me. Chief Young, do you have any stories to share? Was his name Lee Jang Hyun? I saw him walking around with Chief Joe a couple times. I saw you partying in the lounge. Neptune and Pretty Girls seemed quite close. They are also nice to the staff. I think everyone you manage is nice and polite. Yes, well. That was true. Neptune, Nam Joyun, and Pretty Girls didn't cause anything overly troublesome. Thinking about recent incidents, all I could think of was Lee Sangha not eating all her rice, Nam Joyun eating rice that had gone bad, and Im Seo Young and LJ ripping a doll while they were fighting. Just things like that. Since others would mock about how that could possibly be any trouble, so it really was peaceful. I smiled because I was suddenly happy when Chief Lee Jang Hyun asked again. Chief Young, you managed Neptune since you became a road manager, right? Yes. Nam Joyun and pretty girls on top of that. You really had it easy. It seems like he doesn't like me very much. This wasn't anything new. It was like the penalty for being famous. There were more people who looked at me like that after making film began to air, especially managers in the same industry as me. I was worried that someone really might push me down the stairs at this rate. Chief Li Jang Hyun glanced at me. He looked displeased and wronged. Did I block his path? With a laugh, other team two chiefs added. Compared to our day, Neptune is so easy to handle. The stress from them acting is more taxing than being physically exhausted from a busy schedule. It'll be happy to faint from exhaustion if I get to work with someone like Lee Sangha. You need to really experience those that act out. That's how you gain experience and learn the tricks of the trade. Who would fear after handling Sun Chai Young? That's right. I don't think you'll ever meet someone as difficult as Sun Chai Young in my career. People sighed around me. Kim Hyunjo was frowning. I didn't know if it was because he usually looked gloomy or because they were ignoring him, but a few Team 2 chiefs continued to laugh and chat. Kim Hyunjo tilted his head and said. If what we're doing isn't considered work, then what is it? Do we just play around all day? That's not what we mean. We're just thinking that Chief Young should also step on the thorny path to learn more. 
This industry has more thorny paths than flowery ones. So nosy. Well handle ourselves. Kim Hyunjo coldly replied before I could even frown. The chief from Team 2 waved his hand. Yeah, yeah. We're just saying this because of that rumor about a team. Rumor? I did hear that a rumor about a new team and team leader was going around. Was that why their gazes were so unpleasant towards me? Well, it is just nonsense. The Team 2 chief trailed off. A phone vibrated and rang. It was mine. I grabbed the phone from the table, but Kim Hyunjo became surprised when he saw who was calling. A few of the chiefs on the other side had wide eyes as well. Don't tell me it was Sun Chai Young. No, they wouldn't know it was her since I saved her as the crazy in this area. Thinking this, I looked at my screen. CEO Beck Hansung. I almost dropped my phone in the pile of ashes. What the heck? Why did this man call me directly again? The phone had been ringing for a while now. I quickly stood up. Chief, I'm going to go answer the phone. Uh, go, go. Quickly go and answer. Kim Hyunjo quickly waved his hand. I excused myself with a nod to the other chiefs and turned around. A few of their gazes lingered on me. Their gazes dropped once I turned the corner. Yes, CEO. I'm, mm, I would like to talk. By talk you mean? Pretty girls. Or the new team. If not that, Sun Chai Young. I really hoped it wasn't the last one. Sun Chai Young. Damn it. It was just the CEO and me in a high-end restaurant. That seemed like a good thing. However, sitting here, I couldn't even tell if the meat was going down my throat or in my ears. CEO Beck Hansung was leisurely eating his food. Seeing as he brought me to a restaurant that needed prior reservations and bought me expensive food, it seemed like he was trying to pass Sun Chai Young over to me. I was planning on refusing even if Sun Chai Young didn't tell me to. The problem was how to best refuse. You really don't want to. Best my ass. I put down my chopsticks and drank some water. He asked for my reason, so I told him. I don't want to. Because of the incident with Lee Sangha? That's that. I also don't want to work with her. I don't think he'll be a swan, but I am working to become a pigeon at least. One if I work with Ms. Sun Chai Young, I think he'll end up as a crow. Did you think about your team? CEO Beck Hansung said with a smile. Not the project team, but an official one. I think you must have already thought about the employees, artists, and actors you want to bring into your team. Of course, I did. Try to get Chai Young to decide on her next project. Then he'll let you have that. This is Director Seo Byung Ho's new project. First, first, take a look at the project proposal. Sun Chai Young. A red hand slammed the table. This was the third time already. The two teacups, which had managed to hold on until now, finally toppled over. Sun Chai Young was sitting with her legs crossed on the other side. Unlike the Team 2 leader, who seemed like he was about to explode at any moment, Sun Chai Young was calm. The writer wrote it thinking about Yoon Yunga, but if you want it, we can bring it over right away. Chai Young, you like Director Seo's direction. I do. The project proposal dropped from Sun Chai Young's hand. The papers became soaked with tea. I still won't do it. Just why are you acting like this? The Team 2 leader kicked off the sofa. He clenched his fist multiple times. Don't tell me it's because of Young Sun Woo. Why are you bringing him up? You wanted him as your manager last time. Are you acting like this because you think the CEO will hand him over to you? Soon, Sun Chai Young's lips tilted crookedly. Did I? It was so long ago. If that's not it, then why? Huh? How long are you going to act like this? What have I not done for you? I did everything you wanted, yet why are you tormenting me like this? Say something other than just that you don't want to. What else do you want from M? Team leader. Sun Chai Young cut him off and asked. Do you think I'm acting like this to torment you? Then what is it? I'm fighting with the CEO. 
Sun Chaiyang got up from the sofa. You're just a casualty in the fight between the CEO and me. So if you want to stop this useless war of attrition, then go tell the CEO that you can't do it. That you can't persuade me. That you give up. Tell him that. Her sharp voice, which was akin to gnawing on broken shards of porcelain, added. No matter who comes to persuade me, I want to do my next project with this company. Chapter 177 I had expected there to be an enticing reward since that was the type of person CEO Beck Hansen was. I had expected a generous reward when he tried to hand me a natural disaster of a celebrity. I gulped and asked. So you're saying I can build my team with people I want? Will you uphold that even if the Team 2 leader is extremely against it? His chopstick stopped in midair. CEO Beck Hansung looked at me. I felt like the moisture in my body was draining from me. I wet my throat with cold water. CEO Beck Hansung occasionally looked at me like I was a very young fledgling. Of course, I could look very young to him because of our 20-year difference, but it still made my back tingle. It seems like you have someone you want to bring from Team 2. He didn't seem interested in learning who it was and immediately said. As long as the person is okay with it, then he'll handle the rest. It was a short promise, but it was more effective than a long speech about asking me to trust him. I placed a piece of beef tartare in my mouth. My head spun with every chew. He said that he wouldn't just give me a team but allow me to make it with the people I wanted. Could there be any sweeter words? Who could have ever received a proposal this sweet? It was so sweet it made me dizzy. If M.S. Sun Chaiyang can't be persuaded no matter what, is there any disadvantage for me? No. So there was no risk either. All I had to bear was the fact I would have to talk to Sun Chaiyang. If I succeeded, I would obtain an opportunity not given to anyone in the company. If I didn't, it would simply be me stepping on the thorny path for a bit. I asked another question. The reason why M.S. Sun Chaiyang isn't picking her next project, is it because she is dissatisfied with the company? I heard that her previous contract renewal didn't go so smoothly. That's true. CEO Beck Hansung coolly replied. It's like a yearly event. A yearly event? Once every two years, around the time of her contract renewal. There was a time where she wanted to attend New York's Fashion Week before signing then went to Paris, Milan, and London, not coming back for three months. The company was in an uproar. CEO Beck Hansung laughed gently. It seems she heard that it was a way to increase her worth, but it's lasting particularly long this time. So this happened every time her contract was up for renewal. She didn't listen to a single word the Team 2 leader said and seeing how she acted towards Team Leader Park, I didn't think she would change her actions even for the director. There was nothing more to say about other employees, which is probably why he wants me to try since Sun Chai Young personally asked for me to be her manager. Did she not listen to even you? Hmm, she doesn't listen. CEO Beck Hansung said with a light chuckle. So even he couldn't persuade her. I took a sip of water to refresh my mouth and mind before saying. Then he'll discuss this with the girls and get back to you. Discuss. Yes, especially with Sangha. This is an emotional issue. Although it wasn't like I was becoming Sun Chai Young's manager with this, it was still Sun Chai Young. Neptune's public enemy. This was a completely different situation from Nam Joyun and Pretty Girls. While the girls were one thing, I definitely needed to discuss this with Lee Sangha. She acted like a hopeless puppy waiting for her owner when I returned from Nam Joyun or Pretty Girl's schedule. I didn't know what to expect if she saw me with Sun Chai Young without any prior discussion. It could even make the cake or snowball incident seem even cute. Hmm, it should be fine. I already talked with Lee Sangha. What did he do? Although she won't like it, she'll understand. Since it's something I requested. CEO Beck Hansung said nonchalantly. He talked about this with Lee Sangha separately. When? If something like this happened, then I, her manager, should have been told no, since he was the CEO, there was no reason for him to have to tell me. I barely managed to swallow back the words that surged up my throat. It rubbed me the wrong way. 
I was uneasy when handing Nam Joyun's schedule to Kim Hyun Sup and Neptune's schedule to Lee Kuan Wu, but it was similar to when the quadruplets entered elementary school. This was unpleasant. It was like I was handing Lee Sangha to someone else. It was simply CEO Beck Hansung and Lee Sangha having a private conversation without my knowledge, but it felt unpleasant like a worm wriggling in my veins. Why didn't Lee Sangha say anything? I drove more roughly than usual. Parking at their residence, I opened the back door to see the rear seats crammed with bags. Snacks and cans the girls liked were scattered here and there. I took them all and went up to the fifth floor. I opened the door after pressing the passcode. Appa. Li Sangha, who was waiting beside the shoe rack, called out to me. She seemed to have been catching on lost sleep from today's morning schedule as her hair was all tangled. Her eyes also showed clear signs of sleepiness. Is there a sudden schedule? Lee Sangha asked while grabbing the bags from my hands. Your expression doesn't look very good. Also, usually, you would drive into the parking lot slowly, but you came in quite quickly today I opened the window to check if the weather was bad. I can see the parking lot entrance from my window. Her question became an excuse as she avoided my gaze. Yeah, you have an interview so come out when you're ready. I said before looking around the living room. LJ and Im Seo Young had been laying on the rug and were in the middle of getting up. Lee Taehee was stuck to the sofa like moss on a tree trunk and didn't move in the slightest. You become so curious about the weather when you hear a car in the parking lot, don't you? LJ snorted. Im Seo Young narrowed her eyes and added. Lee Sangha only comes out of her room if I call her three times, but she can hear you enter the parking lot from five stories below. It's like she has an antenna. When was I like that? Today. Yesterday. The day before. I'm not even curious who it is when you go to the front door, you puppy dog. 1. Lee Sangha tried to deny it and escaped to the bathroom. While I was talking to the girls, she quickly got ready as expected of a busy celebrity. I brought her out right away. The elevator went down more slowly than it went up. Lee Sangha fiddled with the bill of her baseball cap, which was pressed down on her hair. I couldn't wash my hair because I was in a hurry. Are we going to the shop right away? No, there is no schedule. Lee Sangha immediately raised her head. I wanted to talk with you. Are we going on a drive? Something like that. I could feel her sleepiness take flight. Li Sangha hastily pressed the elevator button. Around five times in a second. It'll come down after washing my hair. You look fine. It's not fine. I'm the only one who'll see you anyways. We won't leave the car, so you can just go as you are. I can't. I've been a celebrity for four years. I can't go out like this. ITLL be humiliating. Why would it be humiliating? Then should we talk in your home? I think you'll be fine. Let's go. Li Sangha, who didn't get off despite arriving on the first floor, finally moved, dragging her feet. Seeing how she was pressing her baseball cap even in this situation made me laugh unknowingly. The unpleasant feeling was partly gone. You can go and come back. I'll wait. I'll be back in ten minutes. She quickly went up and came back down in ten minutes as promised. The tips of her hair were still slightly wet, and she changed her lipstick as well. It was the coral color she normally wore. She got in the passenger seat as I started the car. She put on her seatbelt and looked at my chest as if she was checking if I had mine on as well. Then she opened the glove compartment to check if her snacks were still there. She leaned back into her seat and hummed. It was easy to tell she was in a good mood. Appa, what are we going to talk about? A next project? Yeah, Sun Chai Young's next project. Her humming halted immediately. I started to drive while feeling her gaze prickle my cheek. The car handled smoother than when coming here. I heard you talked with the CEO. Why didn't you tell me? That's. Was it a secret? Damn it. I shouldn't have said that. I had planned on slowly easing into it. I bit my impulsive tongue and glanced at her. She was looking at the glove compartment. No, she was staring at it. 
She bit her lower lip. I also know that this is a good opportunity for you. It's also good for us. We don't know which team will be assigned to after the restructuring, but the unis and I will be able to join your team without any issues if this goes well. Lee Sangha took gummy bears out from the glove compartment. She ripped the package open. Still, I didn't want to ask, I just didn't want to be the one to bring it up first. You don't have to worry. It'll do whatever it takes to bring you with me. I've been talking with Chief Kim and the Team 3 leader about Neptune as well. While it wasn't certain, I made it seem like it was. Because Blackout and Neptune succeeded one after the other, we might introduce an idle trainee system with this restructuring. Then the team leader and Chief Kim will become busy, so even if I don't bother with Sun Chai Young, Neptune will be assigned to me. Do it. It's not like it doesn't bother me but I'm not okay with it but I'll be able to endure it. She mumbled before continuing. You have other people you want to bring. I'll take care of that myself. It's not like you're changing who you're managing, and this is simply an opportunity for you. An opportunity where you can pursue your ambition with total concentration as you mentioned. Also, during that time, I have my own plans. Plans? I'm currently chewing on a bear's gallbladder. Gall what? Li Sangha put another gummy bear in her mouth and chewed on it diligently. A bear's gallbladder. The gallbladder I'm chewing now will one day return as bear soup. 2. I didn't know where to start on her remark. I drove slowly as I turned to my side. Biting off a gummy bear's head, Li Songda smiled. Let's go on a drive, Appa. Who? Sun Chai Young. Sun Chai Young. Kim Hyunjo and the Team 3 leader asked while picking their ears. It was the same reaction when I said it to Neptune. When I summarized my discussion with CEO Beck Hansung, they leaned back into the meeting room chairs. So it was the CEO. That's why he called you. Kim Hyunjo said with a complicated expression. That was why Team 2 chiefs have been noisy lately. If they hear that you're going to try to persuade her, they'll cause even more of an uproar. The Team 3 leader chuckled. But lucky charm, you have no free time with pretty girls, Neptune, and Nam Joyun. Do you think you can take care of Sun Chai Young as well? We already took care of the urgent problems. What do you mean took care of? Aren't pretty girls releasing their album the day after tomorrow? Kim Hyunjo said as though he found this ridiculous. Their complexions have been changing every day. Their faces were orange yesterday. Even the project members are nervous. Aren't you too calm as the team leader? That was because I knew how it would go. The team three leader crossed his arms and joined in. It's right that a team leader shouldn't be nervous since ITLL agitate his team members even more. If you know that, then you should stop fussing about every little thing. I'm helping you calm down by acting like that. Anyways, it's true that you need to be composed, but you're a little excessive. The broadcast was a success and their fame has increased, so you think it's fine to not care too much about their album? Even still, they need to have a good finish. What are you talking about? He apparently said that their song would be first on the weekly charts. Crazy. You've started again. That's what I'm saying. The Team 3 leader and Kim Hyunjo shook their heads in unison. After hearing about how I was crazy so many times that it was echoing in my ears, the Team 3 leader suddenly said. But you sticking to Sun Chai Young. Was the Team 2 leader not angry when he heard about this? I don't think he knows yet. They are going to talk about it in the CEO's office soon. Really? With his personality, I don't think he'll pat your shoulder and wish you good luck. Good luck. The Team 2 leader patted my shoulder. Unlike his words, his gaze read, you're screwed. Anyways, his reaction was calmer than I expected like someone with ulterior motives. Even the director looked surprised as his eyes widened. CEO Beck Hansung was still calm. I couldn't tell what he was thinking. Yes, then. I, I never thought I would say this. I would have tried to change this situation if I had seen it in one of my future visions. There was no turning back now. With a big breath, I took a step. They'll try to persuade M.S. Sun Chai Young. 
into the natural disaster. The Management Business Department Team 2's office. Having heard the results of the meeting, Chief Joe noisily tapped the back of his foot on the floor. Team leader, but if, if Sun Chai Young changes her mind. The Team 2 leader shook his head. His eyes looked like he was completely lost in his thoughts. I think Sun Chai Young's reaction is different from the past. Different? If she's serious. The Team 2 leader rubbed his beard. This isn't something that'll be solved with Young Sun Wu. Her phone was off. Again. I glanced at her contact saved as the crazy in this area and put my phone down. Are you trying to call Sun Chai Young? Chief Li Jang Hyun of Team 2 swaggered over to me. Yes, her phone's off right now. That's common. Is there a time or day when MS? Sun Chai Young comes to the company. She doesn't have something like that. She doesn't come when we tell her to and won't leave when we tell her to. She only does outside schedules. He scanned my face with an odd gaze. His eyes seemed to indicate he was planning something. Soon, he smirked. I heard about it from Chief Joe. You need to know more about Sun Chai Young to even try to persuade her. Now really, I really don't understand. Well, she does have something going on today. It'll get you started so come with me if you have time. Where? Chief Li Jang Hyun led the way as he replied. To her home. Chapter, 178. How do you feel? I feel good. You feel good? You feel about getting rejected by Sun Chai Young? No, the writing experience. I replied while feeling the plush massage chair. I had ridden in those commonly known as celebrity vans as a manager, but this was the best I've been in. It didn't smell of food or dusty, and it was as comfortable as a cozy loft. If I had something like this, Lee Sangha would be less exhausted during overnight shoots. I looked around the van before meeting Chief Lee Jangian's gaze. You seem calm to have to leisure to judge the driving experience on your way to Sun Chai Young. It's not like I'm going to die. Though it was a disaster area. Chief Li Jang Hyun wrinkled his nose like he was trying not to snort. Your head's going to fly if you approach her like you would Li Songa. If Li Song has a flowery mountain, Sun Chai Young's a minefield. There's no countdown. She'll just explode. She wasn't this bad before, but she's become crazy after her contract renewal. Idiot, even I've become crazy. Suffering this because I said I could manage her. He seemed to have suffered quite the hardship to swear like that. I had heard there was a chief from Team 2 who clung to the Team 2 leader's ankles, saying that he couldn't take it any longer, after volunteering to handle Sun Chai Young. Was it him? Well, anyways. There isn't anyone who's gotten used to Sun Chai Young as quick as me. Chief Li Jang Hyun shrugged. It'll give you some tips, so remember what I do. Only then will you be able to talk to Sun Chai Young. He acted like he was being very considerate of me with every remark. What was he planning? The majority of times people made a move against me pissed me off, but occasionally, it was interesting. This was the latter. His gaze was thorny when we met in the outdoor smoking area. Well, it seemed like he was helping me because he wanted something from me. He seemed to notice I was examining him as he coughed. Then he checked his pockets. Amongst the miscellaneous items such as cigarettes, lighter, and name card, he took out a piece of gum. He quickly blew a bubble after putting the gum in his mouth. Do you want one? I'm fine. People who don't know think that managers who chew gum look like thugs, but a lot of baseball players chew gum too. It helps release some of your tension. ITLL be helpful if actors had some before a shoot. Chief Li Jang Hyun glanced at me. But about Li Songa. Songa. You're busy because you're already taking care of so many people. Isn't that why you hastily found a temporary manager for Nam Joyun? You'll be even busier with Sun Chai Young, so I don't think you'll be able to handle all of Li Songa's schedule by yourself. Aha, Li Songa. I was wonder what he was aiming for by acting so considerate. Who he really wanted to make a move on was Li Songa and I was just the bridge to her. Then who usually fills in? I try my best to take care of Songha's schedule myself. 
Quan Wu or Chief Kim Hyunjo fills in when I really can't make it. If they are both busy, then our team leader fills in sometimes. And what if the team three leader is busy? Why it seemed like he was busy with blackouts overseas concerts. You seem interested in our team. Well, even if we aren't in the same team, we are all part of the same family. When even the team three leader can't fill in, I adjust her schedule. Chief Li Jianghyun cut in hastily. Have some free time. Junkian, who am managing right now, is going to mandatory military service soon. If you don't have someone to fill in for you for Li Song has schedule, then I think I can help you out. Desire was visible in his voice and on his face. I covered my smirk with a laugh. I felt it again. That unpleasant feeling. While it wasn't as bad as with CEO Beck Hansung, it wasn't so light that I could simply ignore it. Was a switch flipped? There were countless people who wanted Lee Sangha, what was I supposed to do if it made me feel unpleasant? How troublesome. I hid my inner thoughts and made a fake business smile. It'll definitely ask when that happens. Though it never will. The van stopped its drive around a luxurious residential area. When thinking about Sun Chai Young, I imagined a white house on top of a hill, but her real house was a private house like ones you saw in dramas. One I didn't know if it was to protect her private life, but the wall around her house was as tall as a fortress. Ivy covered the red brick wall, and plenty of trees shot up above the wall. Wait a little. I'm going to call her. Her phone should be on now. Chief Li Jianghyun called her. As he said, Sun Chai Young's phone seemed to be on because I could hear it ring. He shrugged as if he was showing off. Ten seconds, thirty seconds, one minute. She still didn't pick up. Chief Li Jianghyun hung up and called her again. She normally answers after five tries. Five tries? Yes, and if you wait in the van for a long while. Ah, she doesn't let other people into her home. If you wait in the van, she'll open the door at the exact time we need to leave even if she doesn't care about anything else, she follows her schedule to a T. That's why you need to have a schedule if you want to talk to her. She didn't answer the second time. I asked on his third attempt. Then why do you come so early? You just need to come at the exact time for her schedule. Now really, that's not it. Even if she followed her schedule to a T until yesterday, she might decide not to today. You can't assume or predict Sun Chai Young's actions. They aren't correct. You don't even know this. Without me, you would have had your head against the wall. Chief Li Jang Hyun clicked his tongue. This felt like I returned to when I was a new recruit. Look here. She's going to answer now. Chief Li Jang Hyun made his fifth attempt. His phone rang continuously. Taken aback, he tried to look over the wall. Why isn't she answering? She should be answering. You definitely can't assume or predict her actions. Idiot, why is she acting like this on the day I came to get her? She didn't answer on his sixth and seventh attempt either. Chief Li Jang Hyun rubbed his face and groaned. First, wait. He'll try to ask Chief Joe for help. He'll try calling her. I said, taking my phone out. Who? Chief Joe. No, M.S. Sun Chai Young. Chief Li Jang Hyun snorted. Sure, go for it. While he was on the phone with Chief Joe, I tried calling Sun Chai Young. I was waiting for it to ring when I suddenly heard a voice. What is it? What the heck? Was she holding her phone? I simply flinched because this happened before, but Chief Li Jang Hyun turned his head so quickly he almost hit his nose on his headrest. What is it? Am I on speaker like last time? Then why did you call me? Did you see someone like me on the street? That's not it. I'm in front of your house right now. Her voice paused. When I checked my phone, she had already hung up. Chief Li Jang Hyun asked with a flustered expression. What happened? What did she say? She just hung up. Ah, then he'll try calling her again. She might have picked up because she thought it was me. Well, since she picked up, she'll probably come out if we wait. He was saying with a mix of relief and bitterness when the door suddenly opened. 
Sun Chai Young came out and looked around. This was the only car waiting outside. Sun Chai Young came over. I checked her hands for a knife or something. That was how murderous her aura was. Chief Li Jang Hyun made weird gestures before almost rolling out of the van. I got off after him. Stopping in her tracks, Sun Chai Young crossed her arms. Then her gaze alternated between Chief Li Jang Hyun and me. Ms. Chai Young. He finally seemed to come to his senses as Chief Li Jang Hyun approached her in a friendly manner. You're already done getting ready. Why did you come here? I have some business with you. I replied because I thought she was asking me. What kind of business? Your next project. This issue has been handed to me, so I was hoping to talk to you. You, Fu. Sun Chai Young stomped the ground. Chief Li Jang Hyun quickly two steps away from me like there was a landmine. Sun Chai Young glared at him before looking back at me. Come in. I think ITLL get loud. Chief Li Jang Hyun suddenly raised his head. Ha. Huh. In your house. I think the police might come if we talk outside. Are you okay with that? Of course not. Chief Li Jang Hyun gave me a sympathetic look. He continued. Then should I come in? Chief Li. Sun Chai Young cut him off with a smile. In dying for some ripe persimmons. Can you buy me some? Ripe persimmons? Persimmons? Chief Li Jangian's mouth gaped. Don't persimmons ripen in the fall? How can I find that this early spring? If I knew, I would have already bought some. Do you think I'd be waiting until I'm dying for them? Why do you want to eat them all of a sudden? I don't know. Maybe it's morning sickness. The moment I look at Sun Chai Young's belly in shock. Ms. Chai Young. You can't say stuff like that in public. What if it becomes a rumor? Why? Do you think I'm joking? If you're not joking, then. Do don't tell me you're serious. Chief Li Jangian's gaze fell on Sun Chai Young's flat belly that was covered by her loose shirt. I'm joking. But I'm serious about the ripe persimmons. Sun Chai Young said in a temperamental fashion. After sending Chief Li Jang Hyun off did she go back in her house? Her steps were so fierce that I felt like their vibrations could even reach me. I massaged my neck as I entered behind her. As expected, this wasn't something I could do for a long time. Her living room was multiple times bigger than my apartment. Her photos were hung up on the walls. They weren't from a photo shoot but were rather stills from her projects. From back when she was a child actress to mermaid out of water. This place didn't feel like a home, instead, it was closer to a gallery filled with all of Sun Chai Young's acting roles. My attention focused on them momentarily. Enough that I forgot about Sun Chai Young. Look here. How can you focus on something else in this situation? What are you looking at? The photos. Look at them after we talk. Don't you remember what I told you before? Are you a goldfish? The goldfish were somewhere else. I told you to refuse no matter what. I told you to say that you won't be my manager. I don't remember answering. What did you say? Why do I have to listen to you? Sun Chai Young huffed like this was ridiculous. I didn't think she'd offer me a seat, so I leaned against the wall. You didn't give me a proper explanation and it wasn't a request either. Is there a reason why I should listen to whatever you say? Rather, the CEO offered proper compensation with this request. That's why I decided to do it. Compensation. Sun Chai Young fiercely came up to me. Her eyes, which emitted sparks, were right in front of me. What did the CEO say hell give you? How enticing was it for someone as stuck up as you to come see me? When you said that you weren't interested in me and had no plans of driving me in your van? You acted like someone with a single-minded obsession, yet does your head churn because he wags some compensation in front of you? I think you're misunderstanding something here. What? The CEO asked me to persuade you into doing another project. In not becoming your manager. I would have refused if it was something like that. Why would I want to see more of your unsightly appearance? It had only been five minutes since we've met, 
yet I've already started to regret it. The sweet compensation CEO Beck Hansung offered and the vision I had seen twice began to blur. Staying with Sun Chai Young made my soul feel like it was growing moldy. Sun Chai Young frowned. Her glossy lips twisted. Oh, what to do? I'm sorry, no, I'm not sorry, but I have no plans on choosing my next project no matter what you do. Well then, there's nothing I can do about that. I don't plan on doing anything. I replied with a shrug. Sun Chai Young's eyelashes flickered. Still, I think I should at least act like it. Act like what? It hasn't been half a day since I told the CEO, director, and the team two leader that I would try to persuade you, so I should at least look like I'm trying. Image what would happen to my image if I gave up right away. Well, if you change your mind and choose your next project in the meantime, that's better for me. I'm not going to. Okay then. What the hell? You. My phone began to ring as Sun Chai Young yelled. It was from Lee Songa. As soon as I checked her name, Sun Chai Young, who was right in front of me, saw her name as well. Sun Chai Young laughed cunningly. Does Lee Songa know that you're here acting like this? No. Her outstretched hand aimed for my phone like a hawk striking at its prey. However, she missed. When I raised my phone above my head, Sun Chai Young huffed. Damn it, you're quick. I had quadruplets who acted like that. Even they didn't act like this since entering elementary school. What are you doing? While I was speaking, Sun Chai Young was staring at my phone. As if it had become my weakness. The phone continued to vibrate. I took two to three steps away from Sun Chai Young before answering the phone. Hey, Songa.